Never did it for you, gotta do it for the love. Do it for the culture. Feel it in your soul, life like a roller coaster. Got us ups and its downs, but you gotta keep going. Don't stop when you still got motion. Stay dedicated, daily devotion. Gotta move like water. It all started with a dream and a dollar. And if it ain't what's good, don't holler. To every hard worker with a blue collar. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. Feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. 
Put a smile on your face. Never let them take your joy away. Let the sunshine make your day. Take your hand of your love. Wanna dance the night away. Or get away and escape on a vacay. Life's a marathon, not a relay. It's up to you to do what you love to do. Let no one stop you. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. Ooh, I feel good. You see how I look? I look good. That tell you everything you need to know about me and the way I feel about me. How you feel about you? That's up to you, baby. All I know is, if you feel good like me, <laughs> do it with me right now. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. This is my life, it's the way it is. Let the hate die, let love live. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. It's my life, it's the way I live. Let the hate die, let the good in. Ah! You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good.
easier said than done. Look, we're fine one of one. We always up to some. And they are one and done. This flow hot as the summer. How cold in the winter. Honey bird gets the worm. Yeah, that's breakfast for dinner. It's a heat check. We let in this simmer. And I don't like to lose. I've always been a winner. Hold or nothing. Break the mold. The time is now. Don't you fall. Push the limits. All of that. Cause you can try and hold me down. Bir aptal zenginliğin hayalini kurar. Bilge bir adam mutluluk. Sabır acıdır ama meyvesi tatlıdır. Hassasiyet ve amaç ile oynayanlar galip gelecek.
It's finals Friday as we look to crown a champion in this magnificent city. 20,000 student Valorant players started this journey with us. Which team will cross the finish line? It all goes down here today. Welcome to the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 World Finals here in Istanbul, Turkey. Look at this. We've got a live crowd ready to pop off for our four semi-finalists. This is the third time ever we get to do this. And when I say we, my name's Ian Chambers. Thank you so much for having me. I'm back on the desk with the one and only analyst of the year, Jesko, who is back in the building and making his debut here this week. Vlad, you are a professional Valorant coach. You are a yep. lovely, lovely man and a Turkish resident. Just for anybody who's watching right now, and yep. they might not know a little bit about you, tell them. Yeah, I'm Vlad. I did some coaching back in the Giants and BBL, uh, BBL Esports uh, times. And yeah. I've been casting for seven years in Turkish language. This is my first appearance in English coverage so far, and I'm delighted to be here. Is there anything you can't do? Name uh, one thing you can't on, do. That'd be a then. shorter list. We'll uh -huh. go with that one. Jess, without going through all your accolades, let them know. I was a player, a coach, a caster, analyst, content creator. I don't know, write a list and maybe I'm on there. Well, one thing's for sure, this is going to be an epic Friday. We've got a jam-packed schedule coming up. But yesterday, wow, we're leading into what is set to be a perfect culmination for another epic campus clutch. I mean, you and I have done the world tour, of course, of the countries, but now I'm here. I've never seen this many upsets. I've never seen this many matches go yeah. in such an unexpected way. And I think for them to put a show on for us is really fitting of where we are and how the feeling has been, the buzz, the electricity. I have felt every single moment of this. All right, let's take a look at the format. If you need reminding or cluing up on how this all works, here we go. This week, we started off with 34 national teams. Those teams were split into eight different groups for a round-robin format. Once all the matches were played, the top two teams from each group progressed into the top 16 bracket. These matchups were single elimination, best of three series, with the winners making it to the quarterfinals yesterday. Our top four teams who managed to overcome the quarters, of course, progressed into today's semis with another best of three chance of making that final step into our grand final. That is a best of five series. And this is where we'll find out who can really handle the pressure for all the glory. Look at it. 20,000 euros in prize money is up for grabs and additional prizes as well from our amazing partners. Great prizing, but you've got to work hard to get there today, right, Jess? I mean, cash money, we all want it. We're all for it. You said you wanted to buy 20,000 euros worth of kebabs. Is that still true? I mean, more than like legacy, yeah, yeah. I prefer kebabs. Yeah, me too. I could have all you can eat with you, Vlad. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, of course, we had our quarterfinals on stream, but we had matchups played behind the scenes as well that you'll have missed. I missed two people who were watching the entire time. We've got Zesh and Ash. Big Valorant brains keeping tabs on everything that was happening behind the scenes. Guys, welcome to the show. Zesh, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. You know, seeing your face, Ian, being an Istanbul, it couldn't be much better. And you know what? Having awesome games, that is also, you know, the cherry on top, Ash. And you know, talking about awesome games, we were sitting back there in the green room watching some very yeah. interesting Valorant starting off there with Indonesia playing Pakistan. It was an interesting matchup there. I think we expected it to go to that third map, but once we got into that game, it ended up being that 2-0 and in favor for Indonesia. Here you can see that 13-8 on Ascent, then the 13-9 on Split. Very explosive team that I think is a bit of a struggle for maybe some other regions to adapt to. Absolutely. I mean, it didn't start well with their, what his strategy was against Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I think they were down 1-6 on Ascent. It looked disastrous for a moment, but only for a moment, because what they play, I'll say that much, is something I haven't seen too often. Right? No. This is the thing you gotta look out for. <laughs> it really is, and I, I, we'll keep it a little bit of a yeah, surprise. Yeah. You guys can stay tuned on that kind of front. But high expectations here now that we're gonna be seeing them in that semifinals. But we also have to touch base on that other matchup there, Zesh. That was Sweden versus France. And you know what? It started good for the Swedish side. They were eating their own split, making it look quite easy. And when we moved on Sunset, we were quite close to saying, you know what, this is done. France, you know, you got to wave the white flag. That thing is over, <laughs> but they turn it over pretty swiftly. They really did. It was very interesting. I mean, a very different look from that initial quarterfinal that we were talking about. More of that slower, controlled place of play. Uh, it, more of like, if you're watching the game in like 0.75 speed, if you will. <laughs> 
It was a little bit different to what we had, for sure. But I can tell you one thing, right? From all those games you might have not seen yesterday, I can promise you we had the best teams advance. And Ian, I think you're going to have some great games and some great, <laughs> great matchups that you're about to talk a little bit through. If you're not going anywhere, man, I want you to stick around. You're going to cast our first matchup, I'm pretty certain. Hold on a minute, you just saw it there. We got a live crowd here in Istanbul. Istanbul, are we ready? <laughs> yeah, I thought as much. Yeah. Good stuff. We're definitely ready. Are you ready? That's the question. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Well, I'm yeah. ready to look back on what was a beautiful day of Valorant yesterday. A jam-packed day. It was full of surprises, but ultimately, Unforgettable experiences, unforgettable moments for all the players that were taking part. I cannot believe that for some of these players, they're going to get a once in a lifetime opportunity yeah. to step in a land environment. And for me, I mean, especially, you know, in tier one, a lot of players will play online. They'll play their regionals, maybe they'll play their nationals and whatnot. They might never step on a stage. They may never play a land. They may never go to an international event. And these students, yeah. you know, hop, skip and jump, and they're <laughs> here getting in front of what tier one players might experience in their career. Yeah, this is such a unique unique experience from Red Bull Campus Clash so far and these players are stepping up to professional level sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know what, if I was one of these students, right, I'd be clipping up the walkouts, yes. all my best yeah. moments, I'd be putting all over my social media, I'd be showing it to all my friends and family probably forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. And you look at some of these matches, some of these replays here, a lot of the quality throughout the years has gone up. I think a lot of people take this event, not just as grassroots, a lot of them, this is a really close stepping stone Absolutely. to pro play. Yeah. They want to use this as an opportunity to be scouted. They want to use this to create reels. And this is really <laughs> big pickup opportunities. We love all of the funniness that comes out of it as well. There's some great humor and personalities. We've been through them, and I think for you, Vlad, I think the big thing for us is that we're watching the best of the best come out of these regions, and yeah. we want to see where they go from here. Yeah, exactly. Like, these players, these students, can actually come up to be professionals in the years to come. Hey, it's been like, done before, right? One or two years later, we, we might actually see some of the players coming up to the Tier 1 scene. That's the importance of that tournament right now. All right, well, we saw some big results, some big shots as well, of course. We'll get to the bracket shortly, but Czech Republic, were as cold as ice to kick us off yesterday, sending home uh, Ireland. And, uh, you know, I wanted the Irish lads to do well. They were actually on a bit of a tear, but the Czech just looking phenomenal. I mean, we sort of said, you know, Czech Republic was putting in a lot of hours. They were practicing a lot of scrims. They had a lot of time together. And Ireland, not so much. So I think that did come down, unfortunately, basically, to how much time the team had together to synergize before this event. Irish, Ireland rather, not able to sort of push through on the whimsy. Mm -hmm. uh, the luck was not in their favor, shall we say. Yeah, to be honest, Ireland pushed their luck at the latest stages of Sunset they as did. well. I mean, like, yeah. we, we thought Czechs would be, like, prevailing 2-0 two, two easy, but the, this wasn't the case. Even though they won the series, uh, it was a tough game. Well, you saw it in the highlights there, and you can see it here on our on our bracket as well. Peru, the persistent oh, no. and ever so popular with the crowd Peru, sending home the front runners, Canada. I could not believe, I couldn't believe map one, you beat Canada on the best map, and then you oh think about God. map two, and I thought, okay, this goes the best of three, Canada brings it back, they are the favorite of this event, they were my favorite of this event, and now they've been sent packing, NA, near airport, whatever meme you want to make out of it, yeah. all of North America has gone home, and it's these, not necessarily minor regions, but countries that we've not necessarily seen before, sort of jump into these latter parts oh, of the mean, competition. This is a high and solid underdog story so far from Peru. Yeah. So to say, yeah. they uh, won against home country Turkey, and then now Canada. Now they're in the semi-finals against. They're going to compete against France, which is they're still underdogs in my opinion. Okay, all right. I know where you sit now. Now I know what's going to happen when we get to that second semi-final yeah. today. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the guys across from us mentioned it. Zesh and Ash talked about Indonesia and France, two teams that we haven't seen actually step out under the bright lights and the big stage. That will happen here today. Will it be the first? of two times they make it out because of course we've got the grand final coming up later on today we yep. will get to the schedule but let's get into our first semi-final czech versus indonesia the czech republic will be taking on the indonesians here are you ready for it i don't know if i'm really ready because every time i say i'm ready for a match and you ask me uh -huh. for my prediction and i expect it to go a certain way all of a sudden i'm thrown through a loop and i'm not a huge fan of roller coasters so let's uh let's relax it here today a little bit if we can let's take a look at this check roster i mean Vlad, this is a group of players that really put themselves on a global map yesterday. 
This is the twice, uh, I mean, joining in this tournament with the four of the players. They compete against uh, USA and Paul from Brazil in the quarterfinals. USA became champions later on, and then they picked up Pedagog. Jess mentioned a lot of Pedagog, and we saw what P Pedagog actually capable of. Uh, super team, but is it going to be enough for uh, against Indonesia? Yeah, well, I mean, they're back on the stage. We've seen this is somewhat yeah. of a bit of an advantage, really. Or it could be, I yeah. don't know, a disadvantage because the first time you step out here, it does give you a lift, it gives you a push, it gives you an energy. But they know what it feels like to walk out. They know what it feels like to play in front of a crowd. Can yeah. they use that again here? I mean, these two men on your screen are hoping to use that to their deep advantage. I mean, you don't have those nerves anymore. I, th I think it's an advantage. I'm standing right there with you, Ian. I think getting back on the stage, you've got Piotr and Hassar. Hassar being the KJ that actually was quite reliable for the yeah. team. And that's yeah. what you need. You do need your sentinel to be quite reliable and move Definitely. around. But I mean, Piotr on the other side, mm -hmm. we're having a lot of the team give up numbers who aren't yep. necessarily in roles yep. that are forced to give yeah, up yeah, numbers. This is this is a team where everybody can excel, everybody can yes. frag, but Piotr, uh, depending on the important games, he showed up big time. 10 entry kills yesterday, and still he's needed today. All right, now this is the man that you've been hyping up from <laughs> the very beginning here, Jess. Patagod, and for good reason. Oh, yes, I'm gonna keep saying it, and I might be a broken record. There's God in his name for a reason, much for the reason I pretend Goat is in my name. <laughs> of course, he is absolutely around. His ACS might not necessarily reflect how impactful he is, and I think that's important to bring up on the analyst desk, because when you look at a man like this, the KD is where it's at. He's having impactful rounds, and consistently so. I think for this roster, Patagon is the one that's going to have to step up. Definitely. I think it's not just him that needs to step up, he needs Everyone. to stay. Piotr as well. That's someone who's had a couple of quieter matches because the stars stepped up, Patagon stepped up, but you and I said in the back room, if they want to be able to beat their opponents today, there's going to have to be Piotr in the front line making yep. that space. As, especially when you play uh, attacking side, you know, your duelist always needs to show up big time. Like uh, yesterday against Ireland, they won against Ireland 2-0, but it wasn't easy, but Piotr was there. Today against Indonesia, such a big team, undefeated, and they still yet to show big time. Yeah, well, one thing's for sure, I mean, you mentioned it, at the, just when we were rolling the B-roll of the highlights there of, you know, we need to see every single player on this team step up. Yeah. And that's exactly what you have to do in any yeah. semi-final. You can't sure. get carried. No, you can't. And I think it's okay to have a star player here and there, maybe to rely on them to get that space, the power positions that you need. I think on this roster, they do perform better when multiple players are stepping up. And unfortunately, because they are used to winning with that win condition, yeah. I think that needs to carry on. It's a semi-final. Yeah. You can't cock corners anymore. I think maybe there might be a pop-off player, but everyone yeah. else is going to have to be right there Definitely. behind them. Definitely. Addition into that, uh, I think Chex has one of the best teamwork effort in the whole uh, tournament so far. Oh. And Muffin and Shari, they're all experienced tier two players, yeah. played against such teams, uh, such as like Ascent, the world champions in the East League. Yeah. And also look, we saw what we saw from yesterday against Ireland is like lots of responsive plays. For example, they lost some plays yeah. and then the other round, they take measures of it. And some conditioning, which we see oftenly on tier one, tier two, they stick their, uh, I mean, conditioning and uh, some discipline plays. Let's switch gears and take a look at their opponents, Indonesia. Now, this might be a team that we haven't seen step out onto the main stage yet, but we do know that they're very dangerous. We knew that, Vlad, when they stopped the reigning champions, USA, in the groups. Oh my god, these guys are nuts. Undefeated and won against the USA and also France, which is still another uh, finalist in the second game in the day, you know. This is nuts. They also never used Jet single time. I mean, in the Jet meta, uh, just bring Raze. You know, I actually respect him for just bringing Raze. And the big thing for me as well is that a lot of the players on your screen right now, including this man, have comp experience. Of course, they brought this in as the kind of front runner. That, and I think there's a, a particular special thing about Ray that makes him one right. to watch. I, the, the, the fact that he's just, the players are coming up to me all the time saying so he's rocking the judge. It's a, it's a thing to yeah. behold. Judge only. Judge only. Judge and then when he's Jordan, desperate, maybe. sometimes Vandal, I hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. When, when, when it thinks... Uh, that um, sounds fun to watch, sir. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. That's why we see some uh, two duelist things, which we don't often see. Mm. Ray's in second uh, duelist, but Ojet. 
that's something really like uh, intriguing. Yeah, let's take a look at Kush, another player that you should definitely be looking out for. Jess, this Kush is on smoke, right? And his numbers don't <laughs> his numbers don't lie. He's smoking his opponents. I mean, look, we can run dad jokes all day if we want, but he is the highest rated player. If you talk about players playing after the group stage from round 16 onwards, this is your man to watch. Some of the highest rated that you can possibly get. And he's not necessarily going to be your duelist. And in fact, uh, I, I'm going to put this out there and I, I pondered with you in the back room as well, Vlad. Mm -hmm. He plays so many Many different agents. I wonder when he gets into agent select, does he just close his eyes and just like random pick because his agent pool is way too wide. He's like, all right, Rainer, <laughs> Cypher. And I'm like, all right, this man's wild and he can perform on any agent. So if you want to watch a flex player as good as Kush, I would keep your eyes on that. Let's get into this. Will they make their most of their second main stage moment? It's the Czech Republic! Look at this, a lineup that we've seen step out here before. Can they pull it off once again when the stakes are even higher? Oh my God, Czech Republic. I can feel the goosebumps here. Yeah. I mean, I can't particularly say they're the favorites of this team right now, but let's bring Indonesia. Yeah, we should. Their opponents making their way to the main stage for the very first time to a huge crowd reaction. It's Indonesia. You know why I think the crowd is being so loud and rowdy? Because all of them have been on the end of Ray's judge at some <laughs> point in this tournament. They're sitting there going, you know what? I can only applaud what has absolutely bashed and brutaled me inside the server. And you kind of have to respect it. Just a reminder, look, this is what it's all about. These two are about to fist bump in front of, or oh, behind. Let's do it behind. Let's mix it up. <laughs> yeah. the, <laughs> the Red Bull Campus Clutch Trophy. That's what it's all about. You take that back to your university cabinet and you go down as legends forever. And you're only one step away from that best of, gra uh, best of five grand final yep. just on the horizon, Jess. That makes the pressure 10 times higher. If I'm sitting there as them, I am doing breathing techniques, I'm meditating, I'm trying to take myself out of this situation. Because when you get inside the server, you need to be clear thinking, make yeah. clear decisions, communications need to be clear. Clean comps. Clear comps, yeah. everything needs to be clean. So, yeah. and you and I know, Vlad, I mean, definitely, just, definitely. this is something you drill into your players and we hope that coaches have done so. Checks were here yesterday. Yeah. They felt the pressure yesterday. Yeah. Today, of course, they're gonna get some pressure as well, but Indonesia, they're stepping up to this stage for the first time time ever. Cooler heads, but always prevail. And, you know, there are some definitely experienced players up here. Yes. Yeah. This is different. This is different gravy, as we like to say in the UK. Vlad. You probably don't know what that means. But um, <laughs> no. basically it means it's a different, complete different set of circumstances, right? Okay. How, as a young player, inexperienced on a main stage like this, if you're a coach, how do you get them chilling? How do you get them ready to roll? I mean, I tr I try to make them remember their best moments. Yes. What they are capable of, what they have achieved so far. Well, they're going to have to achieve big things. We're going to see the map picks and bands on screen as we speak. Jess, what are you thinking? I mean, this is as we discussed. Do yeah. you let Breeze breeze on through? Do you get rid of it? Do you risk it? Do you do the split? And I yeah. think they've split the difference here on the bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Czech Republic band Breeze. This is the safest choice so far. Yep. Uh, and actually, yeah, uh, Lotus Haven and Bind, both teams can agree on this. I agree. And I think this goes three maps as a result. I mean, looking at Lotus being the first time we've seen Lotus on stage, at yeah. least for those who haven't watched Co Streams, you will not yeah. have seen this map. I'm interested in the compositions, I'm interested in how these teams play it. We have seen it of course, before from them, but it's in the background. So what have they got to show? Have the VODs been seen by their opponents? Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. Uh, all they have been playing from checks is like, <laughs> out of seven maps, it's five Haven. I mean, Indonesia, for sure, they watched it. All right, well, you just mentioned that, <gasps> you know, we oh, want to see this go to a best of three. Here we go. Uh -oh. Here we go. Uh -oh. Go on, go on, okay. Vlad. You seem no, shocked. What's on. happening? No, no, I'm, I'm not shocked from uh, Indonesia. They're playing double the list. Of course, as per. They won two games. One of them were yep. against USA to 34 
uh, uh, rounds and Ray actually dropped 35, which is a record on this tournament. It is. That is the top kill max on any map. Ray holds it. He's done it on the Rays. He'll probably do it again. Having both Rays and Rayner, do you think that strikes fear in their opponents? I mean, they I are well-versed, but how much do you think they're actually practiced against something like this? I mean, not at all. Not, not at, at all. all. This is current era. It's double <laughs> controller. It's, but uh, both Weldin and Ray has to deliver so they good. Do. They do. If they don't, this is so where uh, Czechs can take the advantage. And I mean, Rayner is one of those quote-unquote selfish agents, you know? You really have to perform on yeah. her, otherwise why did you take her? That's such <laughs> a selfish sort of pick. So yeah, I hope they hold hand in hand. They are the power duo. We get back on the desk after map one and we say, wow, they yeah. were explosive. They commanded presence in the server and they dictated the pace. Conversely, a little bit safer on the other side. Is, it, is, is the risk or the safety? Where are you going? Looking at these comments, is it risk or safety? Definitely safety okay. on Lotus yeah. because you have to uh, rotate too much on Lotus, True. Uh, just like Haven. And uh, the choke points are like long, and uh, maybe you have to ut uh, use your util too much. What if to you just brute force in? Uh, Blast pack, Rain Ali, you're like just in. You just in, don't care in, about in the early rotates. round. If you brute force, you have to win some trades or duels yep. or not. You're just going to lose away all your util with the two duelists. Guys, I'm fascinated. I want to continue this conversation in the green room. I'm just going to sit and listen to you guys. Do your thing, all right? Do it. But it is time now for our first semi final. Who will take that initial step forward into that grand final? Czech Republic or Indonesia? Let's find out with our amazing casters. It's Sesh and Ash. Thank you so much, Ian. It's gonna be one exciting game, because I really, I gotta say a warning here. This is a big warning. You have yeah. never <laughs> seen such gameplay before. We know our great build-ups, our great plays, but there's a shotgun demon on the server. Name's Ray, and it's gonna be hella dangerous. It is explosive. The movement is absolutely insane. You feel like he's playing like parkour simulator or something like that when we head into the server. So it's gonna be a question of how Czech Republic are able to adapt to that, because they do favor that more kind of controlled condition play style. Oh, they're playing this super slow European default kind of style. So I'm very much looking forward to if they'll find the adaption or not, because it's not always easy to adapt to those things. But the good thing is we're going to find out in just a few moments. Red Bull gives you wings. And there we go. It's going to be Lotus never played by the Czech Republic before in this tournament. And let's find out if the aggression is going to prevail or the defensive and control style is bringing this best of free home. Going for that early push already. Taking this rubble control though, look at the way that you see Czech Republic so disciplined, waiting, anticipating that push to come on through. And it feels like on the right hand side you have the aggression, on the left hand center side you have all the control in terms of kills or an omen. Spike dropped. They're really trying to rule out as much space as possible at the moment, but this is the Czech style of playing. Waiting out, letting the clock run down, taking space methodically. And again, with a dog and a flash, you'll be like, hold on, A feels kind of free, maybe worth a take. Oh, this contact over towards B, though. Looking for the smokes to come up as well. Nice delay with the Nano Swarm at the very least to buy time for this rotation through that mini door. And whatever step you take, you're going to be stopped. But this time they're entering. B side is the goal of the side of the Czech people. And so for the moment, they only have one left. It's only Hassa standing as the choke point really let them fall short. A few frags, nothing left. The Reina prevails, and the pistol round goes in favor of the Indonesian side. And here is already a bit of a taste, you know, of what it feels like playing against the Czechs. Slow, methodical, taking room, utility used, exploding in one position. But here we once more see, they just weigh it out. Come to us, yep. and we're going to take you down. Even just that patience outside of A lobby, outside of Rubble as well, just knowing that they may have expected maybe more of that paint shell to go out initially on the side of Indonesia. But right. I think another point is the fact that on Lotus here, Indonesia, they've started consistently on the defensive side. Previously, a bit of a more difficult side for them to deal with. And I think all to be considered as well as that opportunity to try and close things Ouch. out on the attack, down, but already okay. over towards a spike revealed. I mean, you get nothing to lose, so why not take an early duel? Pretty much thinking you're a side of Maffin. That pistol drop has been heroic. The players of the Czech Republic all scattered around. Make it one less. All in the driver's seat for the side of Indonesia. And they might just try to push it through that eight choke point again. But there's a judge. This is the first taste of it. Okay. Oh, uh, you're, you're not going to like that. You're not going to like that. Taking both out. And the 2-0 starters there. I mean, this is going as expected. Now it gets interesting. 
I think the big question mark for me here is how Indonesia are going to continue forward with this defender-sided aggression right. with that judge in hand, especially towards that rubble control. But Czech Republic, there's still a lot of time to figure things out, see how they can try to counter that initial space being taken by Indonesia. And then afterwards, then you kind of wonder, okay, where do we rotate over towards? And looks like after that initial conditioning, already a pivot to stack, stack over towards C. side is most definitely going to be and you know they're, they're early announcing themselves there's no need to take any fights both flashes are existing in front of c but here's the shutdown from the check as it seems like there's no way that indonesia's getting away with that frax found of both parties and now ray who has a rifle for some reason that's a very odd sight is trying to take it home against four most likely pretty impossible at that point as the lurk from Hassa's coming through who's gonna hear the step the first one seems to be pretty safe on the board yeah, deep poison arm as well. 1v4 situation. Looking for something early on. Just missing that timing. Now over towards Rob. Still, Boombot to work with. Okay. Yeah. Starting off. Find the first, but it should be pretty Fight much planted. impossible, right? This is one of those things. Should never be turned around. Flash in the wrong direction. No, the playoffs are coming left and right. And no! Fights too! And this is beautifully done from Ray. He's not only the maestro off the shotguns, he picks up a rifle himself. And backs off, takes a different route. He knows that the spike keeps ticking and ticking, beeping and beeping. And the off angle is something he's trying to obtain. As that killjoy, as that Patagot is just waiting for the cross, and he might just have the right angle, checking everything, but there is no chance. Ray made it close, but it's the safety net in front of Patagot that gets them the first. Way too close for Kopp for the check yeah. side, considering that that was a four versus one. You have to think about the economy damage done in that situation, too. Now, we're actually going to get a taste of another raise on a judge coming in here for Piotr. Interesting to see the explosivity leaning over towards this B side, maybe looking for a bit more of a blitz here. But it's an interesting buy. Yeah, we're going to have a bit of a tech pause coming through here just early on here, Zesh, but yeah. it is what it is. I mean, you, you, can't have, you can't have a land without a tech pause. No. And I really, I'll be it's honest with you, I'd rather have them early than later on when it actually gets exciting. Funny thing though, you know, first time trying the rifle and things are not going according to plan. Still, I, I think it was a clear sign of what we saw at the beginning of the round here, Ash, in terms of, okay, you know what? You would expect that the Singapore inside, pardon, the Indonesian side has an advantage in terms of, okay, we take those five with double flash, the Reina, and as well as the Sky Flash versus this Paper X combo that can be kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. Where there, they absolutely fell down. It's one round, you know, it's not a big sample size to work with, but either way, I'm just curious if it is going to be a swap up in that terms. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, it's the difference in weaponry in that last round as well, right? Being that bonus for the side of Indonesia. But I think the big curiosity is we're seeing the Killjoy Operator coming into play as well on the Indonesian team previously. Saw Chud playing over towards that C site, looks like. It might be actually an early peek in towards B main. We'll have to see after that tech pause where everyone actually ends up posting up there. But overall, I mean, I think the expectations are just very high here for this matchup. They are very high. You know, it's it's a bit like I would describe it resident sleeper versus hypers kind of gameplay. <laughs> you know, it, it is a very slow team versus a very fast paced one. Yeah. But most importantly, right, it it feels like there might just be, you know, you had a you had a day to watch the VOD, right? You were able to see what your opponent does. And I think if you are such a team like the Czech Republic with those experienced players, you find a way into the gaps of your opponent. And here's one more thing. If they actually did their homework, like, you know, a top grade student, you'll see that they prepped for like four or five maps, right? So I feel like they had a lot more to look at. Well, Czech Republic, what did they play? Five times Haven, two times Ascent? Yeah. So like, there's not much to really work against them. No, it's going to be really interesting, especially if we go over to that third map where we haven't seen either team on Bind before. But now, Coming back. as we head back into charges. this round, that heavy stack, consistently seeing that lurk player in Hasa on the side of Czech Republic as we anticipate coming out from the Viper. Oh, I like this. Daring something. And you know what? Double Setchel and a Judge? I see that. Yeah. I see that from Goddard. I mean, you have opportunity too to shroud and step in, get past that Nano Swarm if it gets popped. Uh oh. I think this is not going to end well. B side is immediately being attacked and immediately being besieged. 
find the space within the side. There's a lot of room for take from Kyoder. Is actually being spotted. Whilst we see Frax pounding left, right, and center, he tries to take a bit of a too much long range duel as free players from his left hand side are going to take him out. Ray and Cole, with four versus two, are swapping over to the C side as this is being attacked now by the Czech Republic. Yeah, immediate pivot on over, but the operator picked up. Now gotten to be taken down. No opportunity for cover here into this retake situation, but advantage still lies in the hands of Indonesian numbers. From a utility perspective, there's nothing left for the Jack side. Oh. What in God's name was that? They're peeking into an angle that this was definitely not clear. And only Valor remains. The shotgun part, and that is the operator that takes him down. And it was a four versus two. Everything was looking like it would be fine for the Indonesian side, but they literally fumbled the back of that one. I mean, I think Czech Republic, they play it right there. They go for a bit more of an aggressive angle. You might anticipate that playing might for the Nano Swarms, therefore Patagod, but to go out with Knife Out, peeking over towards the waterfall, a bit of a mistake. But again, Indonesia, they haven't played on stage quite yet. Could be a little true, bit of those judges true. as they adjust. Actually, fair point. They'll consider it in their region as the Kingslayers. <laughs> Nearly made it to their ascension, but... Again, everyone can play a sheriff. The only thing that really matters is Ray on a shotgun. So like, I can I can have a Ray puff. I don't really need to see all the other players to be honest. Ray only point of view Ray for this round. View. I'll, I'll tune in 100. <laughs> percent Oh, they give up that early A space, knowing that they're down as far as that weaponry goes. But again, that very slow play coming out here for Czech Republic. Opportunity. That. Yeah, they are. Ooh, this is not. This could be really uncomfortable. The dog's gonna. Maybe clear out one Scout player. Yeah, only saw the omen, though he was not shooting at the dog. He could anticipate that it might be two. Not too many weapons left on the side of the Indonesian, so the swap makes a lot of sense. Seaside already obtained by nobody else in Hassa. Might be free real estate for them. I mean, the Trailblazer gives up the entire jig. Now you're looking mm -hmm. for more of a sandwich here. Looking to put that pressure on towards Czech Republic once they find that plant here towards the safe site. They don't know that nobody's home, though, so still need to extend that utility. Lockdown available in the post plant. I've taken a lot of time with it. I mean, they were really trying to structurally build themselves up to get easily onto the site. But now it might get ugly. It does get ugly. Godson got the first, oh. and Nate is actually landing in front of the feet of Hassa. But they moved away. The sheriffs do the job. And it seems like they found the outlaws over there on the side, but there it comes. Ray no. fights too! We didn't promise too much with that. Patagon is the only one who can make a difference, as a lot of players are going to be detained. Wait. At least it's halved. They don't know. They don't know. Clearing every single angle. Oh, this is not going to be easy. Finds at least two! Pata might do the ace, but he does not! Velden saves the day, and the chaos on the A side prevailing there for the side of Indonesia. What an eco round to come in the fact that Valden was detained there on default as well. Just not enough time to clear every single angle. I guess maybe didn't even expect that he was sticking half in that situation. We're five rounds in. We're literally five rounds in, and it feels like I've aged 20 years by now. <laughs> Probably as old as Ian. Oh, yeah, but Ian and Vincili together. Either way. Stepping away from that. I've, I think the sticking there was probably the only option considering the lockdown, but here yeah, it goes. Have to get half. Different style, more aggro, one slot only. I really like the shift in pacing, at the very least, but right around the corner. <laughs> oh no, not again. You know how it is. <laughs> it must be so frustrating playing against that. There comes the combo of the flashes. Not really succeeding here, Valor. Same goes for Ray, giving away a first frag. All the Czech players that stand in front of the A site might just look for the alternative that might be the mini door. I like this pivot over towards B, though. You bypass that KJ utility. Chud, though, watching the angle still. Ooh. Gonna be taken down now. 3v4 situation. It's pretty much done and dusted, isn't it? I mean, it's only on Takush. And that man might just have the right weapon, but stands no chance. The crossfire is there on site. And from one force by one to another force by one. It seems like this back and forth is going to be a very common pattern between those teams. As the different playstyles just make it so... It just, it's just, it's literally a clash of things that do not belong together. Well, what I really like too is the fact that we're already seeing Czech Republic going for those early adaptations as yeah. far as pacing goes. They had that slower controlled play, lulled Indonesia into that sense of comfort. But then you go for that immediate shift, something that we didn't need to see in their previous matchups, where it was a little bit slower, not dealing as much with that kind of explosivity on those retakes and early map control from defenders.
Maybe it's a bit of a fire, fighting fire with fire situation. Sometimes you, know? you just gotta go head to head when they're really aggressive. It's the only answer. You gotta just try and take those fights instead of waiting for them to come to you. I think the thing I learned the most from I miss her hashtag got jab is just W swing. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. Favorite duo Q player. Either way, step away from that. <laughs> A side is most definitely going to the goal of the Czech Republic as they're clearing out. As you know, this is a thing we, we've seen all in the previous games they're super methodical about. They really yeah. want to make sure that every piece of utility covers a single corner and that there's no opponent randomly standing on side. And with this spike going down on A, it's going to be quite a scramble considering it's a five versus five. Yeah, playing all completely off site here as well. We take pending. Shorty's not going to do too much, but a nice Molly oh, what? trying to lay that push in. It's a bit weird because he's blocking himself. Ray finds the first entry gotten, but Chad is just diffusing. Chad is just diffusing, but it doesn't matter. It was probably a millisecond left, but no chance. They got it under control. What once more looked like an upset round belongs to the check. And again, the timer always looks like a millisecond away. I, it gets tight. It gets tight on those retakes. But I think the snake fight was the right call from Hassa. You're a Viper completely alone there in tree. You're expecting usually on those eco rounds for them to be pushing out, clearing that angle immediately. You don't want to get caught off guard. So denying that space off the gate still have the opportunity to take a bit of a wider angle now. Indonesia, they stack over towards the A site. Wrong pick though. However, Hassa could get caught off guard depending on how speedy Indonesia are about this. That's one of those more deft kind of plays, really trying to push away the opponent and then going for a rotate. But with that old, hold on, uh, do they have it on the paper? Yes, they do, Shouty is down. And as they're trying to make that C play go, now might be the right time. This poor man oh. is trapped, but he still finds Piotr. Okay. A trade for a trade though, the showstopper to find it in the end, and the Seekers to come through. That was fair. Man advantage here on the side of Indonesia. They're trying to hold them down once more. No, there's absolutely no way that That's they're getting right. on the side. Delivered on a silver platter in front of the gates of C. The final check players are waiting. I mean, surely there's no way. A lot of time to work with, though. A minute on the clock. <laughs> so opportunity. However, that lurk position initially towards B was given up. A tap towards the rotating door to add that initial, an additional pressure maybe over towards a potential push back through waterfall, but both players just sticking together here towards mound. That's just like it's too cheap of a fake. We're not we're not gonna believe any of that. As they're trying to intercede to retrieve the payload, it most likely will not be happening, especially as Ray knows there's a close angle. Try to peek, I'm gonna take it out. He's running into it. This man does not know what the word fear means. And as Kush takes down the final opponent left on the server, the buy round versus buy round situation, all in favor of the side of Indonesia. Difficult call to Just a little bit too late on that C side. But here's the thing, you, can, you do the omen but there's no yeah. follow-up. There's no pressure, you can just focus on the guy. And the thing is too, if you have him taken down early as well on top of that, you, you're left with no cover, right? You get that right. default wall yeah. over towards that A site. No Viper Util to really reclaim and cut off any of those angles. But again, this stack here. Uh-oh. There's gonna be a battle. Four versus five. All of them are just right now meeting from the side. Oh. Hold on! Oh, okay, fully blind, still gets the frags. They're all swinging. All W, all AD. The winner of this duel is literally going to be the Czech Republic. Having one player left or more on the board, they're gonna prevail. Okay, you know what? This is a way of playing Valorant that I enjoy. It's instantly getting to the point. It's like no defaulting, no utility, just fight. Hey, again, you're going up against those judge plays. You're going up against that defender side of aggression. You just gotta let them go head to head instead of taking that map control for free. The walk up though, this timing. No mollies on the side of Chud. Does have the walk down available in this 1v2. But one to respond for Patagot as well. That's what it might just believe a little bit of a lurk, but that ain't happening. Maffin is checking heaven at the right time, pings the spike and boom. Advantage for <laughs> the check side. The Latvian brothers are cheering. <laughs> I, I, I would say Indonesia's fan favorite, though, honestly. I think so. Just, again, I think the desk was saying it perfectly right. The fact that if you're going head-to-head -head up against that kind of energy in the server, yeah. you're going to be like, okay, if you don't win this, I'm probably going to be pretty pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> understandably. <laughs> very understandably. It seems like we're going to a little break again. Maybe more of a tactical point of time, because, you know, you, you actually struggle to find a solution after... You know, you, okay, we have to say one thing, to be fair. 
that game, the one time that Indonesia played over here on Lotus was against mm. the USA. Yes. And that was like a triple overtime, 1816, something yeah, along those it lines. It was 1816, yes. It was a long battle there. But yeah. again, the thing is, four to five, this is comfortable already, I would say, for Indonesia for the first half, to yeah. be honest. They look to close it out on the attack. That's why they're starting on the defense first every single time, because they know the comfort of being able to just shut down the matchup. Meanwhile, had they started on attack, sure, you can find an advantage, but if you can't find your footing there on the defense, that's where things can get dicey. Absolutely. And I mean, considering that the Czech Republic basically cannot play what they usually played in terms of, okay, we first wave here, we abort, swap yeah. sides, and maybe even do a 20 second execute, they are still fairly comfortable. I think the biggest thing for them mm. is C side, bad. A side, good. Hey, that's totally fair. I mean, the absolute head to head there for Rubble. <laughs> We're going to see it again. Is that a replay? It's a rewind, but it's all five this time here for Czech. And as they're all trying to fight in, if Yacht refines Val, and here goes the shotgun, gets a little upright, turns around, but does not find a kill. Man advantage present for the Czech Republic, but this time it seems like they brought a dodge it. You know what? Enough fighting. We have a man advantage. Why would we try to once more take that scramble over here on A? And, and this is causing the issue for the Indonesian side. Both players split in, a, in an equal distribution. They at least do it one for one. Oh, hearing all this sound here. Math is low as try. well. Secrets to come through. He didn't hit it. He didn't destroy it. But they're swapping sites again. I mean, this is this is still not, like not obvious enough. Shut could be the man who's making the difference, but gotta shoot the dog first. It seems like those tracking exercises didn't pay off. No safe plants here for Panagod. Two nano swarms available into the post plant you as well. Run. You've got the lockdown already coming through. It's curious. Does Chud throw his in? I mean, it's buying you time, but it's not buying you safety. They're, they're committing to it. They must destroy the lockdown right now. This is the only win condition. But as they're pushing, they're falling. Two round advantage from the Czech side. And I like, you know what? It seems like they're going strategies overrated. Fighting, we're gonna do. Because it seems like to be the most simple way to make it work. And so far they've been overcoming the kind of threat that Indonesia, you know, presents the entire time. I mean, there's no need to overcomplicate it as well. On the side of Czech Republic, Patagon has been such a difference Again? maker in every single round. Hey, again here for Indonesia, it seems like that press go is what they favor overall. Very aggressive turret on the other side of the map, though. Shot out, Nano Swarm to delay, but that's a lot of time here that Indonesia will need for this rotation back over for C. Oh, they're fast rotating, and now you got to make a decision. You're stopping them from the execute. And the fun part is, Indonesia is still sending four players to C because they're expecting a rehit at this point in time. I mean, look at the A-side space, right? Gotten has all this information, can TP out if absolutely necessary with those shredded step. But they actually move back on over. Gotten caught out 1v4. Utility out right now. It's not the time, buddy. He's wondering they actually at the right time. This is good. As if they're fighting, this is going to become a problem. But he gets the right kind that of TP through. Perfect. It got dicey. It really did. I, you know, you had Czech Republic. They threw out their own utility. That was kind of that green light. Okay, I, not, I need to get out of this smoke now. And it couldn't have been tighter. But now no more delay available here towards the... Okay, so they're double faking this. They're actually trying to sell stocks that we're going C. Oh. And as Piat finds Chud, I'm pretty left. sure that they're going to buy it. As though Ray finds at least one. They're still sneaking on A. It's time to now get on site, and this is what the Czech Republic does. It is a four versus four, though, mm -hmm. and that makes it at least even. The one thing is that Viper ult. It's yeah. not comfortable getting in there. It definitely isn't. At very least, you do have there. a Guiding Light still available on that retake. Shouty, Valda knows he's there. That's a bit problematic, because nobody really covers his backside, but he just moved through. He just moved through, and nobody's even denying it, but shotgun versus shotgun. Padagat prevails. As this goes on and goes on, all the shooting over there, the Viper Souls, it's going to be clear that the Czech Republic comes out and prevails. Could save the rifle, 150 credits left in the bank account, and you better stick to that Vandal. It's the seventh that has been secured by the Czech Republic. And this is, this is like the round where I would say this was very Czech Republic. Double faking it at a 30 second mark. One enemy remaining. 
Okay, going for those exit Ooh. breaks at the very least. Trying to do All right. some Fair. of that damage towards the economy. 4K there for Kush last at the end of the round, but the last one before we swap sides. Czech Republic, I think they also have a very good read on the defensive protocols right now from Indonesia. They know that if they're having that four stack over towards A, you have the solo in Chud, that KJ with that B utility leaning towards that C side. And usually, again, those fast rotations, they'll leave the other side of the map completely open. They very much do. And with that being said, it's okay, like the last four rounds, they've always started for A. And I don't want to be that guy, but it hasn't really worked too much. And I'm a big fan of sticking to your plan, but adaptation sometimes is really worth considering. Interesting, though. We did see that four stack towards A site, but when they were met with no resistance, they looked to pivot over towards B, spread out a little bit more, maintain this A lobby control. The question is just what are you doing with this right here? It's, it's a bit of an off angle, I'll give you that. They might just not even expect it, but they do. The Czech Republic did their homework, are aware of those kind of things, and now you pretty much have to back off. Every single extremity is basically being pushed. A bit of prodding in front of yeah. B, in front of an A. Just looking for that additional pressure, right? Guiding light. Again, additional information outside of this B site. They believe it's a, I, I, it seems like they believe this is just a, a little bit of a stunt, a little yeah. bit of a fake. They think well. Last time he was gotten alone, might not be anticipating three players here over towards Rubble. Question is going to be flashed again. Shadi would have it. And he's absolutely blind. One found, the second one to be gotten by Malvin. Nope, not gonna happen. Ray has an ult, two sentinels, and a shotgun. This is like the, that is like the one opportunity I see right now for the Indonesian side. Well, they can't give up sight this time around, I don't think, or else I feel like the tree would be completely free. Not anticipating, though, uh, the player underneath Hal. Yep. It's free for Pyotr, but only gets one. Haza to clean things up, though. We end the half 8-4 to four here for Czech Republic. I genuinely didn't expect that. I, I honestly thought that, considering that, you know, let's say, let's say like that in, Euro in a European kind of atmosphere, you usually play those slow kind of styles in Czech Republic practicing. Right they probably never play it against a team like Indonesia. But at the same time, now we're swapping sides. So now we're getting into the part where this proactive kind of play might be much more successful. Yeah. The side that definitely favors that kind of play style. Curious if Patagod can keep up these numbers yeah, though now on the defense. Like 18 to 5, absolutely insane. KJ player on the attack as well. It's been so key. Very good at getting his 2Ks there in a lot of clutch situations where it's come right down to the wire on top of that. Typical three stack here from the defenders. And check for this rubble control once again here on pistol. And here's the kind of question you gotta ask yourself. Do you keep on pushing for the one way or not? Seems like oh, this might be one? the best idea. Yeah, seems like it. You see our only minimap, red tag. Gotta check close. And this is the thing, there's no real prodding utility for the site of the Indonesians. So they gotta get straight through it, and they do. I think it's the fact that it's also just the disrespect towards that toxic screen is so important here for Indonesia as well. Yeah, you can't really tolerate that. You can't be like, okay, you know what, this is your space, this is your yeah. ground. This ain't happening with this team. But on the side they are, in the five versus five situation, this is gonna be one exciting pistol retake. Never mind, Kush starts good. Keeps on extending his limits. And Ray just wants to keep stick to the fights. But the spike is now down, and this is where it gets interesting. What can the Czech Republic do? Oh, the right click, waiting on the other side of this corner. Looking Continue. for one, could get the second, Ooh. and it happens here for one Ray. Down to one, Shouty knocked down as well. Pistol, back into the hands here of Indonesia. It's interesting, you'll see Ray, like, even with the Classic, it's just even going for that chip damage, just to lower, whittle down that HP little by little. It feels like he hasn't figured out what a bullet is. He only knows pallets. He literally <laughs> only knows pallets. <laughs> What is a single ah. bullet? Wait, why not? If it works, it works. I, I agree. Like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. It's one of those play styles that you don't see very often. It feels like a... Like you're visiting... I don't know. Caution. An amusement park. You know, you're, you're riding the new ride or something. I don't know. It's the best thing I can think of. Either way. It's all, it's all up and down. All that verticality, right? Yeah, true, actually. Yeah, it's, it's following Ray feels like a roller coaster ride. It's all the excitement. It is very exciting. It's fast, up and down. 
Well, it seems it's going to be up and down with the back and forth of the rounds, but Chuck finding one kill after another with his full dock. The free bullet spray does the job. Nothing the only man standing. Most likely not going to fight much more. Nope, ain't the case. Six straight, straightforward, no real issue. Now we get to the interesting part. Comfortable bonus round two. Oh, with all these weapons carry over into the next here. Anti-eco for the side of Czech Republic. Taking over a look at this alt economy as well. It hasn't been... I mean, nothing scaling up too soon. I am curious to see what Indonesia favor as far as investments there, especially when you see Gotten being the one holding that spike right now, putting that in it's towards the dark cover. Chaos. He ends up being the planter there, but regardless, again, this three stack towards the safe site, early rubble pressure, mm -hmm. not always committing to the actual push, but looking to just poke and prod. And there it goes. Instant Beagle makes a lot of sense with this race kind of player you have right here. As there's so many close spaces where the judge is actually favorable. A quick one. 20 seconds in, we instantly go for the retake, Ash. You do. You follow up on that turret oh, blazer nah. as one. You find a hell second, nah. a third around the corner, maybe. But he now switches to the rifle. It's bad luck, obviously. Instantly being killed once he has a rifle, and <laughs> has clear sign to me. But as Shouty tries, there is no chance. And this is the kind of thing we have to expect. 20 seconds in this spike, planted in the ground of the B-side. And this is where it just works so well. And this is what you mentioned, right? The stalling ability is big on the side of the Czech Republic. But you also got it ready. You got, you got to get it ready. You got to get it online. And this is the thing where they might struggle the most. That's the thing. Indonesia is very good at beating the timings on yeah. that. They'll just disrespect that talk to screen if you're leaning over towards the A or B side. And then you don't really have too many options because you're swarmed already with how quick they are to find that space. Shifting now towards C. Ooh. No. Hell nah. All right. Cover going out. Easy double kill. Swinging a little bit incorrectly, and boom. Seaside is basically free at this point. It, it, it would hypothetically mean that the Czech Republic is losing four rounds in a row, and I think we could get closer to this point of time that it's time for a timeout, you know? Because, you know, early on we said fighting fire with fire. We might need to get there. I mean, to be fair, though, this is an eco at yeah. the same time, right? So you have to keep that into consideration. You can do maybe as much damage possible both smokes dark covers now up here but again pushing these lanes here on indonesia they just press go i think it's one of the most crucial things to do though i, I really love how they play because yes. the thing also is with ray he hardly plays a lane in the after plan alone he's like grabbing a mate then swinging close and then fighting i i really enjoy that there's so well fought through that's the thing. I think that when you do see this kind of explosive play styles, whether it's within a jet player or a race player, they often go in solo. But it's like yeah. the spacing is very precise here for Indonesia, where they guarantee that they get those trades out regardless. And the timeout that you're talking about is just about to pend. Who could have guessed? <laughs> I mean, it is about time. The Czech Republic needs to find an answer to this fast play style. And here's the thing. You, you, you hardly see in this European space anyone playing like this. Yeah. I've, 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 I can't remember any VCT EMEA team or any VCL EMEA team even playing like this. You know what? First thing I think of is, yeah, Paper X. They're kind of cool. The uh, one or other Korean race player, they're kind of cool with this as well. But other than that, it's not really happening, is it? No, that's the thing. So it's like you're not even getting that opportunity within sprints to yeah. try and counter this kind of play style. But I think this is a pivotal swing around here for Czech Republic. Opportunity for Indonesia to try and take this lead over them. And right now it's been that back and forth economy situation for the Czechs. And you also have the lockdown and that showstopper to deal with here. And it's just so much harder to, I think, to find farm those alt orbs on the defender side it very much is i mean absolutely it's it's one of those things where you really got to be creative about it and 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 got to think of the right answer because this is not like a standard kind of answer it's not a multiple choice this is where you got to correct creative and so for the moment i mean correct me if i'm wrong the adaptation is minimal on the check side i mean similar style still not going for as aggressive as, he, as last time playing more for that stall utility uh, this is good. This, this could be pretty much it. If they would not deny the space, but it still goes he in. moves through. This man, what is fear? That, it, is th mad. that word does not exist in his vocabulary. They've entered the seaside through snake bite, through nano swarms, through an alarm. They just run. don't care. Spike planted. 
you just can't prepare yourselves for that. No. It goes against every rule in the book, right? Now Lockdown comes out, buying this time into the post plant for v 5 and they continue to push on through. Of course he does. I mean, Ray does not know what the S key actually means. Keeps on peeking even full blind. And it might be save a clock for the side of the Czech Republic because there's not much you can retrieve from it. Crossfire all around the side and the frags being found. Only one waiting back in the corner. And of course, final nail in the coffin from Ray. It is the lead for the Indonesian side after coming out of the first half 4 to 8. The big thing here for Czech Republic is how they're able to keep their cool in this matchup. It's yeah. really the tilt factor of a Ray's so player like Ray. The fact that you are just going in and sometimes it feels like you can't really do anything about it. And again, the fact that they're so aggressive in towards defender side spawn as well on the attack in their post plants, just guaranteeing that they can continue to close those gaps. And it's one thing that is really remarkable about this Indonesian team is like it literally feels they can run one program and it continues to run it. And then it might work or not, but in this case, it does not. Ray falls early. Gray close range yep. capability. We've seen it from Patagon. Instant abort. Not going further. Swap sides. They don't want to face up against that potential stall utility. I've got your trail. Seekers come out for the additional information as well. They know that one player is leaning over towards the C side, but or A side. Has it playing very far back, playing more for this retake situation, allowing them to get that free plant here. He you go want to for initial pressure. Snake bite though. Yeah, but he, he will never stall no. a plant with this. Besides, even whiffing it. Indonesia, a man down, but a capability yeah. to find more. And this is where Reyna comes in so handy. Find a frack, I'm out of here. And this is exactly what happened. No cushion, let's not find a thing. It's not going to be the easiest right here for the Indonesian side, as the man advantage exists so far away. Chut stands, but Gotz gets at least has a, and the fracks are found left, oh, the right, and center. They, they're just missing out on each other. Piotr. It's looking to find a little more, but no, it's so smart from Gotten to move around. The spike is in the right direction, and it might be over here for the Indonesian side. Most definitely it is. It is. That time is, that clock is ticking. There's no opportunity. They make it work. This is one of the craziest games I've seen in a while, and I love it. I think the ridiculous part too is like how many shorty sidearms we're seeing on top of that. Like even alongside the rifles, the choices made here for this squad, but this is where things start to get interested. Back one onto a buy here remaining. for the side of Czech Republic. They're down two rounds, have three ultimates to work for on the cusp of the other two as well. Could even get all five up into this round. But again, this is now where we've seen these adaptation. Previously, Hasa Patagod were playing towards C together, now splitting up and allowing for that stall to be spread a bit more across the map. Absolutely amazing. I mean, this is the thing, right? A lot of a lot of people will always be like, yeah, you cannot play Arena. It's not the best duelist. Well, whatever. If they make oh, it work, yeah. then they make it work. Timing! Great reposition as well, coming out from Shouty. Big advantage here. The fact that it was a soft clear on that double box as well that we saw coming out from the oh. team. Things are falling apart. And they're trying something different, you know? They're not trying to put the crowbar in the door and try to push through. It was a bit more well thought through from the Czech side. Seems like ads were found, at least for the moment. The two versus five. Not really much more we can expect from the Indonesian players. They're now split up as well. Valden alone. Spike in hand. It's been absolute no. Piotr. You're not allowed to play this weapon. It, it only belongs to Ray. He's the only one who knows how that one works. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds on the clock. Time is getting tight. This is good. I love it. I love this. They, they really understand that they need to pressure one of the extremities. They cannot just plan. And they make it a free versus two. All in favor of the Czech Republic, but it should have never gotten it far. No, it was initially a 5v2 situation. Now things getting dicey. Empress online here as well, continuing to pressure over towards Waterfall. This is so brilliant. They're always trying to rule out one extremity with a fight, because at the end of the day, you cannot just sit on side and hope that defuse won't work. They find the frags. This was once a five versus two, but it all comes crumbling for the Czech side. Hassan needs to check so many angles and positions, but it does not work out. Indonesia's in the driver's seat. 
and they're going super fast. No chance at all. Whatever they're trying to do to Czech Republic, it was a great start. It was a five versus yeah. two. This looked amazing. And suddenly, this was the play to make the difference. It's that lane control every single time. Once they have that space towards site, finding that additional information. What a way to do it. One away from match point here now for Indonesia. Likely to pick it up, all things considered, when you look at the economy here on the Czech team. Five ultimate still to work with. None of them expended in the last round. They didn't think they needed them. <laughs> yeah, they didn't feel We're not gonna need it, guys. We have a five versus two. What could go wrong? But what definitely could go wrong is that Sheriff in the hands of Maffin. But here it goes. Oh, nice dismiss. It's perfect. I mean, this is one of the region reasons why this agent is so good. But now, oh. talking about good, this is a good shotgun usage. Goes close, finds two. I have not seen those things too often before. I mean, it's perfect with the paranoia, right? You can't hear the blast pack coming over you. True. You have no idea that someone's landed behind. Hassan now in a pinch. Not committed to that. Last player standing. And it's, it's, it's pretty much a 12th round secured. The, the god needs to be in capital letters for Pata to really make this one work. And most likely, he doesn't have the status to go up that high. I would have expected a lot of things, but not that we're going that far still. No matter what, he's going to try to bounce around all the kills or utility that is waiting left, right, and center. But now he makes himself known. Finds Wait. One. Hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. We can breathe through. For a second, I thought the same, but we're in the 12 8. We're in the match point on map match number one. Point. Battle by breath. Really thought we were going down yeah. to like a 1v1 KJ versus KJ situation. At this match point, though, Indonesia have a lot of utility they're going to have to deal with on those executions in those post plant situations if they can find the spike on site. Curious. If we're going to actually see maybe an early Viper's Pit to cut off one of the choke points here coming out from the side of Czech Republic. Yeah. Seeing over towards Tree, though, the setup from Hassa, it makes it unlikely to come out. Even if, you know, the problem is that you have Ray on the race hold. Yeah. And covering that just, big space yeah. is not going to be easy. Seems like we're heading into a little break again. I, I, I could be wrong, but did the Czech Republic use their timeout in the first half? I'm not certain. They did. They did? All right. If you say so, I believe Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Second half. Second half. Okay. Well, tech pause anyway. I was... That was not even the right thing. Either yeah, they way, use around 16. Right. So, with that being said, you know, to keep the excitement up, we're heading into a tech pause. And this is where I love this game style we're seeing from Indonesia. You know, they're sticking to their strengths. They're sticking to what they are known for within their respective league, right? All of those players were actually in the VCL Indonesia, right? They were playing good level. And so, you know, they, they are known for those things. I, I was talking to uh, Dave, one of the Indonesian cast, shout out to him. He was saying there's one, the, the thing that is the weirdest about Ray is that he always has a low headshot rate. But he has that because he only plays shotgun. He's like 10% headshot rate. Yeah. That is bad. <laughs> but that is because he plays shotgun. Hey, he's 25 and 13. Five assists and on top of that, it's just the fact that you're closing that gap, closing the distance between you and your opponents. You okay. literally cannot get argue against it. No, no, no. There's, there's no counter argument at this point. It's also just the fact that you have the utility set up as well on the side of Indonesia where they are very consistent, whether it's going to be a guiding light coming out from Kush or the paranoia from Gotten as well. It's consistently set up in those situations. It does not go in dry and, you know, just lose out in some sort of like 1v1, 1v2. It's the chaos that is created by the entirety of this group. And this is the key round, right? Well, Four in a out. row. And not, and, and this, you know, the scary part is, thinking about it, the Czech Republic didn't win a single round this half. No. Not one. There's not even this light glimpse of home at the end of the tunnel. Nothing of that exists. They, Indonesia are closers on the attacking side of Lotus. There's no denying that. Trailblazers meeting the smoke. And that's actually going to be an initial back off yeah. now. You have that lurking presence coming out from Vald in the IGL on the side of Indonesia. This is the most non-Indonesian route they played this entire second half. Hey, you know that they took a timeout, or not a timeout, there was that tech pause. You can take that opportunity to try and slow things down, catch the other team off guard. Well, if it doesn't work, they can still go to the fast place either way. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good part about it. But here you have it, Viper ult being used. 
but Chad already finds Pata with going in that close. There's your oh shotgun. You don't need one accurate bullet. You just need one pallet hitting the right spot. And there it is. This is the three versus two. That is that one final retake that really needs to keep the check side alive. But it most likely is not happening, or is it? Gotten already falls, makes it a two versus two. But all those angles need to be checked. All the players playing offside. And Piotra no. blowing up in the air. It's a 13 to 8. And not a slight single issue in the second half from Indonesia. They showed that their play style is worth it. They were absolutely electric into that second half. Unstoppable for the Czech team, where you're looking at that very standard double controller composition here. You would have expected maybe a little bit more of that stall utility. But we also saw in that positioning that there wasn't so much of a priority on that. And again, the disrespect from Indonesia made it pointless as well. It really did. I mean, it, feel, it felt a bit like fear was maybe filling up the heads of the Czech Republic. You know, how do we actually play against it? And this is something you can come back with map two, where you're like, okay, you know what? Now we actually felt how it is to play against them. We still got our own map pick coming up next. I think it's also one of those comfort things where it's not your opponent's kind of decision. They haven't played Lotus so far in this tournament. Who knows if they even parked it? It's going to be really interesting, I think, especially. I mean, it's difficult. Now we're heading over towards Haven, right? Very comfort picks for both of these sides. Then find is the big question mark. Check, of course, being down on that, need to take the second one. But again, it's the playground of Indonesia as well. It is. It, it very much is. I mean, they have a fairly devised map pool. But you know what? We're going to find that out in a bit. Let's see what happened to map number one. Let's bring it over to the desk at the wonderful Ian Chambers. Very much there. Thank you, Ash. Indonesia just so incredible and full of confidence, full of swagger. Hey, we're getting trash talking, oh. we're getting mad players, we're getting everything you'd want from the start of a semi-final. I mean, after round 19 with that clutch, and they all stood up, there was two or three of them yeah. that stood up and started pointing at yep. the Czech players. And if I'm the Czech players, I was not taking that disrespect. Of course, they tried to fight fire with fire in a couple of those halves, but for me personally, that match was a big demonstration of Indonesia's fire. Yeah, like, speaking of respect, like, I, I think Czechs uh, in the second half showed too much respect to Indonesia. You think, that, yeah. That's the main reason they lost this. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. It's, it's hard not to. No, just, it is, it is. Just because, you, you know, once the check were on the back foot, I'm not laughing at them. I'm just laughing at the absolute sheer madness of a style of play that we haven't seen maybe, I was going to say ever, but at least for a very long time. I mean, as we heard, this is a paper rex esque sort of play style. This is something that sort of was born in APAC from FPS where the chaos, the meta, they couldn't yeah. keep up with the meta because you can't crack. I know because I played comp in APAC and sometimes you just kind of have to rely on your mechanical skill yeah. and hope for the best. So for them putting that on show, however, it was controlled chaos. And I really want to highlight that this was just not yeah, okay. swing and peek everything. The way Kush was able to then. combo a lot of his utility to enable. And of course we said Rain is a bit of a selfish, you know, agent. So I think overall it did work, it did enable them. And of course the judge, well, yeah, if you're gonna lay down the law anywhere, I think I want Ray to lay down the law. It feels like reckless at times, but like you said, yeah. it's reckless in the right way with the right intentions. Like yeah. the only slow round was the last round. Apart from that, we could possibly say like uh, the Indonesian team had no default understanding at all. <laughs> like <laughs> this we, is their map pick too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like we could have said that, but like that was something like a bulldozer effect, maybe. Ooh. What do you think? Snowball bulldozer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah I'm they smashed them now. They did. Let's talk about Ray in particular. This man needs to chill, Jess. Yeah, look, when I heard about some of the TikTok type of plays that he had going, I thought, you know, that's all well and good. It's a bit gimmicky and it might work here and there. And I was a little surprised they chose Lotus because for the firepower, it's more of a methodical map. So for me, I was surprised. And then I thought, no, he just wants to hide in corners with a judge. Yep. He knows how to play them perfectly. And speaking of a round upon which I want everyone to focus on, this was team deathmatch from yep. start to end. Carnage. Look how many players in the first 20 seconds wanted to take a fight. Unbelievable levels of firepower. And the man on your screen, the judge who's going to lay down the law, the gavel has hit the desk harder than I've ever seen before. That man. <laughs> I mean, Ray, he made it like chaotic. He made it look good. He, he made did. It, yeah. How mean, do you like, deal with him, bud? How do you stop him? What do you I, do? I mean, Long I mean, uh, like checks uh, try to do in default ways, but you have to have some like traps, yes. like setups uh, in, in, in terms of uh, like when the coach actually tried to handle the situation, I thought something would 
change, but um, it was unfortunate because Czechs actually chose wrong side to make a setup. That's that's something difficult to play against Indonesia because uh, they're picking A, they're winning from A, they're going B, they're winning B, they're going C. Yeah, you yeah. don't see that coming, but the brute force from Indonesia actually worked, yeah. which we discussed previously uh, be uh, before the game started. You, you remember that? So uh, Reina worked. Yeah. I mean, in the pistol round, he killed three, many choke points. He killed one and uh, got away with the utility, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's what Reyna is for. So I hope that we see more of those crazy agents and players. This, of course, is a university uh, tournament, a student tournament, and you've seen it all play out. And you might think, oh, how seriously we're taking this. We're starting to see it now. Yeah. You know, we've been wanting this, you know, next level, trash talking, in your face play style. And up and about, this is what lands are all about, right? You want to see the players standing up, giving it a bit of this. That's what we're here for. Yeah. It's so funny because when Czech played against Ireland and everyone was sitting quite calmly, it was the first time on the stage. So of course, everyone's a little bit nervous. Yeah. And the Indonesian boys, this is their first time on the stage. I really have to reiterate this because it's it crazy. looks like it's not. Yeah. And they are standing up and giving to them. If I'm Czech, I'm like, oh, I didn't have this yesterday. How do I deal with it today? Now the pressure is on them. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, I got to ask you a question. Oh. Do you remember the faces of Indonesian players at the end of the ho uh, first half? Yes. They were frustrated. Yeah. They were so down. And it all built up to the end of the game. And that round, the 19th round, oh my they all popped out and like... I mean, you just break it from there. and they get The to dictate, emotions. Yeah, they dictate the pace on attack. And I think that's where we'll see the Indonesians thrive. Well, on the flip, we need to talk about how we can see this Czech team <laughs> recover because you know we're absolutely crying out for a third map series that's all we want we just want to go all the way here and this could be a good opportunity to do it if the czech republic can pull it together for haven now let's not forget yeah. the second half of that map they didn't win a round so heads are down at the moment morale's not on the highest of levels jess they've got to somehow pick themselves off the ground and get back on on the server this map is their haven i know that is a really bad dad joke to throw into but this is actually <laughs> their safe haven this is one of the baths upon which they have the best chance of overcoming this. They've only lost to one team ever on this map. That was South Korea. And that was a really overtime. close overtime, overtime. right? Yes. So I'm saying they barely lost it, right? I'm going to put a little asterisk on that and just say they barely lost it. They have a complete win rate on it. They're comfortable. They have a really good comfort. It works for them. They're still running the breach there and they're doing really good things with it. So for me, mm -hmm. I think that if it starts off rocky for them, of course, we see uh, defense starting on uh, Indonesian side. That is not going to be good for no. Indonesia because they usually dictate the pace on attack. They'll do better there. Mm -hmm. But I hope the attacking side for Czech just goes really strong because it's their map. I mean, just like you said, this is their safe haven. Yeah. yeah. So they have to. Uh, I mean, not you with the dad jokes as well now. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm slowly pulling you guys in. I'm following you, you up. I'm yeah, following yeah, yeah. you guys up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catching up. Yeah. Slowly, but surely. No, you're there. You're already yeah, there. Right. <laughs> Vlad, as a, as a, you're putting your coach hat on for a moment uh -huh. here, how quickly can a team reset from getting just punished so hard on the second half there? They've only got a matter of minutes before they're right back in the action. I mean, Lotus and Haven, uh, really identical. Not exactly identical, but really close maps to each other uh, between three uh, you know, sides and uh, actual rotation levels. Uh, you have to win the pistol and take a deep breath, and that's it. Win the pistol. Yeah. <laughs> round because, by round, is that where we're going? Yeah, I mean... You know what You know what worries me is that there was a couple of times, and I did, I like to watch the players, their body language, the way that the IGL is giving comms. Yeah. And there was a couple of rounds where I'm watching Czech, and I could tell that the leadership is lacking purely because there's not enough time between how fast they're being pushed yeah. to give the communication about what to do, where they're going to be. Because even in a post plan, Indonesia didn't let them breathe, didn't mm -hmm. let them get comms, didn't let them yep. set up for a It could be overwhelming. Super overwhelming. I think there's about five seconds between when the plant goes down before Indonesia is pushing their spawn. Yeah. That is heavy, I mean, it's too much pressure, and there's not enough time. That's the details of brute force, isn't yeah. it? I mean, yeah. like, keep poking, keep disturbing. And look, we've been chatting to all the players that are involved with this before this tournament started on their goals, their ambitions, their <laughs> dreams. And the Czech Republic team here, they want to make sure that they progress to the grand final. There's a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to their goals, Jess. Yeah. You know, there are definitely players that want to make it to the big time. They do. Some others maybe a bit more relaxed lifestyle. 
Uh, I mean, Piotr says he just wants to live in the mountains, yeah. which is a fair goal. Honestly, I wanted to live on a lake, and I feel very happy with my life, you know? Just the lake vibes. He's got the mountain vibes. He needs to get good in and out there, though, right? I mean, he can run a cable, a fiber cable up the up the mountain. Easy. Yeah. Easy. But there are other players who want to make it big time, right? Yeah, I mean, you look at a... I, I have at least three of the other players who want to go to champions level. They yeah. want to go to the world champions and just really rock it. So there are some big ambitions for a lot of these players. Um, Shouty as well, who is looks like he's a quiet player, but he sets up his team so well. And I think actually we really have to, oh no, another dad joke, guys, ready? No. We have to shout out Shouty because, oh, yeah, we know I'm about to leave. Yeah, I know, you get off the desk, it's all right, I understand. Because he sets up Ray, and it's almost like he counterbalances the aggression and yeah. the brute force of Ray by being the calm, cool, collected. And he steps back, he gets the player down every time, and it just is a nice, it's a weirdly nice balance from Indonesia. Definitely, like, uh, like for Czech Republic, like Shadi you mentioned, uh, I mean, there has to be a balance because, like, overhype and overconfidence makes uh, sometimes uh, mistakes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Let's get into Agent Select. We're going to hear the next in this first semi final. You are watching the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 live with an audience here in Istanbul, Turkey. Agent Select is right here, Jess. All right, what have we got on the board? Are we seeing anything different? No. No. As per usual, I mean, Haven is one of those uh, maps where you're just going to get usual composition. Sometimes you get the mirror comps coming out. This time, of course, Ray, he is a Ray's main. I, he will never get off of it. There won't be any jets coming out of the left side of your screen at all. If you go to a map three, I do not expect that. We've already discussed it on the right side. Oh, I love this little addition. Oh, we are getting spoiled by production. Nice. Look at this. Map win rate, how many times they have played it, the rounds played, and how many times they picked the composition. They are stubborn, both of these teams, when it comes to Haven. Yeah, the, the detail about it is, like, awesome. Like, uh, this is, for sure, we have to keep an eye on this one. Uh, Czech team wins uh, more on attacking side. Of course. And uh, Indonesia wins more on defense side. Which is interesting for Haven. Yeah. And yeah. interesting given what we saw on map one as well, yeah, that they exactly. like to dictate the pace, and that's where they're able to get a lot of their win conditions. If they have such a high defensive win rate, they've mm -hmm. shown their prowess on attack on Lotus, mm -hmm. I would say, statistically, you and I could say that that's actually really, really bad for Czech moving into this next yeah, map. Yeah, that would be fun. Jess, give Czech me some good news about Czech. Come on, go on, go Vlad, on. what you go got? On. Some what good news, got? some positives for Czech. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> louder than that. Come on, Vlad. Let's do it, how Czechs! Do you, how do you do this? How do I say this in Turkish? Hadi Czechler, you pull up. <laughs> oh, wow, that was way better in Turkish than it was English. All right. Go on, Jess, your turn. Okay. What am I doing? Are you doing that? What are you just no, saying? No, I can't, I, can't okay. I can't speak Turkish. The only thing I can you say can is Sujuk Yamorta, oh. which I love, and Sinisavir. Oh, that's better. That's, yeah, that's better. cute. For our viewers at home. Vincent home? knows something as well. Yeah. What, what does Vincent know? He's, he, nah, he's saying, don't come to me. I don't want any of that, brother. Um, give me just like a welcome or something that we can teach the audience. What yeah. have we got? Uh, hey, Okay, maybe a little easier. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, welcome. Yeah. Happiness, hoş geldiniz. Happiness, hoş geldiniz. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. You don't see oh, he does not hoş think Hoş geldiniz. Hoş geldiniz. Ah, yeah. Teşekkürler. 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 I've forgotten already. Okay. All right, we have got a chair issue, which we are working on uh, at the moment. You know what? You know what happened? The what? moment the Indonesian boys stood up round 19 and yeah. they started giving it to him, the chair just buckled from underneath and flew <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> You know, don't blame you know what? I've been doing this for a while. I've never had a chair issue. I love Really? That. Yeah, but the, the thing is, it's we easy. We had a desk issue in Champions. Was it Champions or one of the... It actually might have been in Reykjavik. Oh, yeah. One of the, and I just stood there and I thought, a desk issue? A desk but yeah, they issue. went hard. They went too hard. The swipe, the flick. Oh, got it. it. Boom. No, is it, and it's important, right? Glad you got to make sure you're comfy while you're rocking it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> I'm comfy right there. <laughs> but oh, yeah? lands, uh, I mean, offline events are never as comfy as your home you know never never but there's so much more rewarding so much more satisfying we've got a live crowd what's really cool is as well you know we started off with 34 teams from 34 different countries and a lot of them of course got knocked out whether it be in the groups whether it be in the round of 16 the quarterfinals and they've all of course stuck around and they're standing by supporting they're making a lot of noise here on the floor some really good lads who've taken part here I mean, I saw some of the Aussie boys come over and they're like, yo, what's up, Jess? Good to see you for another year. And I'm like, yeah. And we've got some Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi in the yep. audience going. So it's good to see a lot of the national pride coming out. Yes or no? Vlad, three maps. Three maps. You saying it? Yeah, two maps. I'd say no, it's just two maps. 
All right, oh, okay. let's okay. find out. Let's see about that. Can we finally get a three-map series here on the main stage, or will we see Indonesia book the spot in the grand final? Zesh, Ash, lead us through it. Talk that you that, Ian, and now it is about time to witness if it's going to be a swift 2-0, or if we're heading onto a brand new battlefield for both of those teams. And to be honest, Haven is pretty much a safe bet for the Czech side so far. I don't think it's going to be a swift 2-0. I think nah. that if it's a 2-0, it's going the distance all the way to overtime here on Haven, undeniably. So I think Pyotr, we didn't see him be able to kind of warm up as much there in that first map, where I have higher expectations going into this next one. But I'm keeping my eyes also on the fact that for Czech Republic, we're going to have to work a bit on that spacing, I think, as well, as far as being able to play together. And, and before we go there, I, I think we need to give a, a quick rundown on how the Czech side plays the attack side of yeah. Haven, because this is their home ground. It really is. So it's going to be interesting to see how that does pan out. Red Bull gives you wings. When it comes down to their attacking side, they like to be a bit more aggressive, especially into those post planes. Once they have that site control, they have that tendency to push one of those lanes, similar to what we saw on Lotus coming up from Indonesia. It's much of those slow kind of things. Yes. Prodding, moving. Is that clear? Ah, now let's move to the other side and we go back. So it's going to be slow. You know, it's going to be a bit chill, I would say, right here from the attacking side of the Czech party. First smoke popping over A long. Instant dedication from the Indonesian side to make that rotation work over to A. Alrighty. Smoke placed down here, allowing Kush to tuck back in. Shock Dirt to do a little bit it's of that chip one. damage here on the pistol. Shouty gets a lot of damage. First frag to be found. Kush the entry on Piotr, and that means the entry frag is already dead. But two players backside fully flashed. This is not very comfortable. He still lives. I don't know how Ray does it, but he's flying through the air. And it seems like at the moment, back off, cancel, not swapping over to that A side. But again, Indonesia is instantly reading this. They're like, okay, you know what? They're not following up. We're going to leave A entirely. We got the information towards mid as well. Just solo here for Chud. Might get caught out. Three is he players walking out. He is! But that doesn't really help him at all. To be fair, you have two players fairly low on HP. Maffin is not looking much better. And now the free frags need to come in, but Hasa got him. Valdin on the breach, gotta be the hero for the Indonesian side. Spotted, known, and on the map for the attackers, but it's done, it's over, and the pistol goes in favor of the Czech Republic. And a bit of a, a bit too much of a scramble that we had at the beginning on A, right? You you don't want to end up in this weird spot with the player's backside. They found the entry, they found good chip damage at the start, but that was pretty much it then. Yeah. This was there's a nice pivot away there from Czech again, like you mentioned, that slower control play. They kind of get a feel for how Indonesia like to set up. I think the interesting part is also going to be, okay, now they, if they haven't watched any VODs, they do now know that that dark cover gets thrown out in a funky position there towards short to allow you to play inside and around that smoke. And now on to the anti-eco here in, on the side of Czech Republic. A lot of noise just being made straight up here towards A-Long. It's super straight, right? It, it seems to be absolutely clear what's about to happen. Stunning the lane, flashing graffiti. They're, they're, this is their home at this point in time. The A side being, I think, the most attacked spot, if I'm not totally wrong, from the Czech side overall in the previous game. But the nade is good. The damage, though, is better on the Czech side. And there's no coming through the choke point. And Anisha most likely will lose the second round. Enemy kill. Yeah, nice crossfire is being set up here. It's going to be mostly, I think, if you're looking towards Indonesia, trying to put a bit more damage on the board here. Deny a strong bonus in round three. Yeah, that one is most definitely over. Still trying to find a frag left, right, and center. At least two. You know, this is kind of nice. A bit of damage dealt, but not too crucial. I think, I think we really need to highlight at this point in time that Indonesia particularly on defense, we saw it in Lotus, they just don't seem to be the strongest overall. No, defense is uh, definitely not where they get to control that pacing, right? That's the big difference maker, I think, here for this squad. Another change, I think, or difference, if you will, between these two teams is the way that Czech Republic will actually protocol more for ultimate control and being able to rack up those points. See that being prioritized here within the Rolling Thunder of Maffin. Something that they did previously for the Sky Ults on the 
other map there on Lotus, but now already up in towards Garage. Pyotr with the Judge. Stunned out, unable to make that entry quite yet. And still delaying it for long enough for the moment. This is not going to be easy to take. And Gotten, he escapes from all the danger that How? was waiting out of Garage and Cut and Co. They're finding one left, right, and center. Bringing home the first. An instantly good adaptation. An instantly good way to play it. And the funny part is, it feels like Jotter was pretty much trying to take a page out of the book yeah. of Ray. Being like, again, I gotta try to judge. But definitely not as successful. I, I honestly believe you cannot play judge if you constantly play it because you have no awareness of how like the range really works perfectly. Yeah, it's that comfort, right? It's like muscle memory at that point there for Ray. Just having that just general knowledge when it comes down to that weapon but now we head into this next round fourth round on the board means that everybody's all forced up and first blood Piotr already shut down not good for Piotr and again a perfect place to be for a judge in the meantime long a bit of left right and center fighting Ray's like hey you want to fight me are you sure about that no nope. ain't gonna happen Shouty is down again and the Lurk, the splitting up, they're trying to get elaborated A control. Doesn't help at all when they're just taking those fights, and this is the thing. I mean, sure, there's, a, there, there's fought within the fights that Indonesia takes, but it's not like they're really afraid of just to swing an angle. No, they aren't. It's a big difference here. Off angle here, forgotten, looking for something towards the garage, but it's just the pressure. You're gonna break that alarm bot. They get spotted out, getting a little greedy for that gun as well. Close? Hello? Enemy oh, remaining. Nobody's home. Seems like that one is most definitely tying things up. Indonesia. Okay, I, I like that they consistently take fights, but sometimes they overextend a little. Mm. Like, okay, Pata has 50, pardon, 45 HP. Do I feel 100% comfortable that this is gonna work? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I give it 90%. You've got still one nano swarm on that default side, the left side of B, running down on the clock as well here. 15 seconds. Not a lot of time to work with. There's not much wiggle room for him at no. this point. Ten seconds. Gotta, gotta left. get that down quite swift. Okay, backside is clear. Revealing Interesting enemy. arrow, but why would you respect that? Valden asks. No chance at all. And that brings us to the two versus two. Part two. Two, two, two. Difficulty with the timing there, because it was just waiting for the refresh on that dart, but at that point, I think you have to start walking up a little bit earlier now. I mean, I think tough too, because even on Lotus, Patagod was put in situations where he's mostly playing cleanup as well. I mean, he brought himself to the situation by being this low on time. Sure, I mean, there's a lot of factors that didn't make it that comfortable, but you just can't try to make it work. You gotta make a move at this point. Mm -hmm. And so we're back down to bad money with the check sign. What started great, and with a decent pistol, it's turning out to be very uncomfortable after five rounds in. Kind of that slower, controlled pace of play. Leaning over towards mid. A lot of delay available here, though, for B. The problem is, though, if they actually take the garage play, it's going to be com very uncomfortable. Either way, Piotr moves through the judge in hand. He definitely wants to pick that fight, but he's not entirely sure about it. Judge gets at least one, but they're trading back on site. And with the nade coming in, Close range fight search didn't find anything. It is the Indonesian side with a man advantage. And it all became a little slower right here. No, no way! Oh no, this my movement God. is insane! What he does is just absolutely incredible. Just moves in as swift as I've never seen a race player before. And what looked like squeaky bum time turns out to be absolutely <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> I think, too, you see the way that Indonesia adapts, knowing that Piotr had that judge in hand. They play with the judge player. They know that they've got to back all the way up. They pull back in towards defender side spawn just to deny that space and make the gap bigger. You know? Playing, uh, playing it straight is literally bro. Yeah. It's like, what is this? Nobody does that. Hardly anyone does that. I'm sure, there's like one niche YouTuber who does that, but... <laughs> It's like an average Jonas thing with Ray's. That was flights. My, well, either way, Ray starts good. Finds his counterpart in firm of Piotr. Oh, oh he's won. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Now that's your smokes down as well. No cover available for any of these executions. No longer on the side. A check and already all pushed up. They are all corralled here in A lobby. Knock, knock. He's there. It's shut finding two. 
And as he, as he knocks on the back door, there's not a single chance. And this is so great about this team. All free space is taken, you know? Every, every capability of having free space, yeah. I mean, we're gonna take it. You see it right here. The Killjoy could also say, you know what, I'm staying in middle. Maybe they're backing off. Uh-oh, ain't happening. Separate opportunity here on the side of Indonesia. Something that they had talked about before as well, just the fact that they are very familiar with their timings on this map, very comfortable here, feeling at home on Haven. And it, that's even with the fact that you're looking over at the statistics here for the side of Czech Republic, where they technically have more reps on it on paper here during the Red Bull Campus Clutch Finals. Yeah, I, I mean, we're even tracking against them on that map, they were not that bad. So at this point in time, you, you would believe that there's going to be a solution to it. But again, hardly any team plays like that. It just feels uncomfortable when it's your own pick. You're starting like that, you find the pistol, and suddenly you lose four in a row. It's not too nice of a feeling for sure. And this is where, again, from the Lotus game, you can really hope, okay, we got a solution. Like, this is how we play differently here and there. Mm -hmm. So let's see if that's going to be the case. That was also with the fact that Indonesia were struggling a bit more on the defensive side on Lotus as well. The fact that they yeah. started down four to eight, much more comfortable there on the side of Czech Republic on their attacking side. But again, the rotations are very different between these two maps as well. You can go for much quicker rotations there on Lotus where Haven, not so much that opportunity as far as being able to connect between all of the sites in that kind of sense. Well, it's time to swap things up because besides the slower plays we saw for, from the Czech side, in the previous games, they also had those swift, super fast, executed B and C executes, right? You really got to make those work. But they always feel ready. Chud just left, garage set, whatever, picks up the player and catches him in an off angle. It's a man advantage move in the first 10 seconds. And attacking now through garage over on C might be a bit complicated. Nice aftershock to push caught, gotten out of his default positioning that we see and there towards back it. platform. But no, it's just this pivot back over towards this B site. And this is the thing, they have a very swift rotation behavior. And Patagot finds no timing for what he's doing. It's, it's even Chud who's still checking that position. He's still awaiting him just behind Garage. And this is how focused this team is regarding what lanes to cover, what positions are left over. Indonesia is playing brilliant Valorant at this point. And when they are in that man advantage as well, they just play more for that collapse kind of protocol. They will swarm all around you, give no avenues for escape. But I think that was a big point that you made there, the fact that it is swift rotations, but when you are also looking to pivot that quickly, again, you don't really buy that time or those more lurky plays that the yep. other parts of your team are maybe setting up for. Yeah, true. And sad for the Czech Republic. But I mean, a quick look on the on the olds tells us th there's 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 some hope, especially considering where they're starting Get right now. Yeah, I mean you have three ultimates to work with here this already. Blade Storm up here for Piotr alongside. That nobody's home, anticipating that Rolling Thunder coming out for C. I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm impressed. They instantly anti-position themselves look with that right. Killjoy ult. Ray's already up in window. So much space to be had right now by Indonesia. They have all the information they want. It's, it's literally ridiculous. I mean, the Czech Republic is checking that. Okay. And now with the boom bot being heard, there's a lot of pressure on the side of the Czech Republic. They gotta make that C execute work. And as they're standing in front of the gates, the walls are going down. There's no trespassing allowed. This is at least the kind of mission that Indonesia is on, but they're backing off again. And it seems like they trapped themselves. They put themselves in a cage. I mean, Ray's gonna find this early contact initially. Uh, Revealed though now, looking to still repeek. He's causing so much pressure. I, I mean, I love this about them. Kush with a very unusual whiff, and now with 30 seconds left on the clock, Ray gotta be the savior. Dodges that 30 seconds reach at the moment, but no frag to be found. Fault line still available here though for Valden. Then you've got that uh -oh. from the shadows here, two players run. on a site. They can still stop it. They know they need to get that plan going. He can't find a frag though. It is Gotten who secures it at the moment, but Chud trying left. to dodge the ult does so. It's a one Five versus 20. two. This is absolutely doable for the Killjoy player on the Indonesian side. But so many angles to check. Drop it down. Shouty should instantly find him. This is a bit of a bait and switch, swinging at the right time. But he got to make a move. The, the clock is still ticking fine. There's no too much pressure on him. 
And Naffin tries to find the right kind of positioning. Really got to play it around his maid. Wants to bait him out at the right time, but there is no chance with this setup. And the third one is secure for the Czech Republic. Going back to the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, where it suddenly starts working. But so many yeah. old events. Nice disciplined post plant positioning. They're not over peaking in that 1v2 situation. But like you said, it required everything under the kitchen sink to actually find that opportunity. And even some slip ups on the side of Indonesia to be over peaking there over towards mid instead of looking to reposition. Now, going back to a much more default kind of sense here on the side of Czech Republic. Spread out. Spike leaning towards the seaside for now. Sounds really weird, but I don't want the Czech Republic to default. Cover going out. I want them to walk in a big ball Finding. back and forth, because it seems like to bait out the most utility, find the most and the best opportunities to find those entries. I think at this point, though, they feel like that's the response to deny that early map control from the defenders with how aggressive they've been pushing out towards these lanes. But even Indonesia have made that adjustment, not going for it this time around, knowing that Czech Republic should already have that chip on their shoulder. No ruling out, though, from the Indonesian side. And it could be just a matter of timing until Kush, in like three, four seconds, gets his info dart as well. There we go. Spots at least one. And here's one crucial information. The Jet is usually not your lurk player in yeah. this game. So you can pretty clearly give that information away. The rotation doesn't look like it, though. No, still just a contact play up. You leave one player over towards short to clear things out. Everyone. Here. Else looking for that set piece with a flash over towards that default box to clear out backside. Smoke's laid down. Oh, this is a good nade. They're isolating players right now. There's so much utility left on this site. And as it's getting very chaotic with 20 seconds, there is the dedication of the Czech Republic to get over on that site. Find the entry. And my goodness, Ray still jumps into that pool. It's going down though. That is one hell of a drop. For a second it looked possible, but that is a bit too much to ask for. And, and this is where maybe the kind of timeout might come in, because those are minor mistakes. Those are fixable mistakes, but you don't really want your opponent to get too comfortable again on that beginning half. No, definitely not. Nice little bait tap there on that spike. Heading into the next though. He gets one. He gets one. It's, it's pretty crazy, the fact that it still works out. He had a Vandal in hand there for that shot as well, which is absolutely ridiculous, but... Hunter's Fury for both teams now. Indonesia is actually the one taking a time out after two rounds found by Czech Republic. The fact that they're looking to stall this momentum as early as possible. They're coming closer to tying this up, and this is a bit dangerous considering that I, the thing that I don't like about Indonesia in the last two rounds is basically that they're they're ruling out space and allowing your opponent to be very comfortable on side is pretty much where it feels like the retic protocols are just not the best. And that is fine, you know, it's not your play style necessarily to play it like that. So rather stick to what you're good at. And this, those are those first strikes pre-plant. Yeah, it's the fact that you're looking for that early shutout just completely denying that opportunity. It's been zero defuses needed here thus far for Indonesia on their successful rounds, but you said that you didn't like that initial default in coming out from Czech Republic, but it, it served them well. They ended up death balling together towards the end. A compromise I can deal with. <laughs> but most importantly, it feels like one of the few times we finally see Ray on an operator. Definitely changing style up from a Josh to an operator. That is... Unusual, to say the least. Contact style, up B. That seems to be the goal for the moment for the Czech Republic until they meet their first. I think maybe a little question mark had been spotted there by Valden. Still not knowing that it's going to be three players lurking outside this B main choke. Very clear, the opponent has been found. Oh. Good entry, even finds the second. Support player, no matter. Popping heads any day of the week and bringing the team closer to the sixth. Padan Hassa. Time for them to do the absolutely undoable. Look at the turret positioning. You had Indonesia, Chud walked all the way up towards Zilong, puts out the turret, now yep. denies that space, grants that information to the team as well. More passive yeah. positioning in that kind of sense. This is good. Tries to push through, and nobody does this play like that, but Gotham does. Bring in the sixth home for Indonesia. Timeout seems to be worth it. Absolutely. A flawless round there. 
And you know what? I, I love the matter of fact that they actually went to their weakness, which is like players entering the A space. Get the yeah. operator A short. It wasn't even the tool that they needed this round, but they really found the solution. I mean, they find that extremity control one way or another, right? You have yeah. that long vision towards A lobby, then you have that turret on the other side of the map. You're all, again, all corralled over towards mid. Makes the reads very easy there for Indonesia. Czech Republic, they've done well to make their own adjustments as well. Yeah. With that ult, they at least tried to make it work, but a combination. Hold on. Oh. That was perfect from Valden. He saw that the player was coming up heaven, but uh-oh, nobody can help him. Swaps over, wants to make it work, but no, I think this man should be pretty much dead. Patagot gives him a bit of his own medicine, and they've entered the site. Flash not ideal, only oh, to make the difference. And he seemingly a. does so. The thing, particularly with Pata, he needs to go to a rifle, because one shot, one kill, you can only make it work that way. One shot dart available still, though. Switch swaps over the classic, knows how low shot is. You can't fumble this drop. You cannot fumble this drop. He tries to fake it once with the shot, and that is a nice idea. No! But <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Hold on. There's Hold no parachutes the in this game. <laughs> what are you doing, Chad? From all the rounds? Genuine caster curse coming out for me right there. I said, you can't fumble this drop. You go way too wide. You miss that box, and it's Jover. I mean, with, with fumble this drop, I thought, like, okay, maybe, you know, going too wide, not going under heaven, but fumbling like this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you love to see the vibes, you know? That's the perfect time to do some shit talking. I agree. Exactly. One round away from tying things up before we swap right sides, too. Standing ahead. I can't believe that happened. Honestly, that, uh, staying back in the present, the opportunity for the seventh tonight by Gravity. Thanks, Isaac Newton. And so, it's it, it at least going to be a better half already than the first game was. Let's put it like that, right? Yeah. Indonesia was not looking good when they were defending. Definitely improved in that department. But again, this is the home ground of the Czech Republic. Your opponent is allowed to choose on your map pick where you where they want to start. So it makes things a bit different. It really does. Have to put a pause on what we expect to happen, though, once we swap sides. Going to focus back in on the round in coming. Walden does have a Rolling Thunder to work with into the retake. One away from the Showstopper here for Ray as well. Already procced and ready, anticipating the denial of that initial sight. A blind oh Hunter's Fury coming out connects with two. That looked like he nearly had Pata. But they're trying to throw all the ults into this Ash. It's a set piece towards A. Uh oh, full stun. It doesn't look good, but here comes the answer. Piotr down. A side play the night for the moment. But Kush is definitely not in the safe spot, and pushing out of the smoke might not be the answer. But he still gets one. Can't connect to the second. And Gotten playing around the smoke might have a good time. That plan cannot go through like this. Nobody spots the bullet tracers off the fence in 10 seconds to make it work. It is Chud again, and this time there's no possibility that gravity is gonna mess him up. But you gotta check all the angles. Under heaven, one. Graffiti, one. Definitely hurt the TP. Expects it to be up, but the shots are not connecting to the head. He makes it work! And the seventh is on the board for Indonesia. No risk taken there. Retaking in towards CT. Insane coming out here from the side of Indonesia. But man, things definitely got dicey. Czech Republic have done well to adjust to use Can't believe it. that short smoke actually to their own advantage as well. But as we swap sides now, Czech Republic, this squad very much so favors the heavy A lobby control on the defense. So look for those long lines of sight. And it, on this initial stack here towards the pistol, they have four players looking to push out. Yeah. The one thing we've seen from the game so far is that the defensive side of the Czech Republic, let's say, is worrisome, right? They, I think they, they finish a little bit under 50% success rate on death. That's not what you want. And particularly, I think particularly against this team, this is not what you want. You see a lot of retake protocols coming out from Czech Republic on their defense as well. Most of their rounds one are in the post plant, getting that defuse after the fact. But again, Indonesia is that squad that will push those lanes, deny that opportunity to even flood back into sight. And they're on site. It's absolutely free. Retake protocols, Avi just mentioned, most likely coming in right now. Trying to retake Garage seems to be the first goal of the Indonesian side. Destroyed. 
Good garage control. Regains here. No information for his window quite yet, though. He's waiting for a timing, I believe, and there he gets it. Ray wants a little too much, oh. and there it goes. No. Ghost is hitting, but Valden with the right click in the right position. Three opponents await him, and he knows about a few steps down. Shoots a little slower. Nine bullets left in the Mac, and one shot got to connect at some point. It ain't happening. Nice retake coming out there from Czech. No flawless half this time around. That one. And this is the kind of start you want, right? After really being absolutely down a drain when you were defending on Lotus, this is kind of a sign of life in my eyes. Just being able to kind of reset in that situation, regroup as a team. <laughs> Heading into the next round. <laughs> I mean, you love seeing it, the wait, high hype, right? Did he say Bobe? I can't believe it. He said that. All right, either way, no, no, for, forget it. It's a, it's a great meme. Sorry, it's a European meme. <laughs> Go on. I was. Uh, I wish I knew. You'll have to inform me later. Sure. The, the OGs know. The OGs know the bobber. Either way, stepping away from that for a moment. Ty seems to be quite close after a, a good start yeah. over in that first half from, from Indonesia. Ray is. <laughs> oh my I saw god. It. I saw it. <laughs> but how, how did it only deal that little damage? On the target. Just the bullet spread, unfortunately. Wrong shorty he equipped. Bomb grenade out. Alarm buff down. Nice. Bomb Destruction of the out. utility here, forcing out that nano swarm to again be used. Now, KJ utility completely nullified here on the I side of Hasa. Shot got a hit. Got her. <laughs> Pinky got a one on the body of Valden. Now moving further. He can't connect on a chud. That A side is pretty, pretty empty at this point, and he rather leaves. Oh. Reasonable decision. Good one through the smoke. And this brings us down to a three versus four. The retake should be quite easy for the Czech side, but we know that the Indonesians can't perform miracles. As they are trying to enter. Now that he waits it out, two? finds two. No. This is looking good. It's only Hassan to make it work, but Garten saves the day. That glimpse of momentum, the chance to get the ball rolling, the night, absolutely the night. The fact that you have this risky round coming out here for the side of Indonesia. Oh man, Valden's so low there as well. It was the cloud burst that gave him just enough cover. I thought the ruse was all over though with that initial shot miss, but nobody turns. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's like, he's like, <laughs> I think he's like to t calm him down. <laughs> and that is such a super early tactical timeout. We are two rounds in, and I think this is right now literally to cool their heads. Yeah. Because, you know, you are already down a map. You win the pistol. Hey, Ray, you know what? We can tie it up. And the night. And this is where it really becomes problematic in my eyes. So you really need to calm your players down at this point. Just that reset for the mental the struggle within economy that we saw in map number one there on Lotus. And man, it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up panning out right now. Taking a look over towards that alt economy as well. Looking to scale up here. And Isim will make some noise thanks to good old Stevie. Real OG, but stepping away from that for a second. This trophy's on the line. Golden ticket to the finals. That is what they are fighting for at the moment. And it's looking good for Indonesia, I'll tell you that. It really is. Single elimination bracket makes everything that much dicier. Full stack. Nearly four players on the side of Czech Republic looking for a trap play. And of course. No, well, hold on. This is a Destralis kind of play. Trying to push through, denied in its own. I like the idea, don't get me wrong, but there's not much that there is they're able to do at this point. Pushing it like this gives them free kills. Come on, Haza. Just wanted to go for the knife. Sad, man. Nine to six, good start. I like the idea a lot, honestly, to go for that four player kind of a strawless play. Mm. is a good one, is a good one, but three round advantage. This is like literally the turnaround round. I think, too, when you're facing up against Ray on that judge on top of that, hmm. trying to trap play that is a little bit more difficult when you're just getting that close contact immediately. Out of charges. And you see, out. more of a default spread coming up from Indonesia, something that you don't get much of a preview of. You see pings going out here for the side of Czech Republic, though, again, looking for that A lobby control initially. Yeah. 
And they're instantly gonna rule it out. They wanna fight that space, maybe allow them early rotation. The thing is, with the speed that Indonesia plays, your players are never gonna be in the right position once you rule out A. Except they're gonna delay it. Ain't happening. Enter the side, spikes going down, not a single answer from the Czech Republic, forced into a retake. Again, it's those consistent retake protocols. They go for that conditioning, finding that A lobby space, otherwise they look to regroup. Trying to find this. Uh oh, control though. Ah, too aggressive. And denying it again. This, this is absolutely brilliant. Using every single utility no. they have. And they combine the old with the omen. Getting on the other side of the map. What a godlike play from Garden. And it absolutely seems ridiculous. It feels like this is getting close to over. There's pretty much a dream alive for the Czech side. But hold on. Is that possible? That shouldn't be possible, right? No, that is impossible. Bringing it home to the 10 to 6, double digits achieved. It's it's so it's it's absolutely amazing what, what the Indonesian side is playing. The, the TPs that gotten has on, gotten away with yeah. here on Haven in particular have been ridiculous. Both on the defense now into the attack. It, it's just absolutely mad. It's the amount of chaos that this squad is just able to move in on, and they don't rely so much on that conditioning kind of play, which Czech Republic much more used to playing up against. Right. Well, that was a swift one to be such a crucial one. Shouty might not be, not be expected if a good beta switch happens. Yeah, indeed. Seems like it. Shouty finds one. Piotr nice. joins the party. Maybe time to abort the play. Maybe time to cancel. As Mavkin still tries to go through the man's dead. He just ran in his own demise. We're tied up within 20 seconds, four players dead. Take flight. Different look at the trap play in that situation. A slightly different setup. Oh, missing out on the owl drone, though. Reveals. Shouting in the corner now. Pivoting over towards this B site. It's going to be Hasa alone. Lockdown available. Unlikely to use it, though, in Tunico. Chow was baiting to go <laughs> into that smoke. Thankful for him, didn't do so. From a utility perspective, you mentioned has is like he's like the key piece. He's like he's like the one who can now make the difference. And it's it's one of the questions if you actually use it now or do you rather wait for the buy? It's getting tight. It's getting close. The rope around the neck of the Czech Republic oh. is getting more and more uncomfortable. And as Shouty dies, at least one time it is Chud who saves the day for the red and white. Yeah, it's like this is like the unhappy face, uh, understandable face. It's like nothing's working. I would be tilted though if got if I, that was me and gotten did not go down, which he didn't. Two HP left, revealed by the recon as well. It's just you can't do enough with the stinger. Match point on the line here. And the last buy to come out, Czech Republic. This is the difference maker. You've got the op in hand here for Peter. Looking for an early mid peak instead though, towards B. There's a lot of well timed utility as well from Kush and his teammates. I really got to give it to them. Instantly entering a short. No rotation is going to come in time. All right, that, that was overzealous. Like that was a little bit too much from Ray, but most likely, no, 100%, that side control is gathered. Secured here. W is like, uh, did you check if they have an S key on the keyboard? Oh, <laughs> I didn't see it. They've just completely removed them overall. Understandable. We take situation out. You have a flank impending mm -hmm. coming out from Shouty. Gotta buy time for that. And Shouty maybe tried to sell them a little bit, and he's just an information guy. Piotr is being denied in his vision. Not the best smoke, to be honest. And they still find one after another. With the flash coming over short now, you know that the lurk is active. And with the stun as well, they're holding them up. And they're holding them up. And the Czech Republic is not in sync. And it's the 12 secured. Indonesia's innovative play style is just paying off. The innovation they bring to the table, especially in this tournament, not playing like any other team. Difficult thing too there. I believe Hasa was actually the first one to fall in that last round, which took the lockdown completely out of the equation. When you are fighting to deny that match point now, able to go head to head with Chud's lockdown of his own. There's a Hunter's Fury to deny coming out from Pedagod. The back over towards this mid play. The way that Indonesia just like to move around the map makes it so hard to read. Oh, God. That is rough to watch. It's a Hail Mary at this point. It literally is. Pato really tries to dot it. <laughs> like, raise. Did you up. 
He's ending up with the ray beams, but the spike still, in the meantime, got down to the B side. And all the utility, all the abilities, it's just one route that could make the difference for the Czech Republic. But in the meantime, absolute control from Indonesia. Pada is the one that can make the difference, but it seems like a golden ticket lays in the hands of Indonesia. We got our first finalist! What a way to do it. Explosivity across the board coming out from Indonesia. They wrap up Haven 13 to 6. It is insane what this squad is able to pull off. The smile from Ray. I don't know if this man actually knows what pressure is. It literally doesn't feel like it. <laughs> he just plays. He's just playing a video game. It's not even esports team. Absolute ridiculous performance from their side. You know, we're coming in and it's it's a fairly even first half. They, the Czech Republic takes the pistol and we're like, yeah, you know what, this could be tight. None of that happened. No freedom, no peace, no room to breathe. If I would be that second, you know, team that is advancing against them, I wouldn't be too happy that those are my opponents. No, and the thing is, I mean, Ray is not even the star stud player in that last matchup there. It was the entire rest of the squad, but the utility usage was absolutely sublime there on Haven. I think gotten wrapped up with 17 assists, 11 there for Valden. It was just consistent communication, great spacing yeah. coming out from the squad. It's, it's amazing. I mean, the spacing is literally the thing, right? Yeah. It's what kind of space they can create within the first 20 seconds. I, I didn't see many teams that are so fast on side within this competition. They're like one of those. And having an answer for that is not easy, but most of your opponents are not playing this way. The Czech Republic felt it, and another team might just also be experiencing something really uncomfortable within this game. But for the moment, this is the guy. This is him. <laughs> this is this is a him moment. He is him. He is him. He's got his Red Bull in hand. Yeah, I mean, you see he's got the wings in the server as well. It is Literally, just, yeah. It's insane. I can't wait to see what they're able to pull up in Grand Finals. We'll have to see who they end up facing up against a little bit later. But man, what a way to do it. it, just, it, it, it I'm speechless, it, to be honest. Every right to be speechless because this type of play, this type of movement, this type of speed, not everyday business. And the Czech Republic did their best. It's not like yeah. they were any kind of weak opposition. No. Not feeble at all. They were the most opposite. A well-structured, well-fought-for team with good experience within this game. Mm -hmm. And they still didn't have an answer. I mean, I think the difference is, is that you see the controlled, composed play style of Czech Republic, but then you consider, okay, the way Indonesia plays is going to completely deny any sense of timings that you're going to end up having here on these maps, your expectations for these rotations, and when that explosivity will come through, and it throws you completely off your internal clock. It, it really does, right? And, and from a composition perspective, they are trying new things. This team overall tries new things. But you know what? Let's hear a few new things, and let's throw it down to the interview. that we've seen on stream at least, so. Holy cow, first off, I mean, you've just made it to top two Red Bull Campus Clutch. One step closer to taking back that home, that trophy. How you feeling? Yeah, as expected, we got top two. Before we came here, we already say like, minimal, we go to final. Hey, well, you guys are delivering. You made it to final. So congratulations, that's amazing. Thank you. First off, I gotta ask, what do you think of the judge? Yeah, it's kind of bad now after the nerf, but yeah, you still can use it. Yeah, I mean, but Riot, please don't nerf it again. I mean, you definitely showed you could use it for sure, even with the nerfs and everything. Okay, we got another game coming up after this, a best of three. It's gonna be between Peru and France. If you had your pick, who would you want to go up against in the grand finals? Hmm. Uh, I think. France. There we go. All right, he's got a bone to pick with France here. And uh, I assume we're going to be seeing some Rays then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Ray. We're going to toss it back up to Ian over there. Thanks, Kia. This is where I am. Thank you very much, brother. <laughs> he, he's looking for us. He's, he's, he's like, where are there. you? He's <laughs> over there somewhere. Oh, God, I love Ray. That guy's an absolute beast. And we're going to see him in the grand finals because we have booked in our first grand finalist in Indonesia. 
of the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023. You called it, Jess. You said that we're going to get it done in two. I did think it was going to be a bit of a fast series, unfortunately. Yeah, but when one is done fast that way, I want it to be done with the highest mm -hmm. level of Valorant, and we did get that. I'm glad the check showed up. I'm glad that we were able to go into the server and see two stylistically different play styles clash at the highest level. Yeah. I mean, it was like ice and fire, and you were trying to yeah. work out which style was going to come out on top. The fire definitely prevailed today. It is a very unique fire, isn't it, Vlad? Yeah, I'm gonna quote from Jess. Like, okay. Control Chaos won today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was something different. Like, uh, I mean, speaking of Ray, I'd probably nerf judge myself uh, <laughs> if I would be ever playing against uh, Ray, you know. If uh, I ever see Ray, I hide. That's what I'll do. He said, as expected, we made the finals. As expected. Yep. Well, we saw that. In, in the map one, we saw the levels of confidence just oozing out from this roster. And they delivered, so you can't really blame them. That, you know, they, I'm not even going to call it bland confidence. They obviously knew that they had something special coming into this. I mean, they, they're full of comp players. Of course, they expect that they might be at a higher echelon than some of the other players who are first just dipping their toes in the sort of Valorant competitive scene. But expected. As expected. Okay, this <laughs> man wants to gloat because he predicted after Turkey dropped out that Indonesia would yeah. make the finals, that they would actually win the entire tournament. Come on, Vlad. Floor is yours, brother. Yeah, Have on. your moment. Gloat away. I mean, I, I told you. I told you Indonesia was going to do it eventually. Yep. And they're going to be the favorites of the final. Okay. I'm saying. You know what's funny? You're that nice that I can't, when you're bragging, I can't take it seriously because I know how nice you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Vlad, Czech didn't win enough attacking rounds. That was probably their biggest flaw, right? Yes. Uh, before the game, uh, we saw the statistics and there was a 70% win rate on the uh, attacking side checks uh, so far, but uh, it only stuck up to five rounds for this game. So that means pretty pretty much 40% uh, to 35%, which wasn't enough. And yep. uh, losing second pistol run, that all uh, that matters, you know. I, I talked about the pistol runs. Uh, they won the first one, but the second one was more crucial than the first one. Yeah. I mean, listen, let's just recap for a second. 20,000 students took part in this in the very beginning. We've had more than 200 events that have led to this moment. You've got to give props to this Czech roster because they've put together quite an impressive run here, winning their national finals, making it through the groups, making it through the round of 16, bossing the quarters. They can be proud of themselves. I really want to give a shout out to Czech. I'm not sure if they're still here on stage and if you can hear me. Seven hours a day yeah. they were pracking. That is more than some of the VCT Tier 1 yeah. teams are putting into practice. They took this very seriously. There are some serious players on the roster. So for me overall, you really have to give a shout out to teams that are taking this seriously and are really putting hours in to be able to get onto the main stage and then walk away with, you know, hopefully a championship, but not to be for them. Yeah. 2022. Brazil quarterfinals yep. to, uh, 2023 yep. uh, right now in Istanbul semifinals what's next for them oh I see okay there's a trend there's a, yeah I like you know what Vlad's got it going for him now he, he understands he goes <laughs> I'm calling Indonesia and I'm calling of course uh, Czech moving up to the finals next time now uh, we, we were spotlighting quite a lot of the players for this Indonesian team some obvious ones of course we heard from Ray there in the interview with Kio but Kat awesome on that map as well Jess oh my goodness how nice is it that Ray can sit back for a map and in fact he sat back quite a lot in fact he did not have a pop-off game by any means but all of the rest of the supporting players stood up and Cad was one of them and I think it's important to highlight the players that do balance Ray a lot I mean he's explosive you can't look away from him and as a result you might miss the finesse that players like Cad are putting on there utility KJ is important but he also had such a presence around the map yeah and I think when you're you know you're checking you're worried about where's Ray Where, what am I going to do and everything you miss you sort of blindside you got the blinkers on you don't see what Cut's doing around the map. I mean, fragging with uh, Breach also is not uh, something really you come across every single day. Uh, I want to speak of uh, Walden if you like. Yeah, uh, so on Haven, where things get really messy and really uh, chaotic way, uh, you see Breach is always trying to catch up with the uh, duelist player, the second uh, like trader, uh, with the stun, with the you know uh, flash, and he's still fragging. He still has 18 kills overall, and that was something really nice for Walden. Yeah, we are flying through this tournament. Now let's take a look at the bracket. I always say this, but it's actually a bit more relevant as we're starting to make our way into the festive season. I always treat these brackets like a bit of an advent calendar as we open up the boxes <laughs> and we go along. And we do know, of course, our first finalist is Indonesia. Whoever meets them in that final, Peru of France, I'm sure they'll be scrimming, but I'm sure that they'll have kept an eye on that as well. 
That is a tough opponent to face off in our best of five, which will happen today. We are just getting started. Another semi-final, show match, grand final, all coming up on the horizon. We'll be back after a short break. Check it out. I'm here. Where are you? There. We'll be back. <laughs> in my zone, really, I'm really that fly. Time is of the essence, don't let a second pass by. No losses, only lessons, they testing the stats fine. Genius with the flow, master the craft, I'm a mastermind. Now I'm on with it, mama on her own living. Building big in my city, feeling King Kong with it. Little, little words, but boy, that money, huh? Long-winded, all off with these songs, did it, I'm trying to bring it home.
Hey, welcome back to the Red Bull Campus Clutch World Finals live from Istanbul, Turkey. We are having the time of our lives, but not as much as the players taking part. We got students living their dreams. I've said it many times, we started off with 20,000 players from all around the world and we've whittled it down to the final four. Well, it was, we're now down to the final three. We've sadly seen the Czech Republic drop out, Indonesia progressing through into our grand final, which is coming your way later on today. My name's Ian Chambers. This is the one and only analyst, Jess Gutt, and that is man like Vlad, professional Valorant coach and just all round wonderful fella. How are you Thank doing, you. Vlad? You enjoying this? I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Thank, thanks to some guys like you. Oh, that's so nice. It's so nice that they let you out yeah. of prison break to be here on the desk, <laughs> desk with us. Oh, you, like see, the you see the outfit? I'm feeling the jacket. Yeah, yeah you like it? Yeah. We're having, we've had a bit of a joke all I day like about it. I jacket as well. I hope you don't get caught before the end of the broadcast and get hauled back out of here. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, Vlad. Right, let's get back into this. We've got our second semi-final just on the horizon. Peru versus France. Let's take a start by looking at this Peru roster. They are just phenomenal. I think they've blown everybody away yesterday. We were all sort of gobsmacked because they're fresh off the back of an upset that you could call the upset of the tournament so far. Jess, you underestimated them and they knocked out Canada yesterday. Yeah, I'm happy to eat my words on this. In fact, I'm very pleased. I'm satisfied that we have someone come in and blow us out of the water at this sort of level, Canada being the favorites. Yeah. I'm not surprised. And of course, they were sort of maybe dark horses a yeah. little bit. I didn't really favor them going into that matchup at all. And now they are the dark horse for me of the entire tournament remaining. Obviously, before that first semifinal started, I still thought Peru was like, oh, I don't know what to expect of this roster. This one's scary. I don't know what they'll Definitely. put on the server today. Definitely. Not only Canada, as you know, home country, Turkey is being eliminated by Peru as well. Sorry, brother. Uh, yeah, I, I was feeling hurts, so sad hurts. yesterday, to be honest. Uh, going up to the Canada game, I wanted to see Peru, if they're going to succeed against Canada or not. Uh, I, I saw the first half and I thought, like, oh, Turkey missed a great opportunity against Peru, but no. They come back from 10-2. What a split game from them. And then after sunset, they won again. Big shocker. Yeah, it really was. They have a really good mixture of firepower and good utility usage, discipline, set yeah. plays. It just feels like every round you can get a little bit of a taste of everything. Speaking of taste of everything, I think my man Fab has oh. given me a taste of just absolute electricity inside the server. He makes his name known, and I like the fact that he's putting up a lot of numbers, and he doesn't have to be a duelist to do so. Yeah, I mean, that's what these players come out here to do. Of course, they want to win the trophy, but they want to make sure that the desk, they want to make sure that you guys are talking about them, and Fab's making a name for himself. Yeah, I mean, Fab has been the ideal player for dragging, yeah. doing the impacts and the, like, heartbreaking, really nice uh, things to do so far from Fab. And last series, he was the MVP with uh, yeah. 43 kills, and he did it with Chamber and Sky. And he has this variety of uh, agent pool as well, uh, just like the series before that. And he did so much impact, to be honest. Let's take a look at Peru's agent comp on split. Yeah. Uh, so the main thing here is uh, they want uh, Fab to play chamber, right? Yeah. So they have to uh, sacrifice from something. They play double controller, but they have to play Astra in order to uh, have this uh, heavy sight uh, player, heavy sight holder, yep. So uh, they have to like make a breakdown on the comp and that, uh, how, how, that's exactly how they win against Canada in the second half. I mean, if you're gonna put Chamber back into a composition, you have to make it work somewhere. You have to balance it. There needs to be a counterbalance somewhere. Did I think that it worked on an aggressive attacking basis? Not necessarily. Obviously the op came out, Fab really likes the op, so it worked for him. But I think overall, it needs to be something that's very delicately yep. put. And it depends entirely, of course, of what your opponents are going to put on the board. And with Peru being such an unknown quantity, I really think that they are going to sort of meet that kind of match of like, okay, we want to be explosive, we want to be an unknown quantity. Yeah. But conversely, across the stage, I feel like is another unknown quantity, at least to us on the stage. Yeah, well, if Peru is an unknown quantity to you and you want to learn more about them, let's hear from them. So for the next game, we're pretty confident because the last year we played against France and we beat him. So hopefully we can beat him 2-0 again. Confidence. Okay. Beat him once, beat him again. I mean, that's what you want to hear, right? 
a year later. It's a bit of time between the matches. 12 months, what's that? That's probably the last time I saw you, right? At the last Red Bull campus. That course. is true, yeah. <laughs> I, I try and stay away from him as much as possible, so, you know, the, a year's good. Yeah, let's take a look at the French roster. Now, this is a team we haven't seen here no. on the main stage yet, but that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. They took out Sweden yesterday, and they're here to do big business. Oh, absolutely. This is one of the most formidable rosters that has not featured on stream thus far. Yeah. And it's a bit of a shame that everyone has missed out. And I think they are absolutely going to be a formidable force that I don't yeah. think we expected. Good and things come to those who wait, Jess. I'm okay, ready to see I'm them now. I'm patient, I'm patient. And of course, the roster is full of gunners. There's a lot of players in this roster that want to be competitive players as well. These boys are bringing the energy to this stage today. Um, yeah. I can promise you that. And they uh, come back from Group D where USA and Indonesia was in. They Ooh. won against USA as well, these guys. And yep. they didn't have the uh, easiest path to come here in the semifinals. They won against Slovakia, but dropped one map. They won against the other team and dropped one map again. The Swedish guys. Yeah. Yeah, they're flying. They're soaring. Oh my God. Hey? You know what? The fact that you've been able to slip in a dad joke, love it. Be yeah. Speaking of Soren, you saw the stats on your screen just before, but let me reiterate why we really want to double down on Soren. I have my notes here, the highest ACS of the remaining team's highest ADR, which Tell is him. average damage per round. He has the highest clutch rate of any player in this entire tournament. And he also holds the highest kill rate at 203 kills. Tell him. Yeah, I'm out of breath at this point. Let me stop. The man is holding accolades at this tournament, and I don't know if he can keep holding them all, but I tell you what, to finally see him on the stream yeah. after all that he's put statistically down, this is a player. We, we saw Ray. He was hype. He was explosive. Check out Soren. Another uh, English phrase that you might not get, Vlad, but uh, it's a different kettle of fish when you step out onto... You probably don't get that either. I don't. I'm Australian. I don't know what don't that is. Don't worry about it. But it's a different scenario when you step out onto the main stage. It's all well and good having all these stats running through the groups and yep. the round of 16, the quarters. You've got to do it here now, Vlad. Yep. That's, that's a different thing. Different kettle and fish, you said? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Stop. No. You can you start using that if you want. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't use it. Don't use <laughs> it. Don't use it. No, so I'm you know what's that about, don't you? What? What? You, you know about that. He knows no. it. No, oh, she really? doesn't know about it. Do you no, know? I'm Australian. We let the British come up with all this weird stuff all the yeah. time, and then we just live on the other side a, of the hemisphere. Do you have a phrase? Uh, it's another... You can use right here? No, no. Put another shrimp on the barbie? Yeah, I, we're, you know what? We're not doing this. Shrimp on the barbie, do a shooey. If I put my dialect and my accent on, you wouldn't understand me, so we won't do it. I'll keep the international accent for now, right. please. Okay. Same uh, goes for you as well, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, you're lucky to understand me. Uh, Mene, just, let's just talk about oh, the coach yeah. for a second. Yeah. He's okay. someone who's really taken the players underneath his wing, and I know uh -huh. you like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have been like discussing uh, everything uh, from like one and a half year. Uh, we know each other from like uh, some teams, and uh, we discussed some uh, games we watched together. And uh, actually, I saw the Mene uh, the other day against Sweden between the games, and he was like hyping up all the players. Uh, it's like uh, all the players were under the wings of many. Yeah. That, that was some something epic to watch, and uh, that that felt like uh, like so good for me. Yeah. Well, we have actually got a clip lined up from one of the French players. Let's hear it. On est trop fort, on est trop confiant. Ça fait pas les frères. On va bien vous représenter. On va tout détruire. Je suis porté nous, bivalientes en bal aujourd'hui. On va on va prouver au monde entier qu'on est les meilleurs. That's for sure. So far, they are proving that they're one of the best. Yeah. And yeah. what's exciting about this, we've, we've touched on it before, you mentioned about teams beating the USA. Mm -hmm. So just to put that into context of why that's so important and impressive, the United States of America, last time, the Red Bull Campus Coach, well, we were here last year. Yeah, we were. We, we weren't were here, we were in Sao Paulo. Well, we weren't here, yes. But yeah. in Sao Paulo, they walked away the victors, and of mm -hmm. course, it. Uh, I think it left a sour taste in many people's mouths because they really wanted to overcome the US. They were such a formidable team, yeah. and so many teams got so close, mm -hmm. but no one could get over that final hurdle. And then to group them? I mean, that's a big step. That's a that's a giant leap to be able to make that happen. So this tournament is very, very different this year. Well, you can see, right, like, all of the... Uh, qualified teams are right in the semi-finals and one of them has actually made it to finals. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the story behind it. If uh, Team USA would be another group, and maybe sure. they could they could have made it. Yeah. Just like it's Czech true. Republic in Brazil. They have to face uh, USA in yeah. the quarterfinals. Then they could have made it all the way up. Yeah. Yeah, the groups can always be brutal, can't they? And, uh, you know, what's been brutal for France is that they've played a lot of rounds. 
Yep. Yeah, so, well, I said Soren had the, the most kills in the tournament. Well, France has to shoulder the most rounds in the tournament. What is it? Let me guess before I check my notes. 203 rounds? Mm -hmm. No, it's 216. 203 kills that Soren oh. has in the tournament. You know what? Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to do the memory thing, guys. Don't worry. But 200, <laughs> over 210 rounds that they have had to shoulder and burst through. Yep. That's That means two things, and I think Vlad will agree with me here. It means, yes, you've got a lot of experience. You've got a lot of practice under your belt. Every team likes that. Every coach likes that. They like to have reps under their belt. But conversely, are they tired? Are they overworked? How much counter strategy mm, involves them for their head to go over? Have they really had time for today? Did they need rest? Uh, there's so many quantities and factors mm -hmm. to think about. Yeah, to be honest, like uh, France had these issues, but they prevailed against Sweden. Sweden had some like tier two experienced players like Ale and Vicious, you know. Yeah. So prevailing against a team like that, and which you're on, probably underdog and uh, like lost the first map as well and yeah. winning the second map in the overtime you know yeah. that's something uh, not every we cannot uh, come across every single day yeah. yeah well one thing you can't come across every single day if you're a player if you're one of these students is an opportunity of a lifetime you know we talk a lot about what's up for grabs here the trophy the money but it is really a potential path to being a professional player and these guys can vouch for that my goal is to be a tier one player Red Bull Campus will be my first international man. In the past, a lot of players that made it far have been picked up by some big orgs. It's a really good event for making yourself known as a player. I want to go pro because it's been my dream since I was like 10. Going pro in Valorant is my dream. I saw the pro players live their life, how they compete, how they travel around the world. Competing in Red Bull Campus Clutch gives massive exposure, especially if you make it far, which we will actually playing on stage on a good level and like having the same things that pro players have. That's obviously out of our comfort zone, not playing with the same PCs as we are at home. You're gonna be stressed a lot. You're not gonna know how to act in the situation. Maybe you will be surprised that your heart is beating fast. Uh, my goal is to present myself well to the world and everybody watching and that people will see, okay, this is hard work. This is very stressful and painful if you lose games. You've seen people cry, you've seen people laugh and scream a lot and then all the emotions behind it. It's really fun to play on the stage because we'll play better, you know? Okay, so the stakes are high because we're the last representative of our region, so we're going to do everything to win. We want to experience that feeling to lift the trophy. If you win, I think a lot of people will hear about you and hear your name. And hopefully from here I can meet all the other goals that I have. Being in the Red Bull Campus Clutch World Final is the start of my career. It's not like we're just making this up and saying, oh, you know, you could potentially make it pro if you, if you do well here at the Red Bull Campus Clutch. It's happened before, Jess. It has. It has. There's been players. Shallaby ended up trialing oh, with yeah. Vitality for that time. In fact, yeah. that was our success story last year that we spoke about. We were like, whoa, Shallaby in one of the best teams in Red Bull Campus Clutch history. And they put up some damn numbers. They made a statement. Uh, there was not a lot of teams that could hold a candle to them at that time either. So Shallaby being picked up and trialed, yeah. I think it opened every player's eyes to, whoa, okay, oh, yeah, this tournament is a scouting ground. Yeah. People are watching, Definitely. and they will pick up the phone, write an email and say, hey, we want you to come trial for us. Mm -hmm. Vitality is not a small team by any means. It's actually one of the most funded organizations in all of Europe. Yeah, definitely. So that was huge. That's a crazy thing because that is not just, you know, you're all of a sudden a, a professional viral player. You're making a career. All of a sudden, yeah. you, you played here in a shoot competition, and then you, you find yourself making money and doing what you love. I mean, uh, going into ranked games and having some game and uh, some guy spotting you. Oh, you're that guy. You're actually played in a stage. Yeah. yeah. That's something like. You don't really come across every single day, just like I said. So yeah. this is a both good experience and also like, uh, I, I mean, the first time I stepped onto the stage, I felt so good. Like it was something beyond imagination, yeah. beyond explanation. Uh, only the ones who can step onto the stage can know it. Like for yeah. sure, you can know it. No, I, mean, I don't think just, I, I, he I steps don't think on a he... different stage. Yeah. It's a different kind of stage. I will say when I first stepped, you know, into a land, yeah. uh, I felt really nervous for my boys. I was just like, I was like, oh, actually, like the vibes, I feel really intense. Yeah, yeah. You can hear the team yelling at you from across the room. So you're like, okay, this is 
this is definitely a different battleground. And I tell you what you're saying, you know, different players and being supported, you know, by the Valorant ecosystem, yep. you know, making salaries from it. A sailor from Peru said he wants to support his family by playing I love Valorant. That. Yeah, I love that. He, he's, that I saw is that. his main goal. I want to support awesome. my family by playing Valorant. And I tell you what, if he keeps up those Omen plays, I ain't gonna. It's doable. Players, that's what's it's doable. crazy. It's doable. You know, you can support your family playing video games. That's that's the dream. Uh, let's just have another look at that trophy. I just saw somebody bring up on, on camera there, and it was a it's a beautiful thing. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. If and when we there it is. Look. Wow. I'm gonna say it. What? No. What are you gonna say? I'm gonna say it. That is a sexy trophy. I've never had a trophy called sexy it in my sexy. entire career. How, I've been in esports for 10 years. Has anyone called a trophy sexy? No. In Tell your me I'm wrong, Vlad. Tell me that's not sexy. This is Ian Chambers, you know. Yeah, this is Ian Chambers. He's yeah. something for those else. Who don't and this know. is sexy. Yeah, thank you, Vlad. Oh, About time I'm you alone. stepped up. About time I've you stepped up and back me. Isolated. No, I'm not calling it sexy. That it, we've seen a lot of campus cut trophies, Rebel campus cut trophies, and they're yeah. always nice. But they're that beautiful. is specifically nice. I mean, it's not just the trophy that's nice. For those who don't understand and, and maybe don't follow our social medias, we're yeah. always posting about what's up. Every time Red Bull flies us oh, out to a different it, location, all of the players, <laughs> all of the teams, the supporting staff, the talent, the production, everything, they take care of us and yeah. they immerse us in the local coach shop so heavily that yep. I have I don't think I've ever been a part of an event that goes to those extremes that has that kind of level yep. of support and engagement and local I shout mean, out Red Bull it's a big I mean, part definitely, of it unbelievable definitely. like students here are today's students tomorrow's professionals oh, yeah. oh he's a poet I love it <laughs> keep going again, I go, again. Go, I'm gonna get going. that tattooed I mean I, <laughs> I mean not only coming here and playing yeah. they getting facilitated and they're getting uh, like uh, getting their accom accommodation yeah. they're traveling all across a different country which maybe they didn't know even that exists you know for sure sometimes that's it and, uh, they're getting to find out that culture they don't know about yeah that's right. something unique experience I'm doing we cannot that. find yeah. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm 25. And you've never been here. I'm kidding, I'm 35. What? You've never been in I've never been to Istanbul. I love oh, it. Oh, I thought you've been here as well. Oh. Oh, no, oh my no, no, apologies. No. You should have taken him out a little bit more. I've been here. I took him out with it. my green goblin. Yeah, yeah you did. I love it. it was good yeah, time. We were full that night, right? No, but it, that's, you all remember your first flight abroad, yeah. the first time you leave the country. And that's, yeah. why, I, that's why I keep saying the word yeah. unforgettable um, as mm -hmm. an experience for these players. It's not just about stepping onto the stage, it's not just about getting the wins and, and, and feeling the losses. Yes. It's about experiencing something that wouldn't be possible without Valorant and playing this video yeah. game. It wasn't possible last year, and, and by possible I mean, I think Red Bull Campus Clutch 2022 broke the record of the most teams flying in yeah. for one land ever to exist. I think they still hold that record, so yes, we'll stand here. And uh, I think Red Bull, we should give them a trophy back. Yep. I, I will create a trophy and medal for each of the Red Bull stars. It won't be as sexy as this one. It, no, I can't give you a sexy trophy or a medal, I can't, but I'll do my very best. And to hold that kind of, uh, I suppose, history-making level of production yeah. and to have that many teams fly in, it's a lot of resources. You have no idea how many staff are involved in the background. For yeah. sure. I've met a lot of people, and uh, it's too many people to remember all their names, so do Just say shout out everybody. Is that Shout what you do to get over having to remember everyone's names? Because yeah, there's hundreds absolutely. of people. No, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Um, we are just getting started here. You know, we've already had one semi-final. Mm -hmm. We, if you just joined us, we've still got another semi-final coming up, a best of three. Then we've got a show match with some of your favorite streamers, including Tarek, who's in the building. And then we will end it all with our best of five grand final. Of course, you got Indonesia waiting in the Red Bull gives you wings. And we'll find out who they will be facing up against a little bit later on. You know what I just realized? What? This might be APAC's only chance of walking away with a big trophy in Valorant. Like seriously, you know what I mean? Not only chance, we've had chances, we've had Paper X, we've had other teams, but yeah. I mean, in the global stage of FPS, how many times does APAC, uh, APAC get a chance to be in a grand finals? How many times do they get a chance to walk away with the trophy? That's it. Not often. It's time. Let's Is get it? into our Let's next go. semi final. We've got some South Americans with a grand final in their sights. It's Peru! These guys were very much regarded as the underdogs yesterday. Yep. Not today. Not in my eyes. Of course, they've got a very tough opponent who are about to make their debut here on the stage. Of course, they have been playing and been very successful. 
away from the cameras, but not this time round. Finding their footing on the main stage for the very first time is France. And you can see, Jess, the crowd support is split, split down the middle, really. Yeah, this is a little bit of a, I suppose, a difference from what we saw when Peru went against their opponents yesterday. Now yeah. it's like, okay, where is the crowd sitting? Where is the favoritism going? I will say slightly Peru favored, ever so slightly but they were the ones that are the underdogs and we're the expected underdogs moving into today. Ice cold as we make our way for the fist bump. There it is. And now they can go back into their huddles and have their last discussions collectively before taking their seats. And we all know how important these brief moments are, Vlad. Oh, look at them, look at them. They're all hyped up in wow. Peru as well. They're feeling it. This is their moment. Peru might be one of the most stylish teams. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're they super really stylish. Are. The earrings, the glasses, yes. the drip. The style. Yeah, they're so cool. Oh. And I was chatting with these guys um, yesterday as well. They just feel like this is another day in the office. They're, they're not like, oh my word, I can't believe that we're winning. I can't believe we're doing this. It's like, yeah, of course. Of course we're winning. They have to, so up, ups and downs so much. They have to come back from yeah. every, almost every single game. And they're comfortable with it right now. Yeah, I mean, they've been pressure tested at this point. Has France really been pressure tested? Uh, yes, maybe a little bit, but on the stage, no Peru, yes. yes. So that's the big difference maker. Is it a win condition? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna put it as a, a big old tick in the box of win condition for them. Well, it is time now for the final time, I guess, in the semi-final situation to get into map picks and bands, Vlad. Yeah, this is going according to safe bands so far, and we see Haven. Let's see what's going to press oh, pink and yes. Lotus. I love the fact that we're getting Lotus in this one. Yet again, I wasn't sure exactly what France would pick. Of course, I have different maps. They they don't mind a split. They don't mind a scent. Maybe a little bit of Sunset. I thought maybe they might pick Sunset going into that one. They didn't. They picked Lotus. And I think the reason that they've done that is because it throws a little bit of the wrench in the works of Peru. I don't think Peru would have known that they would pick Lotus. And yep. therefore, are they really prepared to go up against France in that map? So I like it, and they're forced to play it as it's the second map. But to be honest, I see this as a third map candidate. Oh, yeah. we're going to split? I think so. How many times you said that, Vlad? Yeah, you have. How, how many times have you been right? Every single. <laughs> 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 no, but we're, we're owed one, right? We, we, des we deserve yeah. a, a three-map series. This of course, we will get one eventually, because the grand final is the best <laughs> of five. So I we have to get three maps, but here, I want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round of 16 and top eight, uh, the quarterfinals. France every time lost a map, you know. Yeah. And Peru, the, uh, the run from them wasn't so easy. They were underdogs, but they suffered a lot. That's why I'm saying. Jess. Yes. Two teams that are absolutely willing to go along here. Two play styles yes. clashing. So fingers crossed as we get into agents, so like this could be the time we go, we go all three. Oh, okay. Looking across, we get finally get some jet play, but you know, I want everyone to move their eyes to the right-hand side of your screen, please. I'm looking. Just gaze at the beautiful agent of Neon. Finally, oh. on the stage, we will have her debut. And of course, we won't, I'm, I'm still looking for ISO. We're missing ISO, but the Neon. we got to see Neon. It. Is this it's, a new addition? It's, it's so interesting. They, uh, they get rid of Killjoy for Neon. What's going on? I don't, is this a throw a wrench in the works kind of thing? Is this, we're yeah, going to surprise our opponents? Or have they be. prepped this? Because I mean, France seems like a team that does prep pretty heavily. This is not an Indonesian team that just wants a run and gun. They are usually a structured team. I mean, they're going to start from attacking side. So what I'm thinking, they're going to play really fast with double duelist wow. and bridge with it. So they're going to build the momentum up to maybe, they have to win at least eight rounds, nine rounds, 10 rounds. We can see that. We can see that coming, but everything is going to be decided on the defense. You know what else we can see? This semi-final. Let's get into it. We've brought in two amazing casters who are back with us again. They're there. We're here. Hi, guys. Hi, How guys. You doing? Katie, Mimi, back in the building. Before you get into this, I've got to ask you, Katie, in one word, how would you describe the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 trophy? 
sexy. Yeah, you're damn right. I'm going. Maybe not the word I would use, but <laughs> certainly one of them that we could have. But yes, this is going to be a super exciting semifinal to watch. Like the desk was mentioning, we haven't seen France on stage thus far. And while Peru has been a team that has been together for over a year, that has been building up for this moment, France didn't have those expectations. They were built just for this event. This is the first international event for all five players on that stage, and they've already made it to the semifinal. They just wanted to get out of groups was France's goal. And hey, you're here. You're doing a great job of that so far. You're in the semifinal against Peru. I'm excited to see that energy, what I love, Mimi, yesterday. We saw so much energy for Peru from the crowd, but we saw it today from France as well. Red Bull gives you wings. And I'm excited to see how that energy translates into map number one, a best of three to punch the final golden ticket against Indonesia. You're going to have to start here. And what a way to start it. France with a double the Willis Comp and already fast down long here into the smoke. But there's no commitment behind this. The spike instead is heading all the way towards C in this fake. It's been bought. Hook, line, and sinker. The entirety of Peru is rotated off this site. It'll be forced into the retake, but things are awkward down long. Somehow Hawks is just running and gunning, and he can't get away with it. But the spike is planted, even if it's a man disadvantage for France. Peru, they get the pick, but that's not necessarily going to guarantee them the round. The engagement happens all tied up now. 4-4 four, four player count, but you got to be mindful of that spike timer ticking ever so quickly. They know about Weechi's flank, and he will be punished. Great work out of Faba Zine, but coming back to Garaz, Weechi able to find another. Soren is back on the trade, France. There's another advantage here. Last player standing. Another advantage, but not enough. It is going to be... Peru coming out on top at the very end. I mean, I liked it. France was able to sneak onto that plant, but just couldn't hold it together for the final. Yeah, the issue really comes down to the post plant. After losing that player over towards A, everyone on France feels the need to, to get aggressive, make a play to even out those odds. Would have liked to see maybe a bit better positioning to trade there, because it allowed in the end Peru to isolate some very impactful fights and save that one. Great comms as well out of Peru here. Very aware of all these weird positions that the French players had infiltrated, and they punish it all very well. Yesterday, we saw a lot of these pistol rounds won by Peru. It was one of the big reasons that they managed to get that upset over Canada. And they make such great adjustments in the moment. They can be very effectively reactive to what's happening with the other team, and that's exactly what happened here against France. A first round on the board for the defense. France is going to try and even things up. And you're going to have to have that adaptability against a composition like this for France. When they have this double dive, I expect to see a lot of not only fast executes, as you'd expect with those two dive agents, but also these really fast rotations. That's what the Neon allows you. Infiltrate one side, fake that on out, send it back to the other like we saw on the pistol. It's a style that you're really not used to playing against since this Neon has fallen out of the meta on Haven. So do you like that Neon pick, though? Because this is going to be one of our times on main stage seeing it. So what do you think so far? I mean, we haven't had a lot of rounds to get through, but that Neon pick could get interesting. I think the biggest kind of risk reward you get with this Neon is the lack of the Sentinel that Vlad was already talking about over on the desk. It's when you're playing on your defense, all of your information has to come from either your Sova or aggressive play. So their win condition is really on getting proactive, setting up those two duelists with their two initiators to take space on the extreme to figure out exactly where the players from Peru are. But if you ever lose that proactivity, or if Peru can punish that aggression, the whole game plan can fall apart. But on the other side, when you have players as talented individually as France does, and you want to play a comp like this that will take your opponent off guard, you pick something odd like this, and it really can work. Three weeks, Mimi, that's all France has had in this preparation. They've had an excellent coach alongside them to get them up to speed, but it's got to be impressive so far. Three weeks and you're sitting in the semi-final, just a best of three away from potentially matching up against Indonesia in the final. They've got to have that confidence. I mean, going into this, there's already that momentum. So little time, but they've gained so much from it. They have, and the two teams sitting on the stage here are really the Titans players of this tournament. France was one of the squads to beat Northwood, that Team USA who won the last Red Bull Campus Clutch in the groups. They did that with three weeks of practice. 
and Peru as well. They took down Team Canada. They built this momentum to now make it into the semifinals, and it does look like there's a bit of a tech pause. Players taking an opportunity to take a simple Red Bull, keep those hands warm. We'll get you folks apprised on the situation as soon as we can. But yeah, I mean, just an incredible, incredible opportunity for this French team. For both of these teams, a clash of some unexpected contenders. And I love that at events like this because it's not just about the glory. It's not just about raising that sexy trophy at the end of the day. It's about what this could mean for their futures when it comes to competitive Valorant. Talked about it. There's scouts. There's eyes on events like these. There's a lot for them to gain. There absolutely is. And so many of these players, when they were asked, what they really wanted. It was, you know, support my family by playing games, have a chance to play tier one, win a championship trophy in Valorant. This is the first step. It may just be a first international land for the majority of these guys, but it's kind of a step in the right direction towards a career in the future. And that's really where you kind of get this pressure from, because you have this moment where you're already, to an extent, living that dream, getting to be a professional esports player up on an international stage and getting to continue to win, getting to stay up there is really what has to fire these players up. Yeah, you get, a, you get a taste of what could be, and it could start right here, right now. Of course, after we get through this tech pause, but again, if you're just tuning in, it is Peru 1-0 over France right now. Still a lot of game to be played. Hopefully we'll jump back into things soon, but if you're Peru, it's a round, but it's still a round you're happy to take, at least in the interim. Famously, one round is a lot of games still left to be played after it. Yes, a couple rounds, you know. At least a few. A few maps to 12, go. Maybe, <laughs> at least. Possibly more of that one. But it does sound like the issue is on its way to being resolved, and we should be hopping back into things now. As a reminder, round number one, it was Peru taking home the pistol. We're on their map pick of Haven. And France, not a lot to work with in this one. Not a lot to work with, but we've seen Peru work with as little as France will have in this round, so certainly maybe we can see some magic happen, but there we go, gonna jump back into things. Round two underway. France, what can you get done on your second stab at the offense? It's looking like a fast push on the B site. And Hawks, just a shorty, not gonna have too much to work with someone up above though, does find some value off of that Sheriff. And despite the overwhelming odds of all five of these players pushing in, you'd think they don't have a chance, but they've now found a couple kills. It's even odds into this two versus two, but the HP is low, and Fabazine has the perfect flank to shut this one down. Things looking a little iffy there for a second. France, perhaps an opportunity shut down in orderly fashion. Fabazine so amazing and clutch plays throughout this tournament, and there you can see it. The Neon trying to get onto that site quickly, but it just doesn't play out. It is an Ecoron strap, but I like that idea there of throwing up that Neon wall to allow your jet to updraft dash at the top of the box and be a lot more safety. There is a lot of synergy between those two agents. When you play these double dive comps, be it the race jet, the Neon jet, having those two points of entry makes it so overwhelming to be a site anchor. So I'm looking a lot at Salad, at Weechi, the guys who are going to be responsible responsible holding down against this force. Perhaps a different tactic this time. We've seen C, we've seen B out of France, but this time things might get a little funky, but take a look at what is happening. We've got to watch out for Chuto here. Yeah, he's already walked up mid really early into this round, and with early info claimed towards C as well, they're very excuse me, suspicious here of this A finish, and that is where the entirety of France is holding on to. Killjoy turret will be that first point of contact, and they're committed to anchoring on the site. Wall out, Nano Swarm to at least delay the push on to A, but not gonna stop France for the time being, looking to find those engagements, those interactions, this Fabazin striking first, a fast two piece out of the side of France, Hawks opening things wide up to try and get that plant down. And there's a flank already, Shuto's fast behind, but Reach adjusts and finds the kill regardless, leaves the Lord in a 1v4. A 1v4, and this is exactly what you want if you're France, but hey, you get that snake bite, at least take down Hawks for the time being. A 1v3, though, still a tall task, Mimi. Wounded players on both sides this one, but this crosshair should be impossible to break. Bar a mistake, he finds one, but the second not quite in time. Too close on that round, but it will be converted 
regardless. To rewind a little earlier, though, I think that the reason that this round looked to be close all came down to this Viper Orb. That's why one of the biggest reasons you play the Viper on this map, because it allows you to have that smoke that fully covers one side of the map, so defenders can A, swarm out from that defender side at spawn and play the Flood Retake, and B, give so much space for that side anchor to play with. When you're up against a double dive comp like this, giving your anchor options to isolate fights is so important. And I'm glad to see Peru already doing a good job of that. Take a look at Hawks close to that ult. Gonna be trying to get up close and personal, but you gotta be careful that Fabazin isn't ready to meet you at a long. That's exactly what happens. Make it two on the round. And Yes, we've got a dash onto the site, but Reach and Soren gonna try and open things up. Huevo Deos answers back with two, make it three. Easy wrap up at A. Huevo Deos was excellent yesterday in their semifinal appearance versus Canada. He's the high GL, the captain of this team, and also the guy so often putting up big numbers. Very pivotal part of this team, Poru. But to talk about that round a little bit more, it seems like something might have been missing over towards long. Normally when you see a faster pop like that, you'll see the omen smoke that's meant to block the Sova dart that you can kind of scale into and then make the commitment to the site. But that didn't exist there, and one player swinging forward was just able to completely punish the Neon. And a tactical timeout will come out of France. I think this is gonna have to be about slowing things down really literally and figuratively, because thus far they've been conceding a fair few first bloods with these really fast exacts. Yeah, it looks like there's an idea that they want to execute on. It just hasn't been working out the way they'd hope. Peru shutting them down consistently on these hyper-aggressive pushes. But, I mean, if you have that Neon, you have that Jet, you don't want to slow down, but now you're going to be forced to do that. Mimi, what would you like to see from them? Do you want to see these continued pushes on the A, or do you want to see them go somewhere else? I think that taking a lobby control is a big strength of this comp. You can beat out the timing of a lot of utility, especially when you're not playing against a Breach who has that fault line. That's the power of the Neon. I think what they have to separate is going for that initial take of space and the actual commitment into the site. When you're committing all the way from a lobby and running all the way into the site, it's so easy to lose out on spacing, to make a mistake. You kind of need that moment to pause and reset unless your coordination is on point. And it seems like what they're doing this time, or maybe instead, it's another fake. Same idea as the pistol round here as Hawks is already into the back A. I love it. Hawks fearless despite some of the round blunders earlier on, but it is going to be Ouija with fast two-piece. And, well, Slad follows it up, and just like that, yeah, you have the Neon ult out, but Spike's down at sea, and things are looking pretty rough. I, I mean, Hawks is just doing a solo Spike tour of the world. He ran all the way into the back of A site, looked around without even finding anyone, you gotta all get the way back in. to sea, and while well, all that's going on, Oh, my entire team is dead on the sea site. Credit to Peru to not fall for that fake twice in a row. Yeah, I like that adaptability from them because oftentimes it felt like they were reactive. This time they're remembering, they're learning, they're getting better, and Huevo de gets the it ultimate done. Here. But interesting, though. This is How wild. do you feel about that? Not good, particularly, but yeah, it's not going to work out. I don't out. think, I think they that, feel good either. Yeah, I think that was just a heat of the moment mistake there to, to pop the ultimate, but... All is well still here. And, and for Peru, I mean, how do we even begin to talk about this round? Because it starts with the same idea as the pistol round, with the neon fake towards A, but then this pivot towards C, I think comes just a little bit too early, before the neon's even on the side, before any real presence besides that neon is shown, they're already committing into C, and immediately it's realized, hey, this isn't a fake, and the setup just gets dismantled, and using that ultimate right at the end of the round as well, it's gonna make things even more difficult to break the momentum that Peru is building. Maybe a bit of frenetic, a bit of nerves here on the side of France. But I know they got this far, and for good reason. Hawks straight on to the site. Looking to gain that control, you are going to have to deal with Weechi, and that's exactly what happens. Can you get the site control? Well, it's going to be Reach again, making sure that it is a 4v2. The plant will go down. Seekers denied on the side of Peru. Maybe a much needed round on the board here, some potential. But Fabazin, we've already seen what he can do. But as I say that, Soren says, we'll see you next round. And Shuto only has an operator to work with here. No real hope of winning in the 1v4, so he'll fall back. 
The biggest difference that round, I think, from previous fast A execs is one, taking that one moment to pause and make sure that the spacing was good before executing, and B, that Peru decided to commit to holding on the site. Previously, they've either been, you know, having their one anchor fight and then playing retake or going for these full floods. On this one, they just had a heavy setup, and looks like Shuta will be able to hold on to that operator for now. Yeah, that Neon was hunting to try and deny the op, but Chuto at least able to get one as the second round on the board for France. Well won from them, and that finally felt like their synergy that you were talking about clicked into place in that aggressive A push. It's also just so important individually that Hawks is getting these open engagements. Sometimes he won't even need to. He's just going to be the space creator for Soren instead to get these first floods. But of course, not conceding his life, making sure that his pathing is well coordinated with the teammate. He really is the most important agent on this attacking side for France's game plan. Well, so far so good, at least on that second round game plan. Can you turn it into two in a row for France, make it a one round difference? A little different this time around, and it is going to be the commitment of that rolling thunder onto the site. Chaos through the smokes, but it's going to be Wabo Deus with the two Ouija on top of it. Soren answering with two nice head taps of their own. There's a flank already very quickly here. Look at Chuto. He's posted on the angle and might just catch a player in transition here. Last player standing. Soren. 32 HP, but Spike Plant to work with. Babazin takes a chunk of damage, but you're pinched. You have Chuto behind. There's not a lot of places for you to go. The op connects. And just like that, there'll be Peru. Another round on the board. I'd really like to see a round where France presses the brakes a little bit more. Thus far, it has always been either an A fake into a C hit or just a straight up fast exec behind their Neon. They haven't shown any rounds where they're really slowing down, defaulting, playing around map control, which means that Peru can just be so proactive with the rotates. You notice the second that that C hit's coming through, our jet is flanking all the way back around and the AWP reaches just in time to be the player to close that one out. Yeah, it really feels like at least uh, on the rounds that France has been able to earn themselves, that initial hyper-aggressive push has to be dominant. If it's not, they get picked apart. But now, a long. A potential engagement we hear with Fabazin, but they do back off, trying to get what intel they can as we take a look up through Garage. Can you spot someone around the corner? Just shy. Shuto, walking up through the A sewers here, will post on a very important line with his off. But on the other side, a teammate has fallen, and this is finally the round where Francis hit the brakes, take a lobby control, pressure Garage, and now they're going to rotate back into this A hit, which means that Chuto is the linchpin of this round. Well, you couldn't have had more immaculate timing than that. Chuto, make it one, make it two. Ults available. I don't think they'll need to use them, though, as Huevo Deos gets one. And now, Yozai, the last remaining, does actually throw out the blade storm. Why not with the off the 4K meme? Now you're just styling on, having some good fun. 6-2 to Peru. Chuto is so unbelievable. He finds his gap there in Jordan. Just plays it to perfection. He's moving as well here, using just the cloudburst for that area. So he has more resources for the next fight, saving the dash to actually take the fight on site. Uh, the micro is all excellent out of Shuto there, but again, some mistakes being made by France. They thought that they had cleared short early, so they never went and re-cleared. They weren't ready for the AWP to be on that line. But they have guns again, and they have their eyes set towards B this time. Eyes set toward B, and you also have to wonder, Yozai, waiting for him to come online for his team as well, but an early plant down, some success at B here for France. Can they hold on from the onslaught of Peru? Ebo Deus in an important position, but he falls already. Numbers advantage continues to tally up towards France. Another one for one trade. Can anyone find a way in? It would have to be Shuto. He's left alone now in a 1v4, and again, just an operator and a shorty to his name. He knows that there's no shot of winning this round. So France, it seems like they're rolling the dice at the start of every round with these fast plays, but this time they score. This time they score, and well, they take down that operator as well. Shuto 
denied at the very end. But this is my concern, Mimi, is that, yes, you're rolling that dice, but it's 6-3. The dice isn't rolling in your favor every single time. So how do you make that adjustment if you can't just keep using that same strategy over and over, especially if you're down by three? Kind of point France has. They have three rounds now, but I would like to see a little bit more variety. We saw that one moment where they slowed things down, played a bit more of a default, and that was efficient. I think that having that variety is important, but you also can just keep rolling the dice and see what happens, and it seems to be the same idea again. Fast towards A, they go. Weechi, he's in trouble. In trouble, gets the information, but take a look on the side of France. Yozai, finally, first kill. Chudo answering back. Weechi's there as well. The commitment of the Hunter's Fury and its chaos on the site. Back and forth until just Reach remaining. Tries to get the tag onto Weechi, but will it be good enough? That first shot certainly is. Takes a look, knows where Weechi is and gets it done. 3K for Sova, for Reach, a beautiful job amid the chaos. Yeah, what a Red Bull clutch to find for the side of France. Everything honestly looked like it was going quite well for Peru. Again, that Viper Smoke on site that has been ever important allows Ricci to get away with a ludicrous amount of work. But sometimes all it takes is that clutch. And now, as we see the tide shifting with the first two rounds in a row picked up for the side of France, Peru will take a timeout. I loved that opening from Jose, too. Had been very sleepy for a while, but makes that commitment and throws, it felt like Peru, into a bit of disarray. Suddenly, you have that omen in the back line. You have Niana Jet pushing onto that site. And still, though, it was that Red Bull clutch, which is, I think, the part of that that makes me nervous. You have that good omen play, things are working out for you, but it's still dicey. It wasn't the cleanest round that I've seen. Yeah, and I honestly think that for the most part, up until that last second, Peru played that round correctly. Their anger stayed alive long enough. They were fast on the rotations to play the flood retake that's been so effective for them, but they make a few individual mistakes right at the end in a clutch round like that. It'd be exactly what a team needs to build a comeback. If they tie this 6-6, six to six, it'll still be an uphill battle in the second half without any Sentinel in the mix, but it's what they need to really give them an opportunity. However, Peru has money back online. They have the lockdown, so are able to play retake, which is really strong against this comp from France. France does have both duelist ults available to them. Snakebite will slow things down for just a minute, but not too long there. The first commitment comes in from Hawks. They're on to the site, looking to find victim spots one, but cut down by Salad. Soren there to answer, but it is back and forth, a checkerboard in the kill feed. And it's all Weechi. He's found three, and Fabazin is there to clean things up. If you watch the minimap throughout the execute that we just Last saw from France, notice house. how far ahead the Neon is from everything else. Wall is up. He's all the way running through backside. The next closest player is still behind platform. So it's all or nothing for Hawks there. If he doesn't get two, three kills, then they totally lose that space. We really need to see France being so careful about their spacing when they're going through these executes. It's really the hardest part of playing one of these Neon compositions, playing at that pace, at that speed, makes it really difficult to get it right consistently. You can get onto the site, as you said, We're but good. you're all on your own. That doesn't mean a round conversion. No one is with us again. <laughs> exactly. Wall up will take you down in fashion because we know you'll be alone. A dismantling at A. Peru happy to take a clean round here. Just oh. reach remaining, but not for long. The final player falling there in A long, and whew, crowd's happy about that one. Switching sides. No sweat off Peru's back, apparently. A very clean round there to end the half 8-4. And things are looking rough right now for France on Haven. This one, a little bit of a weird situation there. I don't know what was going on with Soren, but we'll have to see how things change as we get into the second half. And we now start to ask the questions, how does France play defense with double duelist, with no sentinel? They're going to have to be very proactive for getting information. And yet again, we have to look at Hawks and what he can do on this Neon. He needs to find the balance between being aggressive enough to create space, to get info on this defense, and overheating and giving away first bloods. 
Do you think some of this round count differential is in part to the fact that Peru has been together for a year and a half as Chuto gets a first blood? It absolutely could be. The experience shows in these situations, and Hawks, no one's cleared him. No one has checked him whatsoever, and he'll Beautiful. find a clean two. Can he stay alive for more? Stun goes out, and Jose is ready to swing, but he does not need any help. Hawks, after a tough start to the map, has made his mark on the pistol. You said those double do lists. How are you going to deal with it on defense? Well, ratty little corners like that certainly going to help get it done. A great play by Hawks. Weechi, not a lot to work with here, although you say fairly weak. Hawks tagged up a little bit, too. We'll see with that spike hovering around this mid area, what can Weechi get done? Weechi is just on the other side here, and it's a game of timing. If Weechi can isolate this man, he can make his way all the way over towards A. It would be an open shot. Weechi, slow and steady, wins the race. You have to be so careful trying to figure out exactly where these players are. Sees the contact with Reach on that stairs. 30 seconds left. Decides to go for it. Maybe Reach not prepared for that push. Weechi now onto that A site and a fast movement through spawn for the rest of France. Two mollies and time to work with. Weechi needs to isolate a duel and get an advantage here. He has a turret to work with. That'll be the first spot, but it should be a double swing here. But it doesn't work out. Weechi cuts them both down, and Peru keeps it going. A red bull clutch on the side of Weechi. Excellent. I love this challenge on to Reach. Uses that turret so effectively, gets that information, and just a beautiful 3K at the end. Your France, that's got to sting. I mean, that just might be the moment where Peru secures Haven. They're now up 9-4 to four on their attacking side of the map. There's a reason they picked into this map. They are confident, and they seem well-prepared against France's ideas. Won't be much to speak about of France, but the Sheriffs can still find value. Jose is already taking down one. Takes down one. You're going to want to try and snatch up some of those Guardians for Peru. Where do you choose to go? Well, you found everyone at B. And it's going to be Asku and Weechi trading out engagements. Salad and Reach Last right there. Game. Now into a 3v1 Fabazin. Your teammate did it just a round ago. Now it's your turn. I've heard the tale about the French Sheriff before. It's good in these situations. But Fabazin has had his moments. If we hearken back to yesterday, what kept Peru in the game. They started down 2 to 10. It was clutches, 1v3s, 1v2 situations they never should have won that secured them that match. And it might just be what it takes to close this one out, too, because Fabison's found a gap. He'll at least have the C site, but he likely wants to get forward of this before he commits to the spike plant. A 1v2 is way more winnable in the post plant left. than a 1v3. Not a lot of health to go around for France, whereas Fabzin has that shield available, of course, full health. Got to be careful on this check. You're going to run it. Oh, what, what a in shot. The... Oh, my. You got to get that plant down, though. I mean, but you said it. A 1v2, a lot more doable. And now you've got that plant. You can back yourself up and wait for the push. He has a full belt of utility and full health as well. This seems like the perfect situation for Peru to steal another clutch. The first engagement, and it is going to be Yozai so weak. 17 health, there's not a lot of time. It's chunking down, but it's going to be Yozai, despite that, able to get the kill. But again, when it comes to France, a good job from them. But Fabazin, I think Peru, they just keep making things so uncomfortable. Defense, offense, doesn't matter. But if there was going to be a comeback, that would be the round to secure it. Remember, only sheriffs invested there. And with a successful brawl in mid, they get a leg up in this half. Peru won't have much to invest into this round. Looks like they might be setting their sights towards mid, just prioritizing getting that spike plant down, doing as much damage as they can. With a good lead, like they have, it can be a game of chipping away. 
not having to worry too much about the current rounds, but setting yourself up for success with ultimates, with money in the future. Weechi getting close to that lockdown. But it is going to be a fast push on to B, straight into the back line. Chucho gets one, tries to get away into the smoke, cut down by Hawks on the wall bank. But we do get that spike plant. Weechi will be taken down. Classic, just not good enough at that range. So France keeping this one secured for the moment. Only one weapon picked up. Tabo Deus with it in his hands, but he's getting overwhelmed from so many different angles, and Peru's done enough here. The Bucky will prowl within the smoke, try and pounce on one, but no opportunity arises, and France get it up to six. I like that. It was clean. A great job out of France, and I'd like to see more rounds like that. Perhaps a bit more confidence from them. The Diffuse comes in. What we saw when they were on offense, they got those two rounds, and then Peru shut them down. So all you can get is two in a row. Then we're going to give back piecemeal moments to you. So we'll see if that plays out in the second half. Map one here in the semifinal best of three. Peru and France. Potential here to be in the grand final. France is cooking something up over towards B. Both duelists in the breach on standby there. Maybe going for a similar aggression to that second round that was so effective. We'll see, turn it up. They'll get at least some information from that, but I don't know if maybe they'll expect this. Neon does get the alarm bot out. That'll be good information. We'll stop anyone from getting proactive on that flank. But you notice Peru wants to take it easy here. Being overzealous against a comp like this, allowing them to react into you is how you get punished. And you already see, we're not even 30 seconds into the round, and there's a Neon push through mid, there's a Jet ready to do the same. They have very forward positioning here, which means if we see an A commitment, a flank could be make or break for France to win this one. Chuto, you know that they want to push up onto this site, but... They spotted each other. This flank has to be called off now. The Nian will go all the way back, which means these site anchors are stuck out alone, but does it matter? Osco finds one. Support is incoming, at least from his omen. And Chuto trying to use the updraft to get any information on where the rest of France is on this site. Only getting tagged point. up in the process, but well, the rest of the team says, you make some noise, hey, keep them busy, because we're heading our way over to see, but reach out. <laughs> I'm Shuno done with the noise. Caught. Yeah, Goodbye. that's a very tough player to lose now for this post fight. Who's going to be the hero to get proactive for Peru? All France has to do here is group up, play this retake together. Their double dive is going to be very effective in situations like this, especially with a full kit of breach detail. That breach, so huge, but it's Weechi gets one, gets two, despite Enemy the concuss, but Soren Yozai answering back, and now 3v1, Weibo Dev on their own, can't make it happen. Soren locks it down, two rounds, and we're all tied up. It wasn't the fastest of starts for Soren, but we have to remember, he's right now the player in the tournament with the most kills. He has been so pivotal in France's run thus far. And seeing him step up in a round like this is massive. Like the idea out of Peru, I think they make some good calls there, but the retake is well set up. And crucially, that re-clear to punish Shuto on the retake gives them the advantage to eventually win out in that late round. Timeout called here. Peru realizes that that lead they once had is starting to diminish. Three retakes in a row, one for France. It is going to be... A tactical timeout on the side of Peru, and I want to talk about Yozai on, on France's team, Mimi, because we saw a, a pretty slow start, and, and sure. it has come alive. She's done a great job of providing a lot more impact on this half. I believe now 7 and 11, a decent amount of assists to boot, and I think that also really, that impact, helping them finally be able to secure these rounds. Yeah, his support is really critical in a comp like this. When you have double duelists, all that pressure that's taken off the duelist back goes on to the initiator players, to your omen, sending out the paranoia at a right time, not catching any of your teammates. He's been really good at that on the defense. His paranoia to help defend A, really important in that last round. Now, we do have to turn our attention to Peru, because their money is in a tough spot. They do have that lockdown to work with but we'll likely want to save that for the future. This is France's opportunity to really bolster this lead and build up a bank. They certainly got the ults to do it as well. That bolt out. 
I'm really neon. surprised it's the Neon hopping instead of the Jet in this composition, but sometimes it's just about comfort and Hawks. He's game for it, he'll push up long. And who can you find? No one just yet misses on the initial contact, forced to back off, trades immediately onto the site. A moment of a low with Chuto. A beautiful two before taking out Salad there to trade, and now the plant, but it is a 2v3. Enemy remaining. And Weibo is in heaven, but look where Soren, he's made his way around the flank. He has one isolated, taken down, but not the second to come. It's a Sheriff instead to win, and that is a thrifty round one for the side of Peru. And that's, uh, how many times have we seen Weibo Deus do this? You need those moments from Peru, those clutch factor grabs, those great moments. Yes, you have Soren on that play through a short. Don't expect to get the first kill, but Weibo ready and prepared denies any potential crazy play. Soren, a good job, but Weibo there to answer. This is going to be a big round. Lots of ults online on both sides. The tipping point for the economy from France. They want to stay in it. It really does have to come in this round. Seeker's already popped. You see three players walking down C long. They're going to play retake on A, but they need their Sova alive for this retake, and they succeed at that. Weechi gets the information, knows that at least one is there, turret taken down as well. The Neon flying back in to spawn. A little bit of a ring around the rosy with Weechi finally taken down, but Peru will have the information on the flank. Peru really wants to push towards spawn here, do something to get proactive, but they can't because of that Hunter's Fury coming in. Redo Deus up in heaven again, but forced to concede his position. They're all stuck on this site here, and Francis retake is incoming. There we go, the Viper pit out. Salad, though, able to convert at least one with it. Yozai will need to wait till the next round. Fabson gets another. Salad there again. And now it's just Soren in a 1v2 with the plant. Such a tricky situation, but on a 3K. Can you make it four? Can you get the ace only? Six HP. Salad ending it with a 3K on the side of Peru. A nice commitment of ults that worked out perfectly in their favor. That could be the final note on Haven here for France, a very important round, a lot put into that one. And I do like the change up there, the really proactive fast flank retake is a good idea. But where it starts to fall apart is all around this Viper's pit and the spacing again is always killer. When you're going into these retakes, one player gets ahead of the curve, gets caught out in that pit, trying to get an advantage over the Viper. And from there, your man advantage slowly slips away. And now you're having to take another tactical, tactical pause here for France. What do you think they're talking about, Mimi? I know you're a mind reader. I One think it has to be around. around how to play on these retakes and how proactive they're going to be. Because everything in this comp is about balance. Committing to taking extremity control. But when do you go for the, the flanks? When do you go to reset and rotate back together? It's a really tough balance to strike. Even top pro teams struggle with Neon compositions like this one. And I'd honestly like to see them air a little bit more on giving space and being able to play into these faster flood retakes. There is a lot of sustain on Peru once they get into the post hunt. But if you can find that timing to flood in, especially because you, you have that Neon who can always be there so quickly on the rotates, you have opportunities to catch people off guard. What we talked about last round being pivotal. It's now gone from a pivot to a comeback to now maybe the last chance because the economy is real bad right now for France. It is rough and it is only getting worse. An immediate to fall on the side of France. Soren will commit onto that blade storm. You're gonna have to make it worthwhile. Dog comes out, Peru pushing on to A. Will get that site control, a regroup out of France. So they'll have to try and manage this retake. Shoot us, just cutting him down through the smokes. Quick spam away, Jose. You know, one versus five. Barely a lick of damage done by any of his teammates. And My he goodness. is not long for this one. Peru on map point. Map point, map and point. they've held that lockdown this whole time. You are on map point. Use that investment to secure that round, and so much dominance from Peru here. A great job so far. France, they've had their moments, but Mimi, it felt like, on at least France's side, a tale of, of a pacing mismatch on the offense and the defense. Now. Yeah, I think we've really seen that come through. Those little mistakes 
get magnified when you're against a team as solid as Peru. Same a lobby control from both sides. Hawks is forward. He has a ping, but it's the same scenario as last round. Two players cut down, a third to drop. France is running out of ideas. They've gone into the same aggressive plays, and Peru has now punished it twice in a row. They're on the edge of taking us to the second map with an advantage. A Hail Mary, Rolling Thunder, dash back into the site. Can Sorn get it done? He finds one, two, but he's left down alone. He'd have to do everything to keep his team in it, and it's just not possible. Peru, map number one from upsets throughout the tournament, from taking down Canada to now here in the semifinals, they are dominant to get the advantage. They want that match against Indonesia. What I loved, Mimi, out of Peru here in particular is that we saw a lot of that reactivity from them, those clutch plays from them in the quarterfinals against Canada. But here, they feel more in sync. They feel more like this unified front that doesn't have to react. They are much more proactive on dismantling any of the attempts out of the side of France. So it will be Peru. 1-0 here in the best of three. Now a map away from going up against Indonesia in the final, Mimi. And I love the plays I've seen so far, but not over just yet. No, it absolutely is not. A lesser team definitely would have fallen to the composition that we saw here out of France. Their individual players are excellent, but the coordination was just too good on map one for Peru to be taken advantage of. Again, we're seeing huge step ups from players like Shuto, from players like Wabodeas, who have just been electric in all all of these big games for Peru. They seem primed to take this finals, but there's still a lot left to play in the series. Yeah, anything can happen. And again, yes, it might have been 13-7 in favor of Peru, but France got here for a reason, Mimi. But what I really want to know is what our desk thought about that victory on the side of Peru and what's going to happen next. Hey, Mimi, thank you very much. Our second semifinal is up and running. Haven, Peru's pick. The South Americans take it and have got the advantage going into map two. France at risk here of dropping out. And, you know, they've got a lot of steam behind them. I think the per Peru just never stopped surprising everybody. You know, you were talking about them as being underdogs at the very beginning of this, the dark horses and all that good stuff. It's time to take them seriously, Jess. Yeah, they've definitely put enough evidence on the paper now for me to turn around and say they have what it takes. They have the substance, they have the breadth of skill, they have the ability, not just in roles, but capacity. And I think they put a lot on show here on Haven. I will say that there's probably some extraneous forces working on Haven. The composition may be yeah. sort of working in their favor. So yeah. yeah, the win conditions were strong for them and they took advantage of it. I mean, I love their structured defense. Definitely yep. worked out pretty good in the defense, uh, taking advantage of tier one, lots composition by using some components. Definitely uh, cutting C with Viper Wall, etc., and uh, giving the Jet the early initiative as well. Uh, what you can do, you have to yeah. clear some spots before you decide what to do. Yeah, I mean, we said that Peru were like a, a real unit. Well, especially this time around, you know, they were a little bit on the back foot in the quarterfinals, I think. Mimi and Katie mentioned it there, but it was yeah. nice to see them, you know, being on the front foot, being proactive this time around. Yeah, yeah, dictating the pace in a lot of these maps, yeah. especially on Haven, when there's so much room to move around, you really need to command the space, you need to hold the power positions, and then once you've got that, you need to be able to sort of own your ag aggressive play style that you have in those particular positions. I enjoyed how Peru played, mm -hmm. but I don't think they necessarily had to go above and beyond on Haven. I think on the other maps, we will see them have to really be pushed to their limits, but I don't think necessarily they will push that hard. I mean, there are some dramatic issues right now. So they decided to put Killjoy out and uh, take Neon yes. in, yeah? yeah? So they required to get at least eight or maybe nine rounds in the attacking yeah. side. They only stuck in the fourth round, yeah? I yeah. mean, four rounds for double duelist comp like this yeah. without any Sentinel, it's not gonna work. Yeah. It has to work, uh, at least you're winning, yeah? Uh, but in the second half, we see some spirit coming out of uh, somewhere, and then uh, Peru's coach take a timeout, yep. and then boom, that's so, it. Yeah, I mean, Jess, let's take a look at the French agent composition. Yeah, we got it. I mean, this is, we're just going to harp on about this because your girl decided, this is why I had to run to the desk very wildly at the end, I found my own French informant, my little background information, and I found out from the rumor mill <laughs> the reason they took this composition was 10 minutes before the match. Wow. Yeah, 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 I know, it gets worse. 10 minutes before the match, they all discussed that this map probably wasn't going to go their way. 
and they were going to take a risk to go something crazy, you know, sort of like take the aggression, see if they can take the space and just win off of pure team deathmatch. So they decide to go with this double duelist. They bring on the Neon. They've never run this comp before. And my French informant says, they felt like maybe it was just a throwaway, win the next two maps, and they would be confident. And that okay. is, that's a massive risk to take. I've not seen many coaches make that decision. I mean, Jess, uh, you have to give the credit to Peru. The way they play mm. is against Neon and Jet or any uh, C execute meta uh, comps uh, pretty nice, right? It I is. mean, they cut the wall uh, into, they cut C into retake yeah. with the wall. So they don't really play C that much. Which means uh, this comp has huge uh, execute upper hand, yeah. but you're ex literally like executing in a place where defending is not defending. Yeah, that's yeah. the main reason. I Does mean, part of you just respect the risk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, as a coach, I probably wouldn't have made that decision uh, myself. Maybe because you know, taking a risk in a semi-final like this uh, at that level on the first map as well is such a dangerous thing to do. You must have very good mental in your players to just completely go. We are okay dropping an entire map in a best of three. In a best of five, I can see throwing like not throwing a map, but going. Okay, that map's not going to be ours. Let's not focus on it. Do whatever you want. Let's focus on the other four maps. Yeah. But in a best of three. Are they that confident that the next two maps are going to be theirs? Maybe on paper. I'm looking at the stats and saying, yeah, it's, it is pretty good in their favor, but that assumes no mistakes. I don't think, uh, well, it's pretty obvious that we're yet to see the France that Correct. has been so dominant Correct. off stream, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, they dropped the first uh, map against Sweden as well. So they come back from uh, like Sunset, which, uh, which was the opponent's peak as well. And the they prevailed for, uh, in the sunset uh, 14 to 12, which was all time, and then uh, make it to the third map. And now they're here, they're gonna, I mean, if I know Mene, uh, he's gonna make that pep talk and then uh, hype up all the players. What's being said? And, I yeah. mean, what's being said right, right now? Right. I'm, I'm one right. of your players, right. I'm one of your players, I'm French. So am I, so am yeah. I. Uh, I mean, <laughs> civil play, coach, civil play, what do you <laughs> say? Je ne sais pas français. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, all right. um, the main problem, mm -hmm. I can't do that in, in English right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, but in Turkish, I, I, I would probably do whatever. So uh, I would concentrate on this is not who we are. This is this is not we play that yeah. game. Yeah. So we have to be ourselves in the next map that is upcoming right now. Like I will focus on more mental and okay, like more mental. spiritual mm -hmm. rather than the actual theoretical plays of that game, you know. Because they are capable on the other maps. I mean, Absolutely. on paper, we've seen the top 16, we saw the group stages, they obviously are confident, and then they've made that very risky decision to just sort of play that map wildly and with the whimsy, as the North Americans would say. So, wild and whimsy didn't work for them. They did try things, some things did look kind of good, yeah. and it allows them to just throw that map away, and it won't stick in their mental, like yep. you said, because they already agreed before they jumped into it that they were happy for that to not be their map win. So. I'm obsessed with finding out who your French informant is, by the way. Uh, you, know know a, you know a French-speaking man. Oh, I know it is. Ah, uh, you know it, it's right. We won't leak my informant because then they wouldn't be an informant, would they, so? <laughs> no, but you know, it's, it is a, we mentioned it being a risk. It can punish you, you know, you forget. Hugely, hugely. It's easy to forget that this is such a rare opportunity, number one. And number two, it's a single elimination bracket. You make the slightest mistakes and it can be game over. Not only that, I mean, like, uh, this decision had to uh, switch not only one player. The Killjoy himself didn't uh, change it to uh, Neon, right? So Killjoy actually turned into uh, Omen, and the Omen player from previous game had to play uh, Neon. Yeah. And that's the, one of the main problems. Jess, you're excited for the next map, right? Oh, I love Lotus. I don't know, there's some Lotus haters out there. And after what Ray did on that map in the yeah. previous semi-final, it got me all hyped up. I don't think we'll be seeing the judge around every corner, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to burst <laughs> your bubble. It won't be the same type of gameplay because France promises us, or at least my informant says, that they promise us much higher level Who's gameplay. This I'll tell you later, All after right. the desk, trust me, I will give you the inside scoop, and the inside scoop on Lotus should be the fact that France is starting on defense. It can be a little bit tricky to control a three-site map yep, at times, yep. but we've had Haven, they know what they're going up against, and they're confident Lotus is their pick for a reason. We've spoken a lot about what went wrong for France and, and bad decision-making. Let's talk about what was so strong and so impressive from Peru. Oh, I, I mean... Who do you want to bring up? Go on. Every Let's single go for it. The player. The unit, the unit. 
they are an absolute unit. If you look, I mean, I'm showing you my stats right here. If you look at all of these players, I don't think I've had a tighter knit of like people uh -huh. participating in kills this entire tournament. All of them held hands, all of them took their shot, all yeah. of them were engaging. ACS between what, 210 and 230? That is a tight, tight yep. range between all of the players. So sharing the load, the only thing that sort of went downhill for them was opening kills, which is great for them because yeah. if they lost the opening kills and in the mid to late round recollected themselves and still won, that means that no matter where you strike in a round, they are still going to come back and win. Let's go into like player perspective, right? Okay. So, uh, for example, right, we're three. Yes. I'm not playing a good game, but Jess, he's del she's delivering. Popping off. Like, I'm popping off. She's popping off, and yep. that hush hypes me up, you know? Of and course. Peru, that's what they're capable of, every single one. Mm. And they've got such high energy, and oh. they're going to need it here in Haven. Oh, well, yes. sorry. Lots another. Neon. Another neon. Let's go. Yes, I want this. You weren't expecting that. Away, you. I mean, this is this is the comp that we have going, yeah. but I mean, I wondered if there would be a change, a safer, a I safer mean, comp. I mean, this is like a nice one because like this can break up choke points so easily with double it initiative really with it. So the fact that they have a lack of um, wiper doesn't really change. They're gonna apply pressure all the way, yeah. like wherever they want, they will get it for sure. With neon, with breach, this is like so good. I, I and the fact that we get that Gecko back as well, I mean, I underestimated how well Gecko would play out on Sunset. Of course, yeah, now is. we're going to get it back on the Lotus. And when I underestimated, I'm not, I'm not going to make the mistake twice, you know, fool me once, you know, but I'm, I'm absolutely on the train. I think Gecko will work. It has shown to work. Uh, having a Neon on the other side, would you say this is two of the most diverse compositions against each other we've seen here at the entire tournament? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I yeah, think it so. has to be. And that makes it very, very exciting. Ian. Ask me the question. Go on. You want me to ask you if I think it's going to win? If it's going to go three maps? Yeah, definitely. All no, right. no, no, it, no. It's going to three maps. What makes you so confident, briefly? Uh, I mean, Valiant is solid on, and I love this comp, to be honest. Oh, you love the comp? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I'm digging I'm it. fond of uh, double controller anyways, but this is the this is the one Valiant, uh, I mean, Francis is going to win. Just for the first time, are we going to go to three maps here on the stage? I actually think we will. All right, let's find out. Katie, Mimi, take us into map two. It's Lotus. The desk is confident in the comeback story, Mimi. They say we're going to see a map three. And, well, they seem to like that France composition as well. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, you might think after that map number one that seeing Hawk back on the Neon could be a mistake after some of the spacing issues they saw. I think here, especially with a start on defense, this comp is excellent. The strength comes down to that Sky and Neon, being able to get information and constantly rotate back back and forth across the map to preempt where the attackers are going. If it's implemented right, I think it can be probably one of the best compositions here on Lotus. But it really, again, comes down to the coordination and the implementation, which was lacking a little bit from France on map number one. But something tells me it's going to be better here on Lotus. I think you hit the nail on the head, the neon fitting here, but that pacing ever important. Red Bull gives you wings. And that Neon is going to have to fly. France wants a chance to see an extended map three be the first one that we've seen go the distance on main stage. It starts right here, right now. Blinded. And it starts with aggression. Hawks is already deep yeah. towards spawn. Weechi will get away from things for a moment as Peru is fast reacting to be. Weechi strikes first. It will be two down on the side of France. Dog out for the information and a scramble away. Asuku could be in trouble here, but he's making good on it for a moment. Taps away at one and has his distance for now, but he's about to be overwhelmed and can't stand up to it. Peru have C, but this door soon to be tapped and reach. A chance to pick someone off if he catches the timing right. You see this flank as well already coming through from Jose, but it's being held and he's down. Fab is in ready and waiting. Wingman's gonna plant spike. Picks off the flank and it's going to be Wingman with the plant and the setup on to C. It's a little bit of util here for Reach, but not going to matter if Fabizan says no one is getting past me. Peru, first on the board. 
Really great reactions there out of Peru. Initially sending players who were committing to be back to punish that fast flank through C that France was committing to, and then making the call to slow things down and wait for mistakes to come out from France. You saw one by one French players were trying to regain an advantage, find an opportunity, not necessarily the wrong play, but Peru punish it very well and get themselves yet another pistol. They've been excellent at these thus far, winning both on map number one. Peru really feeling like they're oozing confidence at this point, looking so very strong. Birds across the way, smokes out on either side of the board. And a split here from Peru as they look to get as much information as possible. Neon hovering over by B on the other side of that door. The flash comes in. Hawks is going to get dogged out here, but it doesn't actually clear him or did it. Not enough for Ouija to stay alive. He's taken down a beautiful shot from the Neon of France. I like this rotation from France onto that C site. It pays off. Yozai gets one, but Chuto need to deal with that turret. Takes it out without too much problem. Yozai will have to be careful though, only 49 HP to work with. I got the spike. But player advantage as Dizzy goes out. The plan will be in as is Mosh Pit. How do they do this retake? Well, they need more shots like that. Hawks finds another, and it's looking nearly flawless at this point. Only one man left, and he's taken down as well. It is three kills clean from Hawks on the Sheriff. These Frenchmen, they are damn good with those Sheriffs. Two pistol rounds in a row now, where they steal away that second. Great regain out of France. This is what you want to see, especially on that second map, especially where you're starting the very beginnings of a comeback to tie things up early. There. Don't allow Peru to get too comfortable too quickly. Already Hawks very close to having that ult online. There. There. This is kind of what Vlad was talking about on the desk, right? When you're struggling, when you've lost map one, having a player step up early in a game, make some big plays, show you that confidence yet again, reinstill it in the team can be so important. And I think Hawks is already doing that thus far. You see this fast A lobby control that you'll oftentimes expect with this neon composition. Actually, a little surprised to see them use the, the wall in that way. Most of the time you won't do that, so you can watch the cross instead. But that is more of a, an issue of just kind of Conditioning. We'll keep our eyes out on the way that they like to play this A lobby control, really that ever important part of the map as this half continues. Fab is in close on the Seekers. You have to work your way onto this A site. Asku gets tagged up in tree. He forced it back off for the time being, and now the push comes in. Multiple through tree, but Asku able to get at least one. Dog is out. But it's Weechi on to the point. Hawks so impactful time after time as Soren finally gets the cavalry there to deny this plant with two. Fabazin tries to do it, but it's Soren with a 3k on the round. Great and work a by lead. France there. The anchoring on that A site looks perfect. And yeah, it really feels like the first time this entire series that they've been able to pull ahead, even if it is just by that one round. Now it comes down to the question of the rifles. If we take a look at the ultimates, Peru already has a lot of tools. The thrash on the gecko is a big one. Because you can pick it up, you can early clear to take something like a lobby and then use it a second time to take into sight. It's such a powerful tool, and it means that France has to be very careful about their spacing in this round. Neon, no fear out of Hawks to take control, push forward onto that A site. The idea with that wall is actually to punish if an omen had teleported across, because it absolutely isolates that player who's normally teleporting back rubble. Love some of these ideas we're seeing from Hawks, but he's in a tough spot here, out alone, just trying to hold this forward position. If he loses his life here, it means rotates. We'll be able to come in time, but it's no problem for this guy. Finds a shot, gets away. Beautiful job. Stalls out that opening push, able to secure an elimination and backs off with Hawk's life. Very, very well done. Some of that better pacing coming out on Neon. And look at how often the sky is moving around the map. He rotates over to A, flashes here, sees no one's committed. And now that Neon on Sky are going back over to find new space. And that location is B. Flash notices 
There are people in that small room, and they're gonna re-clear it off of a stun. Another stunner out of Hawks. This guy is unstoppable here on Lotus. Hawks excellent wherever Peru goes. France is ready to meet them on the site. No plant opportunity just yet. Reach straight into the smoke. Beautiful job right as Dog goes past. Gets into the smoke. Chuto with a trade. But not a lot of time. You gotta make this happen. And with trades like this, it's gonna get ever more difficult as Fabazin falls. And France, maybe they found their groove. Yeah, it got a little chaotic there for Peru on that execute after being really caught on guard by this positioning from Hawks. They try and find a new way they need to pivot into B, but this guy, Neon Comp, is fast enough. The France are ahead of the curve. Rotates like that are going to be so important to keep this defensive side going for the French squad. The best lead that we've seen out of France so far, and no surprise that that timeout on the side of Peru coming through. They've been a bit on the back foot so far, a strong map one, but a moment now for them to discuss, Mimi, exactly what they want to do to retake control of what's happening in and around the map. That's always a tough pivot to kind of change your mindset after dominating on the first map, now struggling in the early stages of Lotus, kind of forces you to, to reset the energy, not be overconfident, not make mistakes just because you were dominating at one point and also strategically to figure out how to play against this Neon that thus far has been so much more effective than what we saw on map one. And thus far, the biggest difference I'm seeing is just the amount of support behind Hawks. He always has his sky with him. He's always, you know, just using the stun after getting one kill to get out, not going for those same somewhat greedy plays that we're getting taken advantage of by Peru on Haven. A different map, a different mindset, perhaps a different France. Oh Can they extend this lead out to three. The Neon wall up. I really like this idea. They fake the same A lobby control that they've gone for for every round and are instantly rotating back over because they expect a fast B pop on this anti-eco. And they're absolutely right. What a read from France. And they've done it every single round and it pays off. Hawks, you might put up the wall at B, but you're there to get that first blood. He's over it. Don't, don't. Okay, we're good. No overheating in this round. Hawks gets held back. That's really the dichotomy of performing so well early on, going for just enough and not overcooking it. But France finds a balance in the spike and a tough place to recover here for Peru. And you said it, Hawks, France, reading so effectively every move that Peru is trying to make, that spike. I wouldn't be the one to want to have to try and go and get it, but, well, that's why. You're going to have Weibo, but with Slot's the fall. done it. I mean, he dips his feet into shark-infested waters. So he gets out just fine, and now that does open up some more opportunities in this round, but you still have to remember what weapons are left. It started as an eco round. 30 seconds they still left. have not been able to recover any weapons. It'll be a late re-hit into this B site. But Reach is still here, has a little bit of utility to sustain. However, Peru has gotten in, and France is going to have to play the retake, but that's a great start already, and they'll just keep it going. They're not letting this eco get dangerous whatsoever. Shutting them down in excellent fashion, starting to get loud, and for good reason. The best lead we've seen from France, and they're determined to grow it ever larger. In this next rifle round, I'm looking at some of the same things that we were talking about earlier from Peru. What game plans do they have cooked up around these ultimates? That's why they've given a lot of respect to the A lobby control that France has been going for. I'd like to see them threatening late round re-clears, re late lurks into that position, because that's really the way you can punish this comp that's fast rotating. You have to force that Neon and Sky to have too many areas to deal with, and it's a really hard map to mid-round on. So I'm looking at Wabo Deus, the IGL, to adapt to aggressive plays like this. And well, <laughs> that's going to be a good way to at least shut down that ult. Slad with two. And now, the first player advantage we've seen in a few rounds at this point. As they look to move their way over towards C, Soren going to be there to meet them. The backup coming through from Yozai. Does he suspect Ouija got this far? With that Dizzy coming through, I don't think Soren's going to uh -oh. be ready. Absolutely not. Freebie for Weechi there. And that's the regain you're hoping for. We'll get 
that final plan at the very end of the round. A great job from Peru and denying effectiveness from the Neon ult as well. On top of it, a great job from them to perhaps start finding their footing again. Second time we've seen that really aggressive C long push out of France. I think they thought that Peru was just going to be going for a faster A exec, but everyone is still holding back, playing their default in spawn, and that's so important against a proactive comp like this. It's going to force France to slow things down, to not over-aggress, despite the confidence that they've gotten early on here. I don't know if Hawks knows how to slow down, maybe. And not in this round. First death. Well, maybe no. in this one, yeah. We'll see ya in round seven. No one on this A site either. The dog's gonna try and push back through, and Soren's gonna try and work on a bit of a flank, just taking the duel against Weechi, and Beautiful. Weechi's good for it. Weechi, always reliable on the side of Peru to get things done. Okay. Doesn't matter if you can't see him, you can still take him down. Looking to get that plant. Fabazin and Chuto there as well. Weibo. This Weibo, is... what I noticed, Mimi, Weibo has been quiet so far on this map. And maybe much like what we saw from Yozai on that first map, starting to come online. And you're seeing those rounds follow it. When you're in IGL and you start making the right calls, you start building the confidence there, a lot of the time it's going to translate into the individual performance, into just shooting your gun too. Might see that pick up for Weibo Deus. But right now, I think what I and I imagine Francis coach as well in this timeout is seeing is some of those same mistakes that haunted them on Haven. Getting over aggressive in the early rounds to go for these plays to take space, conceding a lot of first duels. If you give Peru those opportunities, they're very good to close it out. So this, honestly, I'd like to see them slow things down. You can still go for mound control, for rubble control early, as you kind of need to on this map. But pushing past those attack-sided barriers, getting too far forward, is a risk that Peru is going to punish. France getting away with it. A few rounds was able to create that three-round gap, but you blink and suddenly Peru tactical timeout, at least on Peru's side, that was very effective for them. Yeah. They closed that gap to just one round. Now France, perhaps, hoping to widen it back out. And Mena, the coach of France, well, every single one of the players on this team are inexperienced, new to the global stage. Their coach, he's been around the block, playing in the VRLs in France, and now coaching this really purpose-built team for Red Bull Campus Clutch to possible success. Four alts now for Peru. Same A lobby control setup, but this time, the Omen just faking that teleport. I love that energy. You love to hear that from the crowd here in Istanbul. Getting loud for their team. But it's going to be Peru. Moving forward to meet Yozai. And finally, this thrash coming out will work in conjunction with the Skydog to clear the entirety of the C site. So it's going to come down to a retake here for France. Look at Hawks, though. He's got a flank already working to pinch onto this site. But already oh. Ozai is in the perfect position. He cuts down three through the smoke, and Hawks is there to help for more. It's all on one man in but a flash, and he can't even get it started. Ozai, a 4K. Oh, my goodness. Talk about the ult invested on the side of Peru as well for, for White Yozai to just come in and shut it all down. Get that 4K Viper's Pit. We'll see you later, Thrash. We'll see you later. We talked a lot about the confidence, and that's definitely one to reinstill it in France here. A few rounds left in the half, and that was really a tipping point for Peru. They used a lot of their big ultimates in that round, the Seekers, the Thrash, and that's allowed France to build up an ult economy of their own. When you pick the breach into this map, which is honestly very unusual, especially when you're playing it with this Neon, and when you're making the sacrifice of playing solo controller, that ult can be so important. Weibo not willing to let Hawks get away with it. Gets two before he's traded out. Player advantage on the side of Peru, but... No one on site yet. But they know it's gonna be that reach. I wouldn't hate to see this lockdown even invested in this round. Just secure it for Peru. It's a very pivotal round here. 
Could be a swing for the rest of the half, and they're going to take their time in this one. Wait for any re-aggression from France to try and even the odds. France, run. I think, though, there you go. comfortable you go. playing the retake. The question for me really is, do they invest ultimates into this one? I think they will if the Sky can get anything done in this A site. Look at Peru. They're biding their time still. Wingman's going to plant spike. Wingman for the plant. We do have a scoop going around the corner. We'll take out Wingman, so no plant just yet. Seekers invested at least one. We still do have a potential lockdown on the side of France if they care to use it. 30 seconds. Spike is down on the A site. Wingman, his entire left. job was to win this run, and with him taken down, now they have to re exec on it. And this is where they have to start to scramble. Chuto, what could have been disastrous, able to get two. But it's going to be a scoop with a 3k. Can you make it four? Can you get it done? Chuto, the hero Peru needed there. Things get risky, things get weird. Just not enough ammo. A shot or two more, and that could have been a clutch going the other way. And this round was chaotic, but I really think one of the biggest issues there is just the over-reliance on, on Wingman. A lot was yeah. asked of him yeah. to go in and plant completely alone. With that lockdown, giving the gap in drop, it meant someone could come back in and spam. That almost was the end of the round right for Peru. But when the strategy doesn't work out, they have heroics to Shuto, be it on Gecko, be it on Jet. He's always good for it. When in doubt, Peru has that X factor to get things done. Trying to get some information over at B. They will back off. I got the spike. They've managed to pull at least three members of France as they rotate back toward that A site. But they know, and it's going to be Yozai there, regrouping with the rest of the team, but... By the way, he just had this, the other round, has another thrash online. That's showing so how effective. much Shinto is doing. He'll get into the site with the lockdown through. France has a good setup for the retake here. Practically full utility left on both their initiators, and already a great start from Yozai. You invest in that lockdown, you convert it with an immediate kill as well. You're on to that site. Peru, no one there to try and defend on that defuse just yet. Smoke on top of it. A tricky situation for them to be in. Was able to pick up Thrash, but look at that! Three in a row, Weechi with another. Now a 3v1. Not a lot of time to make this happen. You're not gonna get it done. We're about to be all tied up. Weechi with a 3k. You invested on the lockdown. It doesn't pay off. Huge round there for Peru to be able to take home. And it all comes down to this post plant setup. We have Molly's to stall. The second round of that thrash comes through as well. And means that France is forced to push forward to fight into that, those crossfires established outside of A. But another fight towards A lobby. The game has really been defined by this brawl. And this time Peru will be contesting it. France has been holding this lead whittled away piecemeal by piecemeal here from Peru. Now things all tied up 5-5 as we get toward the end stages of this first half. Trades back and forth, but it's Salad with a nice little two-piece. As they once again look to lock things down here at A. But potential here for Soren to shake things up on his flank. At this point, they're just going to want to group up and commit into a site, but are they watching the flank? Oh, <laughs> Absolutely, <no>. Soren. <laughs> Dives straight into his death and leaves it down to Jose, who's spotted out as well. They can just run for the hills at this point, go all the way around to another site, but it doesn't matter. His Fabazine is there to find a frag. This is a great start to the map for France, but again, Peru is showing that ability to recover, to use those clutches as a catalyst to build a strong half. Maybe something that I've really noticed throughout both maps from Peru's side is that those flanks from France, they're always ready for them. They're always prepared. They get shut down instantaneously. Because those flanks have been coming through both maps. At this point, Peru is very ready for it. France has to be very careful of when they implement those plays. Same A lobby aggression, same A lobby fight. Who wins it this time? Hawks is in. He's diving through the smokes, and Bodeos is on the other side. He'll cut down to another opportunity on Hyatt Sorn instead to win it. He's still proving to be a star despite the change onto the Omen, but was it enough? 
They lose the player advantage on the side of France, and now Peru have a familiar situation where they take the pause, they slow things down in this mid-round. That blind not gonna connect. No information to be had. You should run. And it's oh, a dagger, perhaps. The lockdown from Peru. And no ult to answer on the side of France. There's this time, Thrash will be able to get it down. Yeah, there's no Spike smokes planted. available on the side of France, which means they have to be cautious about this. They have to fight forward to get rid of these players in the crossfire. Last player well, standing. that's certainly a way to start things off. Reach with two. Player advantage swinging in their favor. Gonna be able to get a half onto that. Defuse going for the whole thing. Reach able to get one. Forces Reach to back off. But now it doesn't even matter. Reach goes for it, but Weechi, the Red Bull clutch says, no, 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 no. You're not tying it up at the half. This is not 6-6. Six, six. You might have been in the lead, Mimi, but 7-5. As this time, Peru gonna swing over to the defense. What an incredible way to end the round there. Six out of those last seven rounds are picked up by Peru. Really showing that even if they start rough, they're so good at figuring yeah! out how their opponent plays, adapting on the fly. And all that that half came down to at a certain point was a hobby aggression. And it was always France losing first bloods because of it. Now into the second half, we have to change our attention to this defensive side. Maybe let's take a step back. Let's reset now. It is France, their chance on this offense as that neon wall out fast. What do they need to do to execute on this? Well, it has to be about getting that early space and then again, slowing things down, not over committing like we saw on Haven. And they do that well here. They're set up for a great B split. And Fabazine is so alone in main. Fabazine's not worried about it. Maybe she should be a little worried about it. Soren says, no, no, first shots, but I'll get the last ones. I'll get the ones that matter. Yosai there to answer reach on top of it. Slab trying to do what they can. It pays off, but Asku and Soren versus Salad. What a massive clutch this could be, but a back off for the time being. He hears these footsteps, knows it's going to be a rotation over towards the C site. But Salat doesn't have many opportunities to isolate a fight. He really wants to get this down to a 1v1. But they know exactly where he's coming from. That's a great sky flash. Now they know it has to either be waterfall or spawn. And they can just get fully off site here. He does have the orb though. That could be massive here. If he can block off the spike, forces his opponents to push into him. Into the smoke. Salat goes and... The orb is out, knows that they'll have to try and contest into this orb. Just goes to stick it. Are you gonna just stick it? But at the very end, Soren with the 3k, I thought maybe the steal, but no. Not quite. Too scary there. A little, little too close. Yeah, but Soren comes up and keeps the round alive and they do well to win that one. It really does rely on some heroics. I still have no clue how Soren was able to get that initial kill onto the player holding behind the box in B main. He's jump 180-ing. Fabazin seemed ready. Yeah, but sometimes that's what it takes. A magic moment like that. We've seen it from Peru, and now we're seeing it from France, too. France eager to retake the lead. A lead that they held on to effectively through the first half of their defense, but Gonna try and regain the beginnings of their offensive half. Look at all of Peru stacked onto A. Unfortunately, that might not be where France is heading. No, it's gonna have to be the retake here. But just the classics. Shouldn't have too much of a chance in this round. First time we've really seen France able to start with a buffer. They've lost every one of these pistol rounds besides this one that they had just won. So really, it's their first opportunity to actually start a half with the momentum. And I think that's going to be really important on this attacking side for this squad. You can see the movement on that mini-map. Peru knows, especially now that, that spike plane is down. What kind of retake are they going to be prepared for? 
everyone in France set up and waiting for them. Not a ton of utility on the side of France, though. No, certainly not. But they have great positioning. They have time on their side. And Peru's probably just going to look to yeah. uh, die to the spike at the end here. But this does give us a second to talk about the, the comp and the trade-offs that France is making by running this second initiator, the Breach. Normally, you have both the Viper and the Omen, which means in the mid-rounds, you're able to normally have that Viper Wall up towards A, which is conditioning presence. It forces your opponent to be so much more proactive, re-clearing through that smoke. When you only have the Omen, you only have two smokes to deny vision, which means when you're mid-rounding, you have to be so careful about where you're using those two pieces of utility, what timings you're taking. And if you don't do it perfectly, it means you are a lot more telegraphed in where you're finishing than if you had that second controller. So, as we always have to, we have to look at the IGLs, how they can make decisions in the mid-round to keep their team in it. All tied up. A strong finish to the first half out of Peru. But that small lead whittled away. France looking to tip the tides in their favor, eager to get to that map three in the semifinal. So it's going to be a push through secret. Neon straight on to B will take control of heaven. The plant, effective. How do you manage this retake if you're Peru? No sky util, so it's going to have to rely on that gecko flash to get back in here. Chuto, one, not able to get another, but Salad, at least keeping things into a 3v3 is Another player advantage, and Soren, it's all falling apart. Weechi ready and waiting. Great job from them to pick France apart. Those B post plants are very hard when you don't have an opportunity to push forward, get more space. You see, that's what they wanted to do towards spawn, but Peru is very much aware of it. They hold for a moment. They're very good at being patient in the main round, making, making the call on both sides of the map, really. Like, Guys, hang on a second. Wait for them to make a play. It's been so effective thus far. I love you say that because Chuto did that so effectively. Just wait. They'll, they'll come to me. They'll give me the kill. And that's when the flood came in. There. There. Back to the basics. How many times have we seen Hawks with that wall over at A? Poison Orb goes out at door. With this no duelist comp, you can never really be effective in contesting a lobby. Without a raise, without a neon, you're always conceding that space. And that's one of, I think, the advantages that France does find in this second half, being able to get that extremity control way easier with their comp, with those two initiators, with that yeah, neon. Destroyed. Gives them a lot of different options, and in this one, the one they elect towards is rotating over towards C, with a bit of presence being sold on A. That'll keep at least three players here. Weechi, set up, does have turret. Presence on C to get that information. And we'll see it there. The shots come in, forced to back off, but gives enough of that intel to Peru to work their way over through spawn to prepare for this retake as the plant goes down. Weechi, can you find someone through the smoke? No, but Hawks certainly can. Look at Soren, he's just hiding out in this smoke, finds one. Not able to adjust in time to take down Shuto as well, so it's a trade, a chance for Peru still to make something happen in this round. Salad back in, he triggers the alarm bottom, Molly popped at his feet, and that time is continuing to be the biggest enemy of this retake. And Jose there as well, he'll just Beautiful. keep on fighting. Three kills for the man. France have tied us again. Yozai online throughout Lotus. A much closer map, a much harder battle. That's what I love. If all you look at was the stat lines of what was happening on Haven, you'd think, surely, surely, sweet. But no, France. They're here for a reason. They have what it takes. And Fighting tooth and nail, things all tied up. And that lockdown. Simple play. And they're set up over towards B. Might just be going for a more simple hit there. You actually see a bit of a different attempt at this A lobby control. It's a lot harder without the race, but if you invest all three of those players, you can still do it. The question isn't, are they going to place the lockdown? It's where are they going to finish with it? Because you see the spike is still out towards A. And this one blocks a lot of space to allow an A finish. And it will be the fake. 
Hawks is here to further sell this one. Does Peru bite? We'll have to wait and see Hawks. One of the first engagements, Pavazin. Ready and waiting. Beautiful connect, but Soren will answer back as well. They look to get this flood onto A. But I'm curious, Chuto, so many clutch moments. And well, there you go, Weechi with one, Chuto Salad, follow it up. And now suddenly, Yozai, you're all on your own. You invested a lockdown, and well, now you have to try and get yourself a Red Bull clutch to close it out. But he was good for it in just the previous round. Found the 3K there, would need the same at least to get this one done. They know exactly where he is, and he's being picked left. and prodded at from so many different angles. You can only look one direction at once. But again, you said it just around prior, a 3K can certainly do it, but not a lot of time. You still also have to forge yourself that spike plant. And Peru, happy to just sit back and wait. Not making a mistake just yet. Jump out, a jiggle, they know Ten he's off. Left. They're just gonna toy with him. Ooh. Not give him a chance, not give him time. Seven seconds, and the trade is there. Peru pull ahead here. How detrimental on the side of France, Mimi, do you feel that the investment of that lockdown without the round conversion is going to be? That could have been a big tool to get into a site, to get one of these future round wins. But the thing is, the way that Peru is playing has been a lot more fixated on the retake anyway. So it still could have been an issue regardless. I do think that's a creative idea, looping the neon around through as you ult from one side. But Peru has not been falling for these fakes really ever. They're really used to this neon comp, having a lot of those ideas in play. So we really haven't seen them over rotate whatsoever. Tactical timeout though, being called here from France. We're at a critical junction in this half where there's not a lot of ultimates online, where France's economy is in a bit of a tough spot. If they lose here, that might just be the momentum that Peru needs to make it to their first ever international final. Give them the opening and they will fly through it. But France, baring their teeth down just one round, not willing to go out without a fight. It's been more than a year that the boys on Peru have been together competing as a team back at home. For most of them, this is still their first international event, but on this stage, they have stepped up. Be it in the clutches versus Canada to make it here. Be it in the comebacks. They have that, but they have the consistency too, which they've shown throughout this series thus far, but they still have to close. And Hawks is again starting swiftly into B. And the execute is there. Smokes out straight onto the site. They look for that plant. Who is going to risk stepping into that smoke first? Soren answers it with the sheriff. Hawks flies through, connects, and Peru falling like flies. Just Chuto and Fabazin left. Last and unfortunately, too many directions for them to look. We are once again all tied up. And I believe, Mimi, that in previous, a previous Red Bull campus clutch that Peru did take down France. So maybe different roster on the side of France, but an opportunity for them to even the odds, even the scales in a new year. There certainly is. New players, but the same country to represent. France now have won a big one. And they have a chance to regain control of this. Rotating these initiator ultimates can really be the key to success to build momentum on this attacking side. And they have the Rolling Thunder. But look at this, proactivity out of Peru. They sent three ports. Now, now they want to pinch into B, but they weren't suspecting Soren on the other side. France flying back over to the tried and true A. It's a good call. They spotted at least two or three players, heard tons of footsteps over towards C, instantly make this pivot. Weibo there first, but waiting for the rest of the team to catch up. And Hawks, beautiful, traded out by Chuto. But France. They are looking to get this conversion. They want this so desperately, and it is showing in these shots. Now just Fabzin remaining, and well, an ace to be had, and no Red Bull clutch on the side of Peru. France retaking that lead. 
Just three rounds away from giving us our first main stage map three. Remember that Peru's composition does not have a duelist. They're going to struggle to take early map control. It really relies on perfect coordination of their utility to make this composition work. And when you're running out of ideas, when you're starting to lose momentum, sometimes it can be so helpful to have that one star, that duelist player, to step up and keep you in it. They don't have that opportunity, but there's always been opportunities for these players. There's never been a question of if they have star power. It's a matter of who. They make opportunities for themselves, even when it seems like there might not be multiple ults invested. But Slag and Weechi shutting them down, right answered back by Hawks. And just like that, though, Weibo and Fabazin say, give me all your ults. I don't really care. Three V1, and you got nowhere to run. Well, oh, no. Unless you get an opening up like that. Not Asuka like backing this. off, spike in hand. Surely, well, surely that's not how Peru loses this round. A whiff on the flank. A whiff on a flank, which they've been so effective with throughout these maps, but free and clear, at least on this plant. Bob is in, and Rebo Deus, two of the strongest players we've seen from Peru thus far. But the advantages are building. On the other side, Asuka has Seeker, so get information off of that. But now it comes down to that perennial question when you're in a clutch. Can you find an opportunity? Can you isolate a fight? And the answer's no. Fabazin takes him down. And Peru bring us back to a tied game yet again. We are going the distance in this semifinal. And I love it. Each team seizing those opportunities, those moments, neither really at any point perfectly comfortable, no one running away with this game. But now another attempt for France to retake that lead. Loichi does have lockdown in the next few rounds to potentially swing things in Peru's favor. Despite winning that Round. They lost a lot of players in that one. The economy's in a rough spot here. Two Bulldogs. France have an opportunity to stunt any momentum. Peru could have an opportunity to build. It's a proactive A-Lobby fight from both sides. Of course, the Neon will get ahead of anyone else. That is great space to be secured for France. Salad so ready for any potential push through doors at Tree. Trying to find that information. Spots out way above B. They back off right back into spawn. You're gonna leave Hawks there. This map, France has done a much better job at being willing to t take that early space and then slow things down, reset, find a second option in the mid round. And they've made a good decision. They break the turret over towards C and head back that way. You see Peru, they're quickly rotating on over. They've already flashed back towards A, shows that no one is there. They should know that this is likely to be a C commitment. I like this, Peru picking up on these a bit quicker. And there you go, the investment of that lockdown as well. Nano Swarm is out, but it's Hawks. The trades and Weibo getting one before taking down Chuto, looking to punish this rotation over to C. Look at Soren. He's found such a good position, but Fabasin is aware. He knows what's going on, and Chuto's ultimate is going to clear back around. It's the perfect distraction to take down a critical player. I love this out of Peru. France sometimes never knowing where they're supposed to look. Chuto with a 3K to close things out. Wingman with the defuse. Peru with the round lead. They read that so well. That felt like one of their better reads so far. It's been so good. And Chuto is the guy who can do no wrong, it seems. From ludic ludicrous performances, offing with the blade storm on Jet on map number one. You now here on a completely different role, and still playing that gecko to perfection, 20 and 15 to this point. It's round 22. The money is on a knife's edge for France. This might be their last chance to stay alive at Campus Clutch. Their last chance, but you know they're going to make the most of it. 
Hawks out first, a similar style to what we've seen. Trying to dash through that door. Salad, though, ready and waiting, denies Hawks the opportunity to get onto that site. The neon is feast or famine. Sometimes it gives you an advantage, sometimes it puts you in a 4v5. Who on France can step up and recover this round? Who indeed? I mean, take a look. Yozai, not a lot of health to work with Salad. The second on the round. None of the remaining three players on France feeling particularly healthy. Yes, you do still have that spike. You can make some adjustments here. But, well, if you try and work toward B, you're going to run into Peru. You go toward A, you're going to run into Peru. How do you make the most of this situation? Well, you catch one going up the rope. Can't do a lot about that. Slap 3K taken down finally by Askew. And just like that now, a 3v2 much more manageable. Health is low on France, and Chuto is diving in already. Weibo Deos takes down one. It's all on Asko, and he's got no shot. One round away now from Peru being in the grand final. One round away, Mimi. I'm, I'm pretty sure from groups to top 16 to quarters to semis that Peru's dropped like one map. So if they sweep here too, heading in against right in Indonesia in the final, what a run it will have been. But it's not over yet. France has had so much fight. What do you need to see from them to push this? Is it over time? It has to rely on these first kills. They cannot be conceding these early advantages. They have a lockdown this round. I'd love to see them slow things down, play more into the retake. And it's a clash towards B. Shuto, flash over the top, Bobasin will try and follow up off of it, it's chaos on both sides. The flash is good onto one, but Peru is coming out on top. They've cut down two already, but Jose still here to even the odds, he's brought something back into play for France. Jose, a massive two to keep things alive, Mimi. And the lockdown, committed. Salab so forced to back off. We'll check one more time. Wants to get that snake bite out. We'll get some damage in. A nice shot taking out. Yozai gets detained in the process. But now Soren, the hope for France. One left alive. Can you look in the right direction? Yes, you can. Detain, but it's Fabizin with a three claim to close things out. Maybe that's going to be it. Peru on their feet. A sweep in the semifinal. A valiant effort out of France. But it will be Peru ascending to the final against Indonesia. After more than a year together, from highs and lows, Team Peru have done it. They made upsets happen. They made miracles happen in their quarterfinal. But here in the semi, it is dominant. They show a variety of different comps, of different styles. They prove how good they are to adapt. And you can see the heartbreak on the faces of France. France played so well on Lotus. So much more effective, especially with that Neon. And while they were not able to extend it to that map three, Mimi, they showed us why they got to this point in the first place. But Peru, such a delight to watch. And what I love the most, the crowd loud on both ends. A lot of passion for the players on this stage. A lot of people out to support Peru. You see what it means to them to their country, to the players, to everyone who believed in them and had an opportunity. They're one series away from lifting that trophy, from making history as the third team to ever win the Red Bull Campus Clutch. And that's the end of the line for France, of course. This was their first international event. The team only got put together a few weeks ago, really. And what an event it is. Yes, they were not able to get to that final, but they accomplished so much. They wanted to what? Make, make it out of groups? groups. Make it out of groups, and they got all the way to the semi-final. An amazing performance out of them. Yes, this is not how you wanted it to end, but you have to be so proud of yourself that you were able to do this much on 
three weeks worth of time. You absolutely do. And you also have to think about what a final this has set us up for. Indonesia's explosivity and wild individual performances up against a Team Peru who has shown us such great strategy, such adaptability. They've dealt with aggressive teams well already. And it's really the question of if Indonesia can do even better than that. But that's still yet to be seen in the finals. For now, we're celebrating Peru's semifinal victory. And we have Keo on the stage with an interview. I am here, joined by Webo, Team Peru winner here again. This is the second time I've gotten to interview yes, you sir. on the stage. Grand Finals, you made it, you're here. We How made are you it. feeling? I'm feeling great, but the last map I played so bad, I was dying through all these modes, but we managed to win it. So we're very excited to play the finals. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to talk about a little bit on map one. Yeah. It was kind of looking a little dicey for a second there. You guys were still ahead. It was 9-7. You called a timeout. You're on an eco round. Yeah. Time and time again, you guys have proven that you have just the mental resilience. No matter what the stage is, doesn't matter where you guys are. It doesn't are, matter. It doesn't matter. You can turn it around because that yeah. you want an eco round to swing the game. And I just want to talk about what were you guys talking about during that timeout? We f First of all, we calmed down. I mean, like, we think what we're, we're going to do in that round because it was, as you say, an echo. And we, I don't know, gamble. We gamble the side, yeah, and we won. I mean, hey, the gamble paid off. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, all right, you've made it to grand finals. Thank you. Yes. Playing Indonesia. What are your thoughts going into this match here? Hopefully we can win. Um, Indonesia is a great team, but um, we are strong too, so be ready. All right, well, good luck. I'll let you cool down. We're gonna mm -hmm. toss it back up to the desk. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kio and Webu. I mean, that was, um, every time I look at this man, I'm just looking at his drip. Seriously, those oh, glasses, wow. everything about the earring, we could learn from him. He's cool, and I love his rings. I'm a ring kind of girl, so yeah. I'm, I'm definitely spotting out all the bling that he has to show. Well, there we have it. I will say this. Sorry, uh, Vlad, I'm going to jump all over you here. Yeah. France fall, Peru prevail, and we have a grand final locked in. We've been waiting for this moment. Peru versus Indonesia is coming up. But let's reflect on what just went down there. Yeah. Peru, you've said in the past, you've used terminology like dark horse, underdog, ah. under the radar, whatever you want to call it. Some credit to you, just finally. You want me to give some credit to Peru? I think they are the real deal. Yep. I really do. They have weathered so many different storms. They have gone through every battle one team could go through. They have traversed every play style one team can traverse, and they have stead fast. And I think this is probably a team that, again, I'm probably going to go back to the fact, all the way back to their Canada games, where they yeah. burst Canada and they knock them out. Yeah. I think that if you're going to knock Canada out, and you're gonna get this far, you deserve to be in the finals, and it shows Definitely. me why you were able to overcome Canada so easily. I mean, look, the, the Peru were just incredibly responsive, yeah. lad, the entire yeah, time. Definitely, definitely. I mean, like, they lose a space, and then what they, do, what they do, they group up and do flash peaks and do retakes of a space, which <laughs> uh, I think France was not ready for, because sometimes what France did, uh, they, took the space and left this, uh, left the area, you know, to yeah. somewhere else. Because they wanted to do some uh, pressure and then regrouping uh, of the uh, the other side of the map. And then uh, Peru was like, they had the knowledge about it. So they were even, uh, I mean, like able to regroup. Yeah, regroup, they're, they're responsive, but also they're just so on point with their mechanics, yes. I I didn't I hate to get on the analyst desk and go oh my god they pew pew so good because I hate to just bring it down yeah. to yeah. pew pewing right there is so much more that happens <laughs> in a game of Valorant but over these games that we've been watching we've actually followed so many of Peru mm. games now every time I watch them I go some of these rounds are just swinging their way a big win condition is the accuracy of a lot of these players yeah. you know it's not the star duelist that is popping off I so many of their players are hyper accurate the way that they take their swings and really good fundamentals of mechanical skills upon which players you know from tier two to tier one learn a lot of those players already possess mm -hmm. so yes maybe i underestimated them yes maybe i underrated them but they have a lot of the skills needed not just to win here at this tournament mm -hmm. but to go on to do bigger and better things if they wish to in their competitive career we're teed up for such a tasty grand final you know the semis just dominant displays from both of our grand finalists and indonesia and peru both coming out with impressive 
two nil victories to book that spot finally because it's a best of five Jess in the final oh. we will see three maps minimum yeah definitely like finally that's what I like to see you know I always like to see the third map and yeah at yeah, and you haven't gotten it. You, this is so funny because he'll finally be delivered the third map that we yeah, keep we'll begging for. Yeah, we will see the third map this time. <laughs> we will again. see the third map. And what I like about Indonesia is their play style against Peru, the mechanical skill. Yeah. I mean, this is something that we needed to see against Indonesia. We haven't seen it yet. They've been playing off stream a lot, but they have not been stunted at all throughout this tournament, right? They've gotten to the grand finals as a result. Yeah. Their firepower is a huge win condition for them. And I just spoke about Peru's firepower, their mechanical skill, and I'm like, do we finally have a really good team to go up against Indonesia and fight fire with fire? Definitely and their accuracy is going to be enough to withstand the craziness of Indonesia? We're set Maybe. for a banger, but before we get there, let's just all just take a bit of a breather. Let's relax for a moment because we got a show match to do before we get to that grand final. We've got some incredible massive streamers that you know and love, some professional Valorant players involved as well, and guaranteed complete chaos after the break. In my zone, oh really, I'm really that fly. Time is of the essence, don't let a second pass by. No losses, only lessons, they testing the stats fine. Genius with the flow, master the craft, I'm a mastermind. Now I'm on with it, mama on her own living. Building big in my city, feeling King Kong with it. Man, a little words, but boy, that money, huh? Long-winded, all off with these songs, did it, I'm trying to bring it home with me.
when I take a swipe Cause I am sharp as a knife Everybody run for your life I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Better hide when they set me free I'm leaving you R.I.P Watch out when I'm off my leash I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Watch out cause here I come Never did it for you, gotta do it for the love, do it for the culture, feel it in your soul, life like a roller coaster, got its ups and its downs, but you gotta keep going, don't stop when you still got motion, stay dedicated, daily devotion, gotta move like water, it all started with a dream and a dollar, and if it ain't what's good, don't holler, to every hard worker with a blue collar, you gotta feel good, I feel good about it, I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. Ah! Put a smile on your face. Never let them take your joy away. Let the sunshine make your day. Take your hand and your love. Wanna dance the night away. Or get away and escape on a vacay. Life's a marathon, not a relay. It's up to you to do what you love to do. Let no one stop you. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. Ooh, I feel good. You see how I look? I look good. That tell you anything you need to know about me and the way I feel about me. How you feel about you? That's up to you, baby. All I know is if you feel good like me, <laughs> do it with me right now. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. This my life, it's the way it is. Let the hate die, let love live. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. It's my life, it's the way I live. Let the hate die, let the good in. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good.
Welcome back to the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 live from the Volkswagen Arena in Istanbul, Turkey. We are flying through. Hey, where's that camera? I don't know. Uh, anyway, I've got to stop doing that. We are flying through the play today. We've already had two semi-finals. We've got the grand final coming up. We know who's in that. Peru versus Indonesia in a best of five to crown this year's Championne. The trophy is over there. You know it's beautiful. And <laughs> I'm not going to say <laughs> Don't that. Don't say it. Uh, but one of those two teams will raise it in the air, covered in confetti, and have bragging rights for a lifetime when this all comes to a head. My name's Ian Chambers, joined on the desk by a legendary analyst, Jess Goat. She's in the building. And Turkish legend as well. I'm going to call you a legend, all right? Nah, 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 you took me. You, on, you're a legend because the amount of meat you've made me. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> eat no. Local meat over here. It's amazing yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it, is, it is. You liked it as well. I did love it, thank you. <laughs> Professional eSports um, uh, coach here. i have throwing myself off here. You've coached many teams, and you're loving this experience, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Like, which one? <laughs> which one exactly? Like, coaching the or meat? coming here and... <laughs> let's stop. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> we, the analyst desk is being derailed right now. I apologize. I, just, I do just want to give a quick shout out to France, right? They didn't yes. make it through. Um, into the grand final, but what a run it was for those guys, right? I really believed in them. I really said, I thought for the first time we would go to that third map. You yep. and I believed in it. You know the coach quite personally. It was, it was, it was almost coming to the third map, but... Yeah. yeah. I mean, the risk they took with map number one by sort of throwing it to the wind, playing whimsy, playing with a composition they'd never mm -hmm. played with before, changing agents, changing roles. I mean, they were willing to throw that map away, and as a result, they threw their grand finals chance away. And Sometimes you take a risk and it doesn't pay off. I mean, yeah, in Haven, things could get easily upended by friends. I mean, defaults and everything with it. Like, uh, the exact same thing happened back in the Swedish ga uh, Sweden game as well. Yeah. Like, Peru did what they have to do, yeah. and that was solid. That was super solid from them. But uh, friends actually, like, uh, played the way uh, they wanted to. You know what? You know what was on the menu? Baguettes, croissant. That was on the menu for Peru, and they oh they ate they it all too. up. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three course doing, meal. Still doing the dad stuff, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, someone's going to do the dad jokes on the desk. All right, well, that grand final is coming up. And of course, more important than ever, map picks and vetoes. We've got a five best of five map series coming away, which means we're guaranteed three. Map picks and bans. Here's how it all works from a player perspective. Yeah, so the veto is like is a tough process, I would say. There are seven maps in Valorant, and the higher seed will usually get to choose whether they want to ban first or pick first. And each team bans what map they don't want to play, and they pick what map they do want to play. The other team picks what side they start on, and in the map that the other team picks, you choose what side you want to start on. Simple. So when it comes to picks and bans, we first started off on what we want to insta-ban and what map we do not want to play. We do tend to play more on our strengths than the enemy weaknesses. Our IGO actually bans every map, picks and bans. She considers what our weakness and what our strong points are. It depends on how good the other team is. If the team we know is like really good, we do ban what they are most comfortable on. Standing. One enemy if we think the enemy has a lower level than we do, we don't tend to play their strongest map. The meta on each map is pretty stagnant, so a lot of teams will run the same comp. However, some teams will pick what's comfortable for them and try to make it work through their own plays. As far as our team goes, we're a very sort of flexible team. We've practiced many maps. I think it's going to be hard for teams to look at any previous squads and get a good sort of read on, you know, what strat we're running. It might catch them off guard. It's definitely an interesting play style. The maps that we like, we usually start on attack because we do have a pretty good uh, pistol strat that we've been working on. Remaining. And then we want to get like build some momentum. One enemy remaining. Kills. We're pretty comfortable on attack and defense. In the group stages, we thought that we were going to be picking attack a lot more than defense, but I think we ended up picking defense every single side. So yeah, let's play that map because they play this comp and then like, we can force them. Yeah, that can have an impact on uh, which map we, we actually choose. Maybe we might be strutting something up, who knows? and bands, of course, vitally important, and they'll play a huge part in our grand final later on. But for now, let's switch gears. Okay. It wouldn't be a Red Bull Campus Clutch World Final without a show match, right? And we've uh -oh. got some incredible players involved in this, right? This is Team Blue. 
And I just want to point something out here. Okay. We've got Tiffy. We've got Yetage. We've got Tarik. We've got Combattery. We've got Alphaya. Do you notice anything about Tarik here? Do you notice anything about Tarik? Uh, am I meant to notice something about Tarik other than the usual? I'm going to tell you what it is. Oh, no. He's, oh, wearing, no. Red, he's oh, wearing Red Bull here merch. Here we go. Nice. I know where this is going. No, he's wearing Red Bull merch. Yeah. Because he's just announced on his stream, if you weren't watching yourselves, Tarek is now an official Red Bull player. I knew it. Every single year, yeah. we get the pleasure of crowning a brand new Red Bull athlete, partner, someone who gets inducted into the Red Bull family. And the fact that Tarek gets to join in, I'm not surprised. The man is one of the biggest names in Valorant. Yeah, and to be on the side of Red Bull and here in Istanbul to celebrate this, that is massive. Big pickup, right, Vlad? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he he took that uh, Turkish flag into the biggest stages for years, and then uh, now it's an honor to like host him uh, in here as well. It's amazing, and we're going to see him in action on our show match very shortly. Let's take a look at their opposition, okay. Team Red. Now, of course, some big names on here as well. Professional players, a man you've seen bouncing around this arena as well, Kia. <laughs> but it's, it's a good lineup again, Jess. Ooh. I I have to say, this one feels pretty stacked. Yeah, this this roster cool. definitely seems stacked. I think Tarek and, and, you know, the team are going to have a little bit of a struggle up against the likes of CNED, you know, Vitagen. I think there's just going to be so many on this roster that... Oh. Kio, right? I know that he takes this deadly seriously. He's really he really nice does. Well. He's I, very competitive. I was lucky enough um, earlier this week, Vlad, to go mm -hmm. to the Foot Esports yep. uh, HQ. Yep. And it's amazing, by the way. It's yeah, really it's cool. cool. But cool. to have some of the... Because they're heavily involved with Red Bull and all that good stuff. So it's nice to see some of their players showing up to play. Yeah, definitely. And they got some pickups this year as well. E2J is one of them. Yep. And actually, I mean, like, seeing it himself. The, one of the best talents in ever, like, Valentine's, uh, Valentine's ever see. Uh, and he's back again in the home soil. Yeah. Uh, they're going to compete uh, in the upcoming year in the VCT events as well. But they had a great off season. Now it's going to be like a fun game. But I'm, I'm thinking no, maybe they no, can no. take it into I, personal. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love seeing professional players get thrown into absolute chaos. And that's exactly what's going to happen here because we've got a random generator. We've got different rules every two rounds, and they are a little bit crazy to say the least. The way it all works is we've got a show match selector, right? Let's see, let's see an example of this, right? Okay. So every two rounds, we spin the dial. Oh, boom. yes. I remember this. That's last actually year. our first round. So we're kicking off our first two rounds. Knife only, Jess. If I cast my mind back to when this has been done before and the show match selector has made its presence during the show match, yeah. there are other things like Blade Storm only, Infinite Updraft. I mean, I don't know if they're all going to be present on that show match selector, but if they are, Chaos is going to be the absolute minimum that you will see throughout this match. I would definitely go with Satchels and Razor. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. It's Team Blue! The crowd are here for it. Team Blue, you got Tiffy, Yetage, Alfaya, Combatry, and of course, Red Bull's brand new Red Bull player, Tarek, making their way to the main stage. Formidable bunch, aren't they? They all look very relaxed, cool, calm, and collected. I think that's about to change when they get in the server. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm always interested to see how seriously the players take it. And their opponents are going to be taking it deadly seriously too. And you can see it's led by CNED, Kia, Atta Captain, Wujin. Am I saying that right? Wujin. You can help me with this. Yeah. Chi Dante, Wujin, Team Red making their way out as well. It's always nice to have a bit of a breather before getting back into the serious magnitude that is a grand final, Vlad. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I myself competed against, like, one of these players uh, in the home ground event back in the EMEA. Right in here in Istanbul, it's always fun. Yep, this is going to be... Look, obviously, this trophy is not for grabs. That'd be nice, but... Oh! That was a serious fist pump there. I think Tariq oh, is taking this You seriously. said yeah, yeah. that it's nice to have something That's before personal. the seriousness. I don't know. I feel tense. I feel like this Do you feel tense right now? Yeah, I'm like, this is going to be a serious bout. I mean, how do you approach a show match huddle like this when you're all gathered together saying, it's knife only, guys? It's knife only. How do you get into that, Vlad? You're a coach. You know this. Yeah, have you Let's ever coached knife baiting. only? 
Okay, okay. I, I approach you, <laughs> yep. but I have my friend backing me up. Okay, okay, so like double team, crossfire, yeah. knife. Yeah. Okay, I, I, just, I would go as a uh, wolf pack. I would I did, hunt down them one by one. I did a lot of coaching in the, you know, knifing. Oh, like, you did? No. Okay. okay, I was going to say, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. I'm well, interested to see what they have to show. It's quite funny because you can't really get settled in because every single time you adapt to a new rule, we're going to switch the gears on you. So and, yeah. and it's just going to spin every two rounds. Every two rounds. Every two rounds. Our show match selector rule. could pick absolutely anything. There's a range right. of different things it could potentially be, including shotgun only. But we've sort of seen that already in professional. Yeah, play. where's Ray? Guys, <laughs> where's Ray, Ray at? <laughs> Vlad. Yes. You know a lot of these players. Yep. Tell us a little bit. If anybody watching doesn't know much about some of the foot esports guys in particular, some big names. Okay. Okay. I mean, seen it himself. Won yeah. the champions himself with Asen back in 2021. And also Ye2J, who uh, was in an ac academy team well, one year ago, and now right now he's competing against in the different continents uh, in the VCT top tier events. Yeah. Uh, the guy himself was like two weeks ago, he was in Japan. Maybe you saw him? I did see him. Yeah. Red Bull home yeah. ground in Tokyo. And he's grinding up in his level. Yeah. And I mean, like, as an organization, they're really solid. Yeah, they really are. Now, Kia, he's been our interviewer. He's also playing here, but we're not letting him off that easy. He's no. still got one more interview to do right here before he gets into the server. And he's standing by with the brand new Red Bull player, Tarek. Kia, how are you doing down there? We are doing great. And I believe congratulations are in order. As you just signed on with Red Bull. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, man, I'm stoked, dude. Uh, Red Bull's a household name, iconic brands. Uh, I'm really excited to see what we're going to do. Uh, just looking forward to the future. So shout out to Rebel. I appreciate you guys not only having me, but throwing this sick event here in Turkey. Absolutely. And speaking about this sick event, you've been watching the games the whole time. Mm -hmm. We got Indonesia versus Peru. Do you have any thoughts, any predictions as to what's going to happen? Yeah, both teams are popping off. I'm not going to lie. I think it's anyone's match, especially in the finals. All the pressure's on. You never know what's going to happen. But I'm going to give it to Peru. Those guys uh, put up a good show. Absolutely. All right. Well, good luck in the show match to you, and we're going to toss it back to Ian. Thank you very much, Kia. And of course, you're going to feel real good being a Red Bull player. I'd love to be one. The fact that he gets to celebrate in Istanbul as well. I know. Like, to celebrate things on an international trip somewhere, you know, away from your home, it just feels like double special. Big deal here as well, right? Because he's, he's been doing autograph signings here, there, and everywhere. Vlad, people are loving it. And everywhere, of course. You're, I mean, like, best kebab lover. <laughs> Is it because he loves kebabs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, That's why he's such a star. I mean, uh, you love the picture scene and everything I tell you. You just listen to me and appreciate the culture itself as well. So I'm definitely saying you could born Turkish. Oh. oh he's in the next inducted life. into Another the life. Turkish lifestyle now. Yeah. Me? Yeah. I hope so. There you go. Um, Tiffe is somewhere in here as well, who's been spending all of the time with us. <laughs> she which has. Is, which has been really nice. We've been actually spending some quality time together for the, for the first time. She was obviously at Red Bull Campus Clutch last year as well. Yes. Participated in the show match and lost. This time she said to me earlier, okay. I, want, I want to win this time. Oh, so there is competitiveness coming is. on here and she wants a little bit of revenge, okay. Um, I, I don't know how much, and, and Tiffy's going to laugh at me for pointing this out. She has a headset on, so maybe she won't hear me, but yeah. uh, we were in the elevator yesterday um, and unfortunately lots of buttons were pressed at the time. The <laughs> elevator was full and she got out on the wrong floor, got back in. It opened again. She got out on the wrong floor again, but it was too late. The elevator doors closed on her as she reached to get back into the elevator and she was left behind. So hopefully she didn't get left behind in the server because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, uh, Tiffy's had uh, one of those uh, couple of days here in Turkey thus far. Al fire as well. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, big event winning champion himself. Like, yeah. he was, uh, like, a couple of years ago, he was just an uh, amateur player on his own and now he's top on, uh, like, top on the level with Fnatic, winning events. Like going everywhere, just like A2J I, I mentioned before, and he's something big, you know. For Look nowadays, at like last year, uh, I think he's either like in the top three players ever. Yeah. We just saw Tarek there, yeah, absolutely. And we just saw Tiffe as well. Real serious look. Yeah, they, why are they so serious? Look at this, deadly serious. I Tarek, mean, Tarek, give us a thumbs up, them, buddy. Right? Thumbs up, Tarek. You look, you feel it, yeah, that, yeah. see, there's a smile. Gorgeous. Hey, Tarek, Tarek, give us a flex. Yeah, I want to see those guns, please. Oh, no, he's he's blocked you out. That's what I do when I oh, listen to you. I put my whoa. headset on too, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I was having breakfast the other day at the hotel, and he walked down in, like, a tank top, and I was like, man's been working his, working his arms. You go to the gym quite a lot as well. Why don't you go with him? 
because it, it outlift me. I yeah, just, I, I, I knew it would be something like that. I knew it. <laughs> what a way, though, to celebrate becoming a Red Bull player with a big dub here. But when it comes to knife only, Jess, if you were jumping into this show match yeah. right now, how are you playing this? I, I, exactly what Vlad said. I'm double, triple teaming. I'm chasing down the one player who's yeah, solo. Yeah. I mean, Split I think you got Yeah, you really have to wolf pack it on, on <laughs> something like this. So I hope they run around as a wolf pack. Content creators are used to memeing around. So the likes of Tiffy, Keo, yeah. uh, of course, you know, Tarek, they are used to putting on these kind of entertaining rounds for their streams. Um, I'm not very good at it myself. I try to play a little bit more serious in my streams personally. So they're going to have way more of a leg up. Shout out to Keo as well, who's been at every single Red Bull Campus Clutch. Well He's done fine. every role as well. You know what happened today? Oh, oh you got a story. All right, yes, yeah, go, what happened? go. What happened with Keo? Yeah. There he is. He had to look lose. at his hair. He looks yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I was going to say. Like, today, it, it's an important day for Keo, yeah? Oh, it's a On important the show day. Match. Oh, okay, yes. So yeah. he made his hair cut to a Turkish barber. Oh, oh was that yes. the guy in the back of the talent yeah. room giving him a yeah. haircut? Yeah. In our talent room. Yeah. Guys, this is how well Red Bull's kitted us out. They brought a barber in for Keo so that you have fresh hair for the show match. It suits him as well. Look at yeah. that. Hey, Keo. Oh, look at this. We've got foot fans in the building. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow. Wait, where is this? Oh, it's over there right on there. our right, mate. Come on, guys. You can get louder than that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I love how they've got foot win, but I'm pretty sure we've got foot players on both teams, right? Yeah, so who's going to win? <laughs> Everyone's a winner in a show match. Oh, goodness. All right. But yeah, Keo, you know, he's 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 an OG when it comes to the Red Bull Campus Coach World Finals, but he's also good. I mean, obviously, he's very good at Valorant. Yeah. Yeah, and I discussed with him if he ever wanted to go back to sort of trying to play comp, a little less content creation and whatnot. He's so good in the content creation world. And yeah. of course, you know, with all the different org signings and whatnot, I, I love him as a content creator. He's very fun, he's very relaxed, uh, but I'd love to see Keo back in comp land. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Seeing Keo sat next to CNED. Just ab <laughs> Imagine. About, a, about a player. Imagine. Imagine them on a team together. How do you think that would fare? CNED, Keo. On a team together, I, competitive. I mean, like, competitively, yeah. The thing is, I never watched Kyo play, so... I, you don't want me to tell him that you've never watched him before? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, in American uh, time zone. Okay, like, you know what? He, you actually escaped yeah, yeah, with yeah, the time zone that, one. Okay, there a, we go. That's it's a, a great time one, zone thing. It? It's a time zone thing. And back in when I was in coaching, uh, I mean, yeah. like, when the American, uh, like, professional games used to do and I had to wake up and yeah. in the middle of the night and I have to take some notes, you know. Well, we're having a couple of uh, last minute checks before we get into this show match. And remember, it's only one map and calling all the action for this one map. We've got two wonderful casters standing by. We've got Mimi and Zesh. Zesh, it's been a while since we've seen you. You were on at the very beginning here. You know, how's it feeling being Donawald by Tarek? Would be, you know, my initial question. But it's great to be here, honestly, you know. <laughs> Just I mean, instantly deflect to that. It, instantly deflect. He, I, don't, I don't know if he... he I don't know but, uh, but also answer the question. Does he know what the Donawald but, but is? But also answer I don't the know question. Oh, oh! Yeah, Bye. that's right. Oh, okay. Get Bye. him off. We're left get in the dark. Off. Get him off. Get him off. Get him off. Not get him off. No, there. I guess we're... we're no, we're all off. We're, we're gonna go and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're gonna play. Thank you very much for coming to Red Bull Campus Clutch. No, just kidding. Ian, what are your thoughts on this game? Can you tell me a bit, like, you as a Valorant expert, I can what? Okay. They turned off his mic. They don't want to hear him. They don't want to hear him. They want to hear fair, him talk. What fair, do you fair. think about I this? I personally show? think that this is going to be good Valorant. Mm. Overall, I'm a big fan of this game called Valorant. So overall, I think we're going to see great Valorant. I just think they're all gonna they're gonna put it all out on the court. We're really gonna see some yeah. t some great gameplay. I, that's the most caster thing you can say. About you think they're like, gonna leak some strats here for 2024 VCT EMEA? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if they win the show match, they could go pro. They could go true. Some of them true. are pro. Actually, probably more than I pro. Half of them are point. literal pro. Oh, there we go. Back alive. Feels like uh, playing with a phoenix. I liked it better yeah. when your lights were out. I could say the same. I liked it better when your mic was off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mimi, I thought days. we were friends. Anyway, Mimi, who are you picking, Team Blue or Team Red? I, I also have to be a Team Blue enjoyer. I mean, I feel like both these these teams have really good players. I mean, you have pretty much the entire foot roster spread out across the two of them. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm kind of in favor of Team Blue. I've played in some of the like play tests against Tarek and also Tifei and been destroyed by both of them at times. So I have faith that not just the pros, but they can step up too. Let's remind ourselves of the rosters. Let's start with Team Blue. And Zesh, I want you to do the honors here and talk yeah. us through why this is such a great team. 
I think it's going to be a great team because first of all, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I I fell in love with this kid called Yellow J. You know, he he got he went 18 this month, right? He just had his birthday, I think a few days back. And honestly, he's like for me this underdog kind of kid that's gonna be really cool. I mean, I could be obvious and say Tarek, because he's like funny and little broish or whatever. But <laughs> he said I mean, thing. Yes, Thanks. I said that already five minutes in. I had to. I'm really glad to. you did. I'm really glad. Okay. The player I'm excited for on this team is, is Alpha. I feel like he's like yeah, okay. he's, when you think of Turkish players, you that's always so have to think of Alpha. Yeah, he's he's the guy who was the breakout for the region when he started playing at global events in Copenhagen and in. Uh, in Istanbul, actually, as well, in this very same arena. He went the distance with Fnatic, and now in this last year has won a ton of trophies with them. He's just such a good individual player on pretty much any role you put him on. True. Yeah. I love that he's got the silverware in his hands as well. They've really oh, made yeah. it clear yeah. who the players are from the pro teams, and then you've got, like, the content creators in their hoodies and, like, their Red Bull gear, and you're like, all right, this is definitely a balanced roster. Mimi, do you think that this slight delay here is going to get in their heads a little bit? Do you still think they're going to be fired up and ready to go after that walkout? I think they'll be ready to go. You think they'll be ready to I go? I think they're still fine. If, if I'm a player out there, I'm just trying to say the dumbest stuff imaginable to try and <laughs> keep my team entertained and just keep the energy up, because you have to. But obviously, they're, they're going to be excited. Playing a show match is fun. It's an absurd rule set that is sure to get anyone fired up and yeah I mean I'm honestly just really excited to see where those excuse me those rules go yeah but as we look over at the other side of things here team that is also pretty stacked Vincent I mean you've got some great pro mm. players here if you're thinking Turkish players and you're not thinking alpha you're thinking Cena. absolutely I mean OG jet god <laughs> you could really say oh, he's like, a world champion absolutely it's 2021 world champion I mean you got also sort of up and coming can you even see out of captain is up and coming not really I think, not, I not think everybody, everybody literally has him on his page particularly interested is is how Kyo's gonna perform without mm. a trampoline that's like my yeah. go-to question yeah. can if we he get had a more? trampoline out there can we get one on the stage Red Bull has everything. Everything I've asked for, they've delivered. It's Do you true. think they can deliver a trampoline? Hell yeah. I, I, we're putting a lot Man of got a haircut, man's gonna get a trampoline, 100%. <laughs> hey, At he, least get him one of those like balance balls. You can bounce oh, up and down while playing yeah. the game. Yeah. Keep, keep him entertained the entire time. Yep. Zesh, you, you were actually at the, let me get this right, the yeah. Red Bull home ground qualifiers, qualifiers here. The MEA, here. last That's stage. it. And, yep. and foot were dominant, right? And yeah, have fair, you ever yeah. seen? Have you ever seen CNED? Like I've seen him before. Yeah, have yeah you he's, seen actually, him? he's actually right there if you want to take a look. <laughs> yes. Have you ever seen him happier than he is right now with this foot roster? It seems like he's about to start a new chapter of his career. Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, he always was having this super wholesome smile. Right. This is what he always loved. He always was like this happy two thumbs up kind of guy. Yeah. But most importantly, I would agree. It's a bit more freedom. Obviously, also once we're communicating in the country, you know, communicating in a language that you always communicate in, in your entire free time, I think it's going to be a big bonus and maybe also helpful considering the play style that maybe was not that developed in his previous team. If Team Red is to win, Kyo needs to learn Turkish. Oh, Every, everyone yeah. that that's what speak, it is. He is the problem. Yeah, he is the problem. Kyo yeah. has been learning bits and pieces though, right? Yeah. What? Yeah. Has he? Have you been teaching him? I mean, like today, he asked me to do something about him, like uh, bits and that. But, I mean, I'm not going to share any detail anymore. Oh, oh that's a, that's yeah. a private matter. He was asking for some of that Turkish language. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, one thing he does know how to say is how to get a haircut. Can I have a haircut, please? That, oh, got, yeah, he uh, did ask that, that yeah. I mean... And then he lent on you because he couldn't say it. Zesh, how are you approaching Knives Only? I'm approaching Knives Only as it is a normal game. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking right now if we could change that the length of the sword has something to do with the range in the game, yeah. but I think this is just not possible at this point. Otherwise, equip Katana 24-7. Can I really use wish abilities? You... Oh, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, see, we'll I don't know one technicalities, because like, I'm dashing in, bam, and I'm getting out. I'm, yeah, right. I'm telling it's you. not Assassin's Creed. Like... Uh, you know what? I felt it. <laughs> you can get jet knives, though. You can just completely break knives. the system. Literally it's knives. knives. Literally yeah. knives. Yeah. I don't see the problem. KO knife. Yeah. Okay, now we're it's trying to come up with ways to finesse the system, I think. No right. one would ever finesse the system. All these players, too noble. I finesse am going to I'm going to address the elephant in the room. There's obviously a tech delay here that we're dealing with, and we're going to get into Is there? I think there might be. Um, we've got a show match, and it is coming up. But while we've got these two amazing casters lined up on the line, if you will, I'm going to ask you about the grand final. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mimi, you were just a big part of that last semi. We're going into Peru versus Indonesia. Best of five when this all comes to a head later on. Who's taking it and why? 
I think Peru might. I, I think Indonesia has shown some incredible stuff. I mean, Ray mm -hmm. always double satcheling and ridiculous stuff with shotguns. They looked great in their semifinal, but I think Peru showed when they were playing against all those neon humps that they're really good at dealing with aggression and having these fast reactions to contend with it, which I think would work really well against Indonesia. And on top of that, the, the clutch factor we were seeing from all of the players on that Peruvian squad was incredible in that semi. I fully agree on that, but I, I gotta say, the play style from Indonesia is unique in itself. Like, even on pro level, you hardly see any kind of team do that. To counter my own point, Ray, shotgun, double satchel. Yeah, like... Indonesia's gonna win. Exactly, that's the next point. I I I'm going with Indonesia, Ian. I'm going with Indonesia all the way. 2-0, 3-0, uh, sorry. I mean, they're gonna 2-0, they're just 2-0, <laughs> then 3-2, yeah. Great. Yeah, we're not allowed a third map on this desk, no. guys, sorry. Are you, are you an enjoyer of the play style? Hell yeah, yeah, man. I think everybody not in this, this arena is, right? Not this boring, snoozing, waiting one minute until we execute somewhere and then fail kind of play style. Horrible. If you default once, you failed as a team. You must double satchel in every round. No default challenge. I no. can tell we're in the show match era because that is the most trash that I've ever <laughs> no, I'm that serious. speak up here. That's real. Stop defaulting. No more default. <laughs> Defaults for better. Just pew pew. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Pro play you default. You get shot, team. you die. Exactly. You them. It's simple. Valorant. It's is a point it, and click game. Is that really what you do with your team right now? It's none of your business. All right. This is uh, like yeah. I signed an NDA. I cannot you, answer that you question. Just, you just want everyone to do it so you can win. Or you just got to contact. Maybe it's the only way you can win. We only contact. Zesh and Mimi, this is your first ever Red Bull Campus Clutch World Final. As yeah. is Vlad, I've already asked him how he's found in his first ever experience here. Mimi, it's, uh, it's a really cool, unique, different event. I mean, we, I keep talking about these players, students, like making memories that will last forever. But for us as well, it's just so much fun to be part of, right? Yeah, I feel like when, when we go to the, the normal international events, your Masters, your Champions, all the players who are there have, have been to international events yeah. a million times before, and they're like, N another day, another dollar, got to do another media day. I'm just <laughs> here to play, I'm just here to win. But every single one of the teams here at Red Bull Campus Clutch, they're not used to it. Even the teams who have been here before, it's a unique new experience. And just being able to see people kind of getting the opportunity to, for at least a week, live that dream, be able to be a competitor at an international right. tournament, is so cool. And that The energy is just infectious throughout this venue. And, feel, and, and maybe, you know, with some of those countries that don't have this very, very elaborate kind of collegiate system, maybe it's a bit of a convincing point. You know, maybe it's a convincing point for, I don't know, Indonesian high schools and universities invest yeah. way more into that. And I think that would be really cool to see. It's showing the, the really the variety, right? I feel like there is, it, when people think of collegiate esports, a lot of time you think of a lot of the, the North American schools that have yeah. tons and tons of teams, but Team USA, Team Canada, they're already out. Bomb down. And we have teams from all across the world that you probably wouldn't have expected to be in our final here. I mean, it's Peru and Indonesia. That's so cool. And it's an opportunity that these players probably never would have had yeah. without an event like this. Absolutely. Is there standout teams that didn't make it to the grand final for you? I mean, come on, I gotta hype up my teams from Team Germany, right? The, the boys absolutely deserve it. Can you remind me when they, when they went out again? They went out in the round of 16 against Team Indonesia. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, fair, come on. That's I mean, not that, bad. That's, that's not that, bad. That's that not is bad. not that's that bad. bad. No, not otherwise, bad. otherwise, I, I got it. I mean, I think Team Canada was really cool yeah. and just lost to themselves, literally. Yeah. yeah, I feel the same way. Canada had to be my standout. I mean, yeah. they, they really had the game in the bag against Absolutely. Peru. And credit to Peru for making that comeback happen. But I think they can definitely take that as a learning opportunity going into next year because they are a team that can compete towards that top level. Honestly, all the squads we had going in the semifinals were so, so impressive. True. Yeah, I mean, look, this is how it all played out. Round of 16 was played yesterday morning, quarterfinals in the afternoon, and then semis and the grand final will all be played right here. So before this broadcast comes to a head, we will, of course, crown our champion. And what's really cool is, Jess, we've talked about this in the past. Yeah. For the, this is going to be a first-time winner, which is always nice at a tournament like this. Every year, the fact that we got a brand new winner yeah. is super awesome. I mean, I love World Cup-esque vibes anyway. Like, For sure. I, I just love seeing all the countries come together and the fact that a lot of well not a lot of the players but many of the players play for other teams and they'll come and they'll switch up to all these university events to come in and be able to play it mixes things up for them and it also gives us a real worldwide truly international vibe when we go to an international event you got like na eu maybe you got one or two apac teams here yeah. and there it is international but it's not this international so for me yeah. this is the most worldwide that i've ever seen an event and probably will ever see all right, it's time now to finally get into our show match. Apologies for the delay. It is Team Blue versus Team Red, and it is with Zesh and Mimi.
Thank you, Ian. Uh, for those of you that weren't with us throughout that whole tech pause, as a reminder, we have a show match, Team Red, Team Blue, a mix of content creators, pro players from all over the world, and a lot from right here in Turkey competing here. And it's a different challenge every round. And we're starting off with a nice round. Red Bull gives you wings. Yeah, all two rounds, we got a bit of a new thing going on. And this time around, it doesn't matter what pistol you buy, what kind of shield you buy, what kind of equipment. We're going knife only in our show match. And I honestly don't know really what to expect from that, to be very honest with you. All meeting in middle, the classic way. It feels like knife round back in the day when you were selecting sides. Yeah. But it seems like Team Blue did a big mistake. They split up, and there's going to be the first one already dying. Overwhelming force incoming already. And this one player stuck out. The Omen just running for his life. He can bring everyone all the way back around. And the What's the bait and switch? They don't see him. But oh, it doesn't matter. Come on. A nice idea. Just better. That's, that's, that's really disappointing. One knife hit, and it would be pretty much Yeto J down. But hold on. The split up Five team looks like they're making it work. It does look like they're making it work. Still, not a lot of health on CNET. Keo is still healthy. He's still got everything that he needs to make something work here. But it, you got to be perfect. And Keo's already done it. On to one. Okay, my, my mind is right now on Kyo. To be very honest, though, the blue side is looking good in terms of health, but Kyo is on it again. He even finds Tarek. This is a one versus one. It's just a single hit and it's done. Team Red. And Kyo's done it. Kyo's done it. All well, right, not we, bad. We thought he would be the player. How does he know how to deal with knives? Yeah. How does he know that? You know, you think he'd be the guy that's like, you know, you're, you're on a team with pro players. He's not going to do much. But he's, he's good at the knife rounds, at least. He's really good at knife rounds. Yeah. Maybe he's really, maybe he enjoys, you know, being in the kitchen and, you know, cooking something up all yeah, day long. Making a delicious meal. Making a out delicious of meal. His opponent. Out of his, sure, whatever, stew, not whatever that. stew that is, but sure. Let's move on from that. We have one more round of knives here. Let's see if the strategy changes up in this one whatsoever. Yeah, this is like, this time a five versus five mid brawl. I'm quite sure this is like going to be most straightforward knife round we've ever seen where everyone's like scared and chickening out and then they're actually going back and forth. The typical knife rounds, as you know them. It's like watching a pack of wolves just ebb and flow back and forth, and Tarek has been completely isolated. Cut down by the Horde. Team Red is playing together very well Ooh. here, and that's a double for their ice now. Yeah, but everyone's low HP on the red side. This should not work under any circumstance, and it works for Team Red again. Double knife winner they are. And you know what that means? We're, we're two rounds in. We finished two rounds. We probably select something soon, no? Let's get the wheel. Let's get the wheel. I, I need to see what that wheel has to offer. We don't even know the full extent. Legit have no idea. Of what we have, but let's get this one a spin, and what will we land on? Mm. Marshall. Marshall only, okay, I see that. Pro I hope there's a lot of no-scoping. Mm. I hope there's gonna be a lot of shotgun-esque I mean, kind of usage. I mean, the Marshall no-scope is, rid I'm, I'm honestly surprised really we good. don't see the gun more, especially yeah. in pro play, because it's so ridiculously good. It, the fire rate is, frankly, unbelievable for how cheap it is. And that seems to be just another mid brawl. It, you know, it feels a bit like an old ancient firing squad just picking up in one position and standing in a line. But it might be the first one for Team Blue, except Keo. No, doesn't stand a chance. That's, That's actually what over. the Napoleonic Wars look like. Don't shoot till you see the whites are eyes. <laughs> Spam away at Marshalls. Everyone in the line together. They would say, oh, yeah, you're right. You're very right. I mean, listen, Team France had Leicester playing, so they would lose again. But sure thing. You can't say that about France. It's tragic. <laughs> Anyways, we got, <laughs> we got another round of the Marshals here, and I'd expect another mid brawl, but we did see someone get sneaky from Team Blue and flank all the way back around in that one. And That's this one player who's just sweating too hard right now. Yeah. So everyone's saying knife mid, and he's already making the strategy of, okay, how am, I, how am I right now flanking around the entire map? You seem like the type of guy that would overly sweat. Absolutely. And like hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm Astra only. Yeah. Legit do nothing else than playing <laughs> as gonna, ratty as possible. On the Marshall only round, you're going to be sitting in spawn uh, using yeah. a gravity well to support my teammate <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> it's pretty much it, yeah. Though the stun is better nowadays. But I probably would do that. Pop up, a pretty much quick dissipate smoke and then mm. shoot, right? All Astra mains, the five out there, no. Counterpoint, swing mid, Marshall, shoot. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sounds very much like what an amateur would do. CNET has the ult. I'm... No. The, the, you think? No, no way, right? I mean, if he thinks he's better. What do you mean he thinks? He is better than some of them. I mean, he's a world champion, but uh, Tarek has a lot of stream viewers. True. True. What wins? A big hype train or world champion? That it's is a big call. question. Tough That's call. a tough call for me, too. And they've actually decided to play for the spike. I think they just realized there's a bomb site on this. We got our answer, by the way. World champion means nothing in this situation, <laughs> evidently. And, well, Team Blue. 
doing well. Gonna try and close this one out. Only Atta left alone in mid, and he's just one tag away from falling. Come on, Atta. Oh, don't. Don't do uh, that. Looked like the face clan application video for a second he was yeah. trying to do there. But uh, 360 no scope, why, why? 360 no scope, create a legacy, exactly. Means, two rounds in. Let's spin that wheel. Let's find out what's happening now. Uh oh. Jet knives All right. only. We had our knife round. We had our knife now round. We have another knife round. Okay. Very different in this one. So I think this is where the pro players are going to shine, where, where our CNEDs, our Alpha Yers. It's literally CNED o'clock. Yeah. It's literally seen at a clock. He is the jet guy. He is the Charles Netting jet guy. He's like, he's, he's like, if you, if you, the what's right? That's his full name? It's his full, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Charles Netting? Charles Netting, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> that was loud. Wow, I've never heard that before. But that's a clear dash. First of all, first duel, Tiffy's gonna win, but being backstabbed, as sweaty as it can get. And Alpha, oh no, Alpha, not a joke. He plays good joy. He, we, we gotta let him off the hook there. Yeah. Whips from both sides. You can just infinitely right click, like the olden days, when you do have the unlimited True. knives, which is pretty sick. Was a good time. Yeah, post plan here, 2v3. And it's right now just a lot of blades flying through the air. Tarek is the one who could just turn it around. Actually, nice shot he finds, and it's only against Vitichen. But 50 HP, a single blade would do the frack. But he's getting just himself a new one, and he does it! The clutch for Tarek. Four kills picked up with the blades only. Uh, he's you nodding. Know, we thought it was going to be all about the unlimited knives, but it's the unlimited movement that really gets you. You can just updraft out of control, true, and make true, yourself true. impossible to hit. So he's right, him. Like crazy. One more time. I think from a strategic point of view, mm. holding W there. is really good. I think holding W is really good with this run. You should be a coach. It's not my top of me. Oh, okay. At least, at least for night yeah. coverage, yeah. True. Like Vlad. Like Vlad? Like Vlad. I don't, I don't know if that's what... He said, he said he's a knife coach. He said he's a knife only coach. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah, I thought he was, he was coaching like some like top like PCT team. He, he actually did, and he's actually really good at what he's doing. That's true. Another round of the jet knives here. What kind of random thing do you think could happen with the, with the selector machine? What do you like to see? I think all Omen old. All. <laughs> so you just win on time. Yeah, yeah, just like it's a bit like moving around until yeah. you find each other. <laughs> yeah, if it's all Omen old, but you can only shoot when you're standing still, so you have to use Omen abilities to reposition. Mm -hmm. that could ah, be a fun one. okay, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. That like some kind of game mode that could be implemented. I mean, just all of any agent is in. I mean, that's literally a game mode in the game already with replication. But imagine, like, all rays. What is that? Replication. Replication? What is a replication? You've never played replication? I, li I, I generally did never play replication. It was one of the, like, one-off game modes. I know. I know it was actually cool. I, I saw it. It was like, it's actually cool, but... Again, the type of guy to only ever play ranked and only ever sweat in the show match. He'd be taking this moment where there's a pause as a tactical timeout to strategize for the next one. Oh guys, we should actually use all our movement keys all the time and move in a big bunch. That's really smart. Yeah. I don't think they would actually, have thought of that. Did you ever think of like using a you know a old Roman phalanx strategy? What? <laughs> you know what it is? They don't have shields. They can't. They don't opponent. have shields. I know. That, I mean, you can buy a shield wasn't in this the game. Whole, it wasn't the whole point of the, the phalanx that it's like a line of shields. It's basically like a turtle, yeah. Like a turtle. Yeah, like you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. My goodness. I don't know if that strategically translates to Valorant. No, it doesn't. Obviously, it doesn't. It was just a, a remark, which could be, you know, a possibility. But in the future. What would you, okay, let me, let me turn this around. What would you do with Jet Knives only? Left click. Maybe right click sometimes. This is why you work at international events. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't have any better, better answer than that. The That's players, right. though, have a chance to think more about something that they never would have thought of before for a very long time now when we have a bit of a pause. I like to think of it as tactical. I like to think of it as tactical too. I mean, to be honest, he looks insanely focused. You're like, right. he's looking really freaking focused. Mm. But it, by the sounds of it, it sounds like we might be back alive, and we are! Get out of my way! Get out of my way! So all jet knives yet again, and in mid, way. it's a death ball strategy this time from Team Red. All wait, five wait, wait. of them sticking together. There's a bit of a killjoy icon there, but I think that is just a little mistake. Yeah, wait a minute. What is the kill drop? Hold on, hold on. Something. There's something. I think, um. There's something, there's something wrong, but it's fine. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's okay. Tarek obviously has a bonus of picking whatever he wants. Never mind, doesn't help a single bit. No. Well, uh, yeah. He's down. Maybe maybe it's like a VIP mission. 
And oh, all wow. jets are the bodyguards, and the kill draw is like the VIP you have to protect. Okay. That would actually be a good game mode. Honestly, it would be a not so yeah, bad get, game mode. Get on. down, Mr. President. <laughs> Full protection, detail time. Why are you thinking of the jokes that I don't even want to say? <laughs> What's Breach doing here? Ra Raid his beard. Nine. Solid nine, yeah. It's a good beard. It's a good beard. How do you think he would look like without the bottom part? Clean shaven or, or Clean just sha with the mustache? Just with the mustache. I feel like he would just look like a, like a lumberjack almost. I guess lumberjacks like a lumberjack too. Like a lumberjack? For some reason, I associate a mustache with or that. Or someone who sells me an old, like... Old mil old He's going to get a shave in a second. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. It's like, it, it, I, think, I think the same question is being asked, asked right now about the beard. Probably. Yeah. That's, that's what they that's were That's legit the well. same question that was asked. Ultimate ready. I'm not sure if that was a valid round. We'll, we'll see yeah, if, we, if we move on or we keep going there. But uh, it's a show match. So any round is valid. And we're rolling it again. So we're on the back. Where are we Ooh. headed? Sheriff. Only. This is good. You know, this is for the frack movie. This one is for the frack movie. Yeah, they're gonna put the, the gamer music on while they're playing this Some one. Some drum and bass, see. 120 decibel. I was it. excited. That is, I mean, he knows Most that he can pop some I've heads. Most excited I've ever seen him, I think. Oh uh, yeah, he's, he's not looking too excited. I mean, but he has his sunglasses. With his sunglasses, mm. he's hella cool. I'm not gonna lie. Being as cool as out of captain would be like a dream. <laughs> is, that what, is that your dream? That's my dream. That's a good dream to have. Bro, years ago. A little, little help there, making sure all the computers are, are working properly. Uh, we're lounging. Haircut, I think. We're lounging. Or no, his hair's just out. It's looking good. Look at him. Like, how could he not smile? Is my is there a non-smile scene? In? No. Send it right now. It's legit not possible, right? Have these men on Earth. I think you by now can speak Turkish as well. Who can? Sorry. Kyo. 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 Yeah. Oh, Kyo. Like he learned. Yeah, like. Is that all? Like, what? We've been ten minutes in a show match with. Yeah, I mean, we had so much technical break that he mm. probably said, like, guys... Does he have Duolingo up on his phone right now? Ex I mean, he got a team of four Duoling Duolingo teachers, basically, no? Yeah, basically. I suppose so. And they're not owls, so it's fine. Yeah, less scary that way. <laughs> way less scary, yes. Well, we're working out the, the technical issues right now. What's the key to success in a show match like this? I just thought the question was a very general question for a second. I think not taking it serious is literally the best way to well, play a show match. Well, that was a very match. serious question, so I'm already on the wrong wrong course out here. Yeah, what do you think about their comp? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really think all jet has a lot of merit, you know? Can you make a telestrator for that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They updraft it and they use their blade storm, and it was very effective indeed. I mean, to be honest, they all seem to at least have a lot of fun. I think this is like the pro of it. But yeah, obviously we're in a technical pause in case you're wondering. Someone so disconnected. Why are players sad, man? Real sad. I don't know how far the chairs we have on stage recline back, but I would really like to see someone, you know, like off boss it up, full recline during Os the pause. Off boss it up. All right. It's I a verb. I know. I know. It's great. You it's know it's what I'm talking about, great. right? Yeah, absolutely. Off boss, great player. Whenever yeah, there's a pause, like, he always leans all the way back. Is fully relaxing. I think. Uh, I think. Um, Alfier did it. Yeah. For a second. For a second. Is it, he's chilling as much. He's as He's literally possible. chilling. Yeah. That's what you have I mean, he's a, he's literally in a team that is winning two world titles. You can't chill. You can chill. You can chill. Is that what happened at Champions? Listen, what, what, what should I say now? I don't know, I don't know. I'm not an evil genius to we answer don't talk, this question. We don't talk about it. I think, I think it's better for all North American participants. Yeah, it in is. In the long run. First world championship for us, probably last. Who knows? <laughs> That's how it tends to go. We're getting back into things, though. And we're on a sheriff round. Good. There's a vandal, but we're, we're getting there. I believe. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Come on, see. What is, he's playing basketball. Hold on. He's throwing it in the hoop. Well, no! Oh. Sad man. That's tough. I would have loved to see that. But either way, with the sheriffs instantly storming onto the A side, this, is, this looks like the most serious round of so far seen over the seven you. rounds. They have alts though, and well, he's watering the plants in West LA. That's really nice. You know, LA LA needs water. That's for sure. Some uh, whiffs coming out here from Ooh. one side, but Alpha? Of course it's Alpha. He's not missing anything. Two shots picked up. He will get traded out. Because he needs a retake. Looked possible until CNED got on the board. Who could have guessed? CNED technically has his old if he wants to use it. For, <laughs> force good old Yetu Jada one versus one to establish dominance, but he's out of the equation. And as he's going on and on, might be the one to clutch this against Captain. No chance. Four to three. Nah, he, he might not hit the hoop. 
but he definitely wins those. Do you think he tries to hoop again? I would love to see it. I feel like we should give him a round if he gets it in. Uh, he does try to. Yeah. Come on. Do it. All right, we gotta wait for the round to start. This is the time to find out, make sure things are proper. We'll look, look, take a look back. Not quite a, a basketball hoop, but some nice shots, regardless. That's nice literally shots, yeah. Did you say it's a free? Yeah, it's like a free. Yeah. Ah, so unlucky. It's tough. I don't care. They use a fucking <laughs> And there we go. Let's see if that one goes in. No. Oh, he did it! Did it. Oh my god! Kyo, how does he do that? They're winning the game. They're winning it They're all. literally winning the game. Get him a contract right now. Yeah, so He's in the draft. cena has got the hops. He's just jumping around the corner, giving time for Tifei to be taken down. And this flank is the most telegraphed it possibly ever has been. Kyo, though, doesn't win it. It's you and me. And then we have the first it's isolated you ult. And it's Cena like both are using it. I it's got to be Cena who's trying to take down Alpha. This is like an actually deluxe stool. Takes him out, though. It's you and me. <laughs> like, and that all just okay, makes okay, this, this is actually happening. <laughs> it's just like, no, it's ISO duels yeah. only at this point. He's found this mark. Shield goes down and I'll oh, find the shot right. as well. Another ISO wall and people are just being kidnapped, taken away to far away <laughs> lands at this point. First you're being stunned by a big waterman and then you're getting kidnapped. It's not looking too great, but the spike is still up top. <laughs> Can't relate. Either One way, doesn't look that really, really good for Captain. He's just being taken out by Yetu J, his own teammate, who's taken out. But eight rounds plate means we're going into a new mode. Let's spin the wheel. It's hella spin that wheel. What do we got? I, I mean, it, can it get any better? Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, first of all, this is more Whoa. important. So, oh. He got a clip dive. This is like literally one of the best clips of him, besides his 10,000 great trampoline clips. Put that in the montage with the trampoline. Yeah, 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 literally. Maybe we can just like jump down, do this. The animals are leaving us. The aliens aren't contacting us. <laughs> that oh, clip. <laughs> oh no. Invert mouse. Right. This is gonna be a disaster. Do you know anyone who plays invert mouse? Yes, one CS player. Put him on blast. Put him on blast? Yeah, okay. Uh, who is it? I know. I thought it was a wordplay. It's no. a maniac. Oh. Maniac. Like literally also the only Swiss person who ever achieved the only, esports. Famously the only Swiss person. Oh, literally the only famous Swiss person in the world. Besides the five players we had. But the thing is that no, no offense Maniac, no, but his name is Maniac. No sane person plays with inverse mouse. Maybe on a controller I can get it, but here it's ridiculous. The thing is though, if you just get good crosshair placement, you mm -hmm. just aim at head level, you never have to go up and down. Thoughts? Just don't bump just your mouse. Just literally destroy the sensor of your mouse. Yeah. Just to hold left click, right? T turn your mouse upside down. <laughs> the advantage of wireless <laughs> mice. Either way, it looks like a disaster is about to happen. Everyone is literally just taking a spray and pray kind of weapon. The Odin choice is smart. On the other side, okay, this has got it on. Okay, ult is fair. Trying to make everyone vulnerable really doesn't have an effect considering that they stalled them as long as possible towards B main. They literally play it serious though. Like, Withington literally holds A with chamber. I like that. He's sweating. Oh, this looks disastrous. Oh, the recoil, because every piece of muscle memory you want to pull down when you shoot. Of course. You're, you're fighting for your life to know. And suddenly you're putting it up. It's like, what have I learned for? Yeah. Q, by the way, best crosser in the game. Gotta give him props for that. Oh, 100%. Uh, T-Fat? Down, down is up. That's and up is down, yeah. The thing is, if everyone's with it, CNET could just buy enough time to line up one off shot. That's all he needs. He doesn't have to deal with recoil. That's kind of smart. Seconds left. Yeah, he can take his sweet time, three, four seconds, to actually get him one shot shot done. Tarek, in the meantime, he literally doesn't touch his mouse. This is smart of him. This is good of him. Finds two, and the Vandal pick might pay off, but as you said, takes his sweet time with the operator. And the recoil is so killer. Kyo takes down another. There's not a lot of time, but that spike will get planted. Ten seconds and it's left. Yetage, the Odin protege. Spike Try and clutch this one. It's actually mostly initiator, so it works. It literally works. <laughs> but it seems like for now, there's not really much you can do. This is absolutely the most non-natural thing you can do within this game. But another round of it. Another round of it. I can't time to learn. Time to change strides. Walk as a big ball of five. Mm. Every round, whatever mode it is. Tarek, I think, had a good strategy of just aiming at the feet and letting the recoil go. It's true, it's him. true, yeah. Don't have to deal with it. He's actually a real five hit. Yeah. He'd make a great iron player with that strategy.
Were you ever in Iron? No. <laughs> Good. I was about to make a really mean joke. No, I just checked if you have been. Yeah, we just let that one be. Let it be. It's better to not say fake. <laughs> Most importantly, though, seems like we have changed strats a little bit. Seems like we rather. I think of the fast approach away. That, that looks smooth. That, oh, that, that looked actually like good. Shot. That looked like a real shot. He's wall banging. She, pardon. She's wall banging. Different. Uh, just so unfortunate. I think she got a tag. Actually, for the feed, yeah. yeah. I, I, not not walling. Either way. Oh. <laughs> Suppressing fire. Not but, enough against Alphier. Taking a page out of CNET's book. But the off. Tarek literally just aimed at the feed, and that is actually smart. I gotta give him that. And as they're trying to retake this, it's pretty much near did impossible. It, did it turn his sensitivity up too? I, I mean, these crosses are just going sky high at every moment. Two players fought in the corner. The offers oh. doing nothing. I mean, they Tarek's one for the Ah, unfortunate. At least, you know, they get the defuse done. And I'm thank thankful that we get out of this yeah, hellish from, mode. From the invert mouse. This is like, but the thing is, I think for the next like two rounds, every player is automatically now doing the opposite of what they used to do. Yeah, you've trained yourself yeah. for just long enough that it's just going to take a that little bit to go back to normal. Take a look back at this one. The off seems honestly like probably the best strategy. Inverted mouse is meta. I'll say it right that. here. I wouldn't go 100%. that far. 100%. So let's go to the wheel. How far does it go? Okay, this is good. This is like a good. This is a good game mode. Run and gun. Can't let go a W. Can't gotta be moving. Gotta oh. be moving. Gotta play like in bronze probably. My mom always said, always be moving, always be shooting. Did she literally say that though? Often. Often. Yeah. Is she a professional Valorant player? No. Okay. One day. One day. Ah, I, I believe in Mama Evil Cat. Either way, <laughs> running gun seems like the it seems like the most fun thing. Though. Spectre only, probably. Yeah. If you're really a little bit it's, off the rails, you pick probably an Odin. I feel like Stinger is kind of like I feel like Stinger is or Judge. But they're out so empty. Mm. Judge fair. Judge fair. Knock you down, pick Breach. Jet or Raze. Yeah. And you judge. And you win Campus Clutch and your name is Ray. Yes. Right, good, I like that. It's a good strat. He, he was actually already onto this before <laughs> the show match even started. <laughs> All right, let's see. Weapon choices. Got a couple of judges, got some specters, and Five it's the Phantom and Zed to get things started for a few. Around One comes Juan, and well, it's the judges to close out. It's literally the Napoleon War you described just with holding W. <laughs> it's like yeah. not standing still. I like Last it though. We got definitely head. got some fans of the blue team. Go blue team. Understandable. Who are you actually for? Did we, did we elaborate on that? On who we're rooting for? Yeah, and who you are rooting for. I know who I am rooting for. Well, who are you rooting for? I'm rooting for Team Red. Team Red. Team Red. I'm rooting for, for Team Blue, honestly. All right. Kind of a fan. You like like blue? Kind of an Alfier fan. Okay, fair. I think it's fair to be an Alfier fan. Yeah. Thus far, it's been Yetije who's really been popping off. You know, the newest player on foot, doing well in show matches too. The guys. The guy's good. Absolute prodigy. Now we're holding down W, and obviously with the breach, it's a little harder to hold W. It is the judge coming in handy. And that's already the round done. It seems like we're, we're moving on. I mean, that's a nice setup. They're actually using utility on that round. Yeah, we have a crazy. stun combination with the paranoia. Dive in with the judge. They're thinking. But. What do we have? Faster than we could even think. Running gun is over. We have another game mode. So we have to look at the wheel again. What do we have? What do we have? I mean, okay, we had. We had some very funky stuff, I yes. would say. Some very funky stuff. Some that make my head hurt. I feel like we've earned a normal one. Like Guardian only or something, I think, right? I think it's a bad idea if you actually wanted to cast a show match. And I think, hold on. I think we're getting a little sub in. There it comes, Mr. Fallen as well as Cracks are stepping in. But who are they replacing? That's a great question. Two new members afoot taking the stage for each of their respective teams and well, it's a teammate seven out for another. Yet to Jay stepping away from Team Blue. I mean, Safal is probably one of the greatest storylines of the entirety of Turkey. He, he and a few other players that are still in the roster, always sticking together with Foot. And seen it leaving the stage now, bringing in a veteran member off the Foot side. I mean, you really got to say, for example, Mr. Fallen, you know, he was forced a little bit in this IGL world, picked it up. Last year won the VRL finals in Europe, where there seemingly were teams that should have actually won. And now, 
definitely like a top four team in EMEA. Yeah. I would say top eight in the entire world. I mean, even just now, doing so well at Red Bull Homeground just yeah. before this. Top four finish there for a team that still had really brand new players being subbed in, like Yetuje. So, Absolutely. Yeah, some really impressive work out of them. I, it, it is really cool that Turkey has a team that they can just fully put energy behind. It's actually doing so well at international events. True. It's been a far cry since like 2021 with like. SMB is the only team going to international events. It's crazy that their talent pool is just so deep. It's insane. Like the amount of players that also VCT EMEA imported from Turkey. Yes. Crazy. I mean, what would Fnatic be without Alpha here? Without picking up that talent? Absolutely. Legit. Well, it's half time here, which means that these new players have to get situated into their setups. Personally, I would just use CNET settings, but when we wait for them to get set up, we have Ian standing by with Tifei on the stage. I am standing by with Tiffin from Team Blue. Tiffin, how are you doing? You all right? Great, I'm doing great. You've been in Istanbul for a good few days now. What do you, you make catch. of the mm -hmm. local you cuisine, catch. all the uh, the architecture? It's a beautiful city, right? It is, it really is. It's been amazing, and I'm just excited to watch yeah, it for like Grand that. Finals. Exactly yeah. like that. Well, speaking of which, before I want to talk about yourself and your team here. Grand Finals, Peru, Indonesia on the horizon. Who do you think is going to take it and why? Um, I'm thinking Indonesia. They got the raise one trick. I'm feeling it. Yeah, they're dangerous, right? They are. So, Tiffe, you have been at every, well, this Red Bull Campus Clutch, the last one, last time round, you were in the show match as well. You didn't manage to get the dub. What are, how are you feeling this time? you got a good team here. Yeah, we're definitely getting the dub this time. Certain? Yep. So, Tarek has joined as well as a Red Bull player. What's it like having uh, Tarek as part of the family? Oh, we're the winning team for a reason. All right, Tiff, do you want to give a shout out to any of your fans and viewers back home? Yeah, I'm just thankful for my supporters. I'm glad to be here. Tiffa, get back in the server, all right? <laughs> Best of luck. I think my man Keo, in fact, I'm going to walk over. I think Keo's standing by with an interview himself. Keo, how are you doing, brother? Oh, we're doing great. How are you doing over there, Ian? All yeah, right. I'm good. So I'm here here with Alfie here over here, uh, the, the Jets on the enemy team. You know, I'm actually playing in this here, too, so I have a little bit of beef going on here. Uh, how are you feeling about your team right now? Uh, our team is doing great. Our IGN is really good. He's Tariq. Whatever he says, we are doing. So, we're gonna win. I hate Vitagen. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, maybe I'll have to hop over and stream snipe a little bit. You know, I did, I, I believe I got a knife kill on you earlier, so, I mean, we might need even the scoreboard there. What do you think? What are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I don't know who is gonna be tough frag, but probably it will be me. Because I didn't play first round, because someone is gonna change, so I'm gonna start to play second round. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Well, good luck to you in there. I'll see you on there. <laughs> <laughs> seems like, you know, it's, it seems like that swap in with the players is is definitely going to work. I mean, most importantly, Alpha's just chilling as always. He seems to be like, you know, I'm just playing here. I'm having a good time. I'm having a fun time. You know, I, I know he's going to be on top of the scoreboard. Probably him. Yeah, probably him. I was like the most chill pro player. Like when he was Literally like super is. young, like the, the newest player on Fnatic, they go to Copenhagen. I heard stories of him being the guy who's who's out there keeping the team their energy up. And they're gonna have to because we have yet another oh, no. special round here and it's only ultimate ability. Okay this is now this is now becoming disastrous. Which agent is the best in this do you reckon? Br Brimstone. Brim? Brim oh, breach. Yeah, Brim breach? Game over. Brim breach. It's You're over. Stunned? It's literally You're over. It's yeah. over. I wonder if you can have multiple of the same agents. If you can, just double brim, double breach. Double brim, double breach. Make in. a big cooking pot. It's over. Yeah. It's over. That is one hell of a team blue or, or team Or teleport. Just pick ISO if you think you're better. Just ISO, just ISO wall. Don't have to deal with abilities when you're in the ISO wall. True. You're completely suppressed. But looks like we're sticking to pretty sane compositions here. And I'm definitely looking at the harbor and the breach. Those big AOE alts are going to yeah, be huge yeah. when you can just spam them. I mean, fade could be quite annoying, yeah. to be very honest, but taking a look at it, they, they all look for a lot of fights. Instantly taking out the ISO means there's no none of those 1v1s, but this is going to be a quite wet battlefield. It absolutely will be. And honestly, I'm very thankful for uh, the fade alt, because I think my ears would break if we had to hear the amount of voice once going off without it. I think literally the server's going to crash. <laughs> I literally would not be surprised the server's going to crash. But either way, normal frack yeah, found. This is like the most normal kill I would have expected Good, out of it. Valorant. And we have a job for out of captain. His job? X, left click, X, left click. That's it. And Valorant is all about gunplay. Famously. Abilities don't kill. Especially not in this in this particular round. Okay, this is now <laughs> this is now you're absolutely not allowed to move anymore. Perma stunned. Perma stunned. Everyone is perma stunned, seemingly. Right. Except for one. 
Alpha, yeah? I mean, we were just talking about him. Just calm, cool, collected, getting kills. 4K in the round. Chill, chill while there's an entire monsoon coming down on the B side. I like this. I like this kind of game mode. I want to see more of this nonsense. I think we have one more round of this nonsense. nonsense. Yeah, but a good nonsense, you know? Like no, a likable, you know? This is sense. There's strategy. There's mm. ideas behind it. Like press X and press left click. Right. Yeah. Sure. No, I see that. A lot of depth. Maybe I should integrate that into my regular play. Well, let's see if we have the same ideas of just spam the alts and uh, seen a good kill. I mean, that's worked to win it's a world a, championship a, before. It's a very classic strategy. Yeah. I think many teams do that to just change the name with the player, basically. But pretty much invented by a scent back in the time, true. A lot of traps to make sure that nothing is happening actually on the side, that you can't just walk through. Yeah, Some, I mean, really great sound. It looks like the bottom of a ship. Some barnacles everywhere covering the minimap. True, true, true. Okay. You could draw something with that, probably. Get out of my way, man! But first of all, entry duel to be looked for. No the old catch someone? Yeah, play, okay, right now. Play. It's gonna be Cracks trying to find somebody. No, in this case, Mr. Fallen is gonna prevail. Teammate's gonna kill teammate. And it seems like all the traps are not really working. No, just running straight through to it, it seems. Tarek dismissing on forward and the Killjoy lockdown. <laughs> Literally the most normal Valorant round. <laughs> yes, yes. He, he has to break it, but he also has to break 10 others. Oh, no. <laughs> Retain again. <laughs> he just gets retained. That's oh no. That's me with Tarek. He's gonna get knifed. See you later, buddy. Tragic to watch, really. Okay, so the, the, the killjoy nonsense is going on, and I really, really like it. It seems like it's time to perma flash. <laughs> Don't <laughs> knife him. He's not got like no! this. No, he didn't make it. His life got saved by the alt. Oh my goodness. Oh, Only Kia to do it. But they, even there's no chance. Rounds over. Mode's over. Nine to just five like, for blue. Soak in the minimap for a second. There. I did see that. Right. Just, just look at what was going on this entire time. I think pro teams should adapt to that. Yeah, it's a great idea. That's a good strategy. The average Twitter user's Valo plant. Oh, like literally, like coming this, up with this, a brilliant strategy. This is when, when, when someone is using Valo plant. <laughs> it's literally looking like that. But let's take a look at the new mode. We have only Shock Tower, and we don't have average Jonas. This is gonna go forever. Yeah. Who's gonna get it across the line? I feel like right the meta here, here is you just start sending volleys into the air like a medieval archer. Send as much up as possible, it'll fall on down, and then you just go jump around corners. Oh, Where's, the yeah. Where's the phalanx? Where's the phalanx? It would come in handy in this it game. It would mode. become really handy. All right, everyone is staying together on the side of Team Blue. I don't know if that's the best strategy against a, oh, a this flurry is good. of shocks. Oh, ouch! That is a pretty electrocuting field right there. The thing is, it's, it's like really suppressive fire to that point in time, right? You cannot really move forward. You're forced backwards into the middle position. And that B side is fairly clear. I want to see a retake with shock dots. How does that even work? I mean, you cannot stick the spike. If the spike gets planted, you just cannot defuse. Maybe that's the way to buff Sova is like hitting a shock dart gives you mm. a second extra. I don't know. That would be ridiculous. That would be ridiculous. But it would be a Valorant moment in beta. All right, Either we got way. a head-on-head -head duel here over at the B site. Oh, it was a good final dart. Who's the better archer is the question. And the movement, ever important as well, but that's a perfect shot that kills too. Great work out of Team Blue. They have a big lead here. Spike is coming down though. And uh, here's your retake. And this is where people need to say that you need lineups when you can just play Sova like this, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah, you don't need them. Oh, there's an instant trade coming in. Vinjin and Kyo really trying to get that retake working. I don't have high hopes. No. No recon dart, only shock dart, no weapons, and people are just getting bullied Ow. at this point. Poor Team Red. No One HP to work with. Remaining. That should be game over. That then is game is. over. One more round of those shock darts, and then we'll see what we do. But most importantly, I think what would really work is you work as a group, and just try to hit one spot with five darts. Insta-kill. Insta-kill. Oh, because you, you could just all volley together. It all lands at one or point. Or like that. Okay, I didn't think about that, but also a good idea, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just like an unlimited right, amount yeah. of damage. It is an unlimited amount of damage. I see it. I take it. Cameron really likes Kyo's new haircut. It looks good, though. Shout out to the barber who did it. Right here. <laughs> Should have got a, get in the taper fate, maybe, but yeah. Gotta get him out in the audience. Start giving haircuts. Uh, literally, <laughs> best idea. All right, shock darts. We're running it back. Oh, yet look, again. look at the and position. They're, they're kind of doing it. There's a volley on both sides. This seems like a very gentleman's kind of duel, you yeah. know, like back in the 18th century type of stuff. But who's gonna hit who first? 
Oh, oh, this is good. Oh my goodness! It's what we were talking about. The the perfect combination of five shocks at okay. once and poor cracks. I like that. This is something you know that prepares you in your pro career for things you would have never expected. Yeah. It's kind of, I'm kind of like transfixed. Stop I feel like I'm watching a lightning storm in this game mode. Pretty much is. It seems like you're trapping yourself in the corner. It's game over. As we see right here, it is pretty much game over. As frags are coming, Tarek is hitting a second kill with that. It's quite remarkable, to be honest. How much it's, it's it's really good on what he does, but doesn't stand a further chance. And all standing in the corner, this is gonna be ugly. Bouncing off the wall, trying to get rid of that planter, but the player on the flank is getting hunted down now. And Keo, I mean, they fought this one back. It's a two v two. It's a round that Team Red really needs. It seems like there's not much of a chance. Nope, Keo falls down in the end. And we're about to finish this game by the looks of it. 11 to 5 scoreline. Team Blue stomping. Team Blue is hella stomping. But maybe what the is next it? item on the wheel will change it. It's uh -oh. shorty only. Now this, a true test of skill. A true test if you paid attention to the VODs of Team Indonesia. They, they should have put Ray in the show match. Literally Obviously for that Obviously he has to round. play a bit of a more important match. Just a little more important match after this. But I feel like he would have thrived here. What was more important, playing for 20 grand and having this world title or playing with Tarek in the team? You know, I might take being a world champion. Maybe. One head. Shorties. Shorties with shotguns. It seems like, we, seems like we're not fully clear on that. Kyo trying his best there in that situation. But this is where you would actually need a race. This is where you need to dash forward kind of play as the pallets are hitting the first wave of attackers. Enemy remaining. And it's only down to Captain. And Captain didn't get the memo about the judge being allowed, unfortunately. It would seem. And he plays at least Harbor. Maybe he can... Yeah, exactly. Do you see all? <laughs> Stun yes. someone... Alright. Not in time. He tried. He tried. You know? Gotta give him a medal for that. Match point. 12 to 5. Oh, he's trying, point. trying. And we're about to finish this absolutely extraordinary... What was your favorite round so far? Mm, it's gotta be all ultimates. I think it was just the, the most chaotic, far. just absurd on that one. I would literally watch a game just with that. Mm. Literally would just watch a game. Whole BO3. That's a little too far. A little too far. That's a little too far. Like a best of one. Mm. Could see it. This could be the last round of the show match here. Players readying up, strategizing best they can about shotguns. I mean, the judge only is a clear player at this point in time. Except you're a bu Bucky connoisseur, and I really want to be accurate about it. But I think that doesn't pay off in this game. You know, more people than should have have made Radiant with shotgun only. You'd think with players at this level. Yeah. They could leverage it well. They could leverage it well, true. But I personally, in my lobbies, I don't want to see players going to shotgun only. No. It's a, it's a, it's a misery. <laughs> only if they're bad with it. Likely. Either way. It's more likely than you think. These players, though, let's see how you good they are. Play, with the play. judge. Tour of Force is being used. I don't know if that's legal, but... It's not a shotgun, I mean, my, by neither definition. I mean, you're down 12 to 5. you got to take whatever advantage you can. True, true. A little bit of, you know, tricking the system is fair in this instance. But now, oh, this is good. This is nice stuff coming in from Captain. And with the close range duel, he even finds two. Seems like he keeps Team Red alive for a second. They're still in this one. And Captain's looking for more, but the shorty gets the better of him on the other side. Tarek has fallen. It's all down to combat trick to try and win this one out and... I don't think she thinks it's possible. Not, it's not gonna happen. Not enough ammo in the short. Not enough ammo, no, no, no. But, but this means we at least get a new, a new mode, right? We're free from the shotguns. And now the Away question the is, yeah. can we get something more more honest? More honest? Yeah. You mean like you mean like fair duel kind of thing? Yeah. I would like that. Yeah, I think that'd be good. You know, just... Team Red is only losing because of the dishonest game modes the Team Blue are good at. Let, let's see what we get, though. Is it going to be something a little better? Okay, uh, no. this is the most honest I could think of. A one-on-one -on -one duel. Fair, fair duel, like in the Wild West. One versus yeah. one. The thing is, the, isn't there a bit of a thing where you just like, when both are in the old thing, Okay, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to watch Don't this. Don't try and talk over that. No, I'm not. It's, it's, wait, can only one be in at a time? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. That's yeah. literally what I wanted to say. We are currently breaking the game. <laughs> Wait, are they just popping it's you back and, me. and forth in and out? Yeah, it's, it's you and me. There's a duel. Yeah, there's a fa fair duel. Who's actually winning right now? It's even. It's you 2v3. Oh, the no scope doesn't work. No, no. But it's still even. 2v2. That was a shot up. Okay. And uh, now, it's got to be Tarek here making the difference. 
But as you see, he, he has actually the ability to stay a longer life. Yeah, the Kyo shield is so it. good against an operator. Another time of you and me, it is. Yeah. Well, they're in it. They're staying alive yet again here. Again, but the honest game ones, they're better at Hey, it. absolutely. I mean, I like it because it's something that I would have never expected to see in my entire life. But it's a good it's a good idea. It's a good idea. The ISO only is where you can spend a little, you know, together time, one-on-one -on -one time. It's you and me. Literally, what it says. Yeah. It's really sweet. We, like, we like that too much we, in yeah. today's day and age. We like ISO. Good man. Players readying up for another round of ISO only. Another chance to extend this show match. I would love to know what Katerik saying. Seems like something hella funny. When we start falling, sloughing, you know it's good. Yeah. Mr. Pollen seems like a fun loving guy. That's a good beat. That's a good beat. Could be probably a technical up somewhere in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with weapons being it's chosen. You and me. <laughs> there we go. Alright, who's our first duel here? Steric Eye. It's, it's not good. And and it goes on. And Team Red seems to be actually taking me. this one home. Yeah, they're popping off in all these duels, but that one they can't pick up. So the odds are actually brought back to even here. Alpha and Tifei doing great work to keep it in. Now, Tifei. She's on it. And almost even the shield on it. So that looks kind of good. That's impressive. No Alpha alone to try and close this one out in a 1v2. He's into his first one-on-one. -on -one. It could be very possible. I mean, it's Alpha after all. Finds another. Oh, but he's stuck Not in Kyo, there. Not come on! Aww. Aww. Kyo. Kyo. You'd expect better out of him. So I thought it's called ISO ult. Yeah. Man. I mean, in a show match, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> True. This is for the show match, but... You know what? You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to keep it. You think it. you gotta have Nightmare from that sound cue? Yes. <laughs> but thankfully, we are out of ISO. We're spinning the wheel yet again, and let's see where we're landing. Back All right. at knife the beginning. Back it's knife the only again. Have they learned from their mistakes here is the question. Mm. Team Blue suffered against the strength of Kyo, who, by the way, is leading in the show match against a few pro players. He seems to be the, the goat of knives. Literally give him a contract. Yeah. Literally give Sign him a contract. Sign him as the knife-only specialist. Yeah, there's a sub him in for one round and a we get... Atife's planting. All a right. Little, little cheeky. Okay. A retake on a knife round is going to be hard. Every, every player from every team walking towards the spike. So it should be just one player defusing at this point. As Team Blue... Uh oh this is a long walk. Kyo's on it. He halved it at least. And enough distraction, it might work. Can they stick it? The Cove's not going to do anything in this one. One left alive. It's Kyo, the knife specialist, trying to win it. Now 1v1, one one. Mr. Fallen. Stuck on the other side. Yeah, still has some time to work oh, with. Oh, there we go. But Kyo's down. Team Blue take it home. 13 day here in the show match. It starts with a knife round. It ends with a knife round. And a man who was so successful previously on it is not allowed to succeed with it. That was actually one of the most funniest game, ga games I've seen in a while. Yeah, some of those game modes. Absolutely Ultimate electric only. to watch, and obviously for all those players, if some might say the biggest win of their career. True. I love it. I honestly, I mean, alt only was, for example, one of my absolute favorite games. It was like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. ISO only, also good game mode. It's time to copy. They those. should do that to like pick seeding in tournaments. I see that. I see that. I had a different element. I see yeah. that. You, you need to have one player then who's ISO main. Mmm. Again, specialized, specialized. Uh, Players. Specialize the players. Yeah. Get a 10-man roster. Fortunately, no trophy to be lifted for the players in the show match. This Kyo time, signed as ISO player. So. Yeah. But the ultimate bragging rights. And you know, we, we talk so much about how this is a you know a showcase to oh, to become a tier one pro. This is Kyo's chance. Especially, I mean, honestly, at basketball and at being a knife specialist within a team. I forgot he got, he got the an endless one in the basket. True. I mean, what can this guy a man not of do? Many talents. True. It's literally a man of many talents. As we've seen, though, a few sad situations as well. This was one of my favorites. It feels like a down-to-earth kind of Valorant. Yeah. Do, you have, do you have an MVP, MVP from Team Blue? I have to go for Kyo, man. This yeah. guy was actually, you know, becoming one of the best players suddenly in this. Sure, this was not his gl most glorious moments, but that was a good game. I liked it. Yeah, I mean, Alpha had a lot of good moments. Whenever he got the Blade Storm online, the gun rounds, he was, he was sick in that regard. But yeah, super fun show match there. Uh, again, I think I asked earlier, but any favorites from the game modes we got to see besides the already mentioned ultimate one? 
Uh, you know what? I have to go for ultimate. I'll pick ultimate. You're going to get out? I, I, I don't think to. that was an option at this point, but that does wrap to. things up for our show match here. Thank you to all the competitors who came out and played. It was great to watch. But what that show match has done is give the competitors a bit of a rest to be refreshed and ready for our grand finals. The winner of Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 here in Istanbul, Turkey, will be crowned after the break. In my zone, really, I'm really that fly. Time is of the essence, don't let a second pass by. No losses, only lessons, they testing the stats fine. Genius with the flow, master the craft, I'm a mastermind. Now I'm on with it, mama on her own living. Building big in my city, feeling King Kong with it. Man, a little words, but boy, that money, huh? Long-winded, all off with these songs, did it, I'm trying to bring it home.
good. You feel good about it. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. When you look good, you feel good. Uh huh. That's the only way I feel you should. You know Coulda, woulda, never did it for you. Gotta do it for the love. love. Do it for the culture. Oh. Feel it in your soul, life like a roller coaster. Got us ups and its downs, but you gotta keep going. Keep going. Don't stop when you still got motion. Nah. Stay dedicated, daily devotion. <laughs> Gotta move like water. like water. It all started with a dream and a dollar. And if it ain't what's good, don't holler. To every hard worker with a blue collar. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. Put a smile on your face. Never let them take your joy away. Let the sunshine make your day. Take your hand of your love. Wanna dance the night away. Or get away and escape on a vacay. Life's a marathon, not a relay. It's up to you to do what you love to do. Let no one stop you. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. See how I look? I look good. That tell you anything you need to know about me and the way I feel about me. How you feel about you? That's up to you, baby. All I know is if you feel good like me, <laughs> do it with me right now. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. This my life. It's the way it is. Let the hate die. Let love live. I'm feeling better than I ever been. I'm doing better than I ever did. It's my life, it's the way I live. Let the hate die, let the good in. Ha! You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. You gotta feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good. I feel good about it. I feel good.
done. Look, ref on one of one. We always up to some. And they are one and done. This flow hot as the summer. How cold in the winter. Curly bird gets the worm. Yeah, that's breakfast for dinner. They say heat check. We let in this simmer. And I don't like to lose. I've always been a winner. Hold or nothing. Break the mold. The time is now. Don't you fall, push the limits, all of that, cause you can try and hold me down. Istanbul Techie is ready. 20,000 students kicked it all off at the very beginning. 200 plus events, so many rounds of Valorant played, countless rounds, and it all comes to a head here and now. Where's that camera? I want to get on that. I want to get on yeah, that camera. Yeah, yeah. There it is. You are watching the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 Grand Finals. This is what it's all about, baby. We've got a live crowd. We've got two brilliant teams ready to go head to head, toe to toe in a best of five series. And we're going to get there. My name's Ian Chambers. This is Jesco. We've got Vlad as well in the building. Jess, we've been here twice before at previous years. Yeah. Never gets old. No, it doesn't. And every single time, I think I know what's going to happen. And then my expectations explode. All of this yeah. chaos happens. And we couldn't have two better teams to deliver us that exact excitement. You hyped, Vlad? I mean, yeah. This is the yeah. moments that we hyped? live for. <laughs> Are you hyped? Yeah, I'm definitely hyped. OK, OK. We want the energy. How do you say, let's go, I'm hyped in Turkish? Uh, like, hyped? Yeah. Like, hey, John. Uh, hey, John? Uh, let let me think about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I should, for every language, bro. I mean, like hyped in terms yeah. of like a translation. It doesn't like really exact cover. I'll Turkish, let you think so, about it. Yeah. I'll let you think about it because one thing that our teams are going to definitely be thinking about: Indonesia and Peru. There are all the eyeballs that are watching them in this grand final because it is a real opportunity to put yourselves on the map and potentially go pro. My goal is to be tier one player. Red Bull Campus will be my first international event. In the past, a lot of players that made it far have been picked up by some big orgs. It's a really good event for making yourself known as a player. I want to go pro because it's been my dream since I was like 10. Going pro in Valorant is my dream. I saw the pro players live their life, how they compete, how they travel around the world. Competing in Red Bull Campus Coach gives massive exposure, especially if you make it far, which we will actually playing on stage on a good level and like having the same things that pro players have. That's obviously out of our comfort zone. Not playing with the same PCs as we are at home. You're gonna be stressed a lot. You're not gonna know how to act in the situation. Maybe you will be surprised that your heart is beating fast. Uh, my goal is to present myself well to the world and everybody watching and that people will see, okay, this is hard work. This is very stressful and painful if you lose games. You've seen people cry, you've seen people laugh and scream a lot, and then all the emotions behind it. It's really fun to play on the stage because we'll play better, you know? OK, so the stakes are high because we're the last representative of our region, so we're going to do everything to win. We want to experience that feeling to lift the trophy. If you win, I think a lot of people will hear about you and hear your name. And hopefully from here, I can meet all the other goals that I have. Being in the Red Bull Campus Clutch World Final is the start of my career. Oh man, the stakes are so high for so many reasons and a potential future in this game with a top level club is of course on the cards as well. It's not out of the question, it's happened before and you saw lots of teams talking about their journey and hopes of becoming a pro. Not all of them made it to the grand final as you can see here. This is our bracket from the round of 16 onwards. 
What have you made of how it's all played out, Jess? I can't believe how quickly it's all gone. Yeah. I mean, I look at all of these countries, all of these teams, players from around the world of differing skill levels, of differing, you know, bouts in Valorant competitive as well. And all of them now can put this on their resume and say, I flew to Turkey yep. and I either played on a stage or I played against all of these countries. And that is a fantastic addition to their experience. Definitely. I mean, there's lots of uh, favorite teams that, that are being eliminated so mm. far. And this is the grand final. Indonesia, one of the uh, like current favorites right now, but Peru, they got the underdog experience, that they got the underdog story, and I'm, I'm not pretty sure like uh, the un they're underdog anymore. Yeah, we'll get to that, that's for sure. I mean, you saw the names on the bracket there. Shout out to every single one of the teams that took part throughout the entire process, from the groups onwards, they all won their national finals to be here. So props to every single player that made it to the big dance. Because there was, I think, 34 teams yeah. in total? Yeah. But it all comes down to our final two. Indonesia versus Peru. Let's take a look at this Indonesian roster. Their unique play style has brought them to this grand final. And they will definitely not all of a sudden start switching things up here. Vlad, what makes them so different? If anybody's just tuned in right now, why are they so special? They prove themselves, like, no default on attack. They go all in the chaos, which they can control. Yeah. That's the more important thing. So when you have someone like Ray, I'm pretty sure he makes everything easier for going all in. I mean, you got to have a team that can come in and give the exact gusto. And yeah. you got to understand that this is one of the, on average, youngest teams in the entire tournament. I'm talking all the way back. Bring back all of those teams that were knocked out early in the groups. This has to be one of the youngest rosters that we've ever fielded in Red Bull Campus Clutch history. And the fact that they're able to bring the young gun and just yeah. absolutely blast the server with it. Ray is a big part of that. Kush as well, leading the charge. I mean, these two players are going to be the big hitters. Ray and Kush, the top two players of the team. And, you know, you talk about them being a really young roster. It just gives them more credibility. And you've got to celebrate them even more, the fact they made it to the grand final in such a composed and just relaxed fashion. I say relaxed. They're getting hikes in for the server, that's for sure. And in front of these live fans. Um, Ray said in an interview yeah. that he expected to make the grand final at least. What does that tell you about him? I think that just shows that they're confident. Uh, I don't think it's cockiness per no. se. I definitely think that with their competitive, competitive yeah. experience, they know that they were expected to make the playoffs quite easily. And then with being undefeated throughout those groups, coming up into the top 16, no one had really quite challenged them yet. No one had given an answer yeah. to everything they were putting in the server. And as a result, I would I would walk away with confidence as well. I mean, definitely. Like, let's give props to Indonesia. Like, they've been together for over one year and they compete against like uh, several teams in uh, tier two scene, yeah. in the Apex scene, right? Yeah. So they're definitely experienced. Definitely has to be in the finals. And let's see. You know what I love as well about this team? There's a lot of things I love. <laughs> But you know how hungry I get for trash talk, Jess. I you live do. for it. I live for the trash talk. You do. And they've been giving it loads. Yeah, I think this is one of the only teams that has really ever stood up out of the chairs. And I'm not talking one player. I'm not talking yeah. two. Three of them stood up round 19 in their last bout in two the semifinals. The and they stood out of their chairs and they gave it to their opponents. And I, I just think to myself, wow, getting in the heads of your opponents as well. It's not just an in-server game. It's out-of-server game for them well, as well. You know the story, right? Like, they were beaten by checks in the first half. Yeah. They were frustrated disappointed yeah. of themselves maybe and then on that tv5 they express every single emotion out of themselves you can sense the vibes between them as well yeah. like as a unit it's not just their play style they, they've got a unique bond as well yeah i think uh, for those who are familiar with apac region i come from the oceania region but we all play together competitively of course you know who else are we going to scrim with that kind of ping of course yeah. but they are used to playing with each other whether it's ranked whether it's competitive wise there is a lot of camaraderie in the region mm -hmm. you kind of have to be that way the player pool is nowhere near as big as the other major regions they all know each other they play together a lot and they will face each other whether it's competitive or ranked let me just check something and see this mic's working i just want to make sure that the fans in the building in here in Istanbul can hear me. Any Indonesia fans in the building? Okay. All right, see there are. And that's that, the reason I did that. Thanks for because me. I expect this to be quite split because yes. both Indonesia and Peru will get to those guys in a moment. There's been incredible fan support for both of them. Yeah, because they've played separate up until this point, you know, every fan has been able to sort of pick a side. Yeah, Peru underdogs, dark horses, they love an underdog story. The crowd has been going crazy. Yeah. And then conversely, we already said this about Indonesia, a lot of the fans, or rather the crowd outside, has been on the receiving end of Ray's shotgun. And there's nothing but respect. And 
I suppose if you get knocked out by a player as, you know, fierce and as uh, brutal as Ray has been, you want him to end up winning because then you could say, well, we lost, but we lost to the winners, so it's not that bad in the end. All right, well, cracking team, but their opponents are looking to knock them down, knock them off their perch in this grand final. Let's take a look at Peru. Fresh, and I mean really fresh, off the back of a victory in the semis of uh, France. Um, still enough time, still enough time to get back up and ready for this one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing about Peru is like, I love their structured defense, positive things only, and taking advantage of tier one. We see some components from tier one scene, some VCT teams using some VCT comps and yeah. uh, some, you know, uh, setups on the uh, Haven game back in the semi-finals and I love what it, what I see from Peru and the comebacks from like Canada, yeah. Turkey and they eliminated them all like let's give props to this Peru team. Yeah we talk a lot Jess about Indonesian the, the play style and how it's just madness and how all the you know the fans watching home if you're a neutral you're just gonna absolutely love it yeah or you might get frustrated it depends what sort of mood you're in true but these guys have got their own style stylistically and you believe that they could be the ones to conquer the madness that is Indonesian play style here. No one has had an answer for Indonesia thus far. Yeah. Do you yeah. fight fire with fire? Do you stay back a little bit? Do you try and long range against this judge that is consistently being put in your face? No one has had an answer for it. We thought Czech might. They didn't put it up on the board for us. Stylistically, Peru is the only team in this tournament that has put up with as many styles as one can put up with yeah. and still weathered the storm. So if anyone is experienced and ready to deal with a brand new play style, it is going to be Peru. If they can't overcome it, well, guess what? As per winning the championship, no one will ever overcome it. Yeah, we talked about individual performances as well, right? Yeah. right? So you have to have your duelist step up in the big games. Mm -hmm. So that's what they did in this semi-final against the Europe opponents is Juto dropped almost 40 kills against yes. their opponents and for the first time uh, we yeah I mean like there are lots of uh, fragger players that's yeah. why maybe we didn't talk about Juto a lot of times but this time we talked about Juto and he has to play in a great level again yeah Jess Fab you know uh, I, I, I sometimes I'm a bit hesitant to give you your props but this time I'm actually gonna do it Okay. You mentioned Fab I did. what feels like weeks ago now. We've had a lot of Valorant. Yeah. It's been a couple of days, right? But you mentioned him as a standout player and he's been delivering on all cylinders. I mean, when you see an 18-year-old put up those kind of stats in the group stage, it can mean one of two things. Okay, they're playing comfortably off the stage and like they're just on the hype and they're going up against maybe teams that are not ready for a, for a young gunner like him. But yeah. he kept that going throughout and I think, I really do truly think he's one of the next big players. Ooh. I, I, I think if you're Clip scouting it. and you're Clip looking it. for a player, Fab is probably your guy to go with he's young enough that you can mold him coaches like us want to look at young guns because you yeah, know they're ready to definitely. be molded into the next big thing so just like you saw Alfie in the show match he was the same kind of prospect I think Fav is the next kind of big thing coming out of that region. Yeah, I mean, Alfajar, uh, actually like locally for Turkish uh, like he proved himself in the, uh, the team he played for like in Turkey but yeah. on a fanatic level he stepped up and he consistently kept playing. And this is the place, maybe Fab show himself. Yes. And this is the place where you can step up to tier two, maybe even tier one. I hope so. Well, for the first time here, it will be, of course, a best of five series. And when it comes to a best of five, you need a strong map pool. Peru, do you think they have one? Uh, they've shown enough maps that I can be rather confident. You can see on your screen right now what maps they've played. There's only two that they haven't played. And when you're looking at it, I mean, the Ascent back and forth, everyone's been playing Ascent here. Yeah. Maybe you can get rid of it and whatnot, ban the Bind and the Breeze. The, every map, it's hard to judge because when you're winning 99% of your maps, really, how do I judge it? They're playing enough that I would say, yeah, there's depth there, but maybe there's a little bit of false hope and false confidence by winning so many maps and not being tested thus far too much. Yeah, that, that, that's all right. I mean, they haven't played Breeze and Bind. Which is which, fair. Yeah, fair. Uh, but also Indonesia as well, which we can see uh, later on, they both don't play Breeze. So Sorry. the question is, who's going to ban Breeze? Who's going to leave it open? Who will have the upper hand here? You know what I'm fascinated to see is like, we're watching two teams here. It's, it's almost a, it's the perfect final for us. It is. Because we're watching two teams that are not used to losing, especially here <laughs> on, the, on the main stage. Will both of them have the ability, Vlad? Because it takes a lot of mental fortitude. When you're on a hot streak and you're winning a lot, yeah. 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 you take that first map loss, how do you react? I mean, it's really tough. I mean, it's really tough. 
Uh, both teams haven't uh, seen any map has been dropped yet in yeah. the round of 16 from now on and playoffs. And this is the moment they have to show some resilience and mental strength. You know? It's a different and side to the, the team that we yeah. get to experience, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I have to disagree with you both. I think Peru's come back from behind in a lot of the, the maps. So yeah. yes, it's not, not yeah, series but... specific, but I think there's enough mental resilience there. Whereas Indonesia oftentimes has been ahead, hasn't really had to look down the barrel too much of a loss, even inside a map. So I think even just intra-map, if we go that micro analytically, I do think that Peru has been tested more mentally on a resilience side. Vlad, who's more scared of the other team? Uh, Indonesia, to be honest. But you think Indonesia are more scared of Peru? I mean, no, no, no. Yeah. The, the vice versa. You think Peru is yeah. scratching their head a little bit and looking at this Indonesian roster yeah, again? I mean, huh? I mean the, the no Maybe. default thing and the full commitment from uh, Indonesia is like, that really scares me, dude. Yeah, but what if they're sitting there and they're saying to themselves, that's so chaotic, we can easily control that. Just put a triple crossfire in place every time Ray Satchel's in and it's a guaranteed kill. Maybe they're really confident that yeah. they've seen so much of their gameplay now and they think it's one dimensional a bit one tricky if you will i mean and they think they can counter it maybe they're very confident if you, i was just going to say if you're watching this and you're thinking oh nice a student tournament they're playing for pride and, and whatever else think again right i just want to remind you about the prize pool Twenty thousand euros goes to the winning team it's not split it doesn't go like oh you get five grand if you're third or second whatever winner takes all high stakes big money yeah. Unbelievable trophy, and of course, bragging rights, not just when it comes to your university, but national pride. Uh, from the APAC region, I mean, this is probably why I will slip a little bit of bias in there and go, I do want the Indonesian boys to do well, because APAC often doesn't walk away with a trophy in FPS, and all of my APAC fans out there are sitting there right now going, yeah, Jess, like, we really need another trophy on the shelf because okay. it's a little bare at the moment. So for me, I'm like, oh, I really want them because, you know, EU and the other regions, South American stuff, they've won a lot of things <laughs> in FPS and beyond, so give it to APAC, just a little bit, share it around a little bit. I mean, this, this is also the way to make the investment more in the region as well. Thank yeah. you. Isn't it? Thank yeah, you. for sure. Yep. And I mean, like, for example, this uh, one of the, whoever wins this tournament is going to be like on the uh, big screens. Yep. Shared everyone. All the fun nationality. Yeah. And that's really important in the maybe pictures and videos all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it cool? Yeah, worldwide. I didn't, I didn't think of that. That's actually very smart. It's How many true. eyes will be on them? And uh, exposure does a lot of things for teams. So I've does money, though, Jess. So does money. Okay, money. yeah. I mean, this man wants 20,000 euros worth of kebab. You said you'd go to the club. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say I'd go to the club. I said there are clubs in Turkey. I didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say I'd go to all the clubs. All right. I don't know. All right, we're lying live on air these days, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. <laughs> Never why. trust your money with Ian. Yeah, don't trust your money with Ian. This is why he's a host and he's not sitting down there. Okay, well, the I'll, tell, I'll tell you what, if I was a student <laughs> okay, and, and, and I was playing in this tournament yep. and I won 20,000 euros yes. at such a, a young age to split between you guys, that's got to be playing on your mind. I don't care what you say. If, no, if I was no, 18, no, no. 19, whatever age, I'm looking at this going, I want that money. No, no, don't get me money. wrong. When I was in university, I mean, I was working a couple of jobs, trying to, you know, finish my degrees and yeah. whatnot. I mean, it, it's a time where money can be really incredibly helpful. So I hope for these guys that, you know, that money d definitely goes to a good cause for them. Yeah, actually, like some of the players, I, I'm uh, sorry, I, I don't remember who was that, but wants to take care of his family. He after. did say that, didn't yeah. he? He said, I yeah. just want to, uh, what do you say, provide and support for my family yeah. playing Valorant. Isn't that the most wholesome thing you've ever heard? That's so cool. I love that. I mean, if that was me and I won a world final, I'd say, sorry, mum, I'm spending this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I wouldn't really. Go to the club, like, buying kebabs, are you kidding? I can't trust <laughs> I'm not sure you're kidding. You, another thing that we need to bear in mind, just bear with us, we are getting very close to the walkouts and our teams are just getting all psyched up and ready to enter onto the stage. I can actually hear our hype man Stevie getting the crowd all fired up and ready for this big moment, but speaking of moments, I'm a big believer in, you know, the ones that come few and far between, making sure you breathe it in, making sure you let yes. it all, you soak up the atmosphere and you feel every single moment. It's a hard thing to do in a competitive situation because all you're thinking about is winning, but at the same time, Moments like this, they don't come thick and fast, Jess, so when you're making your way through that 
that tunnel and the yeah. lights are shining and the crowd's going wild. You've got to take a second to breathe it in. I've said this today and I will repeat it for as long as I am in esports. This kind of experience for players doesn't even happen to tier one players. Some of them will play online for their whole career. Yeah. They won't ever make a land. They won't have yeah. an international experience like this. So Red Bull gifting this right now is an incredible, incredible uh, what have we got? Oh, is this Turkish? Read this, read this for me. What right. does it say? It Itu? is, uh, yeah, yeah, one of the best uh, universities in Turkey. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, there so you go. Good. So this is university pride here. Yeah. Let's have a look at some of the fans. I'm loving seeing the fans who've, uh, who've come out for this. If you see yourself on camera, feel free to give a nice big wave at the, uh, at the lens. Our cameramen aren't scary. They're all, uh, all here for a good time. They are, they're wonderful. Who have we got next? Hello Ooh, there. Hello there. The support has been wild. I love this. And all of the cameramen and women have just been running around, getting everyone on camera. And I think to yep. myself, there are a lot of people here. A lot more than I expected. Yeah. Let's get into our grand final. Judge their unique play style at your peril. It's the incredible Indonesia. What a moment it is for this team. Very much described by many at the beginning of this process as the underdogs. Underdogs no more. They're ready for this moment. You can see it. They're built for this moment, Jess. I mean, they were so confident that they should at least make these grand finals. If you come in with such a statement, you need to be able to back it up. You can say whatever you want. You've got to talk the talk, but walk the walk, and speaking of walking. They've proven themselves against every single obstacle that stood in their way so far. Just one more to go. It's Peru! They're ready for it. They're hyped up for it. The flags are on display, draped around shoulders, held in front with nothing but pride. And we've got one more fist bump before we get into this best of five grand final. As our players now make their way for a little bit of a huddle here. We talk about how vital these last words are in quarterfinals and semifinals. It's crunch time now, Vlad. Definitely, they knocked out some teams like Turkey, Canada, and now they're here, Peru. I mean, they have to realize how far they, come, uh, they came from. Like, so important. That's hype! This is the last step on their journey to being Red Bull Campus Clutch final winners. I mean, you want to pick up that trophy? Right there. That team across from you is the last obstacle in your way to overcome it, to hurdle it. Whatever you need to do right now is when you put your heads together and work out the game plan. To be that close to it, you know, to see it, it's almost like a bit brutal it with is. the fist bump right in front of it because only one side will get to raise it oh. when it's all said and done. And it is a beautiful trophy as we now get into Matt Picks and Bands. Vital choice has been made in front of us now, Jess. Yeah, and for those who don't know, it's bam, bam, pick, 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 pick. And then, of course, it will be a decider at the end. That's how best of fives work. And speaking of, we expected the breeze to go off the board. Yep. Not sure I necessarily expected Lotus to go off the board. It will come out from Peru. They don't want to go on it. And Split being the map number one, I'm not surprised. Indonesia want to start off on a very strong map. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, Lotus was the uh, personal choice for, like, Peru, and yeah. they didn't want to play that again. Uh, I mean, maybe they watched the game on Czech Republic versus uh, Indonesia, second half. You know? And they did not like what they saw. They saw that judge on every corner, and they went, you yeah. know what, uh -huh. my judgment is Ben. Maybe... Uh, I mean, in split, they will suffer that same thing again. They will suffer the same yeah. fate with that judge. However, Maybe. there are ways to circumvent it, so I do expect that they have talked about this. Yeah. They know that Indonesia is going to pick it, and in a best of five, you can only ban two maps, yeah, so it's inevitable it. that it is going to be in the pick pool. Sunset as well, I love yeah. that. Peru picking in the sunset. I think that will play into their very methodical play style as well. We spoke about Peru being able to go up against all of those stylistic play styles, yep. Indonesia being a very aggressive one. Mm -hmm. I think Sunset will allow them to be a little bit more set play, allow them to condition a little bit more across the map, use more utility. They're very good at it. Mm -hmm. The mechanical skill can withhold a team like Indonesia. I don't know if Indonesia is ready utility-wise to deal with such a big map like that. The other day against Canada, I suppose, uh, we saw some uh, actual conditioning from Peru, like yeah. really nice ones. And uh, in the decision-making time, mid-round, late-round, 
they delivered against Canada and all, of course like Peru had some individual skills that are perfect but in the teamwork Sunset has been the best for them so far. The good thing is for the first time we can all actually just sort of post up a little bit, feet up and get ready for at least three maps finally here on our main <laughs> stage but do you think there's potential now we've seen the picks and bands Jess that we we go the full five? It's difficult because when you get into a best of five, if you see the, the team that wins the first two maps is, is just going to run away with it nine times out of ten. It's the unfortunate. You lose your map pick, you pick it dominantly in a best of five for a reason. Yeah. If you do manage to slip away with that, the chances of coming back are very slim. But when they do come back, it is often the most magnificent reverse sweep you will ever see from a team. So. If there is a comeback moment, of course, the crowd's going to have to get behind whichever team it is. But I hope it is a very, very close bout, especially on split. I do expect it to be close. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Indonesia looking straight on uh, split, but I love the way you say we're going to see the third map. Yeah, in I think it's going to be like in favor of Indonesia so far. Yeah, but let's see the first map. I'm trying to work out now when, as we take glances at our players here as they get set their final moments before getting thrown into map one what the vibes are like and to be honest it looks like excitement across the board yeah i think there's a little bit of concentration a little bit of seriousness i think a lot of these players have, have realized right now that this is the big bang moment for them of like yeah. wow like, yeah. this is the grand final we did, it. Yeah. we did it we're sitting here so i think they're they're feeling a little bit of the nerves but i'm sure for the indonesian boys they're so used to being in a competitive environment, at least the core of the Indonesian roster. So I can't imagine that it's getting to them too much. They're used to comp games of high levels, so yeah. hopefully yeah. they're ready. Vlad, true, true. Yeah. lots Definitely. of emotions as a player, especially one that's not necessarily used to a platform such as this. Yeah. Running through your body. Yeah. Excitement, anxiety, nerve, determination, just to list a few. How do you, as a coach, sort of like, get them leveled out because it's that's a, a, an impossible task i mean you're asking vlad who was famous on the vct broadcast for slamming his desk 12 times in a broadcast yeah. so much so that the vct broadcast made a montage of him slamming his desk till yeah, the camera, like the camera slid off the desk yeah, you're asking him that's that me, mentality that's a, that's how we used to hand, try to handle at least <laughs> This man slams yeah. his desk. That's his way to deal with the mentality. Yeah, yeah. I need to see this montage, but because you've incredible. just been Mr. Happy Go Lucky out here, I need to see you slam something. Right now? Um, probably not right now. Don't okay. break the desk. Can you crush a Red Bull can with your bare hands? Ooh, that would be. Can I, we? I can we get Vlad? Not to. Can we bring Vlad up just on camera briefly? Yeah, Is that yeah, a possibility? Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. I've, let me You're finish gonna, this. Are we able? Here we go. All right. All right Angry Vlad, get ready. Go on, All give right. it. I want to see angry faces. Uh, is that it? Something like this. Oh, wow. No, he's actually done quite a good job. That was scary. Anyway, back to the players. <laughs> <laughs> We've luckily, done We've luckily done we haven't seen Vlad banging anything around here, and hopefully these players here can maintain their composure because it's a long stretch of best of bad. I have seen the Indonesian boys crack a little bit when it's about mentality. You and I were discussing the fact that they had their, like, they were visibly shaken at moments and they had their hands in their head. It wasn't until that clutch round 19 in the semi final where they worked out, get themselves out of that sort of hole that they dug in. So I think Indonesia probably does struggle a little bit with the mentality, whereas Peru is actually on the other side of the spectrum. They deal quite well with the kind of pressure. So. If it's a pressure thing, I think Peru comes out on top there. Definitely. I mean, they came back from Canada game split 10-2, yeah. and oh. they got 11 rounds in the attacking side. We were prepared to talk about how Canada yes. almost smashed uh, Peru, but it was all the way around, you know. And Peru actually proved themselves to be really uh, resilient. Yeah. However, Indonesia didn't have to suffer that much. We are currently in a bit of a tech pause, but Two men who are standing by on deck 24-7, ready to cast Valorant of the OGs. Van Silly and Riv in the building. Guys, it wouldn't be a, a grand <laughs> final without you two in the house. We're excited for it. Oh. Vans, you've been here before. Riv making his Red Bull, Red Bull campus clutch. It's getting loud in here. Yeah, yeah. Super loud, Steve man. Going off. Super loud. I, I, I love it. I love it. Steve At the same time, uh, Ian, you're talking to Vlad. How yeah. the hell do we say I'm excited? I did my role. I went over on uh, to okay. Transit apps, so okay, glad okay. to help me oh, okay. out here. Okay? Go, 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 go. Excited and hyped up. Hey, Not Jam Ejim. Is it close? Say it again. Try again. Try again. Hey, Jam Ejim. 
What? Damn it. There you go. I tried. Oh, I tried. Cry I tried. Come on. At least, at least some points for crying, you know? Hey, John Lieb. Hey, Jamie Lieb. Hey, John. Hey, fan. Hey, John. I think you did worse Leave. that time. Damn it. Don't Just get him that. angry. He'll start banging the desk. Yeah, ah. I mean, this Don't guy. Make him angry. Don't make him angry. <laughs> this guy. All right. All right. Listen, <laughs> Baz, let's just get serious for a second, okay. Baz Rib. The OGs, I just want to ask you about predictions because I haven't really picked your brain that much, especially yeah, on the broadcast yeah. about which way you think this is going to go down. We've got this epic best of five grand final, two very different teams stylistically. Riv, I'm going to come to you first. Who's taking home the trophy? I, Indonesia is such a powerhouse right now. They come into this having already taken down Northwood University. Maybe a reason we see that Lotus Band coming in because that was a banger of an OT game that they were able to win. But on the other side, you have Peru taking down teams like Canada who we think we're going all the way as well they have taken down the titans of the tournament and have the respect to be here right okay. now it's about that strength though that i think Ind indonesia brings aggro from both offense and defense they don't have a defensive side <laughs> and that is terrifying to see yeah it's almost like a junior prx pretty much exactly. when you're yeah, watching perfect. indonesia on the stage so if you're actually going to go for indonesia okay I, you know i said it on kios uh, on stream that i was like oh i'm going to go for indonesia because i'm asian indonesia has oh asia in the, kind of, i'm going to go for indonesia well, but if, you're, if you're going to go for them i'm actually going to go for peru because okay. peru also has structure they've been a team that's been around together for the longest time they've been playing in the challenges scene for the longest time as well, wow. and also practicing against the top-notch VCT teams. I mean, if you're looking at the split comp, which is coming up, that's a crew style that they actually it bring is. out. So they, they are structured, and I think they have what it takes, really, to bring that structure to a victory. Guys, I just want to do something real quick. Can I just get the... Come over, Kimmy, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah! Is that what Let's you're doing? go! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the spontaneous, spontaneous style here of Ian Chambers. Sorry, I've been wanting to do it all the time. Thank you, guys. We'll come back <laughs> for you soon for the, uh, for, the, for the grand final. <laughs> I think we're just about, very shortly, about to get uh. into Agent Select. Nice. But I like getting the other thoughts of our casters, because that's a rarity, you know? We've got yeah, to be biased absolutely. normally, so it's nice to get some predictions, Jess. Yeah, no, hearing from the casters, the setup here has been fantastic. And speaking of the setup, we will finally know what we will be set up compositionally with with both of these teams. On the left side of your screen will be Peru. On the right side of your screen will be Indonesia. What do the comps look like? Well, it's looking like we're going to get pretty default for both of these teams. And if you're wondering if Rainer is default for the right-hand side of your screen, yes, it is. That is not a randomized pick there. That is what they usually go with. And you can see that composition has been run 100% of the time that both of these teams have played it. However, there's a little bit of a difference with the attacking and defensive yeah. win rates. Yeah, I mean, like, even if Indonesia gets 12 rounds in the first half, don't think it's ended. Oh, right? oh. Don't okay. think it's ended because Peru can still come back. I mean, this comp has to deliver sometimes with uh, Fabi in the chamber as well. Yes. Like he has to do something good on the defense, some peaks, early peaks, early individual skills, which we didn't see in the Canada game in the first place when they defense. Uh, this time it has to prevail. Yeah, I'm looking back at that split game, the last time they played split, and I'm thinking to myself, damn. Everyone, brother. You do, baby. Let's bringing go. that particular composition and, and changing things up as well, I just wondered to myself, how does this look for them against yet another team who might be able to read Chamber? Are they going to read how Ash is going to play? We've spoken about it before. Mm -hmm. I, I think this team is ready to know where this is going to go. I think it's, it's too many VODs now. I know where they are. We've waited long enough. It is now time to get into the grand final of the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023. You ready, Jess? Oh, Let's mate, get I'm into ready. it. It's Peru versus Indonesia with Vansili and Riff. Thank you so much, everybody at the desk. Rivington, a time right now to write new history for the Red Bull Campus Clutch. A chance to crown a new champion right here on the stage. It's ridiculous. This is how it happened. I don't think anybody saw this finals cap uh, coming into place, but it is going to be Indonesia versus Peru. And both have earned the right to be here through long matches, 100%. through overtimes, beating teams just by a hair in some of the best ones we had here at the Red Bull Campus Clutch. We're gonna get down to split first. They talked about that, Reyna. We'll keep an eye on how fast and how far forward they continue <laughs> to push on the side of Indonesia. And we're going to see 
Truth, though, on the side of Peru, playing already in the middle of the map, back by spawn on yep. split here, as they try to get themselves in a perfect position, because they know Indonesia is going to be fast. This is going to be a great stylistic clash between these two composition for this first map, because on one end, you just mentioned this Rainer for Cud, and also Ray's, of course, for Ray. But uh, an, an agent that could stop him right now is that chamber. Long range with the up, up and towards Don't the... Let him in. in the air when you're satchelated. Don't let him in. The Reyna still has to run in from long distances to create that space. But on the other end, what happens? We're gonna take the attack. Red Bull gives you wings. And that's why what I was trying to mention here, when they're gonna take the attack and they have to go against the judge on the defense of Indonesia, yeah. that's gonna be a hard thing to mess against. It's always tough. But that you you mentioned a good point with the chamber with Fabazine. It, there's a lot that goes on to that defensive positioning. These early rendezvous peaks to get an idea of what's happening. Already down to 34 HP, and where is Ray going to go? Only W. Chasing after that chamber and falling back here is continuing to make some noise, just dancing around to start things off. Just letting loose, you know, before we start the grand finals right here and breaks that trip. But that's really not going to move anybody around from Team Peru. We're still staying still. But right now on the attack for Indonesia, looks like B is the play. So sure about their focus. All the Cypher utility on the other site, and it's going to be a B hit. One minute left. Paranoia out first. First contact would be Boy Dios inside the site. Connects onto Kush. On the other end, though, it's the Frenzy of Cut. Drops him down as a spike is about to get planted for B main. Rotation already coming through from hell. From hell. The Chamber with the Hand Hunter does not connect. And the Trailblazer is looking for information. That's which he moving forward. It's only him and Celed trying to clutch his four versus two. Spike again. Again, Planet, Flash coming out, Molly into the main. But there's still opposition all around the pillar on the other end. Nice little dink, but it leads now to Celed alone on a three versus one as his teammate just fell down. Playing towards the simple things in their composition. Salad now trying to get through that. The frenzy, the classics, it's mm. not going to work. And the simple things I'm talking about is Cud with a frenzy running forward on Reyna and everyone behind. Reyna gets a kill. Somebody gets a kill. Reyna is going to get the overheal on that. And running around with a frenzy on pistol round, that's not <laughs> something you want in your face. Great try by Weevil Deus here to, to start off the round. But against Indonesia, I think it's so scary to stay in sight and try to take that in the first fight. So backing up a little bit, absorbing that pressure from Indonesia, and even giving them a little space in that instance, I think, is, is safer. But still, we'll see if Peru can get the read, get the position for Chuto a little better, where Salad's utility is, and we can see if they stop this rush pressure. One hit towards B. We're going to see if we start round two towards A, and everyone towards the top side to take control. Have it? No, it's just going to be Kush. And the guess out there from Peru is trying to stack towards that middle, the aggression yep. that came out from Indonesia earlier on, but an open sight, easy one to come down on the attack. It's actually planted so they can fight back towards heaven, but there's the four players moving forward, and Kush with that Guardian close range too. Yep. Seems to be an easy round. Picked up now for Team Indonesia. Only one person remaining, Fabajin, again, as this chamber. At least it's trying to make it look expensive or die to the spike. You made a great point. As much as we were kind of pushing Indonesia's offense on both sides, that was right out into mid on the save round here for Peru. <laughs> trying to get an idea of how fast Indonesia wants to play. Be able to read them in different aspects of the round because they change so many little things and they can attack you so quick. Changing the timing of the game, especially when you're not ready for it, is so difficult to be able to recuperate from. You're always one step behind, and that's where Indonesia can put their opponents. A good job on guarding this Guardian that went down so they don't lose too much more. And I think they only lose a few players for the first few rounds, so Indonesia doing very well on economy as we're about to get into Peru's now bonus, or buy here on Indonesia's bonus. Looks like they will be able to get quite a few, just a FAMAS for Weechi, or a, sorry, a Bulldog. And where do they go? There's still a defense, or default defense here by Peru. It, it, interesting that they're not trying to take any any forward push. It looks like they do want to get that out of Weechi right now. At least liking it there for what they're trying to do for pushes is with the chamber, right? Yeah. So Fabijin is going to be that answer on that aggression from Indonesia, who starts things off once again, this time on the B side. First contact, first blood in favor of Peru. Oof. But quickly it goes back in favor now of they Indonesia, can't. as it's the, that double duelist duo here that just clears out that site. Already the rotate's a little bit too far ahead. No chance to really counteract right away as they got sworn by Indonesia. So mm -hmm. Saled and Wichi can't really do much. They're going to try at wow. least. But there's just too much forward position coming out of Indonesia. With this Bulldog now, 
can it upgrade to this Vandal? It will, and also leaving a little bit of bullets behind before he upgrades. Uh, the the defense that Peru is playing right now reminds me a lot of how Leviathan would play defense on split, where they stay in sight. They're they're sure about holding it. it, it they're not making mistakes. They don't feel like they're going to get overrun. But the power of Indonesia coming through each time, they're hitting the first shots. That means the second person's getting swarmed. So then you have to then consider, okay, maybe we can't stay in sight because it's not really a big util crush coming from Indonesia. It's player after player that's able to swarm. Them. So back up again. Let that happen. And, and yeah, it's, Chuto gets one, but is already swarmed by Cud, who's under him. Like, so quick, they're getting into position. And these ultimates are going to start coming online as well. All right, three in a row now for the side of Indonesia. Weechi with that Vandal. Looks like they'll try to keep it towards B. A, mid, a little bit of a mid push as well. We could get out of raise if Chuto wants to find something with a quick sheriff shot here, but... Indonesia is not keeping it stale either. Towards B first round, towards A next round, a little bit of a play towards mid one of the rounds. They're continuously varying strats. Yeah, and this time it's a stack, right? And noticing that a couple of rounds they were trying to fight towards the middle, maybe yeah. guessing that's where Indonesia is always going to be coming towards you. But now they've noticed Indonesia going side to side. So they stack four players on B, I love one Marshall on A. Also, you notice what they're buying here for Peru. They're not investing too much into this chamber so that they can get potentially this operator within the next round. So hopefully the stacks works out in their favor as Indonesia is slowly still taking his mid control. The operator is the way to deny fast play. Somebody wants to come flying around a corner, one shot, one kill. So you're right. I think that's big if they can get that economy as this push towards heaven. Super strong. They just get Peru pushed off. Their support there. Unfortunately, the headhunter does not connect as he TPs oh. away to meet up with Shuto, then close range, at least a right click classic will work. Nice little right. fight coming out from Wibadios though. Advantage coming back for Team Peru, but low on HP is Fabagine, and Ray has grabbed the at least control with the judge, but gets denied right away. So a possibility for Peru to actually take this round on the Thrifty. This is huge, Vansili. Just a push from B allowed a lot of this to happen, and now more fighting in heaven. Oh, God, just on the other side of this is gonna wait it out. All screens here for Peru. That's right. It's planet for him too, so it's okay for him not to give his position away. The Viper Wall covering up where they could defend and defuse on the spike for Peru. Valdin is able to get one at least within the site. Oh, a nice cosmic divine! And Selan is out there with the headshot, and the Thrifty comes in for Team Peru. I love it. Peru makes such a good decision to inch forward, but not enough to be seen. They're taking safe space. It gives them enough of an idea of how to play around Indonesia. And Indonesia hasn't really seen retaliation in the first three rounds. So they're not expecting a push. They're not expecting to somebody be around the corner yet. They've had all the upper hand in the fights. It took just that little bit of timing for Peru to switch it in their favor and take the Sheriff round there. Weechi with the Vandal still able to bring that through. Absolutely crazy stuff, and that's the momentum Peru needed right there, especially in confidence to let them know they can stop Indonesia on these fast hits. And that's actually is exactly that the advantage to know that even if they stack towards the wrong places, they it, could play yes. a retake with their weapons too. So yes. that's going to add a lot of confidence for the team for Peru moving forward. And we've seen on this map just a couple of days ago when they're playing against Team Canada, this was a scoreline that was a 10 2 at the half, and they were still Ooh. able to fight back. So Absolutely. when it comes down to resiliency for this team for Peru, they definitely have what it takes but only four rounds have gone by, Riv. We're still learning each other on this very map. We haven't seen the full potential of Ray so far with the satchels yeah. on this map against this team. And the judge gets thwarted. We see it the first time around. Great job. Close <laughs> range, too. There's a lot coming through being able to get that, so that was huge. Ultimates are going to start coming online, too. The flow of the game is about to change heavily, and that economy could flex in the favor of uh, Peru if they get another good round here. Seeing the second round loss, 2400, is going to maybe allow some extra buys for Indonesia, so they could be safe on a lower buy, but this is exactly how Peru needs to advance forward. Now, do they continue to push? I think being able to uh, affect and identify if Kush is putting up constant A traps in camera mm -hmm. to at least get somebody out there to deny it, to toy with that. It's like taking down the alert bot, taking down the turret, then you have to worry about that spot more. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big, just 
something to put on the docket yeah. for Peru to do at the beginning of the round and touch and go all the time. Actually, you bring up a great point with that too because Kush is actually the playing the Sentinel right now for Team Indonesia, and he's his responsibility usually as a Cypher on this map is to create that pressure on right. that A side with mm -hmm. the lurk. I'm always here, I'm always here. Exactly, but he doesn't need to so far, right? It's always <laughs> yeah. been like this mid push and this this hold or the, the, aggress the aggression, sorry, from Ray and Cud. So right. Peru has to deal with that first. And once they start dealing with that more and more, that's actually a window of opportunity, an open door mm -hmm. for that backstab to actually happen and finally move in for Kush. So you're going into like a pretty deep playbook right now for uh, Indonesia further down the road, and hopefully Peru could be ready for that. Absolutely. Seeing Seekers out here, I almost feel like we might get a Seekers up ramp, uh, well, say Ray up ramp with those Seekers, but easily able to kind of take care of Heaven. We saw only Kush really taking that position as the team likes the Flood site for Indonesia. Sometimes, uh, I think at the end of our uh, metas we saw in professional season, it was a lot of Heaven take, Waterfall into site once you knew Heaven was take. Uh, it's a little bit different here for Indonesia. They're straight in, they get to the point, they get to plant, and they make Peru sweat a little bit. Yep. A couple rounds coming through as if you want to digest a little bit more what was mm -hmm. happening here yeah. on these pushes from Indonesia is you've, you've noticed on these extremities, they're playing a little bit further back, so Peru seems to be understanding a little bit more of this double satchel aggression that could be coming out from Ray. And yeah. you're trying to close that gap, but further enough where you're not going to get too much pressure from the judge, but yet Peru still wants to stay within the site and fight. And when there's more players coming behind those duelists and they're falling one by one, it doesn't give a chance here for the other ones to rotate. So. My opinion is if you're going to actually start playing it a little bit further back, maybe try to start giving up the sights and then try to retake yeah. as a team. As again, we're, we're going to see if that's going to be the play as we're resuming round number five in this grand finals on split. Yeah, Indonesia is ready to identify where you were one time and see if you're there again. So yeah, Seeker's out immediately, but they're not going to move as fast forward as I thought. Still working this all door barrier. So I'd say good control by Peru as well to deliver a little bit of damage back and stall out Indonesia's speed here, really only gaining this A lobby spot. Still on ramp. There. The position here for Chuto up top does not have his grenade still. Or anymore, I should say. They have good numbers, though, for Peru. And this early aggression coming out from Indonesia and first contact actually comes out damaged. Our Indonesia. They're looking to execute right away. Fadajin. It's a lot of siddle spam through the wall, and there's a satchel. So it works out for one, but because they have these numbers, they could trade out right away. And as the wall's about to come down. Yeah. Indonesia might want to push in towards heaven. First contact there, the swing out from Juto, but ADSing out his Kush, training it back against his opponent to even up the talent at 3 3. Really seeing the, the power of a double controller here as well. Peru doing so well at just separating Indonesia in the, in the attempts they're going forward. They get smoked off, one goes down, and they have to just receive these left. shots. Beautifully played between uh, Salad and Wimo Diaz on the controllers. I'm loving this. The rotate comes back as well for Peru to play three players on top of A Heaven. So give up the site, it's okay. Retake the site together. And don't allow the attackers to plant for a Heaven. Mm -hmm. So you're going to work as a group. You're going to try to find Cud as the plant went down for Valden, who's stuck to play inside the site. So we're just hoping for the extra push coming out. The off angle now being played. The peek out coming out first from Reyna. As he dismisses Made back it? within the site. Oh, out into silly. safety. Hides away from his opponent's Last wall. But then Wibo Diaz comes in for the first trade. The 1v1 in the end. But Salad gets it. And Peru puts up two on the board. Incredible stuff from Salad right now. Coming in with the, the Sheriff that was able to take down the Ray's Judge just in the second round for the Eco. Like or, uh, yeah coming up for their, their frags, and then this, able to clutch again. Such big stuff coming for him. <laughs> I love it. Now, ultimate there. Levazine is going to have the Tour de Force judge in hand as well if anybody gets close. And I actually like that a lot. Do they go back to the judge? Oh, they just dropped that to shoot, though. I was going to say, are you going to judge because you think Ray is going to push that so fast that you can take that out and play the trickery yourself? But they switch it over. Ray still has his judge. So it looks like the verdict will be laid down by both teams this time. That Tour de Force is going to come out, Vansili. And that's going to be focused over towards A. Back yep. to mid now for Indonesia. And the pressure from Peru has stayed constant, at least in one spot, at least to make Indonesia think. And it's definitely slowed them down. The thing is, right now you have the pit for the defense on middle. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to now focus with no information that you can gather towards B main, where the hit's going to be coming from. But instead, for Indonesia, Ooh. they're just trying to walk through. 
So Celeste gets the first easy pick on Terrain. That's going to follow all the plans a little bit here for Tim Indonesia. The Cypher actually made it through as Kush pushed all the way up towards the vents. And it comes now to that moment of uncertainty. Where is Indonesia going to be hitting towards to you when you can't really find that information right yet? For Peru, so they have to play the contact. They have to play the sound. Here's the flash, double in. That smoke again. Great stall coming in from Weibo Deus. Yeah, we're not really committing yet, though. This nope. is all a fake because of this position right here from Kush on the top of Vents. They might try to want to pivot back towards the A sign, mm -hmm. maybe adding the pressure towards B. I mean, you're already seeing the They're jumping coming out. The rain is going to be there. So we're really trying to sell that fake. 30 seconds left. Trying to get Celeste out of position from his pit. But still walking in. Oh, just walks away. The timing on this one. Caps on the first, but trade out instantly by Kush. This now opens up the trade off within the B site. Close reigns is Chuto with the judge. And now the last two players from Indonesia on the top of B Heaven. Chuto trying to pick up the Vandal and fight at long range. Just around the corner, all their players moving in on the attack. But it's Push. all out in favor so far Got of it. the attack. Wibodio is still alive. We still have to get the plant down. It's in. It's going to work out. It's a two versus one. As actually it wasn't enough time, oh. just milliseconds left. So we'll stay alive here for Weechi, and we tie up the game three to three. That Red Bull camp is clutched by patience, by not peeking. Sometimes that's all it takes. And I think Peru is doing a very good oh job God. at being able to stop the loose play of Indonesia. We saw Ray kind of just push into mailroom into that, but get taken out immediately. When usually that would just kind of be, a, I'm a touch and go, I'm going to do some chip damage with this judge and get out. That's not, it, that's not what's happening. The plays are being really well read here by the side of Peru that they can just get under the skin of these little checks, these little things that Ray would be able to really be free to do because nobody wants to get in his way. And it's not a technical, it's actually a tactical coming out from Indonesia. Sounds and it, good. You saw the timing right there. I, I, I was sure that the plant was coming down there. It was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I thought so oh, too. Something. I was ready to watch the rest of the round. <laughs> so with that though, because Peru now is able to tie up the scoreline three to three, we're try trying to at least have some breathing room from Indonesia with this timeout. Yeah. I think what they realized is there just needs to be more intention to each play, right? They can still play loose, checking those corners, making the, making the plays, but with the ability to trade. You walk into that smoke alone, that's no yeah. man's land. You're going to get taken down by Salad right now. He's just too good at the moment. Playing really well off the, off the get-go here. It does not seem like the teams are feeling too many cobwebs. That's why we're getting these head-to-head -head battles right away. So Tour de Force is down, and the up comes out. Big spend here by the side of Peru. If they can keep this momentum going, the economy stays strong. Not so much economy for the side of Indonesia, and that's Peru's big work over these last three rounds. It looks like it's going to be that default once again here from Indonesia as they try to feel out how Peru is Ooh. now reading these strats. The dog actually allowed Kush to get on top of any ramp. Mm -hmm. And he actually squeezed by the jump spawning coming out from Chuto. So an opportunity there to take mid control, split out. Indonesia making some noise on top of B Heaven. Close range satchel. And we have the judge to take down Chuto. Upgrading to a weapon. Numbers dwindling down towards the B side, but still two players alive for Team Peru. Still have Kush in a good spot as well. Can't move up as quick because of the rendezvous and because the, the Viper wall is different. That blocked it for him last time. Salad with a kill across the map. Ray is a huge one to pick up for the 4v4 now. Even the omen right there. Gotten just got spotted by Wibudios. TP's away, and Wibudios continues oh, to push forward. Kid. And now the spike's down. down so losing that fight. Also, the lurk is denied on the A side. So it's up to Cud and Valden. Yeah. Looks like they'll be able to pinch this. Nice control by Wiwodeos. Right now with the smokes, they get a nebula down and they're even going to be able to put more in mid here. So everybody gets the safety. 10 seconds left, I mean. Did they, did they, I you got to save, save these, yeah, pretty much. Now you're just throwing your money away. Yeah. Especially when you get denied right there but the last two players by Peru. Peru is not being shook by a stall, by the delay, by anything. And I think Indonesia now is overthinking things. You've had Kush up in heaven for so long, and then nothing really came from that play, right? He did have to walk around the rendezvous, but everybody seemed to be still doing their own thing across the map over a minute in. Here we had a, a quick kill. Still, you have Kush over the, the right, and you just kind of see the, the X's 
for the side of Indonesia falling all over and finally here at Ramen. So four in a row now. It went from post-plant success to overall wins here from Peru being strong in the rounds. And this is going to be that lower buy we were talking to. Now they have pushed. Oh, hold that thought. Satchel's missed this time around, though, so Ray couldn't catch Chuto. Has a yeah. showstopper at least, but spent his two satchels to try to get that kill. So it might be a little bit harder if they want to use the yeah. showstopper around this eco that you have for Indonesia this time around. Dog to clear out. Chuto peeking. Also damaged down the 4 to 2. A flash to push them away. Four players grouped up. Long range battles for bringing out the Empress. So we are expending into our ult this time around. As Weichi is getting overwhelmed towards the bottom of the site, still stays alive for two kills. But finally moving in, Chuto's in the back. <laughs> Nobody likes shooting that ledge. <laughs> Cover going out. And that's going to stop for a bit, but at least the plant will potentially come down for Indonesia. Cut with the Phantom up the ropes. Last player standing. Surprise, two players waiting for him. As it's up to gun. Forced in a clutch situation. Slowly sending down down towards the stairs. It's quite a shot comes out to bait out. Wow. The rotation and it works out. Three players stay alive here for Peru. And not only did they take the lead the last round, you mentioned it, we have the amount of rounds that they're winning in a row now at five against Indonesia's three. Man, silly. That, we talked about the confidence you get from winning the low buy and off-site round. It seems yeah. like tenfold here for Peru in the way they're using this momentum now. The operator stays in play. And that's going to be hard to avoid. Even on the retakes, Fabazine has been able to make that count, which even becomes harder with all the tight corners and tight places you have to get to getting back into B. It has not mattered. Another post-plant success coming through. A few ultimates here for Peru to shut down the buy round that comes up now in round nine for Indonesia. You have that ultimate coming in from Ray, or Chuto rather, as well as Wichi. So back towards A. I think one thing Peru is identifying about Indonesia is these plays are almost full death ball. Especially with that. <laughs> Beautiful Rina Lear. Then the shows are brought on defense, but the advantage still out for the attack. Kush going close range, throwing up the hat, spotting the last two players. One still stuck towards the B side, the other one running behind the Seekers, and that's Weiji trying to go for their Horic play on the solo. Now Dog coming out to get info. Can't get it all, it's trapped by the tripwire set out by Kush. You're gonna have to play with no information now for the retake. Wibodeos moving up towards the A, having denied by the Sky on the other end. And the other one through the smoke. Ooh. That becomes now a clean round to answer right back for Indonesia. And we see the power of the double duelist composition. Even without a jet in that one, Ray going in, able to just swamp who's ever in sight, and the team follows through. We saw kills at screens, it felt like at the beginning of the round still. So even though I said Peru was figuring out how Indonesia were playing, there's there's still warrant to the death ball. It's a very strong strat. Going straight towards A, Indonesia picks up another round on round nine. And that's the thing. Those rounds that were coming out for Peru was seeing Indonesia playing, yes, still somewhat fast, more but default, more deep. Exactly. In the beginning, yeah. This time you're going with the death ball. You went with the cages. It works out for the cage, first hit. This time around, round and number again? 10. There you go. <laughs> and again? No way. They just do it again. Oh, through the gate. TP's out towards the elbow, Satchel's moving in, fully blinded is Fabergine, beautiful utility what? to allow Ray to drop the two players within the A site. Plant then coming in for Indonesia, up for heaven. As which he's already around towards screens. Disadvantage for Peru for the retake though. Double duel is kind of strong. <laughs> uh, coming through Indonesia, just they make the last few rounds look like they were taking, eating snacks and drinking juice boxes. And now they're back to focusing on the keyboard and mouse. Oh my word, they just go straight for A twice, and I think it would take three or four people in sight to stop that. Right so. around the corner though, Huibo Dios Ooh. comes in for the kill for Ray. Then oh trade word. off on a one versus two, advantage goes back here, and the wall comes up, cost me the five from Huibo Dios. Gun has to run in, it's halfway, he gets the first kill, but instantly traded off by Huibo wow. Dios. And a defuse comes in, and that's Peru at six. What a scrappy side fight. Cosmic Divide comes up for another win. That's exactly how Peru was able to grab one of the previous rounds when it was just cut alive. And there they get another one as it's a run through trade kill on the spike defuse. Absolute back and forth as well is going to sting a little bit for Indonesia. They have just enough money to buy here. But yeah, 
Peru is doing such a good job at figuring out a protocol that are, will work for the situation Indonesia is creating. And I feel like it's different each time they go in sight. Ray doesn't always go right to TV. He goes to elbow. He'll do something else. Rinse and repeat. We're going again. And there's going to be a paranoia for ramp this time. So it looks like heaven is the first take. The spike stays behind. Yeah, that's going to, I think, picked up by Gotten as they come back around. Paranoia. It's open right now for A Heaven, but Ray even gets position all the way out towards spawn. So quick. This is to cut the rotate. Meanwhile, though, we are flooding in towards this A side. Contact towards that rotate, but everything is in yeah. favor of Tim Indonesia so far. Instantly, a five versus two, and a death ball continues while Peru, once again, has no answer. They still go A, but they do it on there. the paranoia contact quiet all the way up the ramp. We've seen Kush throw those gates out at A just about every round. So Favazine didn't see anything different. The rest of the team was probably calling for the default play again. They didn't come fast A and then the explosion. So again, Indonesia changing the timing just a little bit to get the fights they want. Great job by Cut as well, clearing sight, clearing elbow. It does take everybody in these strategies from Indonesia because like we said before, they were all doing their own thing and it didn't come together. Here, they're in the site and all trying to do their own thing and they're trusting each other. The, kill, the kills are coming through and they're able to move forward knowing Ray is so far in the defensive side, they can focus on their frags. A nice round coming in. Last round before the switch. Indonesia brings it back six to five here. Can they make it six six from the t uh, attack side? Despite them getting the site so easily here for Team Indonesia, mm -hmm. five versus two. You notice that they actually didn't even go hunt down the, the last two <laughs> yeah. on the other end. So noticing that their economy is still pretty low, they didn't want to throw any of that away so they could actually build the economy for this last round. And for this last round, an important round for Peru as they call out the timeout to hopefully tie up the game in a half. So a timeout here. Peru, obviously you can use it, but wants this last round. What does this last round mean, right? Uh, not having a tight game, a 7-5. It gives you cushion on pistol. You never want to lose it. But if you win the pistol, you are so much closer to winning the game because of the second and the third round. So putting a lot of dedication into just getting this 7-5 could mean so much for Peru if they can get pistol. If they can string together these two rounds, they put Indonesia in such a tough spot and it's going to be Peru dictating the attack side next. So a big timeout to be called here at the final moment of the first half. And we'll see if it counts as much as they want it to. Indonesia is going to be ready for something as well. I think one of the things we got to point out is when we've seen timeouts as well, the opposing team can come out just as strong. They want to choke that timeout and not let you plan or do anything. So. Let's see what Indonesia tries to put on the docket here. Looks like a straight to B with those gates towards A again to deter that it's there. Look how it changes too for Indonesia. Ray goes in with a Vandal, rare moment at the beginning of the round, mm -hmm. but also one away from grabbing the ult. So lots of this pressure for Indonesia towards this B main, trying to gain the space in the showstopper potentially here. Instead, Satchel's in, open sight, and that's the retake style that we want to see from Peru. Yeah. Just leaving it up for grabs, especially at B, still being able to dump in Ray's nade into the, or shoot those nade into the site. This this lurk here could be it from Kush. Weebo with a good starting frag though. There's that lurk. So a one for one. Now they have to keep players to watch that flank. Cut pushing forward towards the spawn. What? As you see this close range <laughs> Bucky coming out. And Wilma Dioso continues to open up the site and give a chance for a little bit for Team Peru to move within the site, but instantly they all fall down right after. Yeah. Switching that hit from Kush, so big to be able to come up, get that frag on somebody else that was coming into the site, and it disjointed everything that uh, Peru wanted to do. I think it, it really relies on their protocols working from the, the moment they kind of activate it, despite the amount of numbers they have and just lost too many there. So we switch it up. It's now going to be Indonesia on defense, but do they still bring out the aggressive play style? Is Peru East or is Peru now ready to bring out that aggression? Not seeing too many ghosts around the board, which means utility is going to play a big role here coming into this first round for both teams. We'll see how they play it. Is it going to be more rendezvous peaks? Does Fabazine have a really big job here to get these garage or ramen peaks? And they're playing actually from both sides of the map here.
quick guiding light towards A. They leave Chuto. A slow walk back. Oh my god, what a read so far from Indonesia, actually. Yeah, Valden actually flashed towards mid, too, not to get any inf information. Yeah. And after seeing no movement towards the A side, they instant rotate towards B, but they still lose a player firsthand from Team Peru towards this B site. Weibo oh, wow. picking up that orb as they pivot back towards middle. And now Indonesia, it's their turn to try to find some information. So keeping Valden alive, still having his flash, is super important right now. Remembering this map, Indonesia's pick here on split as we come out of our first half tie. I like this from Peru, but also safe and detective play from Indonesia. Peru's trying to get Indonesia to move around, and they're not able to take him out. What a hit from Indonesia. Great peaks, great plays. Oh, Kush winning on the top of the ropes, now under heavy pressure. One for one, but it's Wibo Dios left alone. His teammates have fallen, now being pinched on both ends, going back on the top of the ropes, 24 seconds left on the clock. There's that first contact as Gun comes out to assist his teammates, and the pistol round comes in for Team Indonesia. Constant detection. Like I said, that detective work coming in from Indonesia there. They were peaking some really scary double, triple peaks, quad peaks, but still identifying that there was someone there from the side of Peru, which stalled out their rotations, allowed Indonesia to stay in the right spot, even though they were taking tiny bits of chip damage. It was not on the cards for Peru to hit the site. So now second round here. We know how deadly Peru is on these. They aren't going for the, uh, the Sheriff by, though. It'll be a low buy on the classics. And they're forced to fight against guardians and a judge. You can see how far back Indonesia wants to play these. Out of as they push mid. Yeah. John Spot already saw a lot of players. And that's gonna be called here by Ray. So you see the rotate coming out from the ropes this time around by Cud. Allowing here team Peru to take cover of the A main. Of the A heaven rather. Ooh. Cud gets the instant headshot onto Chuto. Four versus four, trying to hunt him down, or the <laughs> Peruvian team. They want that Spectre. Dismisses away after the second kill. And it's time for the last three players of Team Peru to just try to get the spike down towards this A site where, still at the bottom, that Guardian in the hands of Kush. Teleport's ready. Dwindles down the numbers of Team Peru. I love it because as we see the rest of Peru go down here, we can talk about how Indonesia used this Reyna. It, you see it as just like a, a more aggressive chamber. You get out for the rendezvous peak, but you need the kill, right? And they did get it. Dismiss. Second kill, dismiss. Indonesia, yeah. No other agent's going to do that. Cud is playing this so touch and go, and he's being such a nuisance here. Indonesia is really able to get into the face of Peru and almost throw out a fishing line and say, right here, I'm here, I'm being dangerous, and then he's safe, and then he gets another. What trickery here from Cud. Definitely keeping an eye on that. 16 and 8 on the Reina Kush on the Lurks of 17 and 8 here for Indonesia as they are two up in the second half. And now we get this bonus. Birds in the night. Cud running out. Spun in the first contact, they're just chasing him down. You see this bonus round coming out for Team Indonesia with also the first takedown gives him a huge advantage. This push. Little detections all the time. There it is, gotten with a great peak, doesn't take too much damage. So yeah, a little bit of orb farming right now as Peru knows they want to dwindle the time down. I think it's going to be a pressure play here. We're going to get pretty low on the clock before they actually make it to one of these sites due to pressure and the way they want to play it. Oh, yeah. This Delivery is where it gets ready. dangerous. Bait and switch. This has to be red. I mean, this is too obvious. So the swing comes out. Still the contact. Ouch. 5 HP remaining. Satcheling up to bait some more. So another, th another one no rather. Way. The swing out. What? Which will outcut to get a second kill. And a third into the round. So let the last player remaining and also working on the top of A. Long <laughs> no range by Cushion. Way. Man, the satchel that for the bait at 5 HP. That is so annoying to play against. Absolutely incredible. Give a bow to Ray. The calisthenics right now that he's able to use in these rounds just to cause hell Dude. for the side of Peru. <laughs> That's crazy. The fact that he lives here both times. And you're even expecting it. You're like, all right, he's probably going to do something tricky again. I won't get too fooled. I'll know someone's going to peek, but it's still too much. Yeah. It's still too much. Oh, my gosh. We're getting into round four here on the second half. Nine to six 
Indonesia start to pull away, and it's a low buy again for Peru. You know, sometimes you praise teams of, oh my with the utility that they use for capitalizing on takedowns, and this time you're using your own body. So props to Ray right there, so you mentioned it there. That's that's something you see Jets usually do with updraft, not yeah, the blast much. pack. Oh, Ray! Yeah, that's going to be annoying again. Running through the smoke on middle, pain shells on the ground against this lower buy that you no have for Peru, trying to give their own death ball on the top of mid. But it gets denied instantly. Already a five versus one. Weibo Dios trying to stat pad some stats here. Long range with the Sheriff, back with the Stinger, and the flank coming out from Kush. We've seen this very often for any team playing against Team Indonesia when it comes down to that second half and when they're trying to play against Indonesia's defense. Like you said, Riv, it's almost like they're playing the attack and it's hard yeah. to deal against. Ridiculous. The double smoke to give Ray a little no man's land to fight in there. Obviously not going to see an entire team, but sees enough to continue just mowing them down. And I think Peru calls one to take a breather, figure out why they are losing so much timing on the map that Indonesia can be in these positions as, as Peru is setting up a strap. That kind of stuff can't happen. It, you're going to be late to alts, you're going to be late to the frags and late to the trades, which means four straight rounds for Indonesia here. And if you're looking at the heat map, basically what was happening mm -hmm. for the ground, you, the space you've gained on the attack from Peru so far, you can really say top middle, A main on heaven. Yeah. But have we really gone into the sites for any plants, any pulse plants? Very, very rarely. So they haven't really learned how Indonesia is currently playing the defense yeah. within the sites. Yeah, right. They see somebody kind of jump, jump in the corner. That's it. That's it. They get, they get guiding light. They're detected. They don't have to peek as much. Quick jump. Then you're, you're just, you're noticed. It's like they have a cipher in every site. <laughs> They're just peeking everywhere. There is a cipher in A though. That's going to be a high camp. They decide to move that around. Right there. That's a good one. Nobody's really looking that high. That'll break your aim. All right. One, one, three across the map here. This definitely means you're going to get a lurk out of Way Deus this round. And just a actually pretty forward line of scrimmage here with how Indonesia is playing this. That's definitely going to be a judge for Ray. Yep. <laughs> this has got to be scary. So a lot is contact right now. They've get, so let's think about what's happening. They've given up sound. Wishi does get a frag, but the A sound is where Peru is trying to draw Indonesia. So we get a nice kill from Wichi, also picking up the orb that allows Seekers to be activated for them to hit within the site. But it starts with a flash that unfortunately blinds Chuto yeah. instead and cut, takes the opportunity off that ground. Ray with the flank to judge Wait. onto Chuto. What? And with the Seekers, we're pivoting back yeah. towards the B site. The contacts that have happened towards B Heaven here has gotten playing. Oh. The off angle swings out even a catch. Silet off guard. And now the Seekers get nullified, and we have to rework the site. 14 Peru, a little bait and switch. Cut just winning around the corner. Weichi walking in with 7 HP. Long range dismissed, spots the last one, and it's going to be difficult here for Weichi. And even he gets wow. backstabbed from Pillar. And Indonesia now up at 11. Another situation that would be a trade if it wasn't Reyna, or more so, right? It's a quick identified kill there, but not again. Cud just playing the mind games as they're able to take another round away. Five straight here. The uh, offensive team is doing great on defense. <laughs> here, Indonesia able to really string these together. Again, for, for Peru, change the timing. Once they got under the skin of Indonesia with being a little faster, with having a lurk that worked, Indonesia almost seems to fall apart. The round has to go their way, and when it does, it looks like they can't be stopped. But if you can get that one kill, that 5v4 first, it does seem to pull them apart enough where they aren't as strong. Cage triggered. Peru's time to try to death ball. Cage is coming up, playing within the back There's of the map. One. Nice shot by Juto, but Oof. Ray's right there. Showstopper out right at the feet okay. of Weiji. Swings right up for the fourth. One Sees the last one as well. At least the judge comes in for bad five machine. But the pain shell is going to keep him pinned towards the right side. And the ace wow. gets stolen, but nonetheless, still map point for Indonesia. The aim is on, among other things. It's been going towards A quite a bit, and it is not working out right now. What a hit here. Quick triple kill coming in from Ray. Instant ultimate. Goes down for the fourth as he hits the ground and only misses out on the last one because they run absolute 
just punishing. Or a punishment right now coming in from Indonesia. Yeah, he's like, come on, you know what I'm doing. Ray is feeling it. Uh, on the ground, in the air, Ray is everywhere, everywhere right now and in the face of Peru. 12 to 6. We get into the next round, the possible final one. A default strategy here coming in from Peru. I like this. Get as much information as you can in these rounds because the firefights are so quickly going in favor of Indonesia. No rounds have been taken so far on the attack for Team oh Peru. So they're looking to default a little bit once again for the control towards the A ramp. On the extremities though, Wibbo Dios is being pressured on this B side. Lear who keeps him in the corner just behind the pallets and a beautiful double swing takes him down. There's a one for one and Fabergine opens up the A site. This allows for the spike to even move in though. Chuta will get the plant and of course a showstopper on top of that. Extreme. Nice Huge. move by Saled. All the way towards spawn. Gives the advantage for Peru. Fabergine waiting behind, trying to get a timing behind the dog. As Cud now pushes in. Identified both. They can play it very safe. Just wind the clock down. Easy peasy here. There should be another round coming in for Peru. Solidified. They just need to save these guns. They lose one in the process. At least the showstoppers there. One enemy the security for Chuto. Cud getting the pick towards heaven. Drops in. Mm -hmm. And that allows the pivot to come up for Fabergine on the top of A Heaven. So he's pretty much in a good spot. No need to use your showstopper here. And no need to go for a trade. Chuta yep. wins that duel. And that's finally a round coming on the attack for Peru. And without it being a full buy here in economy, this is probably Fabergine uh, dropping that Vandal, being able to tour the force here to somebody else if they don't have the, the economy required. And this should put them in a good spot to play it a little slower against the side of Indonesia. Actually, looking at the, the buy board right now, you can't see this, but 7,700 for Ray. The rest of the team is sitting around three and a half to 4K. The judge buys, we haven't talked about them much for Ray. We've seen him, that he's had him, we said it. But the economy that that creates for the team is so immense. The rounds you're able to drop another Vandal, maybe one or two yep. if you need it throughout the match, is so effective for this squad and being able to keep a good position or keep a hold and when uh, Peru may feel like they have momentum. It's almost like a different tactic to the half by yeah. gun armor. It's the other side. Like, exactly. <laughs> so now you just have a judge, so you have a little bit more economy to draw for others. Well, Ray will still always maintain that judge. Mm -hmm. But a timeout being called tactical here for Indonesia as we come back soon in the server. They'll have four alts to work with here. They will. Those are for huge, Peru. huge alts. Cosmic Divide has secured them many an important round too on those defuses. They actually, uh, they use it so well, I should say. And the team is coming together to make this happen. You can see just how much in the second half Indonesia has taken control, feeling like absorbing what Peru brings to the table. But a little bit easier than going out to find it on that attack side. And here they put three towards A. 1-3-1 one, one for the side of Peru. Remember, these ultimates almost need to be used at this point. It could be last round. It's just Seled going up and down with the utility from the Viper, trying to at least bait out any type of utility, anything that he could call. Do I hear the sky? Do I hear anybody? To allow Peru to move up anywhere across the map. But you could still see here, cool are the positions. Four team Indonesia, okay of playing contact. Oh, and they're gonna get some right now. A high low. High low with the judge. Flash is about to come out, but Selen makes it away. At the same time, the pinch was looking to happen on the top of the vents. But as soon as they're about to pinch, that trip came down from Kush, so now we're pivoting back towards the B Heaven. Spike is there. Fabergine, the vest was golden to try to go for the first pick on the top of B Heaven. He gets greeted by Cud, couldn't win that fight. Wow. 30 seconds left. Cud playing that position, so effective. The distance for Dismiss to get the safety. Wait, coming to Heaven. Flash Just there, on the other no side. Info. Oh, they get by. Showstopper out. Chuto at the bottom of the screens, just trying to answer oh, back oh. against that rotate across, and the showstopper misses. Still a player within the sight. It's Kush. Two kills right there as the spike falls. Whoa. Ten seconds left. All of them dropping. And map one will go to Indonesia. Incredible read at the end there.
trying to rush through towards heaven. You see everybody basically on a conveyor belt from Indonesia going through spawn down towards screens to take split, to take their map pick over Peru. And what a way to do it on the second half. A 6-6 six, six first half to then have that fire ignited under Indonesia and come out so strong. Kush, Cud on top there. Ray taking space. The times they wanted A site, A site was theirs. And I don't even think they paid any mind to B, did they? I don't think so. What the I, heck? I don't think I've said God names once on the second half. Pretty Crazy. much right there, because you mentioned there that a couple of highlight plays from the duelists on the attack, but on that defense, when he came down to the anchor plays, as you mentioned, yes, Gotten didn't get tested that much, but as soon as he tried to move towards the A side, Kush was there. Yeah. So Indonesia really has some firepower from A to Z from top to bottom. And we saw Peru able to adjust, able to adapt, understanding that the timing was important for them to get, but it seems like Indonesia can say, oh, we have an answer to that too. Oh, we'll adapt to this, and it is tough to beat. Well, at least let's toss it back to the desk right now to see if Ian, Jess, and Vlad have something to say, and hopefully some hope right now for Peru as we move into map two. Mansili Riv, love the positivity. Of course, Peru deserve to be here. There's a, many reasons for Peru fans to be positive. It's a long way to go in this best of five series. My name's Ian Chambers, back on the desk with Jess Gertz and Vlad. Indonesia pick split, they take it, it's their map pick. Stylistically, Vlad, yeah. Indonesia had the edge again. Yeah, definitely. Like starting both halves with the pistol rounds is something ex exceptional in the match round uh, 13. Yeah, it's yeah. so short game for uh, two pistol winners. Uh, that was it in the first place, uh, six six half, and the second half was uh, Peru was playing some slow paced yeah. game. Yeah, and that's exactly what Indonesia defense side wanted. So they want to clear mid and play some default thing in the first place uh, as Peru, uh, but Indonesia, they had nothing to do with mid. And that's it. That's some really good micro analysis. Yeah. Uh, my answer is APAC number one. <laughs> I'm so sorry why you're drinking. <laughs> so I apologize. Just APAC number one, baby. Yeah. That's all it is. APAC on top. It's coming you're home. You're a fan. It's I coming am a home. fan. Yeah, me too. It's coming home. Yeah. It's coming home to APAC, baby. Fab is your guy when it comes to Peru. You're always yeah. hyping him up, but he just wasn't able to find his foot. He wasn't able to do his thing here, was he? Yeah, and I think this is finally him getting punished for the agent that he's taking, the composition that they are fielding on this map. It is not going to go well. I, I, I think maybe against certain styles it will, but Indonesia, I mean, they saw him. He can TP away, but all of a sudden the plays are already there to receive him. He doesn't get a lot of impact. They tried that mid control the previous time they were on split with Chamber. He didn't get impact back then. I wish they had have learned from that, came onto this, and maybe changed something up, maybe even moved him to a different part of the map and had a different control. Yeah. They didn't, and it struck again as a curse. The impact you were seeking for is yes. actually came from three different players on Indonesia. 67 kills in total oh. for Kud, Kush and Ray. Monsters. Absolute yeah. monsters. I mean, we know Kush being one of the highest rated players in the entire tournament. Yep. He is still keeping up those numbers. He might walk away as the tournament MVP at the end yeah. if he's able to keep up these numbers. Of course, Ray is someone that we just speak about consistently anyway. So maybe if we put him to the side. And of course, uh, we finally have, not finally, I mean, we spoke about Kud before in the yeah, previous sem semi-final. But it's someone that doesn't necessarily always play this agent. It's not someone that's always your front, you know, tip of the spear into the site either. So for him to be so successful playing that particular age and again i must stress rainer is an incredibly selfish agent and you want to be that selfish you need to perform 320 acs at 3.1 kda Come you on. can't be more selfish than that and he dominated the map as a result if you're going to win a grand final you need as many players on your roster to pop off as possible i know it's an obvious thing to say and it seems that's what's happening with indonesia at the moment vlad everybody's realizing the magnitude of the situation and doing their part. Uh, definitely. I mean, I told uh, many times in this tournament, like for Czech Republic, of course, and for Indonesia and Peru, uh, you have to have your duelist to pop off in these yeah. situations like that. This is big round, big games, yeah. and every round, every move counts. That's what matters. This is the big stage here. Do you think that Peru have what it takes to bounce back from this? Because, you know, getting that first foot in, even though it is your map pick, yeah. it just does so much 
you know, for your confidence and your momentum going into this. And like we said earlier, this is now the first time that Peru have lost a map on the stage. Yeah, and I think the big thing for Peru now is that I said that their mental resilience yeah. and their fortitude would be stronger than Indonesia, at least from the evidence they've given us thus far. Mm -hmm. They've come back in maps. They weren't able to come back in map one. Map two is their map pick. Yes. So if you would think of a, a sort of area upon which they would have the upper hand, it would be their very first map pick mm -hmm. in a best of five. Definitely. The map layout also promotes a really good good strategic play style from them. <laughs> there won't be a lot of part of the parts in the map, especially when you're thinking about mid control. There won't be a lot that they'll be able to sort of get surprised by. I mean, you know what's coming on this map nine times out of 10. It's the rotates they'll have to be careful of. And Indonesia doesn't really seem <laughs> interested in rotating too much. Yeah. Once they commit to a fight, they're there. Yeah. And so Peru will essentially know through conditioning what's going to be happening. So the next map is Sunset. Yes. Where we see them against Canada. Mm. going to, I mean, 24th uh, round. And we saw double controller as well. Yep. The touch of Harbour and Race. And we love what we see so far from them. Yep. And we, what we love is actually Richie and Fabi oh, going Fabi. wild. Yeah, Fab, Fabi. <laughs> they both gone wild against Canada. Yep. We, uh, I mean, if Peru actually wants to win against uh, Indonesia in Sunset, they need to pop off. It's funny, too, because when they went up against Canada on Sunset, a Fabi popped off on the sky, so yeah, I'm yeah. hoping, you know, we get the same compositions because he'll be feeling really confident. They actually were hyper-negative on their entry kills, and they still managed to win. I think the big thing for them is that mid to late round, they're really strong on Sunset. They know their protocols. They know exactly how to exact, even when they're a man down. So for me, that gives me a lot of confidence. A lot of people say, oh, negative stats, that means bad. Well, actually, no, if you can win with those negative opening kills, yeah. it shows that your mid to late round is really strong. Some Sometimes you gotta play for the biggest opponent in the, I mean, biggest player in the opponent, Caillou. You remember that, right? Mm. Uh, Richie actually yeah. took out Caillou for 11 times that yeah. round and only got killed for, uh, to him once. Yeah. And that, that was something that really important. The energy in here is almost palpable, isn't it? You can, it is. It, it was all fun and games a lot of the time uh, re leading up to this moment, but I think everybody, including the fans here, have realized what's at stake here, right? Absolutely. And especially after a map one like that, like, is a 13 like, is, is it dominant? It kind of is, you know, that it's not a close sort of double digit fair, you know, there's not really going the back and mm -hmm. forth in the second half that we were hoping for. Yeah. But then you kind of give them a little bit of leeway because it's map one, it's not their map pick. Yeah. I would say if you're Peru right now, this is when the biggest talk comes out. They could be staring 100%. down the series yeah. loss later on, but I think this map is the one where you make a statement because if you don't now, the reverse sweep that happens, what, 10, 15% of the time of any yeah. best of five ever existing is really it's difficult tough. to achieve. So tough. And today it's going to be their second series that are playing on the stage right now. Yeah. That's going to be so tough for them. But also, remember, Peru came back different times they against did. different teams. Yep. This is the only time they're going to face against the they're the losing side right now. So they're back. They have to prevail in order to uh, win this one. And on the flip side, you know, we've seen Indonesia, once they smell blood, they pounce. <laughs> yeah. So if we get to a position where they're two maps up, it's really panicking time for Peru, isn't it? I would be, I would be lying if I said that Peru is probably too far gone at that point. Now, you really have to make a, a statement on Sunset. Yeah. I think the map itself promotes their play style. I think, you know, it's your map pick. It's the very first map pick of the best of five. There's a lot of win conditions that sit in the hands of Peru going into Sunset. If you can't win that, then what's left? Uh, maybe it's just a, a Hail Mary from that point, and maybe things happen, fight fire with fire, and we get Team Deathmatch in the server, but I don't want it to devolve into that. They have to make their way into the second half as well. In yeah. the first half, they're going to be attacking, and then they have to get at least five or six rounds in order to a new map that are going to be defending against a no, I mean, no defaulting understanding team. Like lots of protocols, lots of chaotic movements, but in control of Indonesia. It's funny because I don't have a comp on Indonesia. Do you want to know why I don't have a comp on Indonesia? Because they haven't played it. Yeah. So we are getting a fresh comp yep. out of Indonesia yep. here. What are they going to run on it? Do they even again, like this map? Double the list again. Please. please. <laughs> that's what we want, right? We do. We absolutely do. And we need it. And that's what plays to their win conditions. And one thing that these two teams want, you saw it right there in the center of the stage, is our Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 trophy. It is in touching distance, almost specifically for Indonesia. And if you are Peru, it's easy to say this, but 
Vlad, you can't let the occasion get the better of you, can you? Because yeah. it's all well and good performing well when the vibes are high and you're on a bit of a winning streak. But when the heat is really on, you've got to somehow find a way to, to pull yourself together. Calm yourself. Calm yourself down mm -hmm. and, and focus on that trophy that's yeah. right there in front of you. That's the work for IGL and also the coach yeah. himself. Yeah. I mean, they have to be calm so that team can be calmed down. Yeah. And no matter what, they're going to show their like emotions anyway. So the emotions they show uh, will be exemplary for the players. Yeah. Yeah, I think the big thing as well is that I kind of want to give hope for Peru, for all of the audience out there as well, is that if they do start to come back on this map, yeah. Indonesia might be sitting there and telling themselves, well, we were we were dominating them in map one. We should easily be able to transfer that into map two. They were confident that they would get to the grand finals to begin with. After map one, they're probably confident they're going to win the grand final. I would, I would hope that by getting in Indonesia's head, by getting an early start here on map two, maybe they can break that mental a little bit because we saw it Indonesia crack a little bit yeah. in the semi-final and it wasn't until a very magical clutch occurred that they were able to pull themselves out. If it requires a clutch every time for them to get out of that mental slump, then that's something Peru might be able to use against them. Yeah, Vlad, I think we might be getting a little bit too carried away here. I mean, look, look at this Peru team. They're just super relaxed. They're in their bag, ready to get back to work here. All it takes, win their map pick, the back in business level playing field. Yeah, that's it, that's it. I mean, like, they uh, seem super calm right now, but I think they deserve a, like, uh, hands up, yeah? Have you got some of the inflatable sticks yeah. that our audience have? What yeah. do call Why these? don't I have what's the official? Sticks? What's the official name for our Red Bull Campus Clutch inflatable sticks? Oh, well, I, I think they're called Boom Boom Sticks. Am I, boom I'm looking sticks? over at the casters. Like, You're looking at the boom Boomers. Stick? I am looking about at the boom boomers about the boomsticks. I'm pretty sure it is, <laughs> but what are we going to call them? Sticks. Sticks, all right, okay. we're just going with sticks. We're very boring here on the desk. Look, we've got, we got vans. It's the Red Bullers. The Red Bull Wings. Red Bull, <laughs> the Red Bull Wings? Wings, is that what we're calling them? <laughs> I like to say it. Yeah, why not? All right. Hey, guys. I'm actually calling the Red like Bull that. Wings. Everybody's flying around. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Riv, you're not worried about <laughs> Peru? You're not worried about Peru? Ah. He's worried about Peru. Oh, he's worried about Peru. He's worried you about asked Peru. the wrong man. Vans, are you worried about Peru? I'm not worried about Peru. I predicted them. All I'm right. chill. That's I'm cool as a cucumber. You, you can go. see. I'm like yeah. Van, Morgan standing, you know? Van Silly's Van Chilling right now, but we can now <laughs> get into Agent Select as we get set up to go into our second map that is Sunset. There we go. All right. As That's... expected yeah. for both of these teams. I mean, you look across the board, Kush is going to get onto the sky and. First time ever, Jet from Indonesia. Oh, oh second, hold on, hold on. This is this. not as usual. Hold on. I've been taken into an absolute loop rep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know why? I bet you, after map number one, being on the rain of feeling really confident on that yep. duelist, do you really want to take it on a map like this? What's going to be more effective? The jet. Yeah. And they probably have that conversation of, hey, if I bring this jet in, I, I, I say that, and I am looking over at the other side, and I'm like, are these the sort of compositions that we would expect out of this map? Yes. And we have proof that he's a great duelist. So it's not that surprising, I think, overall. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, we expect them to take the second duelist, maybe yeah. Reyna or something yeah. else. But the, the two players are really distracting the opponent, especially Ray. But I'm not really sure about that jet decision while oh. they never played it, because this is Cypher meta. And the trips can actually be lethal. All right, it's time. We're going to sunset. Can Indonesia continue? This blitz potentially through our grand final or will Peru show their perseverance? Vansili and Riv, let's get back into business. Ian talks about the blitz in the grand finals. At least we'll probably see a blitz on this map. They're going double duelists yes. with a raise and a jet. And for me, Riv, it seems like it's a nice little composition to try to counter that harbor that's been so good for Team Peru against Canada. It does. Blast through the cove. Don't allow the too much to slow you down. If you have two people running through that wave wall, oh, it's yeah. going to be very scary to feel like that space is easily controlled. And probably one of them with a judge. So how do you yeah, stop that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bathing suits are on right now for the side of Indonesia. They know they're diving into this one. The harbor is going to be difficult to play against. Red Bull gives you wings. As well as a little bit of a change up. Kush now on that sky. We do see yeah. he was on the Cypher last time. So a good change flex, roles, flex yeah. between Indonesia. A little style of play that Peru's going to have to get used to once again. And now here, Weibo and the team as they look slightly towards A. The Viper does allow them a good take towards that back alley. 
all this control they have from the wall to kind of waste nice time. Push. The push. Oh. Party dropped the spike. So they're so focused on looking towards the A main, they forgot the middle Cage for Team it. Peru here as Indonesia gets the first Jeez. within the round. I thought he would hesitate a little bit. Give me a second <laughs> to breathe another word, but no. Only W press. Firing mid now. Yeah, it's a fighting squad. Both ends. Just duality there from both teams, but wow. the upper hand goes out for the defensive side of Indonesia. Yeah. Rotating back here, splitting off on a 2-2 setup after the numbers advantage. Flash for information is still proof that there's more pressure happening on the top of middle. Great little crossfire they hear. One way smokes towards A. Gotten's letting them know they don't have to worry about a thing. 30 seconds left. Big kill. Can a camera oh. nice dig long range traded out Boba Selen and that camera once again spots a second and head to head for the third gets denied. Two versus one, 18 seconds left. Thankfully the spike is on the back of Selen. There's a satchel, the tap comes across Ooh. and Ray uses the classic like a judge, comes around with the right click. And Indonesia once again score another pistol round. Yep, smelling blood in the water there. I'm sure the comms are coming down. Lots of damage down, lots of damage. And that's a lot goes down in that. Great little picks. You saw a lot of ghosts in this round actually coming from the attack side. So that's why we see Indonesia staying, or I'm sorry, Peru staying back a little bit more, trying to find their kills from afar. They get pushed right away by Cud, who now has a marshal coming into this one with some guardians uh, flanking on the side here, wherever they'll decide to go. And again, towards mid, tiles control and just making sure Indonesia doesn't own the map right away. I think that's a big, a big worry here for Peru in these rounds. Look at the instant rotate. You yeah. saw the dash activated by Cud. Already has that angle. So now okay. pressure up towards the top middle. Nice Guardian. harbor wall for them to run across on the top of the Guardian through the cyber cages Ray. and the judge close range. Nothing you can really do here. I mean, it's a, t it's a tough corridor to go through when you're yeah. playing against a judge and a long range Guardian. And they get denied right away on their eco. So not a lot of fighting mid at all. Maybe we saw some pistol shots in the first round, but Pushing up through mid, we're seeing Ray on the right side and Kush on the left of defensive mid waiting for any pressure. Being in that position then allows them, if there is no mid pressure, to instantly rotate through A or B link through Boba and get themselves into sight. Really smart rotational stuff on the side of Indonesia. Now, does Peru know that? They've actually seen that defensive setup twice. So do they try to get one of those defensive players between Kush and Ray to rotate first? We heard Vlad talking about how a patience actually played off in favor of Indonesia. So maybe Peru spices it up a little bit here. Oh, it's dead. Okay. Yeah. They did spice things up towards the right side, A Hall. Also, Indonesia were trying to push down towards middle, mm -hmm. which allows them to fast rotate. Three players already, but playing the extremities outside of the side. And this so far seems to be all for these two players to. Sell a fake, force a rotate if Weibo Dios can win this, uh, this fight, rather. And confirming defenders on both sides. It's pretty much wherever they want to go, they could take it so far for the attack side of Team Peru, and they'll decide for the A site, or the B side, rather. Yep, safe, safe plants. A little bit of a scale forward here coming in from Weibo Dios. Feeling good, and they're just going to separate themselves. Oh! Yep. <laughs> Looking just the wrong way, gets backstabbed there. Kush now moving down, unfortunately there, Wibbo Dios wasn't ready for that Ooh, one. Lands that what? second shot to Eiji. It's a 1v1, Ray upgraded to the Vandal. Fabajin around the corner was raining right there. Whoa. Beautiful crosshair placement. Yeah. Allowed a round to come in for Peru. He's just believing he was a chamber in that situation. Basically had a tour de force there for a Vandal. What a shot. Great scaling into sight. Nice reaction by uh, Peru to try and take this back so quickly and really get the upper hand. They need that momentum. That was a big one, being able to catch the bonus round and stop Indonesia in their tracks. Ray with a shorty here, bit of a low, low by full armor. Let's go. Could be uh, an ultimate coming into this round for them as well on that. Yeah, destroying that camera is going to be big. Now Indonesia always has to consider, or I'm sorry, Peru has to consider what's being pushed left or right. Weechi watching that right side. 
just looks like these crossfires, and he's just setting up is so hard. First stop coming out too. Cut was just staying behind. Just uh, he doesn't get spotted by the dog, which now will add another obstacle for Peru to try to take control yeah. of this map of Sunset. That mid, but here's that crossfire again. Kush and Ray ready as ever. Satchel out. Satchel out. Oh my gosh. Did some damage at least. And that's why Kush is going to move up. Help out. Goes for the trade. Seeker's available. Now trying to battle back against Chudo. Gets denied though. And that's information with 43 seconds left that the Seekers are heading towards the A site. That's where the rotate's now finally happening from Cut as well from the market. Neural tapped out. More information coming through and gotten. I get to speak his name towards the A side. Wins that duel. seconds left. Holds up the Radiant Knight boxes. Foul hit winning on the other end. A spray transfer oh. for the second one. An easy kill for the last two. And that's Indonesia now taking the lead by the 3-1 scoreline. Incredible stuff. Basically, what happened when there was absolute silence in that round for a moment? Ray double blast packs forward. Think about that. The round goes silent, which probably means Peru is trying to put a plan into formation. Yeah. That's an absolute activation moment for Ray. He says, no, we're going forward. I'm going to catch somebody off guard. And he does exactly that with the team able to trade the rest of that chip damage he followed through with. Really heady stuff to just activate and put the pressure alone onto Peru. They got to be ready for that coming forward now. Back towards mid. Peru's done a great job of gaining this position, but it feels like they're almost being given it now. They have to figure out how to get out safely. Show Supper out on the attack. Oh, Misses, running inside the cage. Finally, the right clicks. Is able to take him down. Shuto upgrading into a weapon here. We'll be giving it to Wibo Dios. Meanwhile, the lurk forward, Satchels. Then a showstopper out after a kill. Oh Lands onto Saled. It's chaos, pandemonium all over the place, but the spike's down no matter what. There's only one player left. It's Fabergine on the top of middle, already got spotted and closing that gap. Oh Shot from behind. There's really no answer there. It's mayhem. Trying to work behind that showstopper. It's Black Friday in the markets, man. Mayhem in there. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Everybody wants a sale. Oh my word. Just right through that showstopper went over the shoulder. Oh, Valden, that was crazy. And then the rest of this market fight going down as everybody tried to source where they were. Gotten finally getting into the action. I feel like Gotten's always like, hey, I'll wait. Can I come into the fight yet? He's always so patient. Such a good anchor we see coming in there. And again, able to finalize around. Peru, a lot of alt economy here. Possibility to change this one around. They see utility right away, but they're going to keep pressing W vans. Oh, yeah, they want to. Oh, my God. With the cascade coming what? out, they definitely want to fight what it through. A two for two. What Beautiful flash coming out. And that's players dropping down on the attack. Cut just jumping around, flying in the air. Oh, my gosh. Head in the clouds. But gravity exactly. back center towards the left side of the Reni boxes. Neural theft being thrown out. Finding the information on the last two players of Team Indonesia, but Valden doesn't care. Swings out for the fight. Cypher diff onto Fabergine. Now last player is standing denied. And Indonesia continues Holy. to hold a strong defense. Holy Van Silly. The off piece comes out in, in a very short area. That's not like a long position. Oh my gosh, the help from the team. Good pickups as the trade comes through, but all of Indonesia is there to keep trading. What a flash. Everybody was blinded there. Yeah, they blind, paranoid at whatever you could be. It was happening. Uh, that was wild. What a call. What a read there by Indonesia. And Peru had that alt round. They wanted to get through that successfully. See there in the crowd, we're already calling a 3-0 in the series for oh Indonesia, right? Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, agreeing to that as well. <laughs> I mean, that will be the storyline of Indonesia so far. They, they stormed through this whole Rebel Campus clutch, Unfeated. not dropping a single map so far. Yeah, absolutely wild as well. That Northwood University game, almost. Almost, OT, almost, almost. 16 on Lotus. Again, probably why we saw Peru take Lotus out of this, seeing that and how strong Indonesia was. But 5-1 now is Peru figuring out how to attack this squad that only wants to attack them as Indonesia continues to press W. Actually, I do see more keys than just W on Indonesia's keyboard, so they are choosing to only go forward. Uh, really aggressive stuff, and it's hard to adjust to. Again, t timing isn't usually the, the thing you're messing with too much in these games. When you play a team, you'll read them well. You know somebody might push or 
X person's going to lurk, but it's always changing for Indonesia, and it's just, it continues to be a problem you need to solve. It's very tough. Here we go again. Low buy stingers across the board as they look to chip away at the economy and armor of Indonesia here. Peru back towards A. They're going to go forward with the util. It's pretty straightforward the way that we're working the site right now for yep. Peru. As soon as a cascade comes out, I mean, it, you could throw as many conditioning walls as you want with this Viper, but as soon as a cascade comes out, there's always players behind. So you see this instant rotate mm -hmm. coming out from Team Indonesia. And I love that there's a pause right here. Reckon. The players are rotating back. The Reckoning comes out trying to gain the space. It's a trade off for a one for one. But again, right. great defensive hold so far from Indonesia. Cove now allowing Peru to move out. Beautiful flash, trying to counter it back. Shorty out, lands it on Wibble Dios. But it's a 1v0 as oh. the trades were perfect in the end. And finally the first point comes in. These for Team sight Peru. takes and retakes are mayhem. You called it flash for flash. And we actually saw that was just Kush looking in the air and throwing a flash while blind because the situation was so chaotic. Great trade, great teamwork, and I don't know if they're clear comms, yeah. but the comms worked there for Peru. You know what? Because it's so chaotic, I even <laughs> thought it was Peru that won the round, but it was Indonesia <laughs> just there with Valdin on that flank, so... Oh, this is a nice it's gonna continue to get oh chaotic when these site hits. Yep, here. that's how it happens, Vance. <laughs> we're, uh, we're off the rocker. All right. Seven to one. Or, I'm sorry, six to one as we get into round eight. So you're losing it too. Yeah. <laughs> don't do math. Don't count. Spike's down here. So Peru is absolutely playing the long round. They, they may even just go for most of the frags here and, and look to see if they can push Indonesia off. It's definitely slower, though. Playing towards the extremities, that wall still comes out for the Viper, but they don't want to use any of that utility from Weibo Dios just yet. And finally, he crosses over with the first kill onto Valdin, so that's one defender down, Satchel's in. The knife is out. Oh. Some sort of bait that allows Kush to get the kill. But then it gets instantly traded out. Paranoia to allow now finally Indonesia to move back within this B site. But despite meanwhile, while all this was happening, it was still being dropped as they were trying to work this default for Peru. So they don't really want to commit towards this B site plant yet. Early trap has allowed Weechi to stay in mid. No A has had no push on it. And what a shot. That's not a fight that we've been seeing Peru win. And now the rotation is almost impossible yeah. for the side of left. Indonesia. Beautiful lurk. Yeah, oh, that's man. huge. Planted. Meanwhile, you see Ray picking up a Vandal. And for them, still have a bit of economy to work with too. So they can somewhat make it expensive for Team Peru if they want to hunt for a couple standing. of these kills. But Weechi continues Oof. to have... Beautiful lurks on that top mid. Now they spot the last player. Cuts moving forward. It's gonna get heard here by Fabagine just around the corner. With the spike, you know it's gonna go off. So that round that we wanted there coming out from Peru finally yeah. comes out. We have a 62 score line. It was, it was almost a round that didn't include the spike either. Yeah. They, they played specifically for the fights. And we have to recognize that change from Peru. With the spike down, you're not worried about losing it. Your trades are gonna be there. Everyone can swing. You're not afraid of giving up too much info. And it made them play much more relaxed in how they were taking situations. I think Peru has found a, a, a bit of a road they can uh, ride here and see if they can get a few more rounds. The economy is something that's actually been hit the last few rounds as we almost expected Peru to win the last one. They did all that damage with just Valdin alive. And you can see they're down to 50 credits, 150, or you can't see, but very low on that econ. So now with this tactical timeout coming in, it could be a pivotal change if Peru can keep this momentum. They'll have economy in their favor, and they don't really have too many tough alts to go against. Seekers is coming up, and they should be able to stave that off. Now we're seeing Peru, as we mentioned, a little bit slower this time around and not expending Cascades to mm -hmm. really try to fight against him in Team Indonesia, playing that slow default where it was working out in their favor. This time around, though, I also, have one, I also rather want to give credit to Team Indonesia of how they're actually working the initial position of that operator in the hands of Cud. They're really trying to place it behind those Cascades that are being thrown. Like, that's something that they were doing a lot here, Team Peru against Canada, was the conditioning of the Cascade towards the B side to pick up a door for Sky. And you don't really have that opportunity so far for Team Peru to get all these ultimate orbs in their favor. Yeah. 
This bit of a one way that's created continues to slow Peru down. They're forced to all peak. See three on the left. Oh. It does work this time. Gotten falls. Hush wants to swing. Oh, no way! Swings up for two at least. And the others are trying to rotate back towards the B side, so an attempt to try to do some sort of a fake towards the A side and pivot towards B. We push towards both extremities for Team Indonesia, and that allows the Neuro Theft to spot at least some players on a defense. We'll allow some room here for Juto and Weechi to work the site towards A. Just incredible decision making. Weather is incredible. It's very risky, but high risk, high reward is what we're seeing here. So it's going to be that A take, that A hit. Three members coming over. They're going to wait for Valdin. Will they? They don't. Van Silly, what is this? They don't need him. They, they don't need him. You got Judge and Satchel's Chuto stuck in the side of the site in the back of the safe boxes, but not safe for long. <laughs> Off takes him down. And a round comes in for Indonesia. The 2v2 at the moment, too. He'd be like, no, okay, yeah, we'll definitely wait for the Cypher to get here so we have the trade now. There is no stopping right. Right into the site. Oh, the, the pushes as well, the audacity that Indonesia has on some of these to continue to go forward, it's not what you would expect to happen. It's so far outside the box, even if you tell yourself to expect it, you wouldn't think you're going to get peeked there again and sprayed by a vandal. There's just nothing. It was a sheriff before that. It, the things they're doing are, are so far off what you would expect. It's so hard to defend it. Indonesia is doing, that is. And now Peru goes back to the A effect, and there's Ray. Oh. This time, there you go. They Create get that him. space. They fell behind back more towards the spawn here for Team Peru. So that satchel, the velocity that came out from the satchels of Ray was instantly denied. He gets picked off there just through his own teammate Smoke. And a great first man advantage for Team Peru. I've got your the push up already. Indonesia taking space as usual. It's the off, rare miss coming out from Cud, but at least he's able to dash away. Team Peru continues to want to push forward. Back to their site. And with the Omen TP, it's actually committed for Gotten towards the B site, allowing the Lurk to move up from Weechi. Mm -hmm. Full pivot, full rotate from Peru towards A. All right. This is one of, I, I think, the biggest yeah. Team v Team retakes we've had between these two. They always take so, ma so much of each other out before we get to the site. It comes down to the 2v2 trades. We're really going to see how it pans out here in the 5v4. Kush is walking through. There's that first headshot on Shuto. Turns around for Whoa. the kill at the Fabergine. Belisa Spike goes down. Pit comes out on the attack for Saled. Two players left alive now for the defenders of Team Indonesia. Off shot through the pit, hoping to connect to something. But we stay alive now for Team Peru. Walking inside, nice little flick from Valdin. Throws out the Neural Theft to spot the last two players out towards the right side hallway. Now committed to stay outside of the pit. The second ping comes out. And it's all up to Valdin to play this alone. Swings through, drops, falls. Yeah. And for the rest here, Cud, you already saw him falling back. He was saving for this weapon. And a round will definitely go here for Team Peru. Another big one. It's only seven now for Indonesia, so seven five is still going to be a strong half here. Peru picking up that momentum and again playing. Oh more, no! More, okay, more towards the frags, right? They should have enough money here. It's still actually pretty low on both sides. So that low. could hurt them. But playing more towards the frags, not necessarily getting the spike through right away, and now realizing those high risk, high reward plays they may see from Indonesia can be punished. Nicely done. The back and forth, though, it's not going to favor you, especially at this point with Indonesia so far ahead. So these last two rounds almost need to go in Peru's favor. The yeah. triple peak here towards market to start, or uh, main to start. And it's still the A play coming in from the side of Peru. Yeah. The goal there is to really push towards B main, get the showstopper ready for Ray. Yeah. He's actually just holding around the corner, but just around the orb. Meanwhile, the rest of Indonesia are pushing down towards middle as well. Look at this, they leave Ray. Go ahead and back up the Burn operators. The cam. <laughs> nice what shot there, Makush. Meanwhile, yeah, he gets picked off, and there's a late lurk coming out from Wibodios. They can't really use the reckoning towards the A site, they don't really need it as of yet. Wibodios is able to connect onto Gotten. Could with that up, trying to trade it back, just holding the angle. There's a walk across, actually, a jump across, <laughs> which allows Wibodios to move out really. Now long range with the Sheriff. Valdin cannot connect with these shots. Disadvantage for Indonesia. Cud does meanwhile get the pick off onto Wibodios. 
Shoalstar would be talked about. It was available here. Ray just gets the pick off with the with the Bulldog. And now this two versus two. Offshot misses. Showstopper in. Counter. Showstopper coming out too. It's going to be Rocket Arena. Lands on both hands, but it connects onto what? Ray instead. And a round comes in. 14 Peru. I don't know if I've ever seen two rockets just hit the same spot. Awesome stuff coming And only from one dies. And only one <laughs> dies. Oh my gosh. This round was incredible. The, look how fast they scale into spawn, yep. right? Valden's getting met by Chudo right there, and then same spot, just painting the A site. Absolutely incredible stuff here, and that's what it's taken. The absolute head-to-head -head between each of these players going down to the last drop almost every single round. And now Peru look to get that fifth round here with the momentum. The push again from the uh, B-Main area events. Indonesia is always trying to get an upper hand here. And Tiles, or A-Connector, may be that play with the Sky Dog now. As it only dissipates under the one-way smoke, they don't yeah. get too much information, so Peru after the dog door, pivoting back towards his B side. It's a close range judge. And that's with the camera to spawn off the first information. Ooh, blocked. Will this be a tell? I mean, the dog will. Yeah. Gets pinged right away. I love it. Satchel, <laughs> paint shells just to try to deny him for a bit so he can stay alive. Now Satchel no, he does it. No Satchel way. kills with the judge. Fabazine finally stops him with that spike down with a minute left. Last ditch efforts are so amazing here from Ray. They almost seem like the original play is how clean he comes out of those sticky situations. It's incredible what he can come up with. And now it's up to Peru to figure out where these lurks have gone, what's happening, and who can be a lot closer here with this timing. I hear the rotate too. Kush is so close. He's pushed all the way down. One way still being thrown, and all he can wait is do the ADS. Oh Catches gosh. the last two off guard, and that's only Fabergine and alone now. 23 seconds left. You pretty much say could say it's a done deal unless no. he's able to make it towards the B side for a plant. He's lacing up. He's got wings. Look at this run. He's so fast. Four seconds to plant. Should make it. Left. Oh no. And he's gonna get a trip. Oh no. He's gonna get a trip. No. Yep. Four seconds. Tap on the spike and it's over. <laughs> Round will come in for Indonesia as they take the half eight to four. Great little comeback by Peru there. Again, Indonesia able to figure out what's going on, slow down their play. Maybe not Ray. Maybe not Ray. I don't understand how he finds these situations. Isn't that, isn't that weapon nerfed? Maybe? Didn't it get nerfed? He's finding ways. He is finding ways. When you're that good with it, maybe it's never nerfed. Uh, this is going to have to be a pistol round here. Indonesia has been incredibly strong coming out at the beginning of each half. And then being able to string those few rounds together, giving them momentum, giving them money, allows them to just start toppling round after round, especially when the alt economy comes online, because they are even more aggressive, 200% once they have alts on the side of Indonesia. So for Peru, what do we see? This defensive setup, three towards A, with mid and tiles being or mid yeah and tiles being watched, just for the lurks. This time Ray moving forward, right click once again connects onto one, gets instantly traded out, but that creates a space allowed to dash to move in, and somehow through the smoke connects with Beautiful. two big that even three, switching over to another classic left on the ground. Cage coming out just stays behind it that was left by the enemy. Pulls his own camera as he walks out. Valdin's waiting, trades right back with two kills of his own. Now one for one, a one versus one. As Fabazine's around the corner, got low HP, swings what? out and surprises his opponent. And Indonesia once again. Oh my god. Another pistol. This is incredible, Vansili. The way they squeak these rounds out at the end, and, and to see it be gotten, right? Yeah. Gotten getting that last kill. Uh, it, it's just. Coming online when he needs to. Again, has been the anchor to the sights, and we see very little. But here, shining bright to take down Fabazin with low HP. After we just saw that huge round by Weechi too, with the classic in sight being so classy. I don't, I don't understand how Indonesia continues to do it, but they pull another round in their favor. Now for the second one, forcing that classic buyout once again here from Peru. A tiles and mid control just to make sure this isn't one of Peru's lurks. They have taken that eco round, and Indonesia remembers about the sheriffs. They're playing it very careful here as they encroach this A space. Yeah, the only thing they have here is a sheriff that's the strongest weapon for mm -hmm. Team Peru, and he's alone towards the B site. Meanwhile, for Indonesia, 
erupting to work towards A, where at least there's a stack there. Here. There's that first contact. And that's how you break it. Satchel and Dash, Judge close range. We just called that before going into the game. And that's something that Peru will have to deal with further down the line once they have weapons. Meanwhile, we are able to do a little bit of damage at least. Two down. One with armor damage, Plant going in for Team Indonesia. Switchy finally comes in for the rotate, smoke dissipates. Now spotted long range, connects onto Valdin at 30 HP. We're playing a high-low for Indonesia. And we finally clean him out. A few fast frags there. I'm gonna get into this buy around now, bonus for Indonesia. Still have to buy a few weapons up, which may sting if they can get these 1v1s in their favor. But it just seems like the firepower for Indonesia right now is on line. And if they are getting taken down, they're doing a lot of damage to more than one member of Peru. Getting into round 15. This will be to stop the momentum the of Indonesia. Peru stick two towards main, three towards A. There's going to be no mid control to start here. They're just relying on a bit of external or extremity pressure to get a read on the play. Here. We'll actually see how this plays out for Cud, because he's going to be wandering alone. Right to the trap on market. Scout destroyed. Meanwhile, though, still pressure towards the east side. Yeah. Trying to filter out oh. the defenders, trying to make them over peak, and definitely Fabijin just did it. And Kush just Gosh. stopped him. It's, it's those first frags that come out. It, it, Oh my gosh. And a second and, and a second third. second and third. <laughs> they can't even peek, Vansili. At least this time it was on the side of Peru, though, that's able to lend those back. That is true. That is true. Witchy, on the other hand, that lurk you mentioned on mid from Cud just got picked off. Can we at least get the plant down for Team Indonesia? There it is. No, we won't. Peru answers back with their weapons on the gun round yes. against the bonus. Keeping three alive and healthy. How's everyone feeling? That's as good as it can be. That is great. I, I think we see Indonesia doing those peaks, those jumps, and it's exactly how they continue to just beat the side of Peru here at Chuto with very nice 2K to come up, and they are able to swarm B. And this was a 2-3 setup, right? Yep. With the majority of Peru's team ending at B in the correct play. So really nice movement from Peru there to be able to strangle out what Indonesia wanted to do. A Bucky there for Ray is a little bit lower on the Econ and still going to have to spend it. So we'll see if that helps and comes into play for this buy. Peru are in such a good position here to keep this in their favor. Easy util takedown. Yeah, even the pain shells are being used just to break mm -hmm. the trip at the beginning. You already see when that early pressure came out towards that B main, Peru's already falling back to a range where once again you're trying to close that gap, that distance that Ray could actually take with those satchels. But this time he only has a Bucky and not a Judge. But we've also seen Ray with a Bucky before. He's clearing out towards the right side of A main. Ooh. Both now cannot connect onto Fabergine. Paranoia comes in. Now the rest of the crew are trying to move out towards the left side of A, towards that link. Advantage still comes out, this time even oh. up. Fans? And taken over by Indonesia towards A. Oh, I was ready to praise Peru for playing back. The blast packs were used, Ray didn't get a kill. It was gonna be tougher for them to take the site, but the frags. Coming through now for Weechi. Oh, he's identifying. But for the attack, they don't know where Selad is at currently. Who's moving up towards the A-Link to meet up with Weechi and move together. Snake bite towards a nice little spot, cage up to allow for Weechi to move in. But Kush is playing just on the outside of the cage. Really Rod. nothing here that Sile could do. And as the cage comes down, Kush stops him. And that's Indonesia at 11 now. Kush on to 3K, whether it's the Cypher or the Sky right now. Kush putting up some numbers, 18 and 12 this time around. And really helping to shut down the potential that Peru is trying to bring to the table. Good little lurks here. But just the setup, the garrison on the site was too strong there for Indonesia. And they come through to take that. I, I think the utility usage, usage uh, something I haven't po uh, poked out a lot for Indonesia, is so good here. The layering of the flashes, the yeah. nades to come through as yeah. well to take out utility and make I'm sure they're more. making Peru think a little harder. Continuing to have to guard situations where it would actually be Weechi's utility guarding. They're doing a great job at really getting in the head of Peru. Here towards the other side, a 
the trap behind them. They're safe from Valdin's calls as long as they know nobody pushes through, as well as here. I think this is again what helps there. Indonesia go forward so quickly. They know they're safe from behind. That's a little push by Weichi though towards the bottom of middle. So that's a weapon upgrade as you do have a lower buy for the defenders. Shoot to Big kills. Big guardian kill. As Ray's just around the corner with the judge. Uh oh. Selet just above him. Uh -oh. They hear the jump up. There's one and there's the dink on the second right click classic for the second. Pain shells down, showstopper out, just to counter against the Seekers, out from the defense of Peru. Still lands it onto Webo Dios. Out to Fabagine. Spectre now spotted. Whoa. Oh, caught with huge heels, still fast enough, quicker on the trigger. Gun gets to pick. Almost got got. Map point once again <laughs> for Indonesia. Wow. Incre How does Ray get himself in these situations all the time? <laughs> and then just for a moment, there wasn't even a blast pack. He's got people jumping on his head, always scaling forward. Honestly, uphill every way for Ray, and he's always in your face somehow. Incredible. I mean, what do you got to imagine what the rest of Indonesia feels when they know you have somebody like Ray, five miles ahead, producing results. And crazy, crazy stuff. I, I, it's got to be so tough for Peru to, to set something up. I mean, that's a, a default take on the site. A little high, low, you jump up, check the site, go in together, and you got him hiding in a corner just underneath you. Sneaky Ray comes out again with a big play, bringing himself up to 16 14. Indonesia is just showing some incredible firepower, showing why they've been undefeated throughout the Red Bull Campus Clutch, and here showing that they may as, uh, also be undefeated in the finals. We still got one map for that, and even rounds here on Sunset. And this being Peru's pick. Strong stuff coming out of Indonesia. I wonder if after this Rebel Campus Clutch, Ray is just going to be an inspiration for all Ray's VCT players to just start using <laughs> Judge everywhere. I Absolutely. mean, this is so effective. Let's do it. I miss those days. <laughs> you get do the, you? the satchel into uh, Rolling Thunder Jump. Yeah, triple triple jump raises, stuff like that. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Bring Breach back, too. We're in. Harbor Wall up straight ahead here as they try to just give a little bit of attention to mid from the side of Peru. Make Indonesia think that there's a push a little bit more worried about the situation. It seems to be working for now. But how much can Peru cook with this strat? They've got a good push onto market right now. Really like it. Or B main. This is to, to push out as well towards oh, A main to fight against Indonesia. They've done that before here for Team Peru. Not afraid to face against the music here waiting towards the spawn. Yeah. That breaks the cypher utility that they could actually rework later on. As Witchy oh, placed the camera, got some information, and now the Seekers are coming wow. out on the attack to clear out towards A. So the same execution comes out for Indonesia. Witchy's looking to fight right back, and it connects. Wibo Dios, meanwhile, is able to play it towards the back of the spawn. TP coming through, reckoning out on the defense as well, as a plant at least will come down yeah. for Indonesia. Spike planted. Love the teleport planting as well. Make sure it's safe. Ooh, what a nice shot, shot by Cud. That cancels out the showstopper. Disadvantage now as the hopes also dwindled for Team Peru. Only one wow. left. End it with the dagger. Second map goes once again to Indonesia. Absolute domination so far coming in from Indonesia. They are playing strong. They are playing to win. And we're going to see this third map coming up now versus Peru. It's going to be a tough one on Haven. That's the chessboard. That's where you really get to pull your opponent thin and make them think about every strat you are trying to do. And right now, the variety that Indonesia has been bringing to the table has been above par. That's the thing. You talk about variety, and that's the perfect word to summarize how this was played here by Indonesia. It's not only on aggression, but what I wanted to praise Peru on this very map where they actually beat Canada on was because Canada was a team that's very protocol on how they wanted to yeah. execute, for example, towards the A site. And there was nothing they could do against that harbor. But when you're looking at how Indonesia is playing, it's like, oh, we'll work towards the right set of A, we'll work towards middle. They want to push against us, we'll play towards spawn. Or we want to push back and fight them. There was really, you're keeping your opponents on their, yeah. get, thinking on their toes and they can't really get anything done. So you, you got to give it to Indonesia. It's more than just a, the judge at this point. And I, yeah, exactly. So I just want to know if Ian and the rest agrees to that. I absolutely do, Van Silly. I don't know what's going on, but it's like we're witnessing something really special here. Shout out to the camera down there. Um, Indonesia take Peru's map pick in Sunset. Jess, I feel like we're witnessing a masterpiece right now.
It is a beat down yeah. of the ages. They are getting absolutely dominated in the server, and everyone at home is probably thinking, well, you know, they're not they're not playing very well. You know, they're the worst team. No, Peru is strictly playing yeah. protocol. They are playing Valorant, how Valorant is played at the highest level, and they are getting absolutely demolished. It comes down to gun skill. It comes down to movement. It comes down to taking team play and game. I think overall, I think what we're seeing is probably one of the most dominant performances of any Red Bull Campus Clutch that I have done. I think seen. that goes without saying, right? I this mean, is phenomenal work ooh. from this Indonesian team. Yep. Vlad, what went wrong for Peru? Do you think the play style, you know, we heard Van Silly and uh, Riv talking about variety here. Yeah. Yeah. It, the Indonesia are just putting this map on blast and, and just been so commanding and dominant. Yeah, I mean, like, they were absolutely dominant in the whole map taking process and the controls and the protocols. Whenever P Peru tried to do conditioning by taking a space with, uh, especially with Harbor, yeah, uh, then they left it uh, to make pressure on somewhere else, but they didn't know something. Uh, Indonesia was taking that space back every single time. So they were able to rotate faster than expected for Peru. That was the main reason. That was how uh, the things went through for Indonesia up to eight rounds with two duelists in the first half uh, while taking these, making these info updates, everything was easier for them. 13-5, that is not what you want on your own map pick, Jess. Oh, it, it's hard to look at the left side of the screen it and is. not just feel really sorry for Peru because everything they intended, everything, all of that early round action that they put to play, whether it was attack or defense, you could see the intention. And then Indonesia was like, no, I want that. No, I'm going to take that. Yeah. You can't go here. You can't do that. And it looks like Peru don't know what they're doing, but they do. They just they do. can't get to the actionable part of a round to be able to put it on show for us. Kush. Kush was cooking on something else. Oh, he's smoking them. He's smoking. <laughs> he's just smoking them because I'm telling you what, I said that Fab might be like the up and coming pickup player. Yeah. But after I watched that singular map, maybe maybe the scouts out there might want to change their mind. If they're looking for another player to pick up, this Kush guy, my goodness. Yeah, he's a He's beast. unreal. He's a beast. Yeah, we talked too about you uh, about him with you, Jess. Oh like my. Kush or Ray. We, we yeah. talk it through. I love both of them, just for the record. I mean, okay, yeah. okay, you be I, over I there. Think, you be <laughs> I'll find. Yeah, I think they're on the same level in terms of the gameplay in this tournament so sure. far. But Ray is more capable of uh, doing something crazy with the race, while Kush is some uh, like different sort of agents, different variety of agents. He's like controlling them all uh, and delivering as always. Like whenever he plays Sentinel or Initiator, his standards are up to top level. Jess, let's go to that Kush 2K on round nine. Oh, I just, you special, guys right? just need to see this. his gun skill. That man almost had a 3 If he wasn't crouched, yep. that's a spray trend of the 3K. That's just one of the many. No crouch then. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there we go. I, I just cannot believe that was one of what I counted multi kills. And finally, my stats have loaded here, so I can tell you how many multi kills. He Give pulled four, four of the 2Ks on the rounds that were available, and then a 3K as well. But so did Kud right beside him there. So there was a lot of firepower on the side of Indonesia. And I don't think that's going to stop. I think the momentum is so heavy. I'm, I'm up here. I'm this far. I don't know. What is it? 50 meters from the stage? Yeah, it yeah. will take 100. No, 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 I actually am so 100. bad at measurement. It's not 100, it's about 50. Maybe and 30. I feel too tense. I actually don't want to get too close because I feel like I am going to lose every single rank game for the next year if I get too close to the Indonesian boys. They're on fire. They yeah. know how to command presence in the server. And Haven is just going to, I like, I'm sorry. Where do well, you even go on Haven? Vlad, I've been giving you, you know, different types and new phrases and terminology that we use in, in Britain. And I've got oh, another one again. for you. Not again. It is squeaky bum time. Oh, Speaking I hate that. That's Peru. actually my most right. hated British right. term. It is. It's British. 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 <laughs> it is British. British. But Haven, I mean, I don't know where. If you're Peru, I want to say something positive, and I know that okay. you guys will. You've got that ability to flip this. But they're in a in a tough spot, lad. Yeah, definitely. Especially when they took over the uh, second halves. What's going on with Peru? I want to know. Like that uh, 4v2 mm -hmm. uh, pistol run in the second pistol on Sunset. Yeah. That was absolutely devastating for Peru. We could have been talking, or this game should be still on live uh, on Sunset. Uh, yeah. If maybe if they didn't lose that pistol and. On split, it's 7 1 in favor of Indonesia. Uh, on sunset, it's 5 1 in, again, like in favor of uh, 
Indonesia. Like they have to keep calm. They have to keep calm because yeah. this is their last chance. When you got 34 countries in a tournament like this, you don't make it all the way to the grand final to tap out. I know that Peru are going to kick back, at least try to, and make this a four-map series at least. We are picking up where we left off. This grand final continues after the break. In my zone, really, I'm really that fly. Time is of the essence, don't let a second pass by. No losses, only lessons, they testing the stats fine. Genius with the flow, master the craft, I'm a mastermind. Now I'm on with it, mama on her own living. Building big in my city, feeling King Kong with it. Man, a little words, but boy, that money, huh? Long-winded, all off with these songs, did it, I'm trying to bring it home with me. Hand in the pot, but I have my whole damn arm in it, all in it. Boy, they, boy, they all give me, hit them with the all thin it. But I have my whole damn arm in it, all in it. Boy, they, boy, they all give me, time to set it all. No cookie cutter for the dough, all about my chips on me. Quit the nine to five to set the city on fire. Went from living where they died and living to fill the Fuel to the flame, we got that gas, boy. Trailblazer, better be careful what you ask for. Lights, camera, action, time to get it cracking. It's a fact we make it happen. It's that magic, let the magic set it off. Action, action. Cracking, it's a fact we make it
absolutely love a grand final Friday and we are well into the midst of one right here in Istanbul, Turkey. We are at the Volkswagen Arena and we've got a packed out crowd and we have got two amazing teams going at it here. About to get into a crucial third map as we can see Agent Select here. The voices that you can hear momentarily are of Jeskot and Valorant coach Vlad who is a Turkish resident here and it is Indonesia versus Peru. Peru in a perilous situation here. Indonesia one map out from securing victory. Yeah, and it'll be a dominant victory at that. A 3-0 commanding round differential. Speaking of round differential, though, there is some promise here for Peru. We didn't give you promise before. I'll give you promise now. Give it to moving me. into Haven, you can see the comps. They've run this. They're not moving away from what they know. And it is their highest round diff map overall for them. So the ones that they've won the most dominantly has been Haven. That is Peru's chance to possibly show that that domination is not for no reason. It's not their most favorite map, but they have been most dominant on it in this tournament. Our Istanbul about to do something absolutely... Istanbul, that's where we are. Uh, <laughs> they might be doing something. I think they are. The crowd are going to have to do something ex ex you know, spectacular here if they want to get Peru back up and running and into this series. But Indonesia could close this out here and now and become our 2023 Red Bull Campus Clutch World Champions. Let's find out if this is going to be said and done here and now, or will we extend this series? Van Silly, Rivington, let's do this. Let's definitely do this. And I do believe, I want to believe in Peru. I want to believe in a map four, but at least now on the grand stage here at the Red Bull Campus Clutch in Istanbul, in the Volkswagen Arena, we do at least have a map three. We do <laughs> we'll have, have a map that. three. We'll have that. It is happening, and it's going to happen on Haven, too. One of the most tried and true we have coming into Valorant. So these teams are practiced. Everyone knows how to play this one. Yeah. But who's going to come out with that style? We still have double controller going on the side of Peru. So they're going to try to play to that. Again, like Jess said, the protocol, the Valorant that people play, but with their own style. Other side, you still have somewhat of that same comp that you're seeing around a Sova, a Breach, Raze few of the things that you get on Haven, but I feel like it's a little bit more of that firepower that Indonesia likes to play with. Red Bull gives you wings. And the reason why I have hope for Peru here is they've just won this map earlier on in the semifinals, and I wanted to commend yeah. how they were so good at moving around the map. And I'm hoping to see this against him, Indonesia, that they could actually adapt quite quickly as they do start on the attack side. And on defense for Indonesia, look how aggressive are pushing. Gun's already in the corner at the A choke, while the rest here of Peru, they're working for mid control. Yeah, quick push up. Holding on that flashpoint just for now, an early fault line for sure, oh. giving gotten that space, but it didn't come up with a kill. Yeah, especially going against a couple of classics <laughs> and a frenzy. It's not easy to win, to win, sorry. At least one duel. And with that, we stop a little bit. We stop ourselves in our tracks just to try to force a rotate across towards the A side. We're really not moving for Peru. A pistol round for Peru, Vans. Let's see. Let's Looks hope. like it might be C. They're going to be orb farming here. Four or five is in. Back and forth. They haven't, they haven't gotten it. Okay, <laughs> I thought they were gonna stop. I like aggression it. after aggression. They're gonna go A. This is great. They saw the util with the dog on B. They're gonna make this hit happen. And Ray's there still towards the A side. Him alone is enough to allow the last two players to rotate across with him. Two kills there. Three versus one. Reloads not on time. So Land gets there the kill, is. and there's that pistol round for Team Peru. Peru come out with the pistol and come out strong, too. That's what I spoke about as soon as we ended our last map, that Haven's going to be the one where these teams can pull each other apart, spread the defense thin, and that's exactly what we see as they enter the site. Three more members left for just one left of Indonesia. A really nice back and forth. Now I think Indonesia says, okay, if you're going to run from site to site back on the attack side, we're going to push up a little bit harder. Let's see if that's the case. Looks like Indonesia will stay back for this round and let the power come from Peru. Towards A, fast again. They saw a fault line here last time, remember? So just kind of understanding the conditioning that Peru's playing around. Kush already wanted to swing out, try to go for a pick. Satchel's forward, Ray gets picked off right away. As they led, is the one that's really working the map this time around for Team Peru, beautiful. Second round so far. No surprises coming out from Team Indonesia. 
And no shenanigans also to allow for them to win an eco. Spike planted. Yep. Sheriff could do some damage, but already in this round, they look so good in economy. They're bringing these weapons into the next one for Peru. And they're going to be able to choose whatever site they want, really. Yeah. They played the map on the first round, the protocol A on the second. Indonesia really has no idea what's going to be coming into this next round. And exactly what you're mentioning there, they're really working with nice fundamentals and also yeah. protocols. That piss around, pivoting towards the seaside, building up the ult orbs for the kill draw, at least for Weechi. But after that previous round, seeing the many kills that just came out here from Seled, they let him plant that spike. So they're trying to build both the economy ults for this lockdown and the Viper's Pit, which will be crucial yeah. for early rounds in his first half. And you're right. I, I thought that was Savazine ducking down to grab it at Long C last time, but they are just getting the lockdown ready, getting everything ready for the eventual, the inevitable power that you'll see Indonesia try to bring into a retake. Again, towards short. Uh, Weibo Diaz is playing much more of a lurk style as we get to Haven here. I think they leave him. I'm Ray may be privy to that, though. But if he rotates back, you already have that double satchel forward from Ray oh, with the judge. Know. So he's pretty much pinned, but thankfully, Fabazine, uh, I thought he was going to move back to maybe try to find mm -hmm. that information for him. But like you said, Riv, they really just want to leave with Bodillo's there. While the rest of Peru are inching towards the garage control. I like this. They're leaving breadcrumbs. Look at this. Wibble Diaz in short. They go to garage, safely leave now Ouichi at garage, going back to Weibo's placement. Turns away from the flash. The judge is too good. So they pull back. They, like, yep, yeah, we're not going to fight against this yet. They wouldn't have pulled back the first time. We usually see them try to trade that. Quick adaptions here coming oh, in from no. Peru. Thankfully there, he was finally melted by the molly left by the Viper. This gets picked off, and look, the space gained by Weichi, though, after this pick. Very. So see, back on the board. Whew. Good push forward. Left. Again, this little, I love the, oh my gosh, cat and mouse being played here between uh, B connector to C. Yeah. Who becomes the hunter in the end? Mm -hmm. Still Weichi. Easy kill there on, I'd like to say easy. I would have liked to say easy. But I just cast a curse him. My apologies. Yeah, you did. That's your fault. <laughs> Gotten there. At least gets that pick on the pulse plan as well. And the advantage goes back now for Indonesia this time around. Low HP at least is cut, so it's doable at this point. With Matias moves forward with the judge. Crossfire Ooh. set up. And they will hold and anchor up the site. Indonesia receiving a little bit of their own medicine. Oh my gosh. I'm sure they expected that to be a pretty far play down C, at least one. The rotation's around, but nope. Straight in the face of Indonesia. Peru is not stopping on this one. Three quick rounds. They get a great start to this third map on Haven. And now we're going to see how they can continue. Yeah, the momentum's there. Being two down, it's not affecting them whatsoever. They, this is exactly what we need to do on our, ne our next. And they have forced, in three rounds, the tactical timeout from Indonesia. Yeah. So you know Indonesia is feeling the pressure. That's a rarity for sure. Indonesia now not in the driver's seat this time around nope. the third map. And seeing how Peru has been working the map very slowly, defaulty, pulling out these rotations and doing a great job to allow Lurks to activate. I wonder if after this timeout, it's just going to be, let's just start pushing. Yeah. And if they're not there, we'll keep flanking and, and just out. play that game. For the low buy, too. Very interesting. We see Sheriffs and low armor on the side of Indonesia's defensive right now. Let's see where they decide to take this. It might just be like a, a death ball of Sheriffs. Three towards A, maybe the, the play here, fault line to start. We'll have to see how it pans out once they get to it. Tactical timeout coming to an end. Both teams have had a chance to discuss what's going on. I think Peru continue to play towards this A. How much conditioning has gone into this already? Right, and now we have the wall here. Let's see if they even end at A this time. Peru's gonna do the first initial strat, the teleport over, and a lot of space to be gained here, knowing they have a little bit more room with it being Indonesia's eco round. Cover going out. Very comfortable play, passive mm -hmm. on the A site for Indonesia, just giving that up. Trying to get a timing too. You saw them throw that smoke already, as you could see on that screen between sewers and truck. But the timing's already up. Weibo Dios has already yeah. pushed all the way towards the entrance of spawn. So they know this is a full five player retake. 
Still have the flank watched. Everybody in sight knows it's from spawn. I love it. Wimbo Diaz continues with the judge. Ray what? then satchels down. Gotten trades back. 3v1. Now we start the bleeding. At least one connects, but Wimbo Diaz is still there with Oof. the judge. And it's so good. I feel like they are getting Wimbo Diaz into positions where that judge is so effective. You get the ultimate up, it's still effective. You're in sight. There's so many boxes to play around. I feel like Peru adopting the judge has been super smart, man, silly. This is incredible stuff to start off 4-0 and pull the rug out from Indonesia. We haven't even seen them play their aggressive style or be able to position for it. Incredible uh, night and day change here for Peru. And they, I just saw a ping here towards hell. So I okay. think seeing the aggression from Indonesia, they just want to go for the TP back into the A site and really just pinch around the aggression that Indonesia has. Ooh, so there's that the dash nerf. in the corner. There is a TP towards heaven. And now you have players that are pinned towards the A site for Team Indonesia. Sneak. Beautiful shot though coming out from Kush. Lines up with three more! Goes for the ace on top of that! Oh my god! Incredible. I just let it let it breathe. Not even a hesitation to get into that site and Kush. the kill. Kush is not good, good. It's ridiculous. It's not good, good. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it is incredible to watch Kush do what he does. Now from Cypher to Sky to Sova, three different agents across three different maps here in the Grand Finals. And he does not stop. Ultimate's up there. They don't have to worry about the plant, but also Extremity pushes everywhere. Well, I'm, what I'm loving at least here from Peru, despite that ace that came out on what well, was a protocol hit towards the ace site, they still managed to get the first pick this time around. So still staying cool, having great position right now, having great space taken, and it's a judge once again. Oh. Doctor is in to get the same medicine. <laughs> and that's seaside open for a plant. It is, it's so powerful. Especially the way that these teams want to play. Nice scaling by Weebo to pick up another one, but it's found. All right, right. Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> it works so well. You're always finding trades, right? But it seems like the way these teams are playing is you always have that buddy system. When Ray was going after a few, it always seems the one-two. Yeah. Weebo is getting it. One-two, always finding this pack of people when they go in with the judge. Oh, I wish my judge worked like that. What another round here. <laughs> Peru. Feeling it right now. The timeout from Indonesia not causing too much trouble there coming out of the third round. Peru able to still keep the momentum. Alt economy is starting to fluctuate though. Three on each side, and they are some hefty ones to be used. We still have that Hunter's Fury if they need to stop the cross map plays. Let's see how Peru takes to this util in Garage and B2. It's also the Hunter's Fury to stop any lockdown on the attack, too. So an opportunity right now That's a for point. Indonesia to turn things around in their favor. If you're looking at the head-to-head -head in the alt economy, I probably have to give it to Indonesia if you want to go for the chest, the, the rock, yeah. paper, scissors of it. But it all depends how the map's going to get worked right now by Team Peru on the attack. Uh, dash four. Okay, it's a fake, just a smoke. A lot of chaos towards Garage. They've done this before, but they left Weechi last time. The full team is moving over, so this is a bit of a play that we did see Peru run. They ended at A last time, this with Seekers. But again, it's going to be the ultimates. You have Lockdown, you have the Hunter's Fury. And that Hunter... Yeah, that's Kush again towards that site. Flash from Valdin in the back, at least gets stopped. Talk about the alt economy, just got denied as Cut gets the pick off the wave. He calls range with the judge, a one for one. Fabuzine in the clutch situation, double swing out for Team Indonesia as they capitalize on the second of this map. Quick on that. And I think Indonesia played that incredibly risky to be able to come out with a victory on that one. Putting a lot of their priority ultimates in a, the face of danger, but that doesn't matter to Kush. She feels comfortable. They're surrounded by the opposing squad. Yeah, Indonesia. I think steal that one away for sure with the momentum that Peru had with that rotation towards A. Kush still getting the multi kills and coming up huge. A loves to be tempted and taunted here by the side of Peru. Flashing low. Quick blind, quick fault line. And yeah, they've, they're conditioned to Weibo. 
taking this taking this space, trying to get in position. Nice retaliation coming in from Indonesia there. Quick jumps. Now Weechi and the rest of the team on Peru go back to a bit of a yeah. default. Indonesia is not moving though. All across the Ooh. site with a nice line of scrimmage. Still trying to split across that C site. Gotten that was getting sprayed before TP mm -hmm. towards the platform to get a kill, but I love the positioning from Chuto right here, trades it right back. Unfortunately though for Team Peru, they're still at a disadvantage. And with the dash already being used, they're gonna have to regroup. Yeah, look how far back everybody's playing for the knives. No one wants to catch a knife right now. <laughs> and Heaven jumping around, yep. But the more time they're using right now is more time here for Indonesia to deny the plant. They still have this mm -hmm. Hunter's Fury. Good news, though, is that we see all the players. Space. It's very far away indeed. A little bit of left. space here. Indonesia thinking towards A. The conditioning that Peru has put down has actually caused this lean to the right side of the map. And now they're going to get a C hit. Can they set up enough defense, though? Remember, lots of alts on lines to get disruption here. If this Viper ult. Welcome yes, it does go down. World. I'm okay with this, though. They're giving up the site. Pit comes down, but they have a lockdown that they just placed down. Shuto gets a nice kill. And this will now force the players to fall all the way back towards the platform. Uh -oh. That pit's gonna get this. Uh -oh. oh, it's a Hunter's Fury in there. There's that first ping. There's that second kill. And there's potentially a ping on the third indeed. And that allows your cut to move forward. And that's a nice little combo. Coming out here for Indonesia to Ooh. defuse then in another round. It's a nice little setup on that strategy. Very similar to what you can get out of Killjoy at A with the alt at long. They do the same thing in C and pin Peru to the back of the site. Very, very nice he's done and that Hunter's Fury finally comes out. Kush on top nine, six and one, still doing Kush things. Even though we see Peru so far scaled up getting the site, you were right, Vans. They wanted to give that site up because of the retake being so powerful. Yeah. And another timeout. We're getting these timeouts super early from everybody now on this third map. Yeah, yeah. It seems like what we heard in the VCT from a lot of the coaches, too, <laughs> is like, you got something to say, say it earlier. You're going to regret that yeah. you didn't. Yeah. So, yeah, they get into the heads of the players, cool them down, build them up, and let them know what the coach has been seeing, how the conditioning has been working. I think that's one of the biggest things. If, if Peru were to know a lot of how their strats are being received, they can uh, uh, advance and build on them even yeah. more. Now as we try to remember the amount of ults that are remaining, we still have this lockdown available for Peru on the attack. So an opportunity as well for Indonesia to take advantage of the timeout being put out by Peru to maybe try to figure out how they could counter where the lockdown could be. Because this is pretty much almost like a duo die within this round for Peru as the yeah. economy is, I'm pretty sure, was quite low. If they lose this round here, indeed. 50 left, 600, 400. Yeah. Really putting all your eggs in the basket here for Peru. All right. Towards A again, you already see the shadow step out. And it's a fake. Yeah. So they're hoping that that push down long would have still heard the shadow step. They keep one. And you see how these strats are changing ever so slightly. But it's not a buy-in here from Indonesia. At all. Great guard on B, our first strategy going fully towards B. We've maybe had a, a sky dog going in, and that's the second one. Thankfully, the dog saw a little bit of information, so we're not really committed yet. Look at Peru now falling back towards that window. Yeah. A late hit potentially back towards the sewers as the Flash is trying to find that information. As he sees nothing, that's an opportunity to now move down to take control of the sewers to maybe try to get that hold down too. Okay. These are definitely calls by Kush. It's also heard by Valden. You're going to be able to get a fault line in here. You should run. There it is. Oh, paint oh, shells no. also coming down. Shock darts onto Weiji. Satchel in! And that's the lockdown. Denied. Trade right back out. One for one. Wibodios inside the smoke and Godin just above it. The lurk is not going to happen. 30 seconds left on the clock. The pivot goes back towards the mid to see. 30 seconds left. As the smoke disappears, he's just going to wait. <laughs> We're going to wait with him. <laughs> the buddy system. 18 One seconds left. <laughs> Waited long enough. Picks him off, and that leaves Fabergine alone. Three versus one. Walks in, sprayed through the smoke. Wow. And Indonesia only need one more to tie up the game. Yeah, and how fast it was that they came back with these rounds, too. 
gaining a little bit of momentum and then feeling like they could stop everything. Kush, uh, a big forefront runner of that. And these plays by Ray right here. Let's think about this. Because when a lockdown goes down in sewers, yada, yada, you have a judge, you think to yourself, it would be a really cool play if I went down there, but it'd be dangerous. <laughs> There's no stopping Ray. Ray says, oh, I should jump down there. It's yep. dangerous. He always goes on the possible high risk high reward play. He's playing the mentality of, I got my one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you got more than one there. So it absolutely works out. Great investment. All right, 5-4. Like you said, that round to tie it up just on the horizon here for Indonesia. Do they actually stick on the B strap? Two for times sure. now. With the Laura by that you have this time around, it's easier out, to head towards out. a B site. Octoshop pushes them away, so they TP it out, wasting all that util. Potentially a pivot towards the C site mm -hmm. or a re hit towards B. It's going to stay quiet for a bit as the smokes just came down to prevent any type of re hit early into the B site. Cuts moving forward for information. And actually, here's a turret, so he's going to stay yeah. just behind the door. Yeah, they know. They're watching short. They're peeking long. All they have to worry about is B. Seekers. Ashley rushes out the judge. Almost. Now here's the bucket close range, but the numbers are still going in favor of the defensive side of Indonesia. A flawless wow. round in the end. Thriving in the chaos. Peru is creating there towards B. I was, it was hard to keep track of who was who in that. Satcheling back, satcheling forward. That's how fast both teams are moving. But the players of Indonesia are reading it absolutely flawless there, as you saw on that last round. And now five to five. The Rolling Thunder is ready here for Velden. Could be big in denying uh, Peru what they've gotten. And Peru have kind of gone away from what worked for them before. Uh, Kush with that round, I think, deterred them a little bit from going A. We may see the pressure here once again and more of the round where Peru drops the spike goes for the firefights. Recon dart two. Oops. That'll yeah. allow Ray to get into a good position. Knows <laughs> that the jet's close. The flash for him to peek out, but Kush is there for the support. Wow. And that's once again not going to allow Peru to really gain any space on a split towards the A site. And that's your jet. This is tough. A lot of this is contact walk in now or, or a util walk in with that guiding light you're going to have. Jeez. Nice shot from Cud. Spike down, mid. From the window through the double doors, paranoid or even slow down their opponents. A TP on the top. Will this get checked here by Fabagine? It will. The gun still takes the upper hand. Recon dart thrown towards the sewers, so they know there's no pressure here. Indonesia being put by Peru, so they rotate a couple of the players outside, pivoting now towards B and C. Turrets destroyed. Oh, we're gaming. Smoke. We're gaming forgotten. <laughs> but he was definitely not forgotten there. He is gaming. Which he was ready for it. Now inside the logs, Cud answers right back. Close range with the shorty. And anchors the site Man. by himself, and Indonesia takes the lead. Incredible stuff from Indonesia coming out here. Uh, I think Vlad put it in a really good perspective when he said, yeah, space is being taken by Peru, but the moment they move out of that space, Indonesia takes it back. They're yeah. getting into safe positions. We saw there again, Gotten was long peaking C, and all the way pushed up into short was Kush. Easy to hold the uh, simple angle. So really, really good stuff of Indonesia, recognizing the space that can be taken and how much that should be taken. They're just sitting in the right spots, it seems, all the time now. So many in a row here. Did you just get the six in a row? Five yep. in a row? Oh, my word. This is incredible stuff. And, and that uh, Rolling Thunder is still ready. Yeah, and we're digging deep into our pockets now for Peru for this last round of the half. And unfortunately, what scraps we're able to pull out is already denied. Cut winning that fight against the duelist once again of Jet trying to get a first blood and yeah. unfortunately getting denied. Gotten with an operator down long C. They are just locking these things down. Ooh, speaking of lockdown, another orb on that. Yeah, nice little pick off by Weiji. Fabergine getting another one before. The smoke comes up the for towards the front of the B site. Gives an opportunity here for what they're good at here for Peru. When they have the numbers advantage on a three site map, they could gain this space. But judge against judge, satchel everywhere. The 360 pivot, double axle kill Ooh. from Ray. <laughs> 
a showstopper just to push her opponents behind, and a rotate goes back out to Gotten that picked up the Phantom instead. You talked about the Operator, but now he switches to the Phantom, and you're okay to give up the Seasight and play the retake. 30 seconds left. Final round of the first half. Easy guiding light. They should know they have the sight here. Just uh, from the shadows to kind of disrupt some mini-map vision, but I don't know if it's enough to create the play to take this from Peru. Shock darts almost hit there onto Babuzi. little Stays alive. Orb. Molly in the front of the garage. Flash to get information. Good. It will connect. A TP towards the back gets information. Force logs. So it comes down to the trades on the close angle just around the corner. Gotten easily met by Celed just around the corner with the Guardian. And he saves the round here for Peru as they tie up at least the first half, 6-6. Six six. Yeah. Great movement around the map still from Peru on the attack side. They were able to identify a lot of positions. Can't do much about Kush when he's there, though. And the rest of the squad, how fast Indonesia can move to get back into it. And that's exactly what they did. They get back in with six straight rounds, or five straight rounds, one just separated there. And finally, Stopping the momentum for a 6-6. Peru look to grab pistol round of the first half. They could be able to get both here on the first times for them in the series, but they're definitely showing more confidence and more trust in each other on these trades and the plays they're making. Kind of broke protocol a little bit, if you will. Yeah. Playing a little more loose and definitely playing in Peru's favor. A push down mid. Push down mid becomes an all-out war in the front of that B-side and garage. Satchel's now to try to create the space, preventing players from pushing out towards the garage. Nice snake bite in the front. But Ray still Satchel is across. And does get the pick on Toichi. Goes towards the back of the site to spot two towards the garage, which then allows Indonesia to pivot from the A-link to the A-plant. 3v2. But look at Valden so low here. The pressure for Peru is so great. Two maps down. This possibly the final here. And they need this pistol. Yeah. Thankfully, Valden's at one HP. Yeah. Blow a kiss and he falls, but the turret's going to get the early information. Both sets of shots are being heard from the spawn. So that means that Valden can reset up, has the fault line to delay them even more towards the spawn. Already uses it. And he hides within the orb. Swings back out for the one for one. Tap on the spike. Nice kill by Fabagine. But the 1v1 right there. The wall bang. And it's beautiful oh, by Kush. Smart stuff. Had he play with that bull, sonar bolt. <laughs> and a round, a pistol coming in for Indonesia. I, I think they go very strong here. I don't think they want to let Peru get an idea of what play may be made. We may see a different play almost every round from Indonesia, honestly. This is what they try to produce in their strategies to keep their opponent thinking. And that pistol round is going to light a fire for them here. Weibo's going to go for the shotgun, though. Feeling confidence in that. Feeling like it's able to shut down Indonesia. That's going to be a stack at A, leaving Weechi and the utility for B and C. And uh-oh, Weechi might have some friends here, Vansili. <laughs> Thankfully, the wall goes up right away. So that's going to split a little bit of that uh, offense from Team Indonesia. Triple swing, nice, I love it. Beautiful Ooh. dash, allow Weibo Dios to get the pick with the Bucky. But the plan still comes down for Team Indonesia. Fast rotate, quickly denied on towards the A-Link. A flank attempted. Coming out here from Fabazine. Classic in hand, his teammates falling down. Ooh. Gets the dink and the kill into cut, but there's still a player around the corner. That's Valdin with the Guardian. Now leaving Weibo Dios, I mean, yeah, that's not too bad. That got real tricky for a second there. You do not expect to see a classic take down the Spectre. And it did indeed happen. But the round, like you said, cleaned up. Wasn't too much trouble for the rest of the Guardians there. Now eight to six. This pressure is going to start laying on Peru every round. It mounts even more. The possible end there. They're looking to bring this to another map. They want to get to Ascent here. And they still have to deal with that Ray. Judge, Track the rest down. of the team buying up. It looks like we're going to get a C split here through Garage. Will the push at long A help Peru to read this enough? Flashed early, missed two though from uh, Peru. But that doesn't matter. Indonesia's yeah. just looking to move very Say aggressively lead. towards the seaside. Paranoia in to start things off. Wibo Dios with the Judge. Denies Ray with the Satchel towards the back of the site. Close range towards the logs. Valdin also Slide falls. Down. And instantly we have a five versus two advantage for the Peruvian team. 
And they're full healthy. Actually, that's a great hold coming in for Peru. Last one now spotted. Looking for the 3-2-1 swing. First contact up from Chuto. There's Wobodios. And there's Weichi. Wow. It can't be stated enough how much these judges for Weibo are coming into play right now. Multiple kills around, just shutting down Indonesia in plays that would be scales into spawn. That would have been the rest of the team for Indonesia easily in sight, garrisoning up and making that play all out in their favor. Very clutch stuff coming up here from Weibo and the rest of the squads. Sayled opening up to make sure that was a 5v4 clean conversion in the end. That's exactly what Peru needs here. That bonus round, once again, they steal it. They were able to run away last time they got a bonus. See if they can do it again. Super close to tags. And this low buy of Indonesia is going to slow them down. Nothing yet. They're trying to draw shots. A at this point, yeah, you can get the kill and it'd be really cool, but they're just saying, what utilities here? All right, sweet. Saylet is still there, so Viper, Molly's this and that. We can expect probably Killjoy Util B to Garage. That's what they're sussing out right now on the side of Indonesia. And I like this. They broke the alarm bot early here for Indonesia, then threw the smoke that gone fake TPs into there, so mm -hmm. that wastes the dog out from Karabazine. So that's one less utility for information for the retake. I mean, look how preemptively these, this utility is being thrown out, but thankfully Shuto's there for that first contact, but it gets quickly traded out. And now an opportunity to move in and flood within the site, but it's Weibo Dios this time with the judge again. It's just being a great anchor player here for Team Peru. Push with the Guardian. There's that first one, but a nice wall bank from the top. Seled ties up the game. Incredibly strong stuff. Just watch how Peru does this again as, as we see Indonesia try to get in the site. Two rounds off of kills. Last time we saw Peru coming back, it was the fact that they had to retake the site on Indonesia. Remember, the sites were being yeah. given. Indonesia would just be able to power through, and Peru seems to have at least stopped that. So we're giving even less ground to the attack side of Indonesia, which only spells good things for the side of Peru here. In a possible next round, it is going to be a buy again for Indonesia. This long push has been giving just enough information for Peru to make options happen on the other side of the map. <laughs> that's so annoying to deal with. <laughs> just trying to shut him down, forces a TP out. I mean, that's good. One TP for a boom butt, a fault mm -hmm. line, and nades? I'll take it any day. Cover going out. Seekers, if Peru even feel like they don't know where Indonesia is, Here's that B. They're gonna wait on this. No, they're not waiting at all. They're gonna satchels in from Ray. Contact on this lead. Long range there onto Wibo Dios. And that's a two for one. We'll take that special. So Continue to aggress down towards the A link. That kill allows the Seekers to come out. Beautiful information now yeah. gathered for the players stuck within this B site. And Weechi's the one that's able to make it easy for Chu to pick up the last kill. Oof. And with this defuse. We have Peru back in the lead. That's crazy. And the weight coming from the side, I thought as soon as they heard a B hit, Fabazine was going to throw out Seekers, allow B to happen. But the dive on the site happens. You're right, Ray never waits. Ray waits for no one. <laughs> Just takes that out of the situation altogether. Straight towards spawn. They gather themselves on this really nice. Seeing that smoke go down, Weechi throws a molly. Yeah. Absolute five head in that situation to know Ray is probably going to try to take that space safely. If there's an Owen smoke, Ray is probably going to try to play in it. And that's such a good call. Such a good call. Such a good call. Very hype, hype comms coming around right now from the side of Peru. So tactical, as you can see here, being called by Indonesia. Maybe here at this point, you, you see how Yes, the satchels are, and the nades, or should I say, the judge is really working out here for Ray, but when they're trying to over-aggress right now, well, it's being met by some great opposition coming out from Peru. I think one of the fundamental things that Peru has figured out about how the Indonesia want to play that is if there's a smoke, Ray is going to be next to, in, or around it if you hear the blast pack. We actually just saw at a previous round where Ray went to A connector, 
Jet dash, yes, boom, yes, right yes, around the yes, corner yes. with the shorty. Took him out instantly. Weibo was able to get the kill. So they're instantly reading by seeing a smoke what distance they're gonna find Ray at. So really playing that super smart here. Last one just got a molly thrown into it. So easy enough, nobody has to worry. Nice little coordination going on here. And it is helping to shut down Ray's aggression. Four ultimates though, that's exactly. gonna be tough to stop from the side of Indonesia here. So they wanna go quick. And Peru wants to fight right back. Quad peeking pretty much towards this B site. Quick flank from behind. No opportunities here for Indonesia to use any of these ults. As Wibbo Dios walks in, spots the spike. Goes long range with the Judge too. Oh, nice shot at least okay, there for Cud. But you definitely know it's going to be difficult here for Cud to win this round. Unless he's able to isolate these duels. I mean, look at Shuto. Down at 11 HP. And Cud's just trying to isolate that first fight against the Judge. Can he actually keep that distance far enough? And look at him back out on how he's clearing the angle. And it's now he's spotted a jump peek at the, again with the Judge. You stop the bleeding there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That is the confidence right there that Peru's playing with. Eight ultimates right now in the game. Up and ready here for a very pivotal round. We do have a bit of a low buy coming through for one. Uh, 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 Spectre onto Ray, but they could go full forward on this with the, that showstopper being ready. Four rounds here for the side of Peru. Remember, as I said, they were able to run away last map too after the bonus round. Can they keep it going though? Back to this A strat. Oh, the peek out towards mid. Challenging cut. Okay. And dropping him early. Three now moving down there. towards the sewers on this split. Close range, Wibadillos does get the kill with the Judge. He's gonna try to paranoia back to try to slow things down. Ooh. Ray does get the bucket kill at least. Hunter's Fury out on the attack, trying to clear out towards the spawn. No contact as of yet. But at least the plant will go down. It's been a while since Indonesia's been able to hear that. With the lockdown coming through, a great opportunity here for Peru to retake the site. Site is now open. Ray playing close range, waiting for players to move forward. Nice little showstopper oh. denies here the blade storm. Recon dart being thrown out. Long range here. All three of them being pinged out. Tapping on the spike. The plate flash allowing at least a fuse to go halfway. One stick in it, and defensive is there. Beautifully done here for the retake for Peru. As they're edging closer to get their first map in the series. And this is where they, it feels like they have Indonesia on enough of a back foot where the true fundamentals come into play again. Simple retakes, lock down there, wait for the site, flash dash in, cover. Really just textbook the way they're able to close out these rounds and prevent the chaos from happening from Indonesia. They've done such a good job at snuffing that out and keeping it at much more of a level game where Peru can take the lead. All right, possible final point here. Peru can put this game on, just coming back so strong on Haven. Chucho was Straight right there. there. Yeah, he was quick. Rolling Thunder out. Vans? Holding W this Holy. time around. We talked about that Junior PRX. Look at the satchels coming through. Ray already gaining that space. <laughs> and the pre-shots coming out from Wibbo Dios' is Judge. So they are understanding that. Yeah. Judging right after the smoke. Already clearing back in. A beautiful stun. And beautiful trade. 42? Peru on the advantage. But cut runs right out, but at least it's there. The cavalry's there. It's a four versus one. Valen trying to save the round. Gets two kills right there. And at least Weechi's there to trade it right back. The fuse in and map point for Peru. Peru is online. Well, they're at land. But oh my gosh, <laughs> they are ready now. 12 to 8 here. Enough chances. Not good money for the side of Indonesia either. So that's going to be a tough one for them to get a good buy into here. They are at 2,900 on that loss money, full loss. So they have a bit, they can go low armor, but it's going to be lower armor versus a very deadly Peru right now versus a very hungry Peru that could very well see us going to ascent and a fourth map here at the Red Bull Campus Clutch Finals. All right, 10 seconds on this freeze time. A has been the quickest for both teams to play to, and it looks like that's where Indonesia wants to tempt first. It's a lockdown play. And what, what they have, it's small shields for a couple of players, so spending a lot of economy. Of course, backs against the wall. Satchel's in. Oh, no. 
Beautiful paranoia, allowing yeah. Ray to open things up, but Shuto is there. And at the bottom, though, of Sewers, Wibodios is able to get that pick up onto Kush. Locked down, already down, Wibodios moving forward. Just around the support from Juto. Beautifully done by these two players. There's now only one left around the site. Spike is at least planted, but Weechi's there on a the rotate. They'll get the defuse wow. here, and Peru will take us to that fourth map. Incredible stuff from Peru. What a comeback. I talked about the pressure we saw at halftime to know that just seven rounds away, this tournament could be locked up and that trophy in the hands of Indonesia, but it was not resting on the minds of Peru. They only saw a chance at victory here on Haven and how well they played that second half to where Indonesia would be stronger on the aggressive side, yeah. but it wasn't the case this time. Well, we did mention uh, Peru having a comfortable map here on Haven. Absolutely. Really being able to work out the map, but not only on how they were working the attack, but you mentioned it, thinking on your feet. I usually think now with how do you stop? That was a question from the analyst desk. How do you stop a raise here with the judge? And I usually think, oh, with the Cypher Plus, I mean, it's obvious you're gonna have to change your comms so that you can stop it with the traps. But just playing that distance was good enough here for yes. Peru to stop, get that first the first takedown, and also allow an easier retake within the site. But I also don't want to scratch out Weibo Dios with his own judge oh on that gosh. game. Right? It's so, so good, it's so good. I can't wait for six. more. Exactly. Ian, are we going to see more judge versus judge for this series? I'll tell you what, fans in Riv, one thing's for sure, we've got a grand final on our hands. That's right. That's right. Are you feeling it? You enjoying it? I'm oh, feeling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go five. We need one more after this, too. Hell yeah. Hey, we're in for a long night, hopefully. This is what we're here for, Jess. Vlad, let's pick that apart. Yep. One thing that we love in a grand final, Jess, is a comeback. And yeah. we've got one. I'm so glad because I gave a, I, I sort of split it a little bit of, you know, hope into the dreams of the Peru fans and everyone at home. I said, out of all of the maps, this is their most dominant round differential yeah. map. If there's a hope for them, maybe that dominance will shine through. They don't play it a lot, but when they do, it's pretty dominant. And well, okay, we can see why. It might be a little bit of a taste of your own medicine with the judge straight yeah. back at them, but it also was a bit of map dominance as well. Yeah, it all started so dominant for Peru. I mean, uh, five rounds out of four, and the only one, uh, only round that uh, Indonesia actually won by Kush, which he aced <laughs> single-handedly, yeah. like disgusting for Peru. But uh, still str struggled a lot, uh, Indonesia. But uh, anyways, so Indonesia took back under control, and we all thought. Okay, they're gonna win, 3-0, yep. that's it. Yep. But no, uh, just like against Canada, just like yeah. against the other teams, just like against uh, Turkey, they prevailed, they took it back, and this is the real action right now. Yeah, I mean, Jess, we wanted this to go long. We now did. that's a possibility for sure. I mean, you just look at some of these players on the side of Peru. That's the left-hand side of your screen with the Zen at the top there. Peru walking away, and we wanted to see a little bit more from the roster. Not in frag capabilities necessarily, but weathering the frags that Indonesia were throwing at them. I felt like they, they used the power positions on the map while we criticized them on Sunset for giving up power positions and not effectively mm -hmm. defending them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, losing a lot of that map control. They commanded the map. They didn't necessarily always command the pace, but yeah. it allowed them to be able to respond better and effectively, and the trades were there. That's what's been lacking, and they understand now fundamentally that the trades are what are gonna get them around. The they found it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, if Peru didn't start that game so dominant, uh, there could be a problem, because after yes. that timeout they taken from Indonesia, actually, they started to uh, go through that choke point, which is a uh, Viper Ball, yeah? Yeah. Uh, from A lobby to A link uh, on B, uh, which is Soa actually took every single round that vision. So Omen is taking that same angle from uh, Seelong, so they have both flanks covered. Yeah. Uh, even if uh, they open up and close the ball down for uh, Viper, uh, still uh, Indonesia was able to go for that info update constantly. But this all happened maybe before, like, too late. Yeah. Like, you already lost five runs, yeah. and the two runs you won, it wasn't something like teamwork, and then you take time out, of course. Uh, everything's back in, on track. But I actually think uh, I saw some 
stressful moments for Indonesia for the first time ever. Oh, in the, cracks. In the, yeah, yeah, cracks. Cracks in the porcelain. Oh, well, there's still some cracking moments from Kush as well. I think there's an ace that we can check out. I yeah. mean, please put it back on the screen again. Run that, that back. Was, that was Run that so back. beautiful. I mean, look at this. This is the first round they were able to put on the board. And just like that. Yep. Yeah. Let's watch that in slow motion. I want to I see that in slow mo. Yeah, for us boomer, oh. boomers who need to see everything in slow-mo, there we yeah. go. That's, that's a collat. I mean, what are you going to do about it? They wow. lined up there, but it's about being able to collect yourself, stop the spray, realign with the crosshair awareness, and then, of course, I mean, it allows Kush to walk away. This is the gun skill we were applauding I mean, Indonesia for, but it's not enough. After that, uh, like, lineup, mm. the fourth kill actually requires something else, like... Ex ex uh, exceptional. Oh yeah, the readjustment yes. is yeah. incredible. I think yeah. that that just goes to show Kush's uh, mechanical yeah. skill. But uh, we need a little bit more from them if they want to lock the, down this grand final. Because the moment Peru starts getting kicking, yeah. oh boy, that is a dangerous territory. We've to seen get it, into. haven't we? We've oh, seen that's it. What I'm saying. I've when, they, when they start kicking, it's a dangerous place to be for anybody who stands in their way. And right now, that is Indonesia. And we've got a scent up next. Now, what I'm interested to see here. We're in unforsaken territory right now, Jess. We haven't seen Indonesia off the back of a map loss yeah. on this stage. Now we talked about Peru, can they react? Looks like they might not after their loss back-to-back -back maps one and two. Then they found that extra gear. It's like they've settled into the environment. The occasion's not, maybe not too big for them. Will it be for Indonesia? I think they'll be all right. I think they'll find... Yeah, I think dropping one of the maps and yeah. it's sort of you're still on that series championship point. I mean, you're still mm -hmm. so close, you're within arm's reach. I wouldn't be too worried if I'm in yeah, Asia. I mean... And considering the next map coming up, you already know your opponents aren't very good on Ascent. It's a map that you like to play and you've already yeah, shown some good results definitely. on. So you're kind of thinking to yourself, well, this should be a bad map for them. Yeah. With championship point, their backs are against I mean, the wall, not yeah. ours. I mean, on paper, it says Ascent is picked from uh, Peru, but, yeah. but I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't, agree. I wouldn't say that for sure, like, yeah. in terms of like, and to be honest, like, someone needed to answer Indonesia. And Peru has made it so far. Yeah, and, and the, the best they can pick it up from this now on. The best place to do it is in a grand final. We didn't want this to be a one-sided affair. We yeah. are going to map four here in Istanbul. We'll see you soon.
not say goodbye Full moon when I howl at night Not turn on no sunlight I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Better run when I'm out in my cage Hungry, got wars to wage Carnival on the rampage I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Watch out cause here I come Take a swipe, cause I am sharp as a knife Everybody run for your life I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Better hide when they set me free I leave in you R.I.P I Watch out when I'm off my leash I'm coming for ya, I'm coming for ya Watch out cause here I come We started out with 34 teams. We are now down to two. Two's the magic number, really, because we've got two potential maps left that we can play here in the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023 Grand Finals in Istanbul, Turkey. It is truly clutch time right now for both of these teams. My name's Ian, and the voices you're about to hear, we've got Jess Go Say hello, Jess. Hello, everyone. And we've got Vlad. How are you doing, Vlad? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. We're about to get into map four here. It's another chance for Indonesia to finish this off and claim the trophy. But for Peru, they're not thinking like that. They want to keep this run going, keep their dream alive, and take this to a fifth and final map as we now get into Agent Select for Ascent. That map win, really important, right-hand side of your screen. That is Peru's map win percentage. And you're probably thinking 50%, that's pretty good. But yeah. unfortunately, the losses that they've taken, even the win that they've taken on that map, it was not convincing at all. And the loss was hyper convincing. And conversely, left-hand side of your screen, Indonesia. They're confident on this map. Three times they've played it, they've won it. They have a very good defensive, defensive and attacking win rate on it. This is a quite a dominant map for them. And conversely, I said the previous map was dominant for Peru. Well, it's bad news for Peru fans. They're going to have to use all that momentum. I'm going to need the crowd right behind them because the stats say they probably shouldn't win this map. And if you want them to come back, they're going to need every ounce of energy that they have left. Definitely. I mean, there's this always race versus jet uh, comparison right now. And for the ascent, I probably will take jet with me on the choking points. Yeah. We might see operator difference. Oh, oh, yeah. we're getting optif finally. Yeah. Yeah. I was seeing judge diff in Juto. the last, right? And I'm like, when's the op diff coming? Of course, Indonesia, Ray's gonna run around with that judge and provide whatever judgment he can, but I'd like to see some op diff. Our grand final Friday continues. We're going into Asen. It's Indonesia versus Peru. So much on the line here, Van Silian Riv. Thank you, Ewan. Definitely so much on the line. Map number four in this grand finals now between Indonesia and Peru. And yes, Jess did mention here. here that when they lost that map here, Peru on ascent, it was 6 to 13 against Portugal. But that was also a composition where they tried to bring out a Viper and a Raze. Then switching over to that standard comp that we've seen now yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Chet, the Sova, the KO, KO yep. Omen, and Killjoy. They're starting to see some results against Turkey. Resiliency was the name of the game for that as well. And I mean, Peru and resiliency, <laughs> that goes hand in hand so far in this Red Bull campus club. Yeah, true. Especially when you're going against Indonesia, you're going to need a lot of that armor to be able to come up with a victory. We just saw it on Haven from Peru. But Jess has been saying, the, the desk is saying, Indonesia is still Indonesia. Just oh, yeah. wrong as heck. Red Bull gives you wings. And it looks like we are going to float a little bit towards the left side of the map here to start. 
Peru feels like this B touch will be the thing. They, they hit A quite a bit. We'll see if B is more of a condition than it is a full strategy for them. Oh, And it's a full strat, Vance. It's a full strat. It's fast. Oh, Paranoia oh knife into the site, too. Cut trying to get the pick off onto the TP towards Logs, but gets denied right away. Towards the back of the site, though. Kush letting two shots right away. And here's a shorty close range, but gets stopped by Ray. 3v2. Advantage out indeed for the Indonesian team, but the spike is not yet within the site. We're looking to move back and pivot away if we can. Wow. But Weiju is pretty much stuck. Couldn't move towards the doorway. Long range with the frenzy. Nades coming through. Ray chasing down. And a piss around for Indonesia. Incredible the amount of times we see Kush being able to change the course of a round with those few taps from a ghost. It's just wild and an instant guardian too. The confidence in his play that he brings to the table. I'm sure he'll get a few more frags on that, especially with the distance of ascent. Really sweet play though. Gotta mention Peru's little, as you said, yeah. the teleport to logs and the swing out from Salid. That was clean to take out Kud. You love to see things like that. The first protocol worked, but then Indonesia was able to tear it apart for Peru. Now we go towards A. This is going to be a detect on both sides for the zero point. Two suppressed. <laughs> so four suppressed. Yeah. <laughs> Record broken pretty much there. Broken robot, but not for the shots. Valdin has that KO, gets that first pick within the round and a disadvantage for Peru as they have the disadvantage in also weaponry. That's Bucky true. in the hands of Webo Dios. Mm -hmm. I think, I think really going into the series, he's opting what Ray's been playing. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're trying to bring one of their own to the table. The shotgun judge and what verdict can it bring? All right. This is the dash into the site. This is what we usually see. The jet being the initiator, dash into a cloud burst, and the team follows. So what we have to wonder how the raise is going to work on the retake and the site take. Like that. Yep. Oh right my down. gosh, right in their face. Just run for it. <laughs> Just run for it with the judge. And that's the first one to fall. Shuto, though, gets a nice timing. Wibbo Diaz comes in with the TP. Bucket with the kill. Another one into Khan. Oh! oh a third right in the face of Kush. Back in a 1v1. Upgrading here to the Bulldog. Cut dropping in, and the shots miss. An opportunity oh. for this. The bonnet of that two coming out from Cut, but the shots missed. 28 seconds left on the clock. Now Cat reloads mouth. the weapon. Off angle coming through. Cut gets the win. And a thrifty couldn't be for Team Peru. That's crazy. Weibo out here like the Terminator, just rolling through people with this shotgun. But it is going to be the cleanup. Could, with just the tip of his hat, able to trick out got, or trick him out on this one. Oh my Ooh. gosh, cleaning up. I, I feel like the Bulldog's going to start, or Bulldog, the uh, Bucky. Bucky's going to yeah. start getting a little bit more love too. All right. Turret up top going to be able to see short and long so it looks like they kind of want to give up this a space that's the that's the utility you use when you're not playing really too far in sight <gasps> this might be bad timing though for cut he just got himself in a pinch and they went for the flash and the recon but cut holes towards the back of the generator with videos moves forward with the judge a one for one but trading right after players are moving through towards the doorway oh. disadvantage for the defenders indonesia looking to deny the plant, but holding on to the molly is the KO. Kush gets the wall back onto Weibo Diaz. But Fabergine still holding towards the generator. 3v1. And that one player is Kush. Spotted by the Aljon, which allows the lead to swing out from hell. Yeah. And with the gun round that they have, it's clean. Cool, calm, and collected with a little bit of get up and go. We see Peru entering the site flawlessly behind Chuto. That's the jet hit. Easy in to the top of Jenny. And that couldn't be a kill, but it's also more of a sentry, a personal sentry to figure out who's in sight, where they might be. And we saw the follow-up from Weibo immediately to clear that. They take the rest of the site. So now Indonesia's got to start considering how may we be able to come back in that next gun round. A has been pretty flawless for the side of Peru Flashback. on that bonus. Yeah. So there's that flash recon Tarman they're trying to do. It does get the ping there onto Gotten. Mm-hmm. And really trying to initiate to see if there was Ray anywhere close there with the shorty for this round. Spike down round two. It looks like they're going to bring it forward. Cute little turret spot with how Weechi is also playing towards mid in the range of that. Don't usually see that too much of as, as a position for Killjoy to be able to hold all that area. Yeah. Now the rotation around. 
they leave Weibo Diaz. Definitely. With that distance, you can actually place that turret to mm -hmm. watch B main and alarm bot even on the A main and have full control of any type of pushes, identifying any type of pushes that could happen. And with that turret not spotting any anything, you're trying to move in, but that's cut close. <gasps> but not close enough. But Reyes <laughs> at least gets one. Do they go back to A, though? They've had this kind of lurk by Weibo. He was coming forward, head from the shadows if he really needed to get in place. And I like this. Indonesia stops. They realize there's a lot of chaos, but no more noise. So they also left. need to cut their rotations and wait for something else to happen. They kind of play a simple 1-1 one -one across from mid to A. And Weibo Diaz still had both of his smokes. So that covers up any type of line of sight from door and from heaven, yep. which allows no Imichi to move in and get the pick off with the Vandal. And even the shock darts, Ooh. beautiful by Fabagine. A surprise coming out from Gotten, but only able to pick off one. Round will still come in for Peru as they take up the game 2-2. And A, again, seems to be the flavor of them that they want to go towards. Really clean on backing each other up. Big push by Cud here and the rest of the squad. Not getting as much as before. That, that would have been Ray kind of getting a kill by himself. Peru not being able to back up these kills, but there's so much coordination and cooperation right now coming from Peru expecting Ray to come through. So they're playing in that mentality now that they will see somebody around every corner, I bet. Quick TP crossed, trying to get uh, away from a flash. With all the considerations right now. This is good right here. The recon dart doesn't really spawn towards the front of the site. So you still have a great position for Gotten on the top of these boxes. Al drone still available though for, Fab for Fabazine if they want to look to re-hit towards that A side. But it looks like Peru is opting to pivot back towards the mid and B area. Yeah. Unless mid the entire match. I think, I think they're afraid of Kush maybe or Ray being that cud. Just the aim that's been on. Uh, they have not gone in that area. Just maybe it's not mode right now. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, interesting play here. It looks like this may be one of the first times they tempt a little bit of a cat pressure as they still go towards that B site. So Fabagine's holding his owl drone right towards the B main. They also have a K ult available. But with this pivot that you see towards middle, with 30 seconds left on the clock, uh, may opt for a mid to B split here. With a lurk towards the A main. Left. Yeah, there's the execution finally. So the definite push towards the B side. Cud looking for that timing right inside that smoke. He's able to catch both of them, including the spike. And then the judge from Ray. Another one to fall. Three on two advantage for the Indonesian team with the spike down. Picking up the spike. Spray is coming through. And that's no time left. Wibodias is too far away. And Indonesia will get the round. Uh, Indonesia activate faster than Peru does, and that's exactly what happened. I think in, uh, Indonesia heard some activity in that B main area, and it was instantly time to play. Oh my gosh. Yeah, being able to get that kill as well, uh, you f almost feel like it's the KO first, because then you can instantly drop the other person and not get the KO res, but it worked out either way. It worked out real good, too, for Indonesia. Stopping the bleeding two rounds in a row there it was for Peru. And now, I don't have an Odin. I don't know if we'll even get an Odin just yet. Ray down onto the Bulldog as well as Cud. So the buys are still a little iffy if they find Vandals in these fights. Yeah. Oh, oh never nice. mind. ADS in there, getting the burst shot right in the Domo Shuto. Yeah. That's tough. And that's your jet on Ascent. You, you're all going to have to walk in together. Like it's a, a sack race. Preemptive lockdown. As soon as the yellow drone came out, looks like Indonesia thinks that it was going to be a heavy Oof. hit. So they're forcing the hand, trying to cancel out the ult, and that's cut, doing everything on his own. Three kills and a lockdown. And only two left on the attack with a minute left. I mean, this is a broken economy, right? Mm -hmm. I'd probably save if I were them, but looks like Weiji wants to make a play. Getting modeled at that distance and angle. So tough to take the first firefight there. And yeah, they wait this one out. They realize the economy is going to be quite tough after this one, especially when you have rounds go back and forth between the opposing team and your team is going down round after round. Your money still dwindles. Even if you're winning in that situation, you can find yourself in a low buy. And here we have Zen. We see 200, 100, 11 for Weebos because he's had the shotguns. We right. talked about how that also affects raise buys 30 seconds left. and allows 
Indonesia a few extra guns throughout the match as well, which can be incredibly pivotal as this one pans out. Another 20 seconds left. I don't think we're getting any hunting on this. And both teams a lot more comfortable as they enter ascent. We're not seeing the timeouts. Everything's being adjusted in game so far. So it seems like leaving it up to the players as well. We'll have to see where we're currently at for Chuto as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of the blade storm, this could be probably one deciding factor for Peru if they want to buy around these two weapons that just got saved by Fabagine and by Wichi. Because that will mean control of potential orbs within the next round. That means a lockdown and also a Hunter's Fury around that forest buyer they could bring out potentially. Yeah. Dang. And he does have that blade storm. A lot of alts on deck for Indonesia, as you say. So, Chuto. I think the util needs to be for over his shoulder for space taking, right? That needs to be a little more precise in the way that they're hitting. Uh, the identification when Chuto gets in the site. So it's, it's, it's all around the board for that entry now that it's been figured out by Indonesia. Out Has to be refined way. a little bit more here for Peru. Towards mid, first hit straight towards Cat. Oh, this is good. Recon dart and a knife too to force the KO out of position. So Valdin is back and that allows the space to be taken by Peru just up on Catwalk. With the counter knife, Peru's pivoting back to potentially break the utility on middle. There it is. Yeah. That's good. K get Indonesia thinking. Just a little bit, right? If, if the first hits aren't working now, go to that slower play, which Indonesia does like to see. They get to set up even more. But it's got to be about what Peru can gain out of this. What knowledge can they get? 2-3 split across the map right now. We'll probably see Favazine come back and just leave uh, Weechi by himself here. Committed at least for the first contact towards the tree. And that's the ADS coming out from Godin. It's a trade-off. Still pretty decent. Showstopper out on the A side. I think they bail. Yeah, that definitely. <laughs> that will potentially way. allow a mid to be split. Oh no, but the KO is moving alone. It's Seled. Finally deciding to fall back. 30 seconds left on the clock. Everybody's going to move towards B main. Cut's just trying to cut the rotate. He's going to decide instead to wait for his teammates to meet up with him as they go for the double swing. Fabagin was there to help. One, uh, one for one as well. Disadvantage mm -hmm. for Ray. Now solo on the retake with 10 seconds left. Grenade. Walking seconds down. Left. No judge this time. Long range with the Bulldog. All right. And dropped. Yeah, we talked about how that round was big for economy too. We saw a lot of the alts coming online, so that means this one's probably going to be pretty spicy here. Good money still from the Bulldog. Four buys to come in from Peru. Not too bad of a problem in, on that. And being able to solidify this round across the map, pulling uh, Indonesia a little bit separated from that cat tree area is something that Peru uh, last round was done for the first time. So seeing how Peru is figuring out who's playing where, how they're taking Standing first ahead. firefights, who they might want to see in a first firefight, is everything you have to consider against Indonesia because the regular strats aren't working. So you have to start branching out into any avenue for that victory. Nid to the alert, uh, alarm bot has been one of those avenues to take and they're going to pursue that again. Push on to Cat. This could be a backstab. Miao Jonah breaks the turret. There's that backstab you mentioned before, oh. but so far for the attack, it seems it's just a break. The alarm bot and the flank comes behind. Nice wall bang. Weechi's trying to save his teammates. As the judge is moving forward, just got picked. He just got spotted. Picks up a weapon here. Turning around towards the front of Sabrosa <laughs> and Ray gets both of the kills. Fabijin then for the other trades. A 2v1, a swing out from the middle arches. Fin silly, why would there be three? I don't know, there's just chaos <laughs> all around. I feel bad for our observers. There's just, just action after action here for trades. It's ridiculous. You're like, okay, there was two swings from mid. Nobody could be there. They gotta be spread out. No, there's a third person to swing that. Kush is still there, available to drop down uh, Oh my gosh. This as well. They moved out so quick. In, in a round just after, Peru tried to pursue that cat. They pushed forward, got a kill, went to B, and were able to take the round. So this round, Indonesia says, we'll come out, cat, and we'll meet you right away. Really heady stuff to just go at the strategy your opponent just played against you. So this mid is now being kind of the opener. First few rounds, no mid for Peru at all. Yeah. Seems like they want to live here now and mess with this alarm bot utility all the time. They're not putting too much pressure on. 
Indonesia seems comfortable with this, right? It's like, okay, they're being a nuisance, but we've gained full B main control. We're pushed up in extremities. Wine's covered. Not anymore. <laughs> they get the safety. Good call there. But yeah, ultimate's still online here. This is why the round is so tense, so slow. Right now, just got spotted by the turret, and they tried to go for a double swing for Celed and Shuto. We fall back instead. Notice the placement coming out from Winchi with his KJ utility. So yes, the turret was up on the tiles to look mm -hmm. towards Catwalk, but it's an alarm bot instead towards B main. Because he wants to see if there's going to be an aggressive push coming out instead of a break turret and fall back. But now, with 30 seconds left, we're trying to work towards the site. Oh. The command being pulled out here by Valden, which will force now the defenders or the attackers to move towards the sole defender, which is Ray, towards the back of Dice. Hunter's Fury out from the spawn. That will now force the players on the attack to push towards the A side. Beautiful ping on two players, and Ray stays alive, hit by the paranoia. And all he could do is win within the smoke, 13 seconds left. Playing close by the smoke, by the generator. And support comes there from the top. Spike Tip and tap, A. the judge close range, and judge gets the two kills. Van Silly, Ray stalled Peru for 15 seconds yeah. in tree. Yeah. 15 full seconds from 30 down to 15. It was easy to read. There's the first kill, and it wasn't until the clock turned red that Peru were even able to make it in sight. That's incredible solo anchoring. Uh, I don't know how you're going to get on that next time. <laughs> it just has to be a get up and go if you're going to. Four alts are ready. That could be a way that Peru does it, and they're going to call a timeout to make sure these alts get the return they want and get this next round. Yeah, you got to get the uh, silent support coming out from that Hunter's Fury on the defense as well to allow Ray to really hold towards that A site. But you're absolutely right. Whenever you're being pressured that much and there's no time left, run in as a group. Mm -hmm. But the issue is at that point, you're running with less utility, no information of where, right. how many players could be within that site. You hope you're looking the right way. Yeah, and when you're playing against Indonesia, you got to try to find out where everybody's at because it's always surprise plays around. Yeah, yeah, usually corners. you're looking like a whirly <laughs> where somebody's on a string on a fan above you. You're, just, you're trying to aim. You're trying to aim. It's like the show match when they had inverted mouse movement. Uh, was, Ray is jumping all around you like it's a jungle gym. It is tough to play against. Peru still able to pick up a few rounds here and make this a pretty good first half, all things considered. Three more to tie it from the attack side. It would be great against Indonesia. All right. Low buy, but the ultimates. Do we combine them for the ultimate power is the question. I think if they get a few kills, it might feel more comfortable to help use an ult to secure the round. But this is going to be very much movement up towards Cat again. I think a touch and go. They've liked to play these main hit positions, like Cat, like B main and mid, and then leave right away. With that smoke being thrown out towards the door, I could definitely see a garden push coming off of this lower buy, and you definitely see Ray just Great around call. the corner. Molly there on the window. There's that judge from behind, beautifully done. The pinch coming out from the two defenders there towards that A site. Nothing you could do here. A flawless round for Ooh. Indonesia. Showstopper ready for Ray too. What was that, quick three? Nine, another 900 credits in the pocket, even more maybe? A incredible stuff that these uh, that he's able to bring in for the team in just that position. Again, an A-hole from Ray. The rest of the team able to coordinate around that too. One, two, three, four, okay, yeah. Oh no, three, the first one was taken. Nice job, Alvin. Probably got an Man. assist on that though. <laughs> oh, he did, he definitely got an assist. All right, seven, three, could be a seven, five. Back, guns back in the hands of Peru now. Standing ahead. Yeah, it could be back on a 7-5 because they got four alts to work with here for Peru. Yeah. Shotgun does some damage. They knife. know Ray's close. Yeah, exactly, especially with that knife. Couldn't satchel away, but they didn't want to hunt him down. Meanwhile, yes, indeed, Weechi's out there towards that B-Link. Here's the L drone that will not get any information for Indonesia. So an opportunity to move in for a late lockdown mm -hmm. and a hit towards this B-Site. Getting pinged, though. Oh, he's ready to spam. First Odin. Oh, close, close. With support towards B main on top of that. Yeah, so nobody can quick dash around him. Oh! Oh! That's the first fast headshot that I've seen with an Odin <laughs> through a wall. But thankfully, though, we mentioned, no, 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 no. Showstopper in the air and lands it onto Weechi. A couple of them may get detained, including one towards the B staircase, the ult towards the back of the site, but the lockdown's already been 
decimated, or decimated rather, and there's no smokes to be thrown towards the spawn. Beautiful paranoia at least to create the space for Celeste to move within this B-side. So within all this chaos, we at least get the plan. Oh, good detection on the dart. Here's the retake. Oh, this is nice. No util right now for the defenders to move in. Crosshair being set up. A walk up here from Weibo. Dios! As there was a gap within the smoke, but Celeste was there for the double trade. A one versus one. As all the pings around the Nolka man gives his position away. So inching in his gun and just around the corner by the switch. Head to head! Gotten gets the pick! Oh, Gotten in the final moments has come up so clutch so many times for Indonesia and does it again within arm's reach of Seyled. You're right, using the pings to get closer and closer. Take the space, says, do you want the Odin? Last nope, I do not. The they forgo it. And it is going to be the last round of the first half here. A great streak picked up by Indonesia with those first few rounds. It, it, after the bonus, we see Peru usually take it and run. Not this time. Defense is really hard to get a, a hold on and how they're playing it, especially when it's Indonesia on ascent. Yeah. But it's just interesting how disjointed it looked on that push towards that B main. Yeah. What really stopped them to only have one player stay towards the front of the B side? Yes, there was a showstopper there, but your jet was all the way back towards that B main. But we'll touch upon that a little bit later. A beautiful flash to allow a dash to come through and an Odin missing a couple of shots. But the space has been made, one towards the logs, and it's saved by Cud. And the crossfire is beautiful. The Vandal and the Odin denying the attempt of a push on the last round of the half. For Team Peru, the last few players right with here. basically no utility and low weaponry. I'm so confused <laughs> they still have an Odin, but they played the Odin like they knew Chudo was going to try to jump over. Yeah. That was the incredible part. Cud ready, Kush still spamming. He's we both. Fun. <laughs> Good lord. 9 3 half, 9 3 curse maybe, our first one. Scary, yeah, true. True. Are the students impervious to the 9-3 curse? That's the question. All right, we're going to switch it up. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it. The uh, defensive side, a little bit easier to organize on, but is it going to be that way against the speed of Indonesia? I, uh, the raise is going to be really interesting to watch. There's safety in the jet dash to the cloud burst. Once you get into a site that allows you to survey the site and allow the rest of the initiators and the sentinels, the controllers, in behind the jet, behind the duelist, to come up with the frags, then jet pops out of the jack in the box cloud burst. Raze is going to have to go in with just full util behind her. An onslaught of everything, a paranoia, the sonar bolt. And look for that first kill all on his own. And the plus here for Indonesia, having this raise in their composition. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not the traditional jet, but he da he uses the satchel like it's a dash. Exactly. And on top of that, it's going to break Killjoy utility. So that's going to be very difficult here for Peru to deal against. As you do have Indonesia looking to set up very Ooh. quickly towards this main. Torrid spots him. Double satchel in on the top of the generator. And that gets the first blood. Quickly traded up by Chuto. Gets a second one there on the board as Kush is trying to trade it back. Big frag. He dashes away to safety. Three versus three on the pulse plan. Spike planted. Ooh, that was close. Sovas are up, but the recon is down. Oh. Shot and a miss. Cut is gonna do the service here for the defenders side to break the door for them. So that allows a dash forward and even the suppression coming through towards the generator to allow Peru to inch closer and closer. Molly not being thrown, push swings out. Oh, what a swing on those three kills, to but four on the board. And that's Indonesia with a crucial pistol. Kush is an absolute god with a ghost. It is unreal. The one taps that he is hitting in different positions, full, full 180 transfers to the other side of, of a situation that he's playing. But it is just laser beams to the head of Peru. Kush again <laughs> comes up with a huge round. I love it. The praise to the teammates where it's due. Yeah. And with that pistol, three rounds away of winning the grand finals, our team Indonesia. Recon Dart, though, out on a defense, gets a lot of information. But Ray still wants to walk in close to the smoke. And there's a counter coming out attempt. Rotate coming across from the defenders, playing closer to the smoke themselves. 
Indonesia still can't make it in. No. How did that happen? Did he satchel up for that kill on Tuwebo? Uh, I don't doubt it. So many options for Ray, and you could never tell what he's going to do with each one of them. It looks like they're getting ready to dash into the site, though. One blast pack is going to cause the chaos and the rest of the team to follow once this smoke goes. Yeah. And there it is. The satchel in, clearing out towards the switch. Three players moving forward, and Zaled was fully picked off by an Omen Paranoia. Vans, the pressure mounts. Just a few rounds away. Weechi to do what he can here. Takes the headshot, takes the trade. Kush comes up with a big frag there, and now two away. On their run, Indonesia took down last year's grand champions of Northwood. And it's going to be fitting if they can solidify these rounds and still find the victory for themselves here in the Red Bull Campus Clutch Grand Finals. A timeout to be called. If any time, it is now a tactical timeout for Peru to see what they have left in the tank to continue this series. <laughs> Not much. It's going right? to be tough. You, you've lost the pistol the second round. You went for some sort of a force buy with judges, with buggies. Yeah. Trying to get something at least to answer back against the aggression of Indonesia with this judge from Ray. It's worked well for Haven, but this time around, the shenanigans that came out there from that race, Satchel on the top of the window, getting the kill to Weibo Dios into the B main. Now you're working with no money. Yeah. So the timeout is pretty much thinking ahead on how you can make the comeback and bring this into overtime pretty much if you will just want to save your weapons or save your economy yeah. into a real gun rail. At this point, I'm on full retake mode. I want to see four people together towards the site, whether they're leaning two and two for a fast rotate and one person infoing the other. The, it has to be an all-out roadblock here that Peru set up to start this comeback. The bonus round is where they strike. It's going to be a tough one here, like you said, with they're the forcing. intermittent buys. They are going to force. And it looks like they will decide to stack at least three here. All five members of Indonesia dodge. Oh, they're running forward. What is going on? Ray getting two easy picks. Only one stuck inside the front of the A main. The TP coming across to lurk on the top of the wow. garden. Things are not looking good at all. Even Ray already has a showstopper for the next round two. And four in this round. <laughs> he pulls it up right away, okay. <laughs> he wants it. They're gonna search for it. I, th I feel like coming out of that timeout, there was a very hard, okay, let's just wait, <laughs> wait for this party to happen. Okay, it's not gonna. Uh, I feel like there was a, a very strict protocol in place for X to happen at this time, but it also didn't take into consideration the crap that Indonesia can pull. It's amazing. They seem so confident in each play, <laughs> each push, whether it's something they're doing new or something they have done a million times with a bit of variation. They do it like had, it has been drilled. And now, a final point, Vansili, for the Red Bull Campus Clutch Grand Finals, Indonesia. As we get to the fourth map, they reel it back in, oh. and they find the power that gave them the first two. Championship point now for Indonesia. Backs against the wall, our team Peru. We mentioned the economy that they forced into the round. Nothing to work with in round number 16. Judges, Guardians, and a Bulldog. And it's a nice knife, actually. A zero point that catches information on all five. One for one. A trade-off, a one for one. Make that the advantage coming out with a spray through the smoke. The flight from behind from Juto. That's two down to dashboard and the last to fall. The dream's still alive for Peru. Push harder than Indonesia are pushing. Take it away. Take away their right to be anywhere on the map right now. B main owned by Peru in that instance. But it's going to be tough to do that every round. The style Indonesia can play is so volatile. You have to hope for the best here for Peru. Round 17 coming through. Game point each time and the pressure mounts as Peru can grab each round. We do have the Odin. They're going to try to get the spams down. They're looking for any early chip damage that they can get. Any advantage, a boon to these rounds to keep it alive. It's a null command and a rush forward from Indonesia to be again. Satchel's towards the top. Fabergine is just spraying with the Odin with support from his killjoy within the site as Weechi up what towards the staircase. Racers jumping around, just trying to waste down the util, just trying to waste down also the bullets and just creating a space for his team. I mean, he's doing everything. Storming towards the side, there's only one left with the Blade Storm. 
Hunter Suriel, ping down, That's taken it. down, and they've done it here on the big stage here in Istanbul. Team Indonesia are your Red Bull Campus Clutch World Champions! Absolutely incredible run coming out of Indonesia, only to be flawed at the last moment on Haven, an yeah. undefeated run. Didn't matter to them though, they would still come out amazingly strong as we got to Ascent. Peru giving it their all, able to thwart out Indonesia as well on that Haven map and show why they were able to force it to the main stage here through teams like Canada and others. Both of these teams beat Titans on their way here and deserve this grand final stage. But it is Indonesia, Van Silly, that are going to be walking away with that win. And give it a right there for Peru. Against all odds as well. You talked about the favorites moving into this event. Yes, it could have been a Project XS team from 2021. It could have been a Team Rad. It could have been Egypt. It could have been Canada or the US of A. But these two teams in Peru have really fought against all odds here to make it to the grand finals and incredible they mentioned it on the analyst desk when we started day one in this event riv competition was high this time around for the red bull campus clutch in 2023 and that's the reason why i mean those those skills coming out from these 10 players on that grand final stage was a sight to see absolutely amazing perseverance the pressure that they're playing under and to do it Something that they love so early, but still be playing at such a high level. The coordination, the comms, it really is a place, the student scene here, for the tiers to look at. Tier two, tier one, we've heard that players get grabbed out of the scene. Yes. And it's exactly the kind of vibe we saw here today, coming from players like Kush, from Ray, Hood, Gotten, Webo, Dios, Chuto. Everybody was crushing it on the maps. And when you're talking about the potential, the, the talent that we have at the student stage here for the Red Bull Campus Clutch, there's also a lot of these players that have played in the VCLs, that's played in the VRCs, that's also played in challengers that have that experience playing against the top tier contenders. I mean, just look at Indonesia themselves. They played against the RRQs, the Boom Esports, and the Alter Eagles yeah. of the World and the SEA. Yeah. They've gotten all that experience to show what they could do here on the Red Bull Campus Clutch stage. And an opportunity to get scouted here and move into that pro level in the VCTs, hopefully there. And at least if you're looking at the stats over here, if I'm gonna have to pick somebody up, it's potentially Ray. Yeah, uh, incredible. The, okay, so what Ray brings to the table, one, aggression, two, yeah. Fearless aggression can make plays that completely turn around and the judge buys for economy one time We noted Ray had 7700 when the rest of the team had 3500 yeah. still on good buys Everybody's playing smart, but offering different guns to the team when you have that chance. It's the whole package I have not seen a player play like Ray. I think Ever. We've had <laughs> we've had aggressive raises that go straight off the start. Yes. But who says, all right, there's three people in front of me, I can do some damage, blast pack into their face. Like that's wild. If you're if I think about somebody on the VCT level, I'm thinking Jogimo or I'm also thinking Jing. But those two players are not the type of players that also are gonna just do those pure West 360s, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at least that's enough of us here on the stage for Rivington and myself, Van Silly. It's time to throw it to Ian Chambers in our champions, Team Indonesia. Istanbul, let's hear it for Indonesia! What incredible dominant performance from this team that has done nothing but impress and blow us all away from the moment we started this year at the Volkswagen Arena. Ray, I'm going to come to you first. You must be absolutely buzzing right now. Yeah. You're doing something very different here in Valorant that we haven't seen in a very long time. When did you start to adapt to and use this unique playstyle? Okay, so uh, it was just for fun. We went for the VCL Indonesia and we got second place. Then after that, I see my potential to be a pro player. 34 teams started off at the beginning of this process. You are the top one. Indonesia, the best team in the world when it comes to student Valorant. So you must be just 
incredibly proud of yourself and your entire team. Of course. My name is Ray for Indonesia, not Ray for C. How much were you thinking about that national pride? How much were you thinking about doing this for Indonesia? Of course, Indo pride. World champion, man, for Indonesia. This team is just so good. Last question, what's next for you and your team? Uh, I don't know, I just love my team. I'll tell you what's next. You're gonna lift this trophy up. Are you ready? Let me tell you this, let me pass this away. Let me pass this away. Guys, this is your moment. Your Red Bull Campus Club. Campus Clutch has been simply unforgettable and it all ends with Indonesia well and truly on top of our global map. I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who flew out for this amazing event, every single student, all of the production team, the people behind the scenes who make this happen, our magnificent broadcast team who cast and gave lyrics to every special moment that unfolded here in Istanbul. And of course, a massive thank you to you who watched along and supported each and every one of these future megastars. This has been the Red Bull Campus Clutch 2023. Thank you for watching!
Red Bull gives you wings. In my zone, really, I'm really that fly. Time is of the essence, don't let a second pass by. No losses, only lessons, they testing the stats fine. Genius with the flow, master the craft, I'm a mastermind. Now I'm on with it, mama on her own living. Building big in my city, feeling King Kong with it. Little, little words, but boy, that money, huh, long-winded. Had to flip the script on them No cookie cutter for the duel About my 